On the night of the full moon in Sichuan, there was a middle-aged man glaring. He frowned and looked forward. Drops of sweat ran down his face. He unconsciously swallowed his saliva. Below the middle-aged man's feet were countless corpses, and not far away there was a young man standing tall. The middle-aged man cursed angrily and was rude. He thought about Tam Huyet, Tian Doi, and the four elders of the demon palace. He also personally killed the iron blood demon Seo Gade. The middle-aged man angrily stabbed the tip of his sword into the ground, screaming in his heart, this monster. Faced with the middle-aged man's eyes widening in disbelief, the young man standing opposite was very calm. He gently asked, What's wrong? Did you see a ghost or something, senior brother? The young man's face at this moment revealed an arrogant and cruel look. This wild young man in front of him is the five disciples of the demon sex leader, also known as Tian Ma. His name is Don Sokwan. One day when the battle between the demon sect and the political sect was reaching its climax, there is a person who has stolen everything in the martial arts district. That is a legendary thief who has never been caught called the Shadow Thief. But now, the tomb of this shadow thief has been found in Sichuan. That's why the famous sects and families of the sect sent the most talented martial artists to Sichuan right in the middle of the battle with the demon sect to win the treasure of the shadowless saints. Heavenly Devil, you realize that and sent me to Sichuan to investigate the tomb, but what I couldn't expect was, right now I am not being attacked by the political sect, but by my senior brother, he is Master Lak Sat, the second disciple of Tian Ma. At this time, the middle-aged man, or the second disciple Tian Ma, was frowning and thinking, even though he was poisoned by the royal family's secret poison, seven mixed blood poisons. But his junior brother can still fight back like that, it's truly extraordinary. He silently called out the name of the young man standing in front of him, Don Sokwan. At this time, he told his junior brother, people say you are more talented than the leader, it seems they are right. Don Sokwan frowned and said, shut up, didn't I already say I'm not interested in the position of leader? However, this second senior brother did not believe much. He still insisted on speaking, but others did not think so. Don So Kwan spoke up again to expose the plot of his second senior brother. You are not chasing me like this because you are angry because you heard about this little junior brother's talent. You don't dare to face the fact that I am will threaten your position in the future. When the old second brother heard that, he became even more mad and angry. Don So Kwan did not stop. He continued to tell him, For someone who wants to be a leader, your skin is too thin someone who acts according to his will. How can you become a leader if you have an emotional outburst? After hearing this, the second senior brother smiled savagely. He clenched his fist and said, You dare to provoke me like this. Probably because your strength is exhausted, he wants me to be vulnerable when attacking you. Don So Kwan was equally angry. At this moment, the second senior brother suddenly threw out a fist. He smiled strangely and rushed towards his junior brother. The surrounding area became vibrating. Rocks and soil were flying in all directions. The old man's speed was too fast, as if the first day of Tet had passed by. Don So Kwan was also extremely surprised. In his heart he did not expect the second senior brother to be so sharp. Seeing Don So Kwan's untimely intervention, the old second senior brother laughed out loud happily. You look so stuck. Can you still stay there and talk loudly? Don So Kwan quickly fell backwards. So the second senior brother's fist also missed. Smoke and dust rose. Don So Kwan retreated into the distance. The old second senior brother pushed forward even more. He rushed quickly to the position where Don So Kwan had just landed. Suddenly, second senior brother widened his eyes. He saw a sharp attack coming towards him. But in the end, he quickly and narrowly escaped. At this time, his face was also slashed with blood. And Don So Kwan on this side also suddenly spit out a mouthful of blood. His legs were slightly bent. His breathing was rapid. Just looking at him you could see that he was gradually losing his form, looking extremely tired. Don So Kwan frowned and thought. The blood poison had spread all over his body. He only had a little strength left. The second senior brother also realized that. He smiled sinisterly at Don So Kwan and said give up. But Don So Kwan didn't show panic. He just smiled and replied. Even though my whole body is seriously injured now, it's still not to the point where I can't defeat you. The second old man suddenly let out an unclear sentence. It seems like I don't need to confront you to death. Don So Kwan asked again, Are you trembling and retreating, demon lord? Having said that, he suddenly quickly realized the old man's intentions. Don So Kwan himself also realized what was coming. He turned his head and looked back, thinking, Could it be? At the same time, the old second senior brother's evil laughter also rang out. He laughed and said, Ha ha ha, have you felt their aura? What is approaching is none other than the second party in this treasure war. The people from the political faction are rushing in. The second senior brother said, if you don't want to suffer the humiliation of being attacked by the political faction. If you are detained then obediently surrender. I will remember the old brotherhood and give you a peaceful death. 
Hearing what the old man said, Don Sokoan burst out laughing. Ha ha ha, how can you despise me like that? Do you think I will surrender so simply? His eyes became fierce and he told the second senior brother, I will never die alone. The second senior brother replied, you think that threat will work? But before he could finish his sentence, he noticed something unusual about his junior brother. He frowned and stared at Don Sokoan. Don Sokoan smiled triumphantly. A strange transformation appeared in his body. He clenched his teeth to let that strange power explode. Don Sokwan's pupils also began to change. Seeing Don Sokwan become so deformed, even the old second brother did not expect it. He was extremely surprised in his heart. What is this? The old man's eyes widened. His mouth opened in surprise. Sokwan also slowly spoke. Do you feel so surprised? Doesn't everyone have to learn at least one forbidden technique? At this time, Sokwan had become extremely scary. His white eyes... Savage smile and dark aura showed that he was no longer a normal person. The second senior brother also couldn't believe his eyes. His junior brother has already unleashed his magic. The old man shouted, Do you know that rioting with magic means the price must be a painful death? So Quan didn't really care and replied, Whether I die painfully or not, can I drag you to die with me? A rushing stream of air appeared. So Quan raised his white eyes and swung at his second senior brother. The sword flashed several lines. The second senior brother received a slash across his hip. At this time, the second senior brother also realized the seriousness of the situation. He felt that he was too dangerous, so we had to distance ourselves first. Thinking like that, the second senior brother quickly deployed his powers. He quickly shot backwards like a squid, and at the same time launched a move towards his junior brother. Don So Kwan didn't pay much attention to that move. He still smiled savagely, and rushed towards his second brother. He was confused and thought he wouldn't dodge, so Kwan rushed towards him like a storm. He didn't expect that he really wanted to die together. Before So Kwan's stabbing attack, he thought, I have to quickly use Qigong to protect my body. So Kwan's stabs continuously pierced his body. He gritted his teeth and used his hands to protect his body. He thought to himself, I just need to withstand this attack. But before So Kwan's ferocity and strength, his arms could no longer bear it. But as soon as he let down his guard, he let out a bloody sound. His arm just broke off from his body. So Quan attacked extremely resolutely. His face became expressionless. All sides were shaken. Dust was flying. The second senior brother rolled his eyes and fell backwards. So Quan reached out towards the old man. At this moment, he himself was exhausted. This battle seemed to have clearly determined victory or defeat. Don So Quan moved step by step towards his second brother. Second senior brother's entire body now collapsed motionless, leaving only his unfocused eyes. He recognized it as a first-class forbidden technique. With that power, his fifth junior brother is completely on par with one of the eight great demon masters. While he was still engrossed in thinking, Don So Kwan came close, brandishing the sword in his hand at him. But perhaps at this time he was still engrossed in his thoughts. He thought that even even his five junior brothers are stronger than that. It wasn't until Don So Kwan's figure approached, brandishing his sword, that he stretched out his remaining arm and shouted, Wait, what do you mean? But it was all too late. A loud explosion rang out sending countless rocks and soil flying in all directions. At this time, the group of righteous sect people were also nearby. They didn't understand what was going on and asked each other, are they some demonic bastards? Let's get there quickly. The second senior brother lay motionless in a pool of blood. He was no longer breathing. His eyes and mouth were wide open as if he couldn't believe it. But Don So Kwan was still looking at him with extremely cold eyes. It was clear that he had passed away and his body was no longer intact. Don So Kwan still stepped forward. He continued to swing his sword high. The eyes are extremely cold. He forcefully slashed a knife towards the second senior brother's body. He kept swinging his knife wildly as if he wanted to kill the old man many times. Suddenly Don So Kwan stopped. Fresh blood appeared from his mouth. Then he raised his head and spat out a mouthful of blood, cursing under his breath. The main faction group also came here. They also noticed something unusual. One person asked, It's strange that the two strange auras have completely disappeared. Just around here, there are people over there. People walking closer were surprised and asked, What is this? They saw a person kneeling, his head bowed to the ground. Someone asked, Is that the hidden dragon Don So Kwan? There was also an incomplete corpse next to them which also made them skeptical about the identity of that corpse. One of them said that because he was so severely damaged, it was difficult to identify him. But based on his clothes and demon ring, he was probably the demon master of the demon sect. Another person asked the question, does the demon sect have an internal conflict? Then they approached Don So Kwan and said, this master is still alive. Don So Kwan didn't move either, he just opened his eyes wide, his head drooped. At this moment he was recalling his whole life. Not a single day has passed. 
but we can live the way we want, even when I join the demon sect. The image returns to when Dan So Kwan was still a child, he was carried on a man's shoulders. He kept kicking and screaming to let me go, and called after his father, but his father continued to turn his back and walk away. The scar-faced guy carrying him on his shoulder also said cruelly, how pitiful you are to be abandoned for just a few coins. He still remembers clearly, this is all because my parents sold me to the devil because of poverty. So for the next 10 years, I was locked in a hidden cave and had to survive there. I kill and kill, my face becomes bruised and scratched. Just like that, 10 years later, he gradually grew up. He became strong because of his desire to survive. But he never got what he really wanted. Now I see that I never followed my own will and in the end I died after being betrayed by my senior brother. At this moment, when he was almost breathing his last breath, he felt extremely pathetic. The main sect master clasped his hands and asked him if the benefactor had any last words. But he didn't respond, he just laughed a few times, ha ha. The other great master also bowed his head and softly chanted Amitabha Buddha. He closed his eyes and said, hoping that the benefactor would be saved to Nirvana in the next life. In fact, he already had the answer to the master's question earlier, bald head, if I had one more life, I would want to live according to my will. But when the tears fell, that belated last word still did not come, was said. But he heard strange sounds, was that guy crying, he must have had a sad dream. Down So Kwan still didn't understand anything. Shake him awake, I'll do it. So Kwan felt extremely confused. I'm definitely dead, is this the underworld? Those sounds kept ringing, why didn't he move at all? Finally, So Kwan couldn't stand the feeling of being called and beaten and shouted, don't beat me anymore. The other guy was also surprised and asked again, what is this? Suddenly he opened his eyes again. He recognized the guy standing in front of him. It was the guy with the scar from back then. Why was the bastard who let him in here? He was still cracking his knuckles and saying, do you really want to die? He still remembers clearly. This guy is the guy who sent me into the hidden dungeon before. But didn't I finish him off after that? The scar-faced guy also stepped forward and said, hey kid, even Don Sokwan felt extremely surprised by his words, what kid? The other guy came closer and put the blade into his neck and said brazenly, Scream one more time and I will cut off your tongue. Don Sokwan opened his mouth, not understanding anything. Why did this guy call me little? His thoughts were suddenly interrupted, because he could see it clearly with his own eyes. His reflection on that sword was clearly the face of a kid. In his heart, he exclaimed in disbelief, I, I am a kid. The scar-faced man threatened him, Hey kid, try swearing again. See if I don't cut your tongue out. Don So Kwan still couldn't believe his eyes. He wondered why he looked like he did when he was young. The scar-faced guy saw that he didn't pay any attention to him. So he rolled his eyes and said, Look at this kid. Then he kicked Don So Kwan straight in the stomach, causing him to shoot backwards. Then he shouted angrily. While he was talking to an adult, where were his eyes and nose going? He angrily kicked Don So Kwan repeatedly, kicking and cursing at him. Damn guy. But Don So Kwan still hasn't recovered. In his mind he is still wondering what happened. The pain transmitted from the scar-faced man's kick made him know that this was not a dream. He wondered even more. Wasn't he already dead? So what was this pain? Luckily at this time there was another guy stopping the scar-faced guy. He advised him to stop. You kill him now. The scar-faced guy gradually calmed down and said forgive you, whatever your fate is. It's just deep in the devil's cave. Don So Kwan sat up, used his tied hands to wipe his face. Now he understood what was going on. So that was really the bastard who threw himself into the hidden ghost cave 20 years ago. Then he looked at the place where he was captured and realized, wasn't this the place he was taken to before being forced into the demon religion? The sound of the scarred man yelping again rang out, don't you dare ignore me. Why, that guy continued to advise him, hey calm down. But Don So Kwan didn't care what the other two guys were talking about, he only focused on thinking. This place and that bastard too, could it be? He rolled his eyes as if he couldn't believe it, he was reborn. While those guys were eating, he was still sitting in a corner with his mouth open, thinking, could it really be possible to be reborn? Was it because of that bald monk who always chanted sutras? Suddenly the scar-faced guy stood up and told his accomplices that there is a rumor that there is an elder of the martial arts alliance nearby. They might be chasing us, so we need to erase our traces and leave as soon as possible. As fast as possible. The well-fed bald guy who was flossing his teeth laughed sarcastically when he heard that. You mean those old guys who just sit on recliners every day, as if I believe that? Another guy also replied, they probably sent their subordinates while I sat comfortably at the Alliance headquarters and babbled about the dangers to the martial arts world or something similar. If it's really them, then we're no different from flies, what a bunch of annoying bastards. Then they continued talking, it was said that Lu Tian Kim became an elder at the age of 40, 
while he was not from the Nine Heavens sect or the Five Great Gangs. Another guy also chimed in and said, Hey I also joined the Alliance, hopefully I will also become an elder in the future. The bald guy was still excited and raised his hands to speak, A life of freedom is an ideal life. Do you understand? His accomplices saw that and happily said, You look like you fit the ascetic style, because you're already bald so you should go to Shaolin. While they were chatting, the scar-faced guy stood up. He walked towards Don So Kwan, then looked at him from above. Don So Kwan didn't understand what was going on before he picked him up by the collar. Then he carried it on his shoulder. He turned back and said to his social brothers, Hey crazy people, stop talking nonsense. Let's go back to the demon god religion. As soon as he heard about the demon god religion, Don So Kwan's face turned pale. Otherwise if he was dragged away like this, I will have to go to the hidden ghost cave again. As soon as I think about it, the image of that ghost cave appears clearly. If you call it a cave, everything is scary right? Hidden Devil's Cave is a place to test the followers of the demon sect. It is said that Hidden Devil's Cave is where the demon sect trains and nurtures its subordinates. However, the true nature of that place is a hell on earth where existence is full of treacherous plots and bloody battles. A place where children are thrown in mercilessly and have to risk their lives just to survive. It is not a place where humans can live. To survive there, only strength and wisdom can help us save our lives. He still vividly remembers the horrifying killings that happened here. Although I had already overcome the hidden demon cave once in the past. But I still don't have any confidence to go back there again. And being thrown there means being completely isolated from the outside world for 10 years. He glanced around slightly and decided that once was enough. The scarred man carried him on his shoulder and said to his accomplices, I will go out to the carriage with this guy. So you guys should clean up soon. But before he could finish speaking, a group of people rushed in, led by two girls. The purple shirt girl pointed straight at them and shouted I found you. Seeing this, the magicians were also extremely surprised. Only Don So Kwan, who was lying swinging on the scar-faced man's shoulder, was not surprised, because he realized, yes, in his previous life, this also happened. The scar-faced guy asked in confusion, what the hell is that? Are you the righteous sect of the martial arts alliance from last time? The bald guy arrogantly said, you guys should have obediently gone back to your sect when we told you to. Spared. The girl in purple shouted again. You guys dare to insult our martial arts alliance. Why should you use your life to atone for your sins? A few of the demon cultists also laughed and laughed. It seems like you forgot our gratitude for letting you live before. If you really want to die then, we had to return the favor. As soon as they finished speaking, they held swords and rushed towards the group of people who had just appeared unexpectedly. The momentum of the demonic cultists was like a dragon or a tiger. As soon as they rushed forward, they gained the upper hand. They quickly defeated the other side. At this time, everyone around them was defeated, leaving only two girls who were confused and scared. A man from the demon sect stuck out his tongue to lick the blood on the sword. He smiled sinisterly and looked at the two girls. The scar-faced man saw that and laughed happily, saying, Don't kill the women, capture them alive. Don So Kwan thought to himself, If my memory is not wrong, this is my chance to escape. At this moment, the girl in white suddenly ran quickly. She swung her sword forward to push aside those who stood in her way. Then he rushed towards the guy with the stern face carrying down So Kwan. She stabbed him hard, but unfortunately, the scarred man tilted his head and dodged. Realizing that she had missed the mark, the white shirt girl immediately lost all momentum. As for the scar-faced guy, he smiled contemptuously and said, Oh ho, you've tried your best. He continued confidently, but there was no way I would be hit by a simple move like that. Before he could finish his sentence, he saw Don So Kwan kneeling, aiming straight at his face. This knee strike was extremely quick and decisive. Blood quickly splattered from his nose everywhere. At this time, So Kwan also quickly grabbed the wine bottle that he was hanging on his side. While he was still unable to come to his senses with his bloody nose, he jumped from his shoulder and landed on the ground as fast as a rabbit. Then he curled up and jumped through the wooden window, successfully escaping the scar-faced man's control, while his screams were still echoing in his ears. Hey, that damn boy stood there. Next he ran like hell into the forest. After completing a series of such exhausting actions, his current small body was about to be unable to bear it anymore. He held the bottle of wine and thought, I can't run too far with this weak body. Immediately, a familiar curse rang out in his ears. Damn thing, you're dead to me. So Quan heard and silently thought. I have to find it quickly. He looked around everywhere in the forest. His eyes finally landed on what he was looking for, there it was. The scar-faced man's sound got closer and closer, he screamed stood there, so Kwan saw that and ran away even more frantically. But he was following closely behind as he ran and said, Do you think you can escape? Suddenly he tripped over something. Don so Kwan cursed angrily. Then he also fell down hard. He was unwilling to scream, 
No, Don So Kwan thought to himself that this was no longer possible. He reached forward and tried to get the wine bottle. But that Scarface guy came, he stabbed his sword into the ground, surrounded Don So Kwan and said, Once caught, you will pay the price for running away, kid. Don So Kwan lay on the ground, looking at him in panic. The guy with the black face took him and threw him into the original house. Then he swung his legs and kicked Don So Kwan repeatedly until he coughed out several mouthfuls of blood. The accomplice came to advise for the third time, Come on, calm down, we have to move. Don So Kwan lay still on the ground, the guy's voices rang out again, tying that boy up as tightly as possible. This trash makes me so tired, he said as he opened his wine bottle. Then pour a lot of wine into your mouth. After drinking, he felt extremely refreshed. Then he threw that bottle of wine to his brothers who were also craving for it. They happily drank and said, Ha, that's right, the wine after a fight is the best, stop stop, why did you drink it all? Do you have any left? Alcohol no. The scar-faced guy heard his brothers ask and answered, No, no, that was all. After he finished speaking, the surrounding suddenly became strangely silent. The guy didn't hear anything so he turned to his brothers and said loudly, Hey, if you're done drinking then go. But as soon as he turned around, he saw an extremely horrifying scene. All of his brothers were dying, their mouths were full of blood, he screamed, What, what's wrong with you guys? As soon as he finished speaking, he quickly covered his mouth and spat out a mouthful of blood. He looked at the blood in his hand and wondered, since when was it poisonous? He quickly told his accomplices to meditate and gather energy to push it out immediately. At this moment, a young voice rang out, Poison is the most effective weapon to assassinate strong people. He glared at Don So Kwan, who had untied himself, and shouted every word, bastard. Don So Kwan no longer looked as scared as before, he coldly said. However, this is the first time I've used this move again. Suddenly he gave a devilish smile before continuing, so I will let you go at your leisure. The other guys were all screaming in pain for help. The scarred guy saw this and was extremely angry. He angrily cursed, you bastard. Don So Kwan still stood in place, coldly looking at a group of people in pain, suffering and moaning. In his mind, he knew very well that poison was the most effective way to help a weak person kill a strong person. A week ago, while running away from the scarred man, Don So Kwan thought of an escape plan. He looked around as if looking for something. Suddenly his eyes flashed. The thing he was looking for appeared. It was this flower. He remembered that the way to survive in the demonic cave of the demon religion was to learn about the toxicity of herbs and narcotics. As he remembered the past, he used his tied hands to pluck the flower. He knew that he still could not compare with the poison masters from Tang Mon or Dok Valley. Then he used a stone to crush the flower then thought, but I still know more about poison than the average doctor or medicine picker. After crushing the flowers into a blue liquid, he carefully poured them into the scarred man's wine bottle. Back to the present, does my wine please your taste? Don So Kwan asked, holding a sword and then continued, because this is the first time I have done this again. He brought the sword close to the neck of a guy who had just been poisoned, smiled savagely and said I will send you on your way quickly. The threatened guy also cried out in fear, help. The sounds of killing and prayers for his life continued to ring out, and in the end even the scarred man was finished. Bodies were lying all over the place. In a moment, the whole room was filled with only Don So Kwan and the two Thai girls. Don So Kwan stood motionless in one place. Then he also staggered backwards. Then he fell to the ground. He bowed his head low, a smile forming on his mouth. He happily thought, Ha, from now on I no longer have to return to that hellish lair of demonism. After that, Don So Kwan also stopped and thought, But if I don't get there, what should I do now? He sat quietly thinking for a moment. At this time, Don So Kwan was remembering what happened before he died. Black killed the demon master. Do you dare to betray me? The image of the second senior brother chasing him reappeared. The anger in his heart was also awakened. I have to repay that hatred tenfold. I have to return to the demon religion to take revenge. But then suddenly he raised his head and sighed, Hey, no. I never want to return to the demon religion again from now until the day I die. But I also don't want to give up the path of becoming a martial artist. If I don't have strength, I can only endure being beaten unfairly and laughed at. I don't want to become a doctor or a wanderer because not only do they not have money or prestige, but they are also not recognized by people. I also don't want to become the leader of a martial arts alliance, or the leader of a demon sect because I don't want to shoulder that heavy responsibility. Is there no way for my future days to be both lived in happiness and valued at the same time? He scratched his head and sighed, thinking, damn it, of course not. But suddenly a meaning flashed in his mind still. He remembered the gossip that the bald demon cultist had just talked about just shouldering a little responsibility and work under his authority, and still being respected and flattered, 
this was truly a typical example of injustice. That is the position of the elders of the martial arts alliance, the elders I have seen in my previous life. All corrupted sick people, they share power in the martial arts alliance based on their biological relationships. They do, while doing nothing and enjoying many privileges, and never appearing in life and death battles, they are monsters with corrupt personalities. Then he remembered the knights he used to go with his brothers to kill. The brother said, This time we won't see that damn shadow leader. Have you ever seen them show up, looking forward to it? What's wrong with useless old people? In the past, members of the demon sect always laughed and looked down on them. But I think I was jealous of those rotten elders. They lived in a luxurious life that was completely different from mine. They were one if you don't belong to the nine great sects or the five great families. You won't easily become an elder of the martial arts alliance. But those were just the thoughts of his previous life. Now he was extremely concerned. Because if he used the memories from his previous life, this could be possible. But he also realized, but now I'm just a kid without any power. If I want to become an elder, I need to go somewhere safe first. A place where I can plan for the future while training to get the strength I want. Thinking about this, he suddenly saw it out of the corner of his eye. The two older sisters were still tied up, seeing that he finally paid attention to them. The girl in white quickly shouted, Save us. The white-clothed sister begged again, Please take this young lady back to the clan. Don So Kwan also stood up and walked towards the other two girls. He came closer to the end to observe a little, but the girl was extremely tired, leaving him to observe. Then he immediately realized that this was a man from the 10,000 Miles family. He noticed the jade pendant hanging on the purple-clothed girl's waist. This is the first time I've seen that name, but if she's the lady of the family, she can guarantee my safety. So he untied the other two girls, then followed them back to Van Mile House. Walking to the front door, he looked up and thought, because he had never heard of this family, so finding it was quite difficult. At first glance, they seemed to be quite wealthy. The two girls turned around and said to him, come in. He also replied, okay. Inside there was a long bearded old man sitting on a chair. He snorted and asked, so you say they claim to be from a demonic religion? He also replied, yes, Junior is sure. He caressed the cat again. The wrong cat then continued, it's not like I doubt you, which, but there isn't enough evidence. He is Mr. Chan Gun, the head of the 10,000 Miles family. Faced with the disbelief of the head of the Van Dim family, he just bowed his head and said calmly, the Junior only told him exactly what he had heard. The Junior did not know the details anymore, but their bodies were there still there, so you can investigate further. Hearing that, the old man stroked his long beard and said, Okay, this matter will be handled by the soldiers wearing 10,000 swords. At this moment, the girl in purple rushed out and shouted, Master, please leave this matter to the servant. The old man immediately rejected it, stop it. The old man stroked the cat as he said, A group of more than 10 successor members with martial arts of the family were killed by the remnants of the demon religion, and had to ask a child for help. Until the matter is resolved, reflect on yourself. The purple shirt girl, hearing that, bowed her head sadly and said, I understand. Then the old homeowner asked Don So Kwan again, Now I heard that your junior was kidnapped, do you have anywhere to return to now? He also replied, Unfortunately no, because the junior was kidnapped by his parents. Abandoned. The old man groaned again, Oh my god. The old man looked at Don So Kwan from head to toe for a bit, and then said, At such a young age, you behave properly and look quite intelligent, but Le Kwong. As soon as he called, a man with his hair in a bun standing behind him immediately responded, Yes, sir. The old homeowner of the Van Mao family said, Find a place for this boy to live, take good care of him, and if possible, take him in and teach him how to work. Suddenly, the old Mandarin gave a not-so-kind smile and replied, I will do the same. Everything happened according to what Don So Kwan predicted. The old butler took Don So Kwan to a small room and said, This is your residence, just rest today. He bowed his head politely and said yes. Then he went inside and closed the door, then thought about his next plan. It seems like now that my basic needs have been taken care of, should I prepare plans to become an elder? Martial Arts Alliance no. He walked quickly towards the bed. Because he did not come from the nine great sects or the five great families, he needed to achieve achievements and build a reputation. He sat down on the bed, and to do that, of course he had to have superior martial arts. In my previous life, I was one of the disciples of Heavenly Devil, who was considered the strongest young generation in martial arts. So if I could restore my strength as I was then, I could attain the position of single alliance elder. It's simple. He began to bend his arms and close his eyes to practice chi, thus internalizing his chi. Suddenly he remembered something, muttered, indignant. Damn, now that I think about it, what I learned was magic. At this time, in the library of the Van Mao family, it's been two days since I joined Van Mingia. Once here, 
I started working under the management of the person called Kuang Biller. While Don So Kwan was cleaning up the bookshelf, suddenly a sound rang out, ahem. He looked towards the direction where the sound came from. This person is Kuang Chun Sung, the old butler of Van Mile House. He passed by and reminded me to do my job properly. The homeowner himself told me to pay attention to you, so I let you become a servant to support my work here. But work carefully, don't do anything stupid or wrong that the homeowner won't do. Satisfied, he silently bowed his head to listen. He continued, now I'm going in here, you'll be careful and then go inside. Suddenly he also raised his voice and asked, I have a question. He looked at him in surprise and said, what do you want to ask? How much is my remuneration for my work, sir? The butler heard him ask and was extremely surprised. He opened his mouth and looked at him for a moment. Then he hugged his stomach and burst out laughing. That old man laughed until he had tears in his eyes, then said, Hey kid, you're really good at joking. But when he saw Don So Kwan's serious face, he thought, This kid, is he seriously asking? He turned around and replied, You haven't officially been accepted yet, but you already want to discuss remuneration? As long as you do the job I assigned you well, I will pay it for you myself, so there is no need to worry too much. Don So Kwan heard that and replied, Hello sir. As soon as the butler left, he thought to himself, Well, I have no intention of contributing to this family, so whatever. As he walked back to his room, he thought, I simply need a place to support myself until I successfully practice martial arts and regain my previous strength. The important thing now is to review your own weapon training method. A person who practices magic will never be able to become a martial arts elder. Therefore, we need to find the righteous sex method of cultivating chi and practice it until it achieves the results of the demon chi technique that we learned from the previous demon sect leader. Only then can we take advantage of all the sword skills and body techniques we have acquired. He bowed his head and silently thought, is there any method of cultivating internal energy that is on the same level as the heavenly demon technique of any sect of the martial arts alliance? Suddenly he remembered someone. That's right, there's still one person left. The top 10 masters of the 10 great sects. Among them is one person who has taken the lives of many magic guardians with just his fists. That is the right king. He is extremely strong. His chi gathering technique is something even a demon would be wary of. It's a magical martial art that's comparable to a demon's qigong. Every time he casts a move, thunder rumbles and the wind blows. His aura fills the sky. That is the white lightning energy. Has immense power, makes everyone afraid, and has a great reputation. Only the white thunder power of Gwyn Vong can replace the heavenly demon magic that he has cultivated. Just one move of the white lightning reinforcement left all the enemies lying on the ground. This is something only Gwyn Vong alone can do. I have no other choice. I have to join Gwyn Vong's subordinates and comprehend his white thunder energy. Then I can regain the same strength as in my previous life. But the problem is that Gwyn Vong is now unknown, and we don't know where he is now. I only know that every five years, he will bring his martial arts to Sichuan to fight with other martial arts masters. Look at the thunder and lightning outside. Don So Kwan silently made up his mind, so until then, except for the heavenly devil Qigong, I must master all the remaining martial arts. Then he showed a warlike smile and promised him five years later, Gwyn Vong. Time passed quickly like a dog running in the field, suddenly it was two years later, at the dining room of the subordinates. A person passing by exclaimed, Oh my god, how many bowls has he eaten? Right now there is one person who is constantly chewing. He ate so much that everyone around him was amazed. On Don So Kwan's dining table there was a lot of food, from white rice, to pork, to dumplings, all of which he stuffed into his mouth, ignoring everyone's curious eyes. He didn't care about anything but thought, for two long years, I only gathered energy with basic martial arts skills that I learned at home from martial arts masters. The effectiveness is quite limited so the amount of internal energy we have accumulated in the Dan Dayan for two years is only like a grain of rice. Until we can comprehend the white thunder energy of Gwyn Vong, we must focus on cultivating the body. Can. Suddenly there was a call, hey kid, so Quan wondered and raised his head to look. A group of people wearing the same uniform as him were coming to mock, are you haunted by a hungry ghost? One of them raised his head high and said, stop eating and follow me out the back door immediately. Don So Quan continued to eat each spoonful of rice, saying he didn't want to. When the other guy heard that, he angrily shouted. What, you'll just have to listen to what I tell you to do. That guy's heart is so angry, this bastard. That guy used two fingers to stir the bowl of food on the table and said, He's just a guy who has the support of the Don High Lady and the old housekeeper and dares to show up. Then the other guy brought his finger to his mouth, stuck out his tongue and licked it, smiling mockingly. If he didn't want to be beaten instead of rice, then he would follow me. Don So Kwan was not surprised at all, he just thought to himself. This guy is trying to swallow the small fish. This group has never touched me before, 
It seems because I have a relationship with the butler Kwong and Don Hai. But even after two years, I still haven't been able to escape my life as a servant, so now they're starting to say that I'm nothing. Which is reasonable. Not to mention that I'm not only paid well but also have my own room, so these guys are jealous. It's also normal. The faces of the classmates next to me are not at all good. They are all laughing and gloating when they see someone being bullied. Don So Kwan finally stood up and said, let's go. He walked out into the yard then turned around and said to the group of people, this far is enough. Then what do you guys want? They looked at each other silently signaling. Then one of them stepped forward and walked towards Don So Kwan, arrogantly saying, I should have taught a useless person like you a long time ago, but I was careless. That guy put his hands against the wall, surrounding Don So Kwan's small body, then calmly continued, as long as you follow us, today's matter will be over. But before he finished his sentence, that guy got a punch straight in the stomach. That guy suddenly felt pain and let out a scream, his eyes looking like he couldn't believe it. Next, So Kwan's hand attacked his chin. His huge body was knocked back by a smaller person. Blood from the nose and mouth splattered. The rest of the people standing there were also shocked. All of them looked at each other with googly eyes and shouted, What? Then they heard So Kwan say, God forbid the meal would be avoided. But they still blatantly went to the counter to destroy it. Come on, take the trouble to be a punching bag for me to practice. He smiled evilly at those subordinates who specialized in bullying. The whole group of subordinates saw this and exclaimed in surprise, How could this happen? They all couldn't believe that Don So Kwan, who was so tiny like a candy, could knock out his strong friend. Don So Kwan used one foot to step on the bully's head and said, Eating and drinking is not okay with you guys. He smiled and said, Then please entertain me. Even though he looks cool on the outside, he's still a little worried inside. I'm confident in saying that. A fight with a group of adults is still very dangerous compared to a child with only a few weapons and internal strength. He walked towards the remaining guys with a gloomy face. So one guy was finished. Suddenly he glanced to the left, then quickly rushed towards where one of the bullies is standing. Don So Kwan struck him right in the stomach. The other guy was in so much pain that his face turned pale. Don So Kwan silently counted, the second guy. Leaving behind the guy who was foaming at the mouth, he quickly ran to a guy nearby. This guy stretched out his two huge arms to grab Don So Kwan, cursing him in his mouth, this brat. But Don So Kwan was able to use his ghost form and glide behind that guy in the blink of an eye. That guy glanced back in shock. Then Don So Kwan punched him in the back of the neck, spitting rice and porridge. Don So Kwan counted again. The third name was. The third guy also fell down immediately. Don So Kwan rushed to the next guy. That guy also cursed, you bastard, and threw his fist at him. But Don So Kwan also successfully dodged this move. He attacked from behind that guy, and the fourth name. Suddenly another subordinate shouted a warning to the fourth man. Behind you, you idiot. The other guy heard his friend's warning and quickly turned his head to look behind. But it was already too late. That guy was still attacked strongly from behind by Don So Kwan. At this time, the remaining guys, after seeing Don So Kwan continuously defeating four people, also started to sneak up. They were all dumbfounded and thought, what is this, is that a kid? But they immediately regained their composure. One of them shook his head vigorously to become more alert, he had to calm down. The leader hit his friend hard and shouted, What are you guys standing there for? Just a brat. After defeating the guy just now, Don So Kwan stood in place. Now there were only three servants left, and one who knew a little martial arts. I'm about to run out of internal strength, so I have to deal with the leader first. So he spoke out to provoke the leader. Will you still hide behind your subordinates like that? The leader was very angry when he heard that. He gritted his teeth and said this brat. Then the leader also began to take an offensive stance. That guy started to focus his strength on his legs. There was a mountain surrounding his legs. And at the same time he said, You won't be able to be arrogant anymore, kid. That guy rushed quickly towards Don So Kwan. The leader swung his fist towards Don So Kwan's face. So Kwan also promptly leaned to one side. But still got bloodied by that punch. So Kwan stepped back. So Kwan wiped his bloody nose then thought, He just got punched a little bit and his nose bled. And now it's not good to be hit with a blow like that. It's not good to be hit like that now. He also learned a bit of martial arts. At this time, the leader's accomplices were cheering and cheering when they saw So Kwan being beaten. So Kwan also understood clearly, he had also learned a bit of martial arts so it would be very difficult to confront him head on. So Kwan also began to focus his strength in his hands. He immediately rushed towards the leader. The leader himself also noticed So Kwan's abnormality. His eyes widened in surprise. That guy was punched in the stomach by So Kwan with all his force. The leader immediately spit out a mouthful of blood. The two accomplices were still in the same cheering position as before, not having time to stop because So Kwan acted too quickly and was too dangerous. 
I saw that I was tired for those two guys, so Quan only felt that he was really stupid. The remaining two guys were also scared. Both of their faces turned pale and trembled with fear, so Quan turned his head and glanced at them. He said you guys should jump in too. They immediately knelt down on the ground and said in unison, We are sorry. Don So Quan looked around for a moment and said, No need. But at that time, So Quan suddenly saw something. He looked closely and said, That's it. So Quan didn't know that someone had been watching him from afar. That person had witnessed all the fights just now. After teaching those bullies a lesson, So Quan returned to his familiar room, having used up all his internal strength. He started to sit cross-legged on the bed again. So if the other two guys had decided to really jump in, I would have been in danger. My biggest problem right now is that I have too little accumulated internal energy. If there was a bottle of healing herbs, everything would be fine. Suddenly he heard a knock on the door. He thought to himself, who else is coming at this hour? So Quan walked out and opened the door and asked, who was it? But when he saw the people at the door, he was very surprised. Why were these people here? The person who came was Miss Cho Don Hai, the daughter of the head of the Van Mao family and her bodyguard Du So Kwa, also the two girls in white and purple shirts whom So Kwan saved from the gang. The other day, Cho Don Hai sat on the chair and smiled and asked, I heard that your job supporting the housekeeper is going quite well. So Kwan also replied to her, It's just simple paperwork, I basically don't do much at all. Then he asked again, Anyway, why did you come here at this hour? The young lady and her guard looked at each other and nodded. Then Miss Cho Don Hai said, I'll say it straight, you should become my subordinate. I happen to observe your fight with the servants. Cho Dan Hai was talking about So Kwan teaching the bullies earlier. When So Kwan heard that, he was a bit surprised. But suddenly he changed his attitude and thought, I don't want things to become complicated at all. I have to find a way to silence her. Then he looked again at the guard standing behind the lady. But there was still the maid. So he replied, It's just that I learned a few little things. But I don't know what the lady is planning to drag me into. Miss Cho Dan Hai heard that and said, I just want a talented confidant who can help me. Someone so impressive that even my brothers and sisters are jealous. Then suddenly the lady reminded me of the past. It was thanks to me that you were here. So at least you should repay me, right? After listening, So Kwan pondered for a moment, then finally said okay. Lady Cho Don Hai and her bodyguards smiled very satisfied when they heard the answer they wanted. She immediately stood up and patted So Kwan on the shoulder and said great. I won't let you regret it. So Kwan looked at her hand on his shoulder and listened to her say. If I become the homeowner. I can meet any of your requests, thank you. When we got to the door, Miss Cho Don Hai added, So let's go, and don't let anyone know about this, especially the butler Kwong. So Kwan also smiled happily and replied, You don't need to worry about that. But soon his friendly smile disappeared. At this time, the old butler of the Van Mao family was writing in his study. When he saw Don So Kwan entering, he raised his head and asked, What do you want to talk to me about? So Kwan just silently smiled. When the butler saw him entering, he stopped writing and asked, so what do you want to say? Don So Kwan said I came here to tell you that. The young lady wants to join the fight for inheritance within the family. The butler suddenly heard him say that and was extremely surprised. He put down his pen and asked why are you telling me this? He crossed his arms, leaned back in his chair and continued, I'm just a neutral person. Don So Kwan smiled confidently. He smiled and said to the butler, I have been your assistant for two years. When he was caught, he frowned. He also said frankly, do you think I don't know that you are supporting the young master? The butler bowed his head in defeat and said I have no choice but to deal with you. Then he said then, you intend to act as a spy among them. Don So Kwan replied calmly, as long as it benefits me. The butler thoughtfully said, you're saying quite dangerous things as if they were nothing. But So Kwan knew very well what he was saying. He still remembered what happened many years ago. He was the one who saved them two years ago. But she never said a word of thanks or at least showed it. But when they needed me, they came to find me. If I side with this type of person, sooner or later I will be thrown away after being no longer valuable. Instead of being used by her, it's better to use her back to achieve your goals. So he smiled and replied, Well, if the benefits are smaller than the risks, then of course it should be ignored. The old butler listened and said, You are quite devious. So what do you want in return? You're not the type of person who would do anything for free, right? So Quan thought, I still don't have any internal mental energy accumulated. So now I need to amplify my internal strength first. I learned the method of preparing elixir in my previous life. So I have can continuously accumulate internal energy. As long as enough herbs are found. He replied, not much. I'm not feeling very well these days. Can I get some herbs? The old butler repeated herbs. The old man asked in disbelief. Is that enough? He also said. That's all I need. The half-trusting old man thought in his heart that that elegant smile didn't suit him at all. But he still responded to him. Okay. I can do this. So Quan finally got what he wanted. 
Thank you. After that day, I acted as a spy between Cho Dan Hai and Butler Kwong during family meetings. So Kwon often stood behind Miss Dan Hai as her bodyguard. The secret plans related to the young lady were all told by So Kwon to the old butler, and with many herbs that he received from the butler Kwong. He used it to prepare a pill. The medicine is as big as a cookie. But thanks to that, he was able to make elixir good enough to replenish his internal strength, even though it's extremely bitter. Besides, every free time is spent on physical training, and honed his techniques. During the day he worked as a spy, at night he worked tirelessly to train himself. Just like that, three years have passed. In the end, Cho Don Hai failed in the battle for the family inheritance, and was kicked out into an arranged marriage. As for Don So Kwa, he arranged to meet Don So Kwa privately and asked, Do you have any plans when Miss Don Hai loses in winning the inheritance? Don So Kwa bewilderedly asked again, Lost? So Kwan explained, If that happens, Miss Don Hai will be kicked out under some excuse. We need to prepare first since we are still her subordinates. So I turned around my empty teacup and asked again, So what? I haven't thought about that. Seeing this, Don So Kwan poured more water for her and gave her a suggestion, Maybe join the Martial Arts Alliance. So Kwa was a bit surprised and repeated, Martial Arts Alliance, it was like dreaming. So Kwan also secretly planned, now I'm laying the foundation and who knows, maybe it will be useful in the future. When I join the alliance, having a little knowledge will be extremely useful, according to many people. I don't know if it was because of today's conversation that Don So Kwa stopped accompanying Cho Don Hai and left the Man Chong family or not. At this time, five years have passed since he first worked for the Man Chong family. In the familiar room, I finished all the preparations while staying in this place. A teenager pushed the door and walked out. The teenager was extremely radiant under the sun. He thought determinately, it's time to leave. But when Don So Kwan went to talk about this with the old butler, the answer he received was, you can't go. The old butler said uncomfortably, from the beginning, I intended for you to be my successor. Then suddenly he closed the book he was reading and shouted, that's why. I will pay you, and I will also give you the herbs you need. After speaking, he had tears in his eyes and looked extremely pitiful. Oh so pitiful, then he said, why did you leave? Even though the butler's tears had fallen, So Kwan was still extremely determined. I'm sorry, he thought to himself, he's starting to look like an old fox. I only get what I deserve, so what's the use of showing off those things? The old man continued to say, the young master was assigned to manage part of the fortune thanks to your efforts, so a bright future is waiting for you. What else do you want? I will help you satisfy it, just say it. But So Kwan just said indifferently, I don't need anything. But he was unwilling to shout, so what was the reason? Finally, So Kwan had to say, I want to be a martial arts master. The old man rolled his eyes and said, a martial arts expert. After that, he didn't pay attention to So Kwan's words, just waved his hand and said, it seems you intend to jump into the world just because you learned some unknown martial arts in the past five years. He pointed his finger straight at So Kwan. With a few of those skills, you can't even defeat those gangsters. So Kwan was silent, his face darkened, showing that he was unhappy and stressed. He tried to control his anger and thought, ha ha, this old man, I plan to end everything smoothly because after all, we had been together for so long. But, finally, So Kwan slowly said to the old butler, butler, why don't we try to bet? The old man asked confusedly, what bet? So Kwan patted his chest and said, no matter who brought him to be my opponent, I will listen to you if I lose. Not long after, so Kwan realized one thing, in his heart he thought, I said that but this old butler really brought someone to beat me, it's really a Vietnamese traitor, a traitor. So Kwan squinted his eyes at the tall man in front of him, this guy, he is considered the most powerful person after the homeowner, the old butler is also standing next to him, smiling and looking at him. The person he brought was the commander of the 10,000 swords brigade. Now the old butler was laughing so hard that he couldn't see his eyes. The old butler brought a man in an orange shirt. He looked extremely large. At first glance, he knew he was a difficult opponent to defeat. Don So Kwan also realized who he was, he was. The person rumored to be only strong after the old master. Also the commander of the 10,000 sword squad, Han Sung Hun. At this time, the old butler laughed extremely vilely. It was ridiculous that he let a commander of the 10,000 swords team fight a 15-year-old boy. But Don So Kwan still smiled extremely confidently. He thought, it doesn't matter anyway. The man who was the commander of the 10,000 swords team turned to look at the old butler and asked, What are the rules of the match? The old butler also smiled and replied, You win if you can overwhelm your opponent, or make him leave. Abandon the match. Then he hastily added, Don't kill him. I will raise this kid. So Kwon heard what he said and thought. He already considered himself a winner. Then he also said to the old butler, Don't forget that if I win, you promise to give me a year's salary to cover my expenses. Cover for the trip. 
The old butler heard that and said, well, you have to remember that if you lose, you don't want to leave within the next three years. Having said that, he patted the shoulder of the man in the orange shirt and said it was all thanks to you. After finishing speaking, he quickly walked away from where the two were standing. An Sung Hun immediately looked towards Don So Kwan. He pulled out his sword and said, come, I will show you the first move. Don So Kwan saw that and said again, if you have the heart, I must accept it. At this time, Don So Kwan was also considering that he had taken the medicine but the Qigong was still not enough. Must use all strength to finish immediately. After planning the strategy, Don So Kwan hastily took up a fighting position. Don So Kwan rushed forward and slashed a sword at Han Sung Hun. Han Sung Hun frowned a bit. Although Don So Kwan's attack was very unexpected, he was still able to block it. So Kwan backed away and thought in amazement this power. But before he could finish thinking, Han Sung Hun slashed hard at Don So Kwan. The old butler saw Han Sung Hun acting so fiercely and quickly shouted I told you not to kill him. At this time, Everyone thought that Don So Kwan had received a powerful sword strike from the commander of the 10,000 sword squad. But the truth was that he had quickly dodged it, until everyone noticed him and suddenly exclaimed, Where is he? So Kwan suddenly appeared and disappeared, making Han Sung Hun unpredictable. He shouted, Don't bother. But at this time, So Kwan rushed behind Han Sung Hun and said, The first sword technique. Then he slashed his sword so hard that all the earth and rocks were broken and shot out in all directions, causing Noyet's net. But Han Sung Hun quickly realized and retreated into the distance. Both landed on the ground, this time the battle was extremely tense. Both did not rest and continued to rush towards each other. Don So Kwan quickly slashed his opponent. But the commander of the 10,000 sword squad was also extremely powerful. He dodged and even launched a counter-attack. The two sides fought extremely fiercely, killing non-stop. But the winner and loser could not be determined yet. At this point, both of them stepped back. Both So Kwan and Han Sung Hun were exhausted. But suddenly the commander of the 10,000 sword squad said a compliment, saying that he was able to avoid my sword very well. After realizing that So Kwan was not an easy kid to defeat, he said that if so, I would use all my abilities and stop holding back because you are still young. Many streams appeared around him. Sword Energy The old butler who was standing to the side watching the battle all this time also recognized it, and exclaimed, O oh Sword Aura! It was indeed the team of 10,000 swords. But before he could finish the sentence, he realized one more thing, that was So Kwan also had sword energy. The old butler was surprised to think, does he also have sword energy, that boy has already reached the zenith, star. So Kwan also resolved to say, I will not compromise anymore. The commander of the 10,000 sword squad heard a brat say that, and was extremely angry and shouted, the brat. Then he made a strong sword strike towards So Kwan. His moves were extremely powerful. Each sword strike was extremely powerful, but So Kwan was no match. Every time he stood in front of Han Sung Hun's death sword, he quickly dodged it. After repeatedly dodging, So Kwan finally finished attacking Han Sung Hun, but the commander of the 10,000 sword squad was able to block this sword blow. The swords of the two sides kept colliding with each other to the point that fire flashed. The space around the two people was extremely vibrating. Dust flew, dirt and rocks flew. Four sides. The old butler was unable to open his eyes due to the energy from the battle. When he saw that a ten-year-old boy could fight hand-to-hand -hand with the commander of the Ten Thousand Swords team, he was extremely surprised. He did not expect that the boy who had lived with him for five years was so strong. How could this happen? Can happen. At this time, the two people were still fighting each other extremely fiercely, either one willing to give in to the other. So Kwan frowned and thought, did he want this match to become a battle of strength? Don't dream. It seems that So Kwan understood Hang Sang Hun's plan, he quickly dodged aside, escaping the sword blocking situation. Suddenly down So Kwan kicked Han Sung Hun in the face. Because he was not on guard, Han Sang Hun retreated again, taking advantage of this moment to launch another attack. De Noyet Sword Technique Second To Noyet, a powerful sword slashed into Han Sung Hun's stomach, his blood splattered everywhere. He did not expect that he would be injured and shed blood like this by a 15-year-old boy. At this moment, the commander of the 10,000 swords team was extremely angry and angry. He shouted angrily, bastard, and at the same time unleashed his ultimate move, the light sword. But So Kwan did not flinch or fear, he just smiled apologetically, so I had to tell him the bad news. This is my secret trick. After resting, he rushed towards Han Sung Hun. Both sides showed their trump cards, and soon the two collided. The winner of this war was revealed. So Kwan defeated the commander of the 10,000 sword squad. His sword was knocked away while So Kwan's sword was placed on his neck. At this moment, the commander of the 10,000 sword squad had to admit that I had lost. After the match ended, 
Han Sun Hung also said sorry for what just happened, so Quan also replied, don't worry, I don't care about that. So Quan smiled and said I would take away one year's salary as previously agreed. If you don't keep your word then, at this point, so Quan will also be filled with murderous intent, causing the old butler to be extremely scared and have to hide behind Han Sun Hung. He stammered and replied, no, you think I'm some kind of person. What kind of person is that? Then the old butler said with short, long tears, how should I tell my family? Finally, So Quan said, thank you for the pastime. The old butler could only answer yes. So Quan took the money he had won and said, I will use this money well. After that, it was time for me to leave because I still had many things to do. As soon as he finished speaking, he turned and left very decisively. So Quan just went straight to the door. The commander of the 10,000 sword squad also said, so this place is also a dragon's roost. The old butler heard that and wondered, that kid seems to be as strong as you. Han Sung Han replied, equal to me. Do you think so? Then he continued, even the old man has no chance. Won't beat him. The old butler now woke up and said that kid is so great that the Man Chong family didn't have enough strength to keep him from the beginning. Who really is he? It was dark. And at this time, So Quan was leaning against the door as if waiting for someone to come. Suddenly a shadow of a person came. So Quan suddenly put his foot out to block the way. The other guy also let out a gurgling sound out of surprise. The next second the man fell limply to the ground. That guy angrily turned around and asked, What bastard is that? So Quan walked over and smiled and asked, Where are you going in such a hurry? Seeing the look on So Quan's face, the other guy screamed in fear, That bastard. So Quan continued, The housekeeper said, I should call you a disciple of the Hao world. When the other guy heard the So Quan say that, he was very surprised and asked again, What kind of world? What do you mean? But So Quan did not respond to that guy's words. He just gently swung his sword across. That guy was extremely scared and closed his eyes tightly. So Quan asked him back, Do you still want to deny it? Then that guy realized what was under his feet. As he fell, a crescent moon appeared on that guy's leg. So Quan saw that and asked, Looking at the tattoo on your ankle, it must be at least Fang's incense. Am I right? The other guy was scared and asked how do you know? So Quan knew this because he remembered the incident when he was still a disciple. Three years ago, when he was teaching the new bullies, he discovered the identity of that guy. But had to wait until today. Because this bastard was an important part of the plan. Then he discovered the identity of that guy. But had to wait until today. Because this bastard was an important part of the plan. That guy quickly asked, So what do you want to do? So Quan also continued gently, It's nothing much. I want to become a guest of Hao Gia. For the rich, there are roadside merchants, prostitutes and servants. Form an alliance of the weakest martial artists. For example, right now on a crowded street there is a girl wearing a red umbrella. She is choosing jewelry. At first glance, it looks very normal. But no one knows that she is a member of the elite. This is a group of information providers who specialize in interacting with the gang and gang of thieves. You. While the jewelry counter owner was giving a brooch to the red umbrella girl, he attached a piece of paper. After receiving the red umbrella, the girl calmly left as if nothing happened. They looked normal, but in fact they belong to the rich world. This is also the association with the largest scope of martial arts. It's just that the leaders rarely show themselves. Right now the girl wearing the red umbrella walked into a deserted alley. She passed by a subordinate with a moon tattoo on his leg. It seemed like everything was going smoothly. Now So Quan has met a disciple of the noble world, who is at least at the level of the village master. In the place where he once resided, that is the same guy who once bullied So Quan, when the girl wore a red umbrella and the name when they passed each other. He quietly received something. That guy looked at what was in his hand. That was the piece of paper from earlier. That guy quickly looked left and right to see if anyone was paying attention to him. Then that guy quickly joined the crowded crowd. Now So Quan has met that guy, really lucky. He bent down and asked, What do I have to do to become a customer of the rich world? That guy angrily replied, You want to become a customer of the rich world? Why isn't that up to me to decide? When So Quan heard that, he threatened. You must have thought about the prospect of being reported to your superiors, because I know your tattoo is from the world. After that, they will probably be interested in me, right? The guy asked in fear, Who are you really? We can't do business with untrustworthy people. So Quan bowed his head and told a secret about the mojo. Since when do you accept customers based on reliability? If necessary, don't you still work with the demon religion? When that guy heard that, he was startled. Be careful of your mouth, if you don't want to become an enemy of the world. So Quan was also silent. Then he said, Okay, I was wrong. The other guy stood up and said, You can't just be a customer of the rich world as you please. You have to pay a price to receive information from us. Your salary is not enough. But So Quan just calmly said that the silver head was the only way to pay. The other guy asked again, 
Do you have any ability to pay in another way? So Quan took a few steps closer to the other guy. That guy saw that and was extremely scared, probably afraid of being beaten by So Quan again. But So Quan just spoke, relaying this message. I have something to talk about regarding the youngest disciple of the leader of the world, this time at dawn. The waiter politely said, please wait a moment and the owner will come out soon. So Quan pondered, the message he sent was the most important secret of the world that he knew from his previous life. The mysterious leader is forced to act on his own. What I need most is news from the right king. He was extremely determined to think that if he wanted to successfully absorb another Qigong to replace the heavenly devil Qigong, he must get that information from the world. Suddenly the closed room door was pushed open. An old woman and a beautiful woman with big breasts walked in. The old woman smiled and said, very happy to meet young master So Quan. So Quan also responded, Please sit down, Lord of the Dawn Moon Palace. When both sides sat down, only the big-breasted beauty obediently stood to one side and poured tea. So Quan asked, So she is the manager of a branch of the world? The old lady also happily answered, Yes. But So Quan felt something was not quite right. Suddenly at this time, So Quan fed the old lady butter, turned to ask the big-breasted beauty, What is your name? She also gently replied, My name is Sio Kwa, but objectively I usually call on Kwa. The old lady saw this and asked, It seems like you like our Aunt Kwa, but So Quan didn't care much and just continued to ask the big-breasted beauty, Would you mind telling me your age? The other girl also gently said, I am 23 years old this year. So Quan praised the girl, She is really young. But she just said, If it was your age, you would be younger. Suddenly, at this moment, she heard him ask again. She was so young and was already the manager of a branch of the wealthy world. Very impressive. When the big-breasted beauty heard him say that, her attitude turned 180 degrees compared to before. She angrily asked, How do you know? She confessed quickly. You already know about our sex mark, so I think there's no use denying it. She continued to ask. I asked again, How do you know this? But So Quan just said, What if I don't want to say it? She spoke up. I will be the one to decide whether you can become a customer of the world or not. It seems she still thinks I don't know much about the world. When the old woman heard So Quan say that, she was also very surprised. Then he continued, the leader of the world is determined to avoid revealing his identity. But the manager of a branch of the association not only reveals his identity, and he even brought along a prostitute to discuss business matters, isn't that ridiculous? So Quan again exposed the truth of that big-breasted beauty. As the manager of a branch, she had to participate in negotiations, so she had to use this method to avoid revealing her identity. She also couldn't believe that the young man in front of her could understand everything so clearly. She bowed her head and said, I'm sorry I didn't know you knew so much about the sect. I'm really sorry. But So Quan still asked, So, do you still want to lie this time? The busted beauty smiled politely, then looked puzzled and asked again, What, why are you? But she was interrupted by So Quan, The person I agreed with this time was not you. But there is a person hiding on the ceiling. There is indeed a person hiding on the ceiling. He is wearing all black covering half of his face. Seeing that he had been discovered, he also landed, but he landed more forcefully, causing the old people and beautiful girls to panic and fall away. The old woman and the beautiful woman no longer cared about what was going on, they just headed off quickly. The guy in black said after landing on the ground, that's pretty good. As soon as he finished praising him, he quickly attacked him, not giving him or her time to enjoy the compliment at all. But So Quan still blocked this sudden attack. So Quan thought to himself, the great world is great but their martial arts ability is weaker than the average. However, the leader's skills were not inferior to other major sects and families. At this time the black shirt man also rushed to attack. The third knight sword consciousness, full moon. Even though he used his ultimate move, the man in black was still able to counterattack. So Quan quickly realized that if his skills were at this level, then this person must hold a very high position even in the ranks of the top. The guy in black also backed away to defend. He tensed and looked towards So Quan. So Quan smiled and thought, the fish that took the bait turned out to be bigger than he thought. At this time, dust was flying in the room. The black-clothed man's stealth technique is so powerful that even So Quan now has difficulty keeping up. Surely the elders of the world had sent him. Those people were easier to take the bait than I thought. So Quan spoke up and told him, I came here as a guest of the rich world, not to compare swords with you. The guy in black heard that and said, So put down your sword and explain yourself. So Quan asked again, About what? Whether we know who the leader is, or whether we hide our strength, or whether we know the secrets of the world. He replied, all three. But So Quan just stood still and calmly replied, I don't want to talk. If you want to negotiate, it must be based on the principle of fairness. The guy angrily said, if you don't tell, you will die here. After listening to him, So Quan just laughed. Do you think you have the ability to kill me? He shouted, careful with his mouth. 
Suddenly he rushed forward and attacked unexpectedly, but So Quan quickly caught it. So Quan also did not expect this guy to like to attack suddenly. When he saw that So Quan was able to block it, he also stepped back. His hand clutched the weapon tightly. Then the man in black continued to slash at So Quan. So Quan hurriedly fought back, but suddenly the man in black suddenly disappeared. Seconds later the guy appeared in front of him. He swung his arm and slashed at close range. Then he was startled to discover that So Quan had escaped his slash. He used the demon form. So Quan quickly jumped to another place. Even though he escaped, So Quan was still bleeding. He didn't underestimate the guy in black. If he was too slow, he wouldn't be able to hold his head. After standing far away from the man in black, So Quan said, I can't believe you would attack a guest. Is this the way of treating guests in the rich world? He also fiercely rebutted, If you don't provoke me first, I will not take action myself. I will surrender my life. After he finished speaking, he quickly rushed over. So Quan realized the other guy's intentions. He lowered his guard to quickly finish him off. The time is here. So Quan also quickly used his own powers, Night Moon, 23 consecutive swords, and Water Moon. From So Quan's body radiates a source of energy. The other guy saw that and was also extremely surprised. The sword was glowing. So Quan then slashed strongly at the man in black. The explosive power was so intense that the room door couldn't bear it anymore and burst open. The guy in black was also heavily affected. The man was seriously injured, blood flowing from his mouth. So Quan smiled and asked, What's wrong? Do you still want to continue? Suddenly the other guy asked, Why did you hold back on your ultimate attack? So Quan just smiled amiably. I said, I want to become a guest of the rich world. In his mind, So Quan also thought, I didn't intend to take his life. I just wanted to have the upper hand during negotiations. That's why I use that move even though it's a bit too much for my current ability. Finally, the man in black asked, What do you have to discuss with the world? So Quan answered him quickly, I will negotiate with the information I have. When he heard that, he was a bit shocked and asked again, Why are you awake? Are you planning to use information to trade with the world, the strongest intelligence organization in the Central Plains? Your joke has gone too far. So Quan said very calmly, I'm not joking. I know more. You think I know that the demonic cult will take action soon and even the way to save that child. You are dying from a strange disease. The black man asked in disbelief, How do you know? So Quan said calmly, are you awake enough to negotiate with me now? Do you really know how to save and cure? If you dare to lie, So Quan reassured that guy and said, Don't worry about it, just inform your leader that this disease is the work of shamanism. That's right. Before your disciple got sick, I guess he found a secret martial art, right? The man in black asked again, How did you know? Although the people of the world do not know, So Quan knows very clearly that it is a secret book, a secret technique created by heavenly demons. When he heard about heavenly devils, he was very surprised, heavenly devils. The strange disease that the young disciple of the famous leader is suffering from is soul possession. Soul possession is a condition in which the body is not completely merged with the soul due to the devil residing inside. That was due to the secret martial arts created by the heavenly devils to divide the law and order of the sex. The heavenly devils distributed a total of five secret books to the cult leaders of the sex under the pretext that those secret books were can cure haunted souls. He used it to divide the sections. Actually, only the angels and the disciples who wrote that secret book can cure haunted souls. So Quan thought about this and smiled. Fortunately, I am a disciple of the devil. If I can contribute by curing haunted spirits, it will become a stepping stone for me to become an elder. The man in black listened to So Quan and took something out of his shirt. He threw it towards So Quan, took this one. So Quan caught it and asked again, What is this? The man in black explained that it was the symbol of a guest of the rich world. So Quan asked, So can I make a request now? You can. So Quan stated his request. The request was to investigate the leader of the Hong Long Martial Arts Hall, Dugu Kuchin, who resides in Sichuan. The guy in black also asked again. That's all, So Quan said. That's all the information we need. I will come to you with the information you want later. At that time, you will have to clearly tell me what the treatment method is. The man in black finished speaking and disappeared. Now there was only So Quan left. He started thinking about his next plan then. We will go to Sichuan, where the king of power resides. On a bright moonlit night in Sichuan, there was an army riding horses, announcing that Sichuan province was right before our eyes. Everyone, please persevere until the end. We will rest after entering the inner city. Suddenly there was the sound of a horse ringing in fear. A strange-looking teenager with messy hair was standing in front of the army. One person asked, Who is that? The young man holding the sword smiled. Then the monstrous teenager carried his sword and charged straight towards the mounted army. One person in the army shouted, Damn, where are you? protecting the treasures and the leader. But before that person could finish his sentence, he saw blood splattering. But before he could finish his sentence, 
the other person had to go through something extremely scary. Both men and horses were attacked. The person shouted this bastard. That strange teenager killed everyone, and the sounds of people screaming for help kept echoing. After a period of killing, the surrounding scene was extremely dire. Bodies were lying everywhere. No one was left intact. The crowded army from before was now left with only one person left. The strange teenager, after paying everyone off, turned to look at the last person alive and smiled. The other person was frightened, quickly pulled himself up and ran away, running and screaming, Ah, save my life, save my life. The weird guy saw that and smiled with satisfaction. Then suddenly that guy changed his attitude. The strange boy calmly said, It's not easy to play the role of a crazy person. So Quan is on his way to Sichuan. Right now he is sitting on the carriage, reading the information that the world sent him. This much information but only collected in a short time. Indeed, it can only be a noble world. This acting king does not interact with anyone outside the family. Only the head of the Sichuan Tang clan and his direct descendants are in regular contact. In the letter, it was also written that even though he was considered a demon who could not bleed with tears, if it was to worship a master, he was an outstanding martial artist, giving a good impression thanks to his humble nature. He is famous for single-handedly eliminating one of the evil cults, the Hong Van sect, seven years ago. Therefore, it is known as the Divine Power. So Quan pondered heavenly fist by the time I left the hidden ghost cave and started to step on the path of martial arts, he was already the king of fist, I didn't know before. There is no more information other than that he settled in Sichuan about 10 years ago. Up to now, we are still in the process of investigating additional information by members operating in their respective area. New news will be sent as soon as it is discovered. So Quan finished reading the letter from beginning to end and then put the letter in his shirt. At this time he had many questions. Why is he now just a martial arts master? The ultimate martial artist who holds a position among the five kings of the ranks of masters of the main martial arts. The ten heavenly emperors. He is a great monument among those who guard the martial order, including myself. In his previous life, he cannot be underestimated. It seems that he has not yet reached the realm of the king of power. So Quan unconsciously bit his hand and continued to think. From the fact that even the world could not fully investigate his whereabouts. It could be seen that someone had deliberately erased all traces. And at this moment he was still stuck in the trap. Hidden in the cave so we don't know anything. But in the end, he still couldn't find enough information about that king of rights. So Quan had to give up thinking. I'm done. I have to investigate myself. If it's to get close to the king of rights and inherit the white thunder power then these things are nothing. While he was engrossed in thought, he suddenly heard two people talking. Those were two guys riding horses next to them. They asked each other, Have you heard people say that there are members of the demon sect appearing in Sichuan where we are going? So Quan heard them mention it, and was extremely surprised. Of course, members teach. The other two continued to discuss, In Sichuan, there are so many places. Why is it Sichuan? Is it possible that the demon sect already manages that area? The other person also replied, If so, then visit this trip has to be postponed. They are just crazy people fascinated by the power of paganism. But the problem is that that bastard is stronger than you can imagine. He can suddenly disappear and appear. So it's very difficult to capture. It's really scary. Why is it so difficult to live these days? A member of a demon sect is someone who practices evil techniques. Evil arts often have side effects because of their evil nature. Members of a demon sect must absorb the magic medicine provided by the sect and reach a new realm of reverse blood flow. Can overcome the influence of evil deeds. But because it is difficult to neutralize the evil nature, there are many cult members who cannot suppress their desires and become extremely aggressive, lustful, and destructive. Even for members of evil cults, if a regular person practices evil deeds without reaching the realm, most will go crazy like wild animals whose instincts overwhelm their reason. So Quan also pondered, if there were such people in Sichuan. Is this related to the case of the elder of the hidden ghost cave, Pa Xiao Gun, the demon king of evil, who received a mission in Sichuan and had to return due to serious injuries? Two members of the demon sect were active at the same time in the same area, so it's a coincidence. While thinking, So Quan suddenly sighed and said, never mind, this matter has nothing to do with me anyway. I will not encounter someone who specializes in acting silently like assassinating the demon king. If the crazy person in Tu Shuyan is a member of a demonic cult, just beat them once and then arrest them. So Quan finally reached the royal dragon dojo. This is where the legendary Fist King lives. So Quan raised his head and said they say this is the third most famous dojo in Sichuan. So Quan saw the martial arts hall with his own eyes and exclaimed in admiration, it's so big. So Quan walked towards the door and asked the person guarding the door if he could ask me something. What do I have to do to get in here? The guy raised his eyebrows and asked again, are you alone? So Quan also realized that this guy was ignoring him. 
He looked down on him when he first met him, but he still replied, I came alone. That guy heard that and said, if you want to join the Hong Long Martial Arts School, you must have a clear identity and have to pay a fee every month. But So Quan already has all the conditions, so he also said, I have money. There is also a way. Prove your identity too. The other guy heard that and added, we are not in the process of recruiting disciples, so you have to pay an additional examination fee, and the warden will personally be in charge of admission, so this will very difficult. Finally the guy said, wouldn't it be better to wait until next year? But So Quan just gently replied, it's okay. He just sighed. Take him to the reception room. The other guy tells So Quan, follow me. So Quan thought as he followed the other guy, instead of wasting time thinking about this and that, it's best to just act first and think later. In the reception room, only So Quan sat and waited. If I pass, I will definitely not hesitate and express my wishes to do Gu Chin right away, then it will not be too late to decide what to do next. So Quan kept thinking, but why didn't anyone come? Were you the one who wanted to join? So Quan heard a man's voice suddenly ringing out. He cautiously turned around behind him. The other person laughed, walking and talking, shouting why he was so surprised. So Quan thought in surprise, I couldn't even recognize his presence. Then he clasped his hands respectfully and said, This is Don So Quan. The other man also replied, Nice to meet you. Then he graciously introduced himself again. I am Dugu Kuchin. So Quan looked at the man in front of him. He looked quite friendly with a smile. So this was one of the ten heavenly emperors, someone who could stand on par with the eight great masters of the demon sect, the ultimate martial artist holding a position, wisdom among the five kings, future acting king, Dugu Kuchin. I had come a long way to meet him, but I didn't think to come so suddenly. We both sat down opposite each other. Dugu Kuchin gave a friendly smile and said, Since the current manager is absent, I have come to take charge of the test on his behalf as a martial arts master. At this time, So Quan was extremely nervous and worried, but he still made up his mind, because anyway, I went to meet him, this will be better, I will speak frankly. Thinking so, So Quan also clasped his hands and politely said to the man in front of him, Can you accept me as your disciple? The other man smiled and said, The test hasn't started yet, if you pass you will become my disciple. So don't worry. But So Quan said more clearly, I don't want to be taught by you. Coax like a martial arts master of a dojo. Dugu Kuchin was a little surprised and asked more clearly, What do you mean? So Quan just calmly replied, I want to learn the martial arts of the Heavenly Thunder Pavilion. After hearing this, Dugu Kuchin was extremely surprised. But then he became extremely angry at So Quan's words. A lot of electricity radiated from his body. His face was now very scary in contrast to his friendly appearance just now. The energy source from Dugu Kuchin shot to where So Quan was sitting, making So Quan unable to open his eyes. This is, the violent weapon in its complete form can attack the opponent with just willpower. At this time, the acting king Dugu Kuchin slowly spoke, daring to mention the heavenly thunder temple, if you want to live. It's best not to lie. His whole body is surrounded by countless lightning bolts. This terrible energy makes people extremely scared. Countless rays of thunder radiated from Dugu Kuchin's body. He frowned tightly, showing that he was very angry at what So Quan had just said. At this moment, fresh blood flowed from the corner of So Quan's mouth. I thought that Gwen Vong's ability in his twilight years was not as great as in his heyday. But as expected, this is still the level of one of the ten heavenly emperors. Just looking at him is enough to take my breath away. Right King Wan when angry is truly extremely scary. Yet So Quan still maintained his determination. He clenched his fists and thought. But with just this much he was afraid to give up and the beginning of his dream of being at the top of the martial arts world also flew away with the wind. So Quan tried to suppress the pain and opened his mouth to ask, I heard from the world that you are the descendant of the Tian Thunder Academy where there is a tradition of only one disciple inheriting the sect. When Gwyn Van heard So Quan dared to say that again, he became even angrier. The energy from his body exploded even more strongly. Even though he was only sitting in one place, the power emitted was enough to make So Quan afraid and wary. The teacup on the table couldn't bear it anymore and broke in half. Even the wall far away outside suddenly cracked. So Quan still tried to grit his teeth and endure, saying, Don't you want to be the head of the hospital? He replied, I don't need it. So Quan tried to suggest, You don't want the legacy of the Thunder Academy to end, right? But Gwyn Vong answered very decisively, No, that legacy must end. After hearing this, So Quan did not believe it and asked again, Why did it have to end? He suddenly stood up put the arrow on his chest and said, I really want to practice the martial arts of the Heavenly Thunder Academy. But Gwyn Vong only said, then I have nothing to teach you. Even though you are young, being able to withstand my internal skills is very impressive. But martial arts belonging to the Heavenly Thunder Academy are not something that can be practiced with just talent. The conversation ends here. 
although I really want to make you pay for prying into my private life. I don't want to make a big deal out of it, so this time I'll pretend I don't know anything. If you still value your life, it's best not to say a word about me to anyone or anywhere. So Quan wouldn't be willing to hear that. He still tried to explain to the right king who was about to turn away and leave. I swear I won't say a word if you take the time to listen to me. But the king didn't care at all, he just said, go home, I will report to the chancellor that you gave up the test and left. So Quan thought angrily, it seems there is still a secret about the martial arts of the Tian Thunder Academy that I never knew. That seems to be the reason he did not accept my admission. He opened the window and looked at Gwyn Vong's back. I also knew that I couldn't try it just once and succeed immediately. But after coming here, I can't retreat. If I retreat now, it will be even more dangerous. To do Gu Kuchin, I just have a threat that can expose information about the Heavenly Thunder Academy. But in the worst case scenario, he might take my life, so I must definitely join the Yellow Dragon Martial Arts Club and become his disciple. Okay, you have to try to know. Don So Quan wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, showing a determined smile. At this time, Gwyn Vong also walked and thought, Don So Quan, even though I warned him, there is no such thing as an eternal secret in this world. Gwyn Vong was still worried about So Quan, so as soon as he thought about it, he rushed towards the dojo. It's best to check again to be sure, hoping I won't be too late. When Gwyn Vong went to the dojo, he saw the headmaster walking with another person. The headmaster saw Dugu Kuchin coming and smiled and said, Oh isn't this Dugu master, where were you going in such a hurry just now? Gwyn Vong went to ask. The chancellor was standing next to him. The chancellor immediately replied, Oh I met this kid on the way here. The headmaster even laughed haha and introduced, This kid has a polite and courteous personality. He is young and has such a strong body, he seems to have a natural talent for practicing martial arts. The headmaster of Hong Long Vu Quan. In my opinion, if our martial arts school loses such potential to other martial arts schools, it would be very embarrassing. So I decided to let him enter under a special name, personally recruited by me. Not to mention he also told me this jar of wine. And the taste is excellent, do you want to drink it? The king was not very happy and asked again, what do you mean, chancellor? But the chancellor now only remembers that jar of good wine and doesn't hear what King Gwyn said. He even turns around and says to So Quan, come on, come on. This is the best master in my martial arts hall. Heavenly eyes do Gu Kuchin. From today on, he will be in charge of teaching you, so obediently respect and listen to his words, remember. So Quan stepped forward, clasped his hands and said, I am Don So Quan, from now on I hope you will teach me. Then he quietly smiled triumphantly at Gwyn Vong, master. Gwyn Vong silently asked in his heart, why this damn brat? A few days later at the martial arts class, Gwyn Vong told everyone that the class was closed and everyone should leave. Only Don So Quan was the one who should stay. Only So Quan had to practice overtime. Gwyn Vong came over and said, Since you started the class late, you should take the trouble to take extra remedial classes. He did so because he wanted So Quan to know that it was difficult to give up. He said again, If you disappear quietly now, I won't ask you anything more. But even though So Quan was very tired and sweating profusely, he still smiled and said, If that had really happened, I would not have come to worship your master. Upon hearing this, the king said, then every day you will have to endure the pain of every broken bone and every torn muscle. Are you sure you won't regret your decision? He just replied, I'm also very persistent, master. Having said all that, he was still stubborn. So Gwyn Vaughn was very angry. Let's see how much longer he could endure. It's not until the night that the king can go home. Even if he's the king, he has to work overtime. He whispered as he walked away, This stubborn brat will last until the dojo closes. It even makes me come home late. However, no matter what you brat does, don't expect to be able to last any longer. After speaking, he raised his head and saw the person he had just mentioned present in his house. So Quan was sitting with Dugu Chu Sung, Dugu Chu Chin's son. When both of them saw Chu Chin coming back, they greeted him. You have returned, master. Hello, father. The king was extremely surprised and asked, Why? Your little guy is here again. At this time, Dugu Kuchin's wife, Seo Mun Hai, said, General, while I was on my way back from going to the market, the Soku himself appeared to help me, saying that he was a disciple of the Hong Long Martial Arts Club, so I invited him to my house to have a meal together. Gwen Vong heard his wife call him so intimately, and did not believe it, so Quan repeated it. Seo Mun Hai gently explained, so Quan said it was okay to just call it by its name, the boy looked like a decent person. So Quan also smiled at his teacher and said, the earth is too round, teacher. Gwyn Vong was not happy when he saw So Quan becoming close to his family. During the entire meal, the two of them constantly communicated internally with each other. What are your intentions, young man? How do you know where my house is? 
Master, I simply happened to come across your wife's sprain, so I came to help. Stop lying, you've been gathering information about my family through social networks, right? Or perhaps, it was you who sprained my wife. Promise me, Master, my wife's sprain is not because of me. Even if the information I have is true, I'm not that kind of despicable person. Then see you at the dojo tomorrow, of course, see you master at the dojo. At this moment, Lady Seal Munhai asked, was the dinner delicious? So Kwan happily replied, yes, it was delicious. Tomorrow morning, Lady Seal Minhai said to So Kwan, I am grateful to you for helping me go to the market every day, but you always look so happy. Seeing the lady hesitate, So Kwan also said, it's okay, you do it willingly. So Kwan took Gu Sung outside. As he walked, he thought, to be able to exploit someone, you must first hold the hands of the people around them. Especially since Dugu Kuchin loves his family extremely much. Maybe we should start exploiting his family members first. That's why So Kwan now takes on the task of taking Gu Sung out. In the middle of a crowded street, sales ads rang out everywhere. Gu Sung suddenly pulled So Kwan's shirt and said, Hey brother. Then the boy pointed to a stall selling kale candy and said, That's kumquat candy. So Kwan also bowed his head and smiled happily in response. After finishing work, I will buy candy for you later. Then Sung said, But brother, why do you talk so politely to me? So Kwan smiled and replied, It's just a habit. As a habit, you never communicate impolitely. Only So Kwan alone knows clearly that this polite way of communication of yours is a form of survival skill to survive in the hidden ghost cave. Because you have lived in it since childhood, you gradually formed the habit of accustomed to polite communication with anyone. The boy asked again, but you can still continue to call me like this, right? So Kwan calmly replied, of course. The little boy laughed happily when he heard that. Then he said again, this brother quickly arranges. After finishing work, let's go eat candy. So Kwan even reminded him, be careful not to fall. Hurry, hurry. At this moment, So Kwan suddenly felt something unusual. He immediately recognized it. Evil spirit. So Kwan turned his head to look in that unusual direction. On the roof is a strange teenager. Is that guy looking at me? So Kwan also saw that guy looking at him. The teenager on the roof saw that he had been discovered and smiled. Right now that guy is still sitting on the roof. He gave an evil smile looking at So Kwan. So Kwan also narrowed his eyes and looked back at that guy. Was he that crazy? So Kwan remembered the words that the two men on horseback had said. He was just an electrician steeped in the power of a demonic religion. But for someone who had lived 20 years in a demonic religion, he was a monster. This anomaly cannot fool So Kwan. This guy is not just any crazy person. He is an elite member of the demon sect. If it were during this time period, he would have been a member of the demon spirit squad managed by the demon king. But when So Kwan saw that guy following him, he didn't really understand why it was me. He saw So Kwan suddenly become serious and asked, Brother, what's wrong? But So Kwan silently looked at him and thought, I don't know. I really want to get involved with a member of the demon cult. But if I want to make sure Duga Sung is not in danger. While thinking, So Kwan heard, there is a crazy person over there. Suddenly there was a person wearing a blue shirt pointing to the roof. That was the position where the strange teenager was sitting. Then that person shouted loudly. So Kwan noticed the pattern on that person's sleeve. That pattern is a Taoist monk from clear to star. It would be extremely unpleasant for that name to be discovered. Then quickly jumped over the roof and escaped. The people in blue shirts also shouted and chased after seeing that. Those people also shouted loudly that they must catch that guy at all costs. So Kwan watched them chase and thought, It seems like the Tan Tan sex monks came to capture that crazy murderer. But why is a member of the ghost spirit squad behaving so strangely? Furthermore, he attracted too much attention. Some stood next to him and asked, What's wrong? So Kwan tilted his head and replied, Ah, it's nothing. Let's quickly bring the things home because the streets are very chaotic right now. So Kwan said then glanced in the direction of the blue shirt men who had just run after him. I wanted to catch that guy to clarify everything, but suddenly he stopped. There was no need to risk anything, so Kwan decided to take the gun away. At this time, the strange teenager had returned to a cave, he was kneeling in front of the man, he asked him, are you sure? The strange teenager replied, sure, I saw it through clairvoyance. This clairvoyance is a martial arts technique used to identify the energy and structure of opponents with high balance but poor effectiveness. That man is the elder demon king of the infinite demon city. He has a long, sharp black anchor. He holds a girl in his left hand. He smiles and says, you finally found it, great. I can finally leave this ugly Sichuan place and return to the sect. He turned to the man on the left, used the finger with long black nails to lift his face and asked, why are you wearing that funeral face on such a happy day? The other person was touched by the old man's long, black and sharp claws out of extreme fear, trembling and saying, Please forgive me. 
he glanced at the trembling man. The other person was even more scared. Then he gently said yes. His words were gentle, but his fingernail stabbed straight into the man's chin, straight up, causing blood to splatter. The poor man collapsed. Then he stuck out his long tongue and licked the face of the girl next to him. He said, so where is the heavenly sound present? It's been a month, but they still haven't opened up to me. What happened at the Heavenly Thunder Pavilion that could make them become so stubborn? So Quan's plan of flowing water and wearing away stones still doesn't work. Convinced Gwyn Vong. He was bored wandering the streets. Suddenly So Quan saw someone he knew. That person was Seo Mun Hai, wife of Gwyn Vong, mother of Sun. So Quan called out, Mrs. The lady ran over with a panicked look on her face. When the lady saw So Quan, she also burst into tears and quickly said, So Quan, So Quan saw that and asked again. Did something happen? The lady cried and said, Sung, Sung is missing. After hearing this, So Quan didn't quite understand and asked again, Why did she go missing? Please tell me more specifically. Lady Seo Min Hai cried as she told everything. When I returned home after going to the market, I couldn't see the blood anymore, and the whole house was overturned. I checked every corner where you could hide, but still, I couldn't find it. After listening, So Quan also wondered, Had the house been turned upside down? Had the boy been kidnapped? Someone had kidnapped a child by breaking into the martial arts master's residence at a famous martial arts studio like Hong Long Martial Arts. Why is the restaurant? Who gets it? And what is the purpose? The lady cried and said, Our son's body is very weak. The boy staying out for a long time will be very dangerous. So Quan heard this and asked again. The lady said Sung had a special body. What exactly was that? The lady replied, The doctor called it. Tian Yin's body is a rare body structure that possesses powerful in energy. When So Quan heard this, he understood everything. He told Seo Min Hai, his wife, to immediately go to Hong Long Martial Arts Hall and send this message to his wife, Dugu. It was the devils who kidnapped him. Having finished speaking, So Quan quickly went to find the whereabouts of Sung. So Quan thought back on everything and realized, damn. At that time, the demon cult member noticed Dugu's son, not me. That's why he pretended to be crazy and went around Sichuan looking for the body of TNAM, because that devil was a member of the demon spirit team. The demon king of assassins was definitely behind this. So Quan remembered what happened in his previous life. He certainly intended to offer Dugu Sun, the owner of the heavenly body, to return to the demonic religion, to his brother from his previous life, his first disciple. Angel, the second senior brother in his previous life was also the person who killed So Quan, the demon king of heaven the evil demon king. The martial arts learned by Kui Su evil include fire consciousness and maximum yang energy. In order to neutralize the deadly evil nature of yang energy, it is necessary to absorb the magic medicine containing maximum negative energy, or absorb the vitality of the body of Tian Yin. At the same time, So Quan also understood that the reason Du Gu Kuchin left his secluded life and returned to martial arts was to avenge his son's death. Finally, I know the truth. The sect leader chased him away because he caused a lot of trouble for the sect. I wondered how he could disobey orders and return. Who knows if he would have come to an agreement with the evil master. In the end, the evil demon king, that stupid old man personally created the monster that people call Gwyn Vong. So Quan stood on all the tall treetops to observe the location of the king. The place where I was most active in my previous life was Sichuan. I knew every place he used as a hiding place. However, it's impossible to know exactly where he is so we have to search place by place. Hopefully it's not too late, so Quan will speed up his search for the kid even more. Right now the boy is on a car, he is with the Demon King. A voice rang out, are you okay? That was the gray-faced servant of the Demon King. That guy said, acupressure on a child is very dangerous. If anything goes wrong, it can lead to bleeding and consequently cause the child to become disabled. But the old Demon King doesn't care much, it doesn't matter, the boy just needs to live until we return to the sect. Then he continued forget about it, have you heard back from that evil bastard? The gray-faced servant replied, no, do you want me to send another letter? He refused, no, the body of the heavenly sound is in my hands. He cannot refuse that, suddenly someone shouted, interrupting the old man's words, stopping the car. He was visibly upset and angry. The monstrous teenager and the others who were driving the carriage to assassinate the demon king asked, who is it? The person blocking the way is the man in the blue shirt who pointed out the location of the strange teenager hiding. Surely this person's mission is to scream in every situation. This time he also shouted, I know you guys are involved. To the rumored man man who dares to kill innocent people, I must punish you in the name of honesty. The gray-faced servant turned to speak to the demon king, a Taoist monk from Tan Tan. He coldly snorted and said, Only a small Taoist who dared to block my way. Kill him. When his subordinates heard that, they didn't hesitate any longer. They quickly showed off their power. 
The man in the green shirt felt their power and said, Evil, evil work. You bastards are followers of the demon religion. As soon as they finished speaking, they disappeared from the carriage. Then suddenly they appeared all at once to attack the man in blue. Even though the blue shirt man was able to block their surprise attack, the situation was not very positive. Seeing that the other person looked scared, they laughed and said, Now you realize it. So one by one, the guys rushed forward, constantly slashing at the man in blue dying coughing. Every time they cut down, they cursed, you little rat. But the blue shirt man dodged those attacks. They angrily scolded him, you bastard. Hey Taoist man, it seems like you're finally afraid of death. Do you think you'll be able to live if you just step back? Look, you talk so loudly about the pure Taoist, but now you're acting like a donkey, the one wearing a robe. Green didn't attack them at all, but just tried to dodge them, as if he was trying to buy time. The gray-faced servant of the demon king has been waiting for so long that he has lost all patience. He mumbled. It's been too long. Then he quickly left the carriage. That guy decided to go directly to battle to end this war. This guy is very dangerous. We have to attack quickly. While the gray-faced guy was bursting with energy, he suddenly felt something and turned his head to look towards the carriage. He saw a figure jumping out of the carriage. That person also brought with him a boy with a heavenly sound body. The gray-faced guy asked, Who are you? At this time, so Quan had rescued the boy son outside, he turned back and said to the gray-faced guy, I'm saying this because I'm really worried about you. The corner of So Quan's mouth was now bleeding. He continued, If you want to live, go now. Back before So Quan saved Dugu Sung, at that time the green-clothed Taoist was trying to buy time, and the gray-faced guy was sitting in front of the carriage. So Quan was hiding in the distance watching the situation. He is wondering, how to do this? The members of the demon spirit squad over there are each and every one of them top experts. If we join forces with Taoists, we can defeat them. The problem is that there is also a gray-faced guy sitting guard in front of the car. So Quan considered, the horseman was the captain of the ghost spirit squad and the person sitting in the carriage was the ghost king. The demon king of assassin is a real expert. With my current strength, it is impossible to defeat him. It's very difficult to come back to life, if dying here would be meaningless. So Quan remembered the hesitant face of the little boy when he heard him ask, Do you still want to continue calling me brother? This made So Quan extremely blame himself. If I hadn't taken him out, this would have happened. Not occur. No, just think simple. If I save Dugu Sung, will the king be satisfied? So Quan did not hesitate any longer and rushed towards the demon king's carriage. He pressed his back against the side of the car and thought, Just save Dugu Sung and then run away. Can't miss this opportunity. So first we have to attack and kill the demon king. So Quan intends to draw his sword. Suddenly he noticed something inside the carriage. At the position where So Quan was standing, suddenly there was a strong force that caused the car to break apart. So Quan also quickly stepped back. Did he realize it? His large, hideous hand reached out towards So Quan. So Quan also recognized that this was the demon king. He also raised his hand to counterattack. Azura Tian Tam took the soul palm. But the power of the demon king's hand is very strong. He rushed forward, causing So Quan to step back. The old demon king was standing in front of So Quan, in his hand was the unconscious boy son. Huh, it's so dangerous. So Quan looked at the person being hugged by the evil demon king, Dugu Sun, still safe. So Quan thought, yes, if you want to cooperate. As soon as the plan came up, he quickly took action. He suddenly rushed towards Dugu Sun. There is no other way but to protect Dugu Sun. The demon king did not expect anyone to dare to rush straight at him like that. He quickly leaned forward to avoid it. But at this time he also neglected Dugu Sung, the boy fell out of his hand. So Quan smiled, this is the only way. He quickly seized this opportunity, carrying Dugu Sung and running in the other direction. When he jumped out holding the boy, he was also seen by the gray-faced guy. The gray-faced guy asked, who is that? So Quan said, I'm really worried about you, that's why I said it. If you want to live, run away, then he coughs up a mouthful of blood. Gray-faced heard that and said, that's too boastful. So Quan smiled and said, I tell you the way to live but you insist on dying. What a pity, what a pity. The voice of the evil demon king rang out, Dear Ho, don't kill that arrogant boy, capture him alive for me. Letting him die would be so comfortable for him. I would personally make him feel the pain of life as opposed to death. The gray-faced guy replied, obeying the order. After saying that, that guy rushed towards So Quan. The first slash So Quan dodged. That gray-faced guy kept rushing towards So Quan making it difficult for So Quan to hold his balance with one hand holding the sword and the other holding Dugu Sung. But So Quan reacted quickly. He leaned back, using the tip of his sword to keep his balance. But the gray-faced guy continued to attack. This time So Quan hugged Dugu Sung. Both of them flew away. The gray-faced guy saw that and assessed him, saying his strength was that much. But that name suddenly appeared. So Quan rushed at them from afar, his twelfth move, S.A. Moon. 
Seeing that, they quickly moved away. So Quan took this opportunity to jump in front of the blue shirt Taoist. He gave Dugu Sung to the Taoist. Taoist, take the child away from this place. I will hold them here. The Taoist asked confused. What are you saying? Perhaps the Taoist also knows that leaving So Quan alone will bring more harm than good. But So Quan still calmly said, Anyway, even if we join forces, we cannot reverse the situation. Someone must save this child's life and request reinforcements. The Taoist saw that the enemy army was large and strong and understood. I understand. I will definitely bring my sex senior brothers and brothers. Please bear with it for a moment. After the Taoist finished speaking, he also took the little boy and left, leaving only So Quan alone in the middle of the enemy. The old man who killed the demon king wouldn't lose his prey so easily. He shouted, You all chase that Taoist, leave this guy to me. Obeyed the order. The other three also obeyed and disappeared. So Quan slowly said, First you have let go of the burden. Now it's my turn and you will regret it. The demon king asked again, Regretful? Because you were too blind to the heavenly body and kidnapped the tiger cub. He didn't understand anything. So he looked down on So Quan even more. He was so scared that he kept talking nonsense. So Quan smiled and thought, it was the same in his previous life or this life, he put his head into the tiger's mouth without even realizing it. When he saw So Quan laughing at him, he got mad and laughed. He reached out his hand towards So Quan, you seemed fearless. He punched hard, but So Quan jumped up and escaped. But this old man reacted extremely quickly. He grabbed So Quan's leg, then he threw So Quan away. So Quan quickly landed on the ground, but he just raised his head. I saw the old man assassinating the demon king punch one more time but So Quan still avoided it. His eyes were dark. Then he suddenly held out his hand. He grabbed So Quan's face tightly, because it was so sudden that So Quan couldn't avoid it. He said, You long tongue, how long are you planning to hide? You long tongue is the type of person who only has a mouth, talks a lot but can't do anything. So Quan didn't panic, he just calmed down. Confronting the demon king with my current strength is like committing suicide. So Quan remembered the story of his previous life. But in his previous life he had the experience of fighting Kwa Du Seon's son who was also a disciple of the Demon King. Compared to Kwa Du Seon, he was more powerful, but in essence the quality is the same. He used his hand to pry off the Demon King's hand. I already know everything about the martial arts you used. I understand you well but you don't know anything about me. Then he jumped away. Winning is difficult but has enough strength to buy time. Then So Quan attacks again towards the Demon King. So Quan gritted his teeth and thought but I suffered internal injuries while saving Dugu Sung so I don't know how long I can last. So Quan unleashed his third move, Full Moon. Anyway, I only used Man no yet as a spoiled move, to outweed him, but actually I used the second move. At the end of the moon, the slash passed through the body of the Demon King. So Quan turned his head to look, he nervously thought about whether he would hit it or not, but the old man was unharmed. He turned around and said, I don't understand. You have just reached the ultimate level. So Quan saw that there were only small scratches on his face. Other than that there was nothing else. The demon king also angrily said, I intended to let you live but you are trying to buy time so I can't continue doing that. Then he stomped his foot. A powerful source of energy shot out. He screamed and died. Before So Quan could calm down, he approached him and even threw a punch. So Quan suddenly thought, so fast. So Quan was thrown a meter away. So Quan spat out a few mouthfuls of blood. His whole body was now covered in blood and dust. He breathed and thought, if, if I had stopped a little slower, my internal organs would have been crushed. The old man saw that So Quan was still breathing and praised that he had endured my full force and was still alive. It seemed like he wasn't the only one with a long tongue. So Quan just smiled and said, a long tongue means a long life, of course, but it's still okay if you don't chase him directly. Suddenly he heard So Quan say, because I had bought quite a bit of time, he was dumbfounded and didn't understand anything. Then he laughed and said, Why, do you think I will be afraid? If that Taoist could escape and tell the Tan Tan sex friends about what happened here, nothing would happen. He said that because he thought So Quan deliberately bought time to wait for rescue. He smiled sinisterly and gloated as that guy ran away, already surrounded by my subordinates. This time in the direction where the green shirt Taoist ran away with Dugu Sung, was captured by a group of subordinates of the Demon King. The Taoist's head was covered in sweat. The old demon king also told So Quan, My people were already waiting on the path he ran. So Quan thought while breathing heavily, I knew that the devil team had 24 members, but I didn't expect them to start first like that. Looking at him smiling sinisterly, So Quan understood that that was why he was so calm. We don't have time to worry about others anymore. Now I have to face the demon king alone because of orders, so he hasn't made a move yet. So Quan looked at the gray-faced man standing not far away waiting for the demon king's order to immediately take action. The leader of the evil team can join him at any time. Was getting involved in this a mistake? 
I know there will be danger but now I regret it a bit. The old demon king saw So Quan struggling to stand up and laughed and said, Oh ho, do you still have the strength to stand up? There's no point in regretting. So Quan stood up straight and pulled out his sword. He made up his mind to say, If I avoided this matter just because I was afraid of death, I wouldn't have stepped into martial arts in the first place. Danger can also lead to opportunity. So Quan is ready to fight again. He is truly extremely strong. The demon king smiled and praised, That's right, that's right. I just need to endure a little longer. So Quan reassured himself. When he came here, So Quan rushed towards the demon king. The battle caused birds to fly everywhere throughout the area. At this time, the green shirt Taoist was holding Du Gu's son and hiding behind a tree. The Taoist was panting and thinking that there were too many of them. Even if he ran away, he would have a hard time. Suddenly the Taoist realized someone was approaching him. As soon as he lowered his head, the strange teenager slashed a path into the tree trunk where he was hiding. The Taoist stepped back. He gritted his teeth and looked towards the demon sect. The strange teenager felt that the Taoist had reached a dead end and said, Give up. His accomplices also laughed happily. They said, It seemed like he intended to delay the time until the other monks arrived. How long do you think we will play with you? The Taoist looked towards the demon religion. He thought, No way. I have to do something. So the Taoist opened his mouth and said to them, I suggest you this. The devils heard the Taoist's suggestion and wondered. The Taoist continued, How about I change places so this child doesn't get involved? You also have to bring him back healthy, right? The strange teenager remained silent, probably considering this proposal. Seeing that guy silent, the Taoist asked a little nervously, You, what do you think? The strange teenager took a step forward and said, You don't understand what I mean. Then they all rushed up, I said I don't want to play with you anymore. Seeing this, the Taoist panicked and thought, Will things end like this? The Taoist thought painfully, I chased them to catch the monster but failed, I can't even save this child. I have to save him and call for help. Amitba Buddha, because of me this child will die, I beg you, but I haven't finished my sentence yet. While the Taoist closed his eyes tightly, thinking that both he and the child would die at the hands of the magician, he only heard chaotic sounds. He waited forever and saw that he was still alive, so he opened his eyes to observe. The Taoist saw a man come and attack that group of aggressive magicians. He wondered who is that. Just one move from the other person made all the demon cultists fall to their knees. Then that person said, if I'm late everything won't be done. The demon cults were lying on the ground. They looked at that man in panic. I don't know why your demon cult is raging in Sichuan and not Xinjiang but. They trembled when they heard what that man said, not a single one. We'll leave this place alive. His power billows. Lightning fills the sky. The green shirt Taoist hugged Dugu Sung and asked, Sir, you are. But the other man said, Please wait a moment. I will end this matter soon. Then, to the Taoist's surprise, the man quickly disappeared. He rushed forward to attack the demon sex men. They widened their eyes in surprise, what is this? But before he could finish speaking, he was punched. The man who just appeared was extremely strong. Just one move was enough to defeat a person. The Taoist was extremely surprised and thought, this amazing speed and strength. We can't even see his movements. The remaining guys could not escape. They were knocked out one by one. Some were punched in the stomach until they bled. This is not a war, because it is not evenly matched. Even if all the demon cultists rush forward at the same time, they would all win. Being defeated by that man, the scene of killing was extremely tragic. To be more precise, this is not a war, this is a hunt. No matter what tricks they play, nor can I survive before you. It's finally over. The demon cultists were still very arrogant. But now they are lying on the ground, not knowing whether they will live or die. More than 20 demons at the same time. Yet you can't fight this man. I didn't expect there to be a master like this in Sichuan. Now the Taoist came to ask, what is your identity? At this time, the man said, I am the father of that child. The Taoist asked again, may I know your noble name? But he only said later, take my son to a safe place first. I will visit the sect and repay the favor later. The Taoist asked again, why don't you bring it back? But that man still had work to do with that old demon king. So he said, I want to do that too, but I have to go save my disciples first. At this time, in the battle with the demon king, So Quan has gradually exhausted his strength. In the battle with the demon king, So Quan was still trying to attack, he slashed at him. At the same time, So Quan also dodged the attacks of the demon king, So Quan attacks relentlessly. But the demon king was able to avoid it, and suddenly he flew up, then threw a punch at So Quan. So Quan also unleashed his move, Night Moon Sword, the second move. He hit hard towards the old man. When he saw the move that So Quan used, he only felt that it was child's play. He smiled and said, Do you think this thing will work on me? But suddenly he heard So Quan say, Night Moon Sword, the first form. Then So Quan rushed towards him. He used a new move called Moon Net. This is So Quan's plan. 
that illusion is just a trick to distract the opponent's attention, with it I can block his attack for a while, but life is not like a dream. I thought it would be difficult for him to be attacked suddenly, but I didn't expect him to be able to block it like normal, so Quan said in surprise he could still block it, so Quan's sword also shattered when it came into contact with the hands of the demon king, so Quan saw that the situation was not good and retreated, he landed and thought, I thought the move I used would be a move that would make it difficult for him, but it wasn't. The old man suddenly appeared next to So Quan, he said darkly, so all this time you were bragging with just a few nonsense moves? Then, without hesitation, he punched hard at the position where So Quan was standing. Luckily, So Quan reacted quickly, otherwise he would have been beaten to pieces. But just as So Quan reacted quickly, so did the evil demon king. He watched So Quan step back. Immediately he made another move, this time So Quan was hit. A mouthful of blood came out of his mouth, So Quan flew away. Smoke and dust flew blindly. So Quan lay motionless on the spot. His face was covered in blood. The old man felt very happy when he saw his enemy being beaten to pieces. So Quan lowered his head and thought, Damn old man, even with that heavy body, his movements are still too fast. Demon King AM sat as a martial arts master who has reached the perfect state in terms of strength, physical endurance, and combat experience. I need to avoid competing with him. The old man who killed the demon king saw that So Quan had been beaten so much and was still barely alive. So he praised you, you are quite stubborn. Then he said darkly, but today your number has come. Then he quickly struck. The old man threw a very strong punch, but looking at So Quan, although he was a bit weak, he was very flexible when he needed to be flexible, he leaned to the side to dodge. The old man suddenly asked, can you still dodge with that physical condition? Then he furiously attacked So Quan, beating him and cursing at him the brat. He attacked continuously, all punches enough to send others to the western paradise, but all of them were dodged by So Quan. The old man angrily stomped his foot and shouted, How long are you going to dodge, you smelly rat? But So Quan still dodged that stomp, he cursed again, Stop running away, come back and face me like before. So Quan looked at him so angry that he was kicking and punching wildly, knowing that his pride was being hurt. When he was having a hard time taking down a child while his subordinates were looking on, my sword wasn't there so I could only use the Azura Tian Tam Thuong's move. But these moves consume a lot of internal energy, so I can't really utilize its full power while I'm running out of internal energy. I'm in a situation where I can't use any deadly techniques, so instead of defending, I needed to avoid his killer moves. As soon as I finished thinking about it, the evil demon king released a new move. So Quan followed the plan he had in mind, only that could prolong the time. No matter how terrifying his speed and killer moves are, the old man missed his punch again. If he can't hit me then he's just wasting his energy. I won't let him hit me even once. But the gray-faced guy saw through So Quan's plan, that guy recognized this kid. Even though it looked like it was dazed and tired, it was still able to dodge all the attacks perfectly. A child who seems to be under 20 years old can fight with the elder of the mysterious ghost valley for such a long time, on the other hand the elder is. Completely lost my composure. As the leader of the demon squad, it is my duty to stop the rampage of the demon king. Although I will get into trouble for disobeying orders, I cannot stand by and watch any longer. Suddenly So Quan realized that the gray-faced guy had disappeared. Then that guy suddenly appeared and cut a line on So Quan's body. So Quan spat out a mouthful of blood. The old man who murdered the demon king was not satisfied with reprimanding the gray-faced guy. Hey ho, I told you not to interfere. But before being reprimanded that guy just turned around and said, We need to clean up and find a new hiding place. A lot of time has passed. The old man angrily said, How long has it been? The gray face reminded again, You still have to pay attention to the Tan Tan sect. If Tan Tan's Taoist dies and cannot be contacted, they will start investigating immediately. The old demon king heard that it was reasonable, but the anger that reached his mouth could not be contained. He roared angrily. Then he said, I'm going to tear this brat to pieces, so watch this, yes, sir. Then he angrily said, You better prepare yourself to be punished for disobeying my orders. After hearing that, the gray-faced guy quickly ignored it and turned away. But before he could punish him, someone with the gray face was hit from behind. It was none other than Gwyn Vong. We all know this is Gwyn Vong, but that old man doesn't know, so he shouted, Who are you? Suddenly he heard the voice of So Quan falling behind him saying, You're late, master. Gwyn Vong said in a majestic manner, I'm sorry. Then he complimented you, you delayed very well until I came. So Quan also forced himself to smile and said, Disobeying your words, I feel like I'm about to die. Please deal with them quickly and take me to a doctor. Gwyn Vong replied, I will do so. Then Gwyn Vong immediately used his lightning to control the situation. The demon king looked at the man in front of him and thought, Who is he? I can't even move my fingers. Gwyn Vong furrowed his eyebrows angrily, 
the surrounding thunder and lightning became even more intense and harsh. When he reached the Demon King, he couldn't stand it, he started to sweat. He thought incredulously, I, who have reached the realm of free travel, still can't control my fear, I can't. Any. At this time, the old Demon King looked at the power radiating from the man in front of him and wondered, perhaps it was a strong will. The other person asked, so you must be the leader of those demons. The Demon King A.M. Shao trembled and thought, an expert that even I did not dare to resist, could he be one of the ten heavenly emperors? If he was a monster living in Sichuan, could it be? He is the poison king, no it can't be him. But that lightning beam is not contaminated with death poison. He is not the poison king. The other person asked again, what did you mean by kidnapping my son? After all, the demon king of evil had stopped crowing. He innocently asked, what son, what are you talking about? I don't even know who you are. So Quan was sitting behind him saying, really it's not. Have I warned you that you will regret it? Suddenly the old demon king also remembered when So Quan said, I said that because I was worried about you. If you still want to live then step aside. I thought this brat was just talking to him. The demon king of Amitba saw So Quan's confident smile and understood that he was not boasting. Suddenly he pointed his finger at Gwyn Vong and threatened, If you want your son to be safe and sound, you better not interfere in this matter. But Gwyn Vong only said, Unlucky for you if you talk about the demons that followed Tan Tan's Taoist are all dead. Hearing this, the demon king became even more scared. Gwyn Vong repeated the question, I ask you again, for what purpose do you intend to kidnap my son? At this time, So Quan added fuel to the fire and said, I already know the whole truth, so your master doesn't have to ask him what to do. Gwyn Vong also made a decision when he heard that, you already know it, so maybe I don't need to keep his life. So Quan said, yes, but if you lose all his limbs and destroy his Dantian, then he will be a great gift to send to the Tan sect. Well, I think this old man will be fine with that. Gwyn Vong stepped on the gray-faced guy's body and said, I understand. Just do that. Then Gwyn Vong continued to stomp hard until blood from the gray-faced guy lying at Gwyn Vong's feet splattered. The demon king saw Gwyn Vong coming towards him and thought in fear. I need to hide now. I need to live so I can tear this damn boy to pieces. But he can't move to escape. But I've racked my brain and can't find a way to get rid of this monster. What should I do? Suddenly he saw So Quan still sitting motionless behind him. He gave a sinister smile. Then he used all his strength to rush towards So Quan. In his mind, he thought, if I can take this kid hostage. So Quan smiled and said, turning his back on a great master. Just after listening to So Quan's words, he felt something behind him. Quan Vong rushed from behind to kill the demon king, using his hand to grab his head. So Quan laughed at him. It seems like you are crazy. The old man rolled his eyes and said, you brat. But So Quan was not angry at all. He just smiled because at this point, everyone knew what the end of this old demon king would be. After the battle with the demon king, So Quan was carefully bandaged and lying on the bed resting. So Quan slowly opened his eyes. He asked in bewilderment, where is this, the medical room? Damn, what is this situation? After going through this, I realized that my actions can change the past. So Quan remembered what happened in his previous life. If it was a previous life, it would have been many years before Dugu Kuchin was angry after losing his child before he joined the Martial Arts League. Of course, the kidnapping would have happened in that time but it was not the right time. So Quan remembered the demon he met while hanging out with Dugu Sung. Maybe because I took Dugu Sung out and met the demon, creating an interference between the present and the past life. I shouldn't get too carried away because I know that I have to always think about variables in my past life. At this moment, Mrs. Seo Min entered the room. Seo Min Hai brought a cup of medicine and called, So Quan. The lady approached and asked worriedly, Are you awake? So Quan also replied, Ma'am. Lady Seo Min Hai cried and said, So Quan, you encountered something like this. Thank you, truly thank you. So Quan just gently replied, I'm okay. That's what I should do. At this time, another person entered the room. That person's voice rang out. He was awake. So Quan saw the person who had just entered and quickly jumped up. Gwyn Vang smiled and said, So Quan? So Quan also smiled and replied, Yes. After talking with Gwyn Vang, So Quan was extremely surprised. One day, have you been sleeping for that long? Gwyn Vang answered yes, So Quan continued asking, But where is this? It is one of the medical rooms that I manage in the Sichuan Tang family. So Quan exclaimed, Sichuan Tang family, one of the five great families? The Sichuan Tang family is extremely famous, because among the so-called famous doctors, there are many people who come from this place, not only with unique skills but also with very high medical skills. The Tang family's hospital is an extremely expensive place, Gwyn Vang said, there is no need to worry about money. So Quan bowed his head and said thank you. Then he asked again, where is your son? Gwyn Vang said again, he is fine. 
The boy was not injured nor had any side effects due to the acupressure points. When So Quan heard that, he happily said, It's lucky. Gwen Vong also said, Thank you, I owe you. When So Quan heard Gwen Vong say that, he also laughed and pretended to say, It's not just debt, it's heavy debt. Gwen Vong also knows that, so he said, Whatever you want, just say it, as long as it's not an inheritance. Martial Arts of the Heavenly Thunder Sect. But So Quan said what Gwen Vong did not want the most. He wanted to learn the martial arts of the Heavenly Thunder Sect. Every time the Heavenly Thunder Gate is mentioned, Gwen Vong becomes extremely angry. Don't you listen to what I say? But So Quan still insisted. Besides that, I don't want anything else. Gwen Vong furrowed his eyebrows and thought. So Quan also looked at him silently. Gwen Vong turned his head away and said, I told you, you cannot practice the martial arts of the Heavenly Thunder Sect. So Quan didn't give up and asked, Please tell me why I can't go. Only then can I give up. When Gwen Vong saw him being so stubborn, he held his head and sighed in frustration. Then Gwen Vong raised his hand and said, Yes, I have to explain clearly to you before you can give up. It was difficult for So Quan to see Gwen Vong's hand sealing it like that. It turned out that the King of Gwen put a seal in the room so that the sound wouldn't leak out. Then he slowly said, The reason why I can't practice the Sky Thunder Gate. The main thing is that if you don't have a perfect vein, you can't practice. After hearing this, So Quan was extremely surprised. He thought, that means being cursed to die before dying, is much rarer than the body of the heavenly sound. Gwen Vang said yes, perfect pulse is a rare condition because the vein is narrow and firm so it cannot circulate air. This makes it difficult to regulate energy, let alone practice. When the meridians are completely blocked, death will result. But So Quan still wondered, what is the connection between the pure bloodline and the martial arts of the Thunder Gate? King Gwen explained that the white thunder magic has a high density of energy, and is terrifying, just destructive. So, Gwen Vong picked up a piece of wood and continued speaking. If you normally practice White Thunder Heavenly Kung Fu, Gwen Vong stops talking and only uses actions to express. Faced with the terrifying power of the White Thunder attack, that piece of wood seemed to be completely engulfed in thunder and lightning. So Quan observed attentively. That piece of wood couldn't bear it anymore and broke in Gwen Vong's hands. Gwen Vong said the bloodline will not be able to bear it and burst to death but the toughness of the bloodline and the stability of the absolute veins can withstand the flow of white thunder magic. If you don't have an excellent vein, you can't practice. So Quan listened and thought thoughtfully. I thought there would be some secret hidden, but I couldn't imagine that it was due to an excellent vein. Finally, Gwen Vang said, I have an excellent physical constitution. That's why the destructive power of the white thunder god penetrates through my clogged blood vessels. They complement each other. For that reason, it is very difficult for us to find successor disciples and there is no descendant of Thunder God Kung that has more than two disciples. What is the difference? As you know, the Tian Thunder sect is not a unique sect. So Quan found it difficult to accept that he had missed the opportunity just because he did not have a perfect physical constitution. So he asked, But don't you understand that just because it is difficult to find a successor, it is okay if the sect's lineage is cut off? King Gwen then slowly said, In fact, in theory, there is a way to practice white thunder magic without having to lose your pulse. Did So Quan really scream when he heard it? Gwen Vang affirmed that it was true. The master will directly intervene in the disciple's process of using Kung Fu and thanks to that, the disciple can use it to cultivate. The disciple cultivates the white thunder mind method until the body can completely withstand the density. Just move the extremely high internal force of this thunder god attack. After listening, So Quan said with relief, So isn't it enough to just get help from the master? Gwen Vong replied, My body can hardly stand it. When So Quan heard that, he quickly said, Isn't it okay to try? That's not enough of a reason to make me give up. Gwen Vong silently turned away. Gwen Vong said, In the past I had given up searching for the perfect vein and brought orphans home to educate, but in the process of teaching, the right king remembered the old story again. Innocent children had to die. If so, he is extremely regretful. I cannot continue to sacrifice in vain just to preserve the sex bloodline. I went everywhere to find the perfect vein, so we find orphans and educate them even if it means sacrificing ourselves. I will constantly be tempted that I can find a child and keep the karma of the Thunder Gate. But suddenly he realized, at those times, we will forget our mistakes and feel disgusted with ourselves for being carried away by ambition. Gwen Vong bowed his head in pain and thought, even though I cut off the ley line of the Heavenly Thunder Gate, I still constantly regret it when I remember those times. So Quan also seemed to understand his master's suffering. The right king clenched his hand in guilt, even if he successfully passed the message on to his successor. The next person would become as worried as me, so I think ending this cycle is the answer. Word. But So Quan had anticipated that entering martial arts means being ready for death, 
but the sacrifice of innocent people is a completely different matter. So Quan realized that his master had a great responsibility on his shoulders, he thought. But after that, So Quan was still determined to become the successor of the Heavenly Thunder Sect. Even though the right king was still standing next to him and scolding him, How dare you disobey me? Guin Vong said, It's not too late. I will listen to any wishes you have. Why don't you give up practicing white thunder magic? So Quan turned around and smiled and said, Don't worry, even if I die, I won't hate you. But the king still refused. Even if he received my help, he could not be sure. I did not want to lose my benefactor. So Quan confidently turned around and said, Why do you think I will die? Gwyn Vang said, I know you have talent, but using the formula perfectly is not a matter of talent but a matter of experience. Experience. After listening, So Quan felt more confident and experienced. Tian Ma Tam Kung is the strongest martial arts mind technique that I practiced in my previous life. I have plenty of experience. So he told Gwyn Vang, If the problem is experience, then don't worry. Gwyn Vang also sweated after hearing this but listen to him continue, let's start right away. So Quan seemed to carry the spirit of an experienced person confidently saying, I will ease your burden. So Quan gave a confident smile to Gwyn Vong, let me share that burden with you. Gwyn Vong furrowed his eyebrows and thought. So Quan quickly sat down, turned his back to Gwyn Vong and said I'm ready. Gwyn Vong came to think that practicing the white thunder magic technique, just one mistake while using the skill could result in losing one's life. He looked at the young man in front of him, and wondered if it was because of me that something unfortunate happened to this kid. It is true that we have committed a crime again, but what gives Gwyn Vong a glimmer of hope is this kid's talent. Who knows, maybe he will succeed in practicing the white thunder magic technique. Then he looked at what he was holding in his hand. I can't speak with my mouth but I still carry this with me. I myself don't have a cure anymore. I'm just a person who wants to cut off the four doors but still can't give up and just keeps hoping. Forever. Gwyn Vong finally decided to sit down behind So Quan. Both teachers and students were extremely focused. Right now Gwyn Vong's mind was only hoping that the worst situation would not happen. Now the process of So Quan inheriting the white thunder magic will begin. Gwyn Vong placed his hand on So Quan's back. Then he said, people who practice white thunder magic need to have a strong body and strong bloodlines. Once you pass a few realms, your self-healing ability will increase, and normal internal injuries will also be normal. No more. You can consider it the power of the king. Now I will transmit my internal energy into your bloodstream. When my internal energy begins to channel the white thunder magic, you only need to follow the internal energy and recite the formula. Afterwards, Gwyn Vong gave further instructions, but as I said, this is not easy. My internal energy poured into your veins will become more and more powerful, and they will burn your veins. If you can't stand it, your blood will explode. So Quan listened attentively to what the teacher said. Having said this, Gwyn Vong was silent again, bowed his head and whispered, if that's the case. But So Quan seemed to know what Gwen Vong was going to say next, so he interrupted and said, don't worry. So Quan just smiled gently, there will be nothing you will regret. When the king saw that So Quan was so determined, he was surprised and moved. He whispered, So Quan. So Quan said again, you should start quickly, just practicing this subject will take several days already. Suddenly Gwen Vong also felt that the outcome of this matter might not be as bad as he thought. He felt more comfortable, smiled and said, okay, then let's begin. After that, Gwyn Vang began to focus on transmitting internal techniques to So Quan. He said, concentrating all the internal energy in his body, So Quan closed his eyes to concentrate. Suddenly So Quan found himself in a different place from reality. At this moment, Gwyn Vang's voice rang out again. You have focused all your internal energy on your blood vessels. So Quan replied, yes. Gwyn Vang said again, so now I will pass on the internal technique to you. So Quan saw something coming. That's a blue ball. So Quan thought to himself, this is your internal energy. At the same time, So Quan also heard Gwen Vong's words, now that you are blending in with my internal energy transmission, So Quan began to receive Gwen Vong's internal energy. Just starting to apply the effort, So Quan began to increase his speed. He is trying to master the internal energy that his master gave him, but So Quan is also having difficulty. Although he is not as stuck as Tian Ma Tam Kung, the internal energy at this level is too strong. Maybe he just needs to go. It's okay to follow what the guide's internal energy follows. But they are so powerful that it is difficult to concentrate on their own internal strength. They still have to concentrate. Because So Quan knows, the moment I lose focus and get out of his protective inner strength, is also the moment I lose my mind and fall into the devil's trap. In my previous life, I was the one who trained to the level of a great master of harmony and resistance. This is enough. But life is not like a dream. Suddenly So Quan felt a bit unstable. He cried out. 
At this time, Gwyn Vong's voice rang out again, now the internal attack will be a little more powerful, from this part onwards, so Quan feels uncomfortable at all. But he heard his master's voice telling him to concentrate more. The powerful source of internal energy suddenly hit So Quan, making him unable to bear it. He clenched his teeth and blood poured out of his mouth. At this time, Gwyn Vong was also very tense. So Quan felt like his whole body was being torn apart. His internal energy gradually strengthened. His blood vessels felt like it was about to burst. He felt like his internal energy had reached its limit. Just enduring the pressure was enough to exhaust him. His spirit gradually became vague. But So Quan still tried to reassure himself. Yes, he had to concentrate. The process of transmitting internal energy began to become stressful. Gwyn Vong also realized that his internal attack was drowning So Quan. He thought nervously. I was too hasty. I hope that this kid could persevere. But if it stops now, it will disappear. And So Quan will also begin to tilt. Gwyn Vong quickly spoke up to remind him not to lose his composure. It was almost over. The internal force became more and more powerful and intense. Gwyn Vong became more and more anxious to advise. Just endure a little bit, and it's over. Just a little bit. Just a little bit more. So Quan shouted loudly. The internal attack shot out in all directions were extremely fierce. Like a hurricane sweeping across the earth. As long as you overcome this hurricane, you will be considered successful. The smoke and dust gradually cleared. Gwyn Vong also withdrew his hand. He worriedly thought, was it successful? He saw So Quan quietly bowing his head without speaking. At this moment, he saw So Quan's blood flowing to the ground and thought in panic, did he become a demon? In the end, he still escaped fire and became a demon. It's my fault. I should have prevented this at any cost. He worriedly called So Quan. So Quan, please wake up. No matter how much the master called, so Quan still did not move. Seeing this, the king became even more worried. He thought the worst had happened. He shouted down So Quan. Suddenly he felt an electric current from So Quan's body. Then many lightning bolts appeared around him. Quan Vong was extremely surprised. So Quan did not disappoint his master. Energy began to grow from deep within his body. Then it soon spread to everyone, and So Quan's feet. So Quan raised his head to receive a new source of energy entering his body. Gwyn Vong also couldn't believe his eyes. After a period of lying in bed and tasting honey, his disciple also successfully received the internal force and white thunder magic. He stood up and turned around. The first thing I said to the assistant was, I don't look human at all, my eardrum will be torn. Gwyn Vong also said with relief, your kid is really cool. Gwyn Vong fell to the ground, so lucky, really lucky, he said, if I fail again this time and lose my child then I really won't have the face to look at Sun anymore. But So Quan said don't say that. We succeeded, so you should be happy. Later, ask someone to teach you more. Master. After inheriting the power of the right king, So Quan asked his master, Master, I have a question, what is it? He placed his hand on his stomach and said, I can't evenly distribute internal energy throughout the meridians in my body, so I feel like I'm being cut in half. The balance in my body is even more unstable. What is this? Gwyn Vong explained, This is natural. The amount of internal energy increases, but the capacity remains the same. It is right to be uncomfortable. Then you need to spend time cultivating your mind. Gwyn Vong said, That's all. It's still very difficult. I said it before. Instead of accumulating energy in the Dantian, the mind method of White Thunder God Gong aims to characterize internal energy and spread it throughout the meridians. So if compared with other mind methods, the difference in efficiency of internal work accumulation over time will be somewhat unequal. So Chu listened to Gwyn Vong's words and frowned. Gwyn Vong said again, but the low efficiency is only in the early stages of initiation. Accumulating internal energy with white thunder magic can increase the power of energy inside your body. If internal energy accumulates to a certain standard, all the meridians or dantians throughout your body will become increasingly stronger. Expanded, then the amount of accumulated internal energy will increase enormously. So Quan asked again, how long does it take to increase the amount? Gwyn Vong also replied that if you want to increase the efficiency of accumulating internal energy, it is about one jiap two. Jiak 2 is the power a person achieves after cultivating for 60 years, meaning that So Quan had to practice for 60 years to be able to increase his internal power. So Quan heard that, and was stunned and screamed. 50 years. One armor, that's unreasonable, so you have to get old to gain internal power. Quan Vong said that range is equivalent to the top experts, the nine great sects, and the five great families. Suddenly So Quan thought of something. He raised his head and asked, wait, then what is the master's internal cultivation like? Gwyn Vong reached into his shirt to get something. Then he threw it towards So Quan and said take it. So Quan grabbed it and asked, what is this? So Quan opened the lid of the box, he saw a big pill inside. Gwyn Vong said, it was a million pill. So Quan smiled and asked, you're joking, 
How could you have the secret elixir of Shaolin Temple? But Gwyn Vong was not kidding. It was something that when I was young I had the opportunity to receive from Master Dong Yu of the Shaolin Temple. When So Quan heard his master mention the great Master Dong Yu, he was surprised. Then he also realized and asked in surprise, if it was Master Dong Yu, then, could it be the abbot of Shaolin? Is that Buddha standing at the top of the two religions? Gwen Vong replied, that must be true. So Quan looked intently at the pill. He couldn't believe it. I received a return form from Master Dong Gwen. Just by using the complete form, you can get half of that person's internal attack. Of course, because of white thunder magic, we can only get half of that person's internal attack. He looked at his master wondering where he went around when he was young to get it. Gwyn Vong saw that So Quan was silent and thought he was criticizing him. Gwyn Vong said, why don't you want to then? So Quan was a bit shocked when he heard that. He quickly rushed towards his master and smiled. Hey, what are you talking about? Then So Quan clasped his hands and said, this favor will absolutely not be forgotten. Gwyn Vong saw his disciple turn over as quickly as flipping rice paper and smiled and said this kid. Then Gwyn Vong spoke again and you have practiced the white thunder magic technique. But until now we still think that this is the end of the thunder gate. But So Quan said, you don't need to worry about that. So Quan put his hands on his hips and said confidently, just me is enough, I don't intend to pass it on to anyone else. The king looked at So Quan. Then he said, thank you. Gwyn Vong and So Quan stood in an open field. Gwyn Vong asked, are you ready yet? So Quan excitedly said, yes. Gwyn Vong punched forward and said, pressing his fists, each punch produced lightning that spread around. So Quan also practiced following his master. Gwyn Vong shouted again, and So Quan diligently followed. Quan Vong spoke again. Lu Yun's body moved without making any sound or leaving any traces. Then Gwyn Vong went aside. Then he turned around and said, Come on, come here. So Quan focused on looking at the leaves under his feet. He held out his hand. Then also concentrate the strength under your feet. The training session was very intense. Gwyn Vong continuously guided So Quan. Both of them practiced continuously until it got dark. So Quan practiced until he was exhausted. Gwyn Vong was standing next to him. So Quan lay on the ground, breathing heavily, thinking, it's just basic martial arts but it's not easy. Pitch Lich Fist is a complementary martial art that can replace a Jura Tian Tam Thursday. Lu Van body technique tends to be suitable for Lu Tin Bo. It will help perfect Lu Tin Bo. Seeing that So Quan was tired from training, he said that's it for today, go home. When So Quan heard that he was allowed to rest, he quickly stood up full of energy. Both teachers and students went home together. On the way, both of them chatted a lot. What to eat tonight? How do we know? With the teacher's skills, everything will be delicious. Waiting for you and the teacher. Hurry up. Tomorrow, there is a lot of food on So Quan's dining table. Because of the characteristics of white thunder magic, until it has a solid foundation, it is difficult to use internal magic. While having to quietly train his body and physical strength, the more So Quan thought, the more he tried to eat. Suddenly he glanced at something. In the corner of So Quan's dining table there is a piece of paper. So Quan ate and read the paper, two days after the rooster hour, in the abandoned house of the northern citadel. So Quan put down his spoon and thought, it's been three months, that's really fast. Lower fifth gate. So Quan walked and thought, it was only now that we were contacted. Could it be that there was someone inside who opposed it? If you want to harm me in the lower five gates, what should I do? The method of treating evil spirits can also be used as a condition for negotiation. That is not something that can guarantee absolute safety for us. So Quan recalled the time he met people from the world. After having the treatment method, if they want to eliminate us, we have no way to resist. Through the story of the Demon King, we realize that having memories of past lives is not omnipotent. We must remember that everything always has limits. Before having the foundation of the White Thunder God art, it was very difficult to use internal force but the current me will absolutely not give up. There's nothing bad about being careful. So Quan finally arrived at the meeting point. He looked around and thought, calling me to this remote place. What are they thinking? Suddenly So Quan heard someone calling him. Is So Quan young knight right? The other three people greeted So Quan and said, we were ordered to come here to welcome the young knight. Please follow us. So Quan also responded to them, okay. The other three people led So Quan into a house and said, the last room is over there. Then they bowed their heads and said to So Quan, Please come and So Chu also politely said I yes. The closer So Quan got to the last room, the more strange it became. Is that a medicine room? The smell of medicine went straight into my nose. I asked permission, So Quan said and opened the door to the other room. In the room there were many people dressed in black, with faces looking like terrorists. Even So Quan was surprised, why were there so many people? But when he looked closer, So Quan realized that all of them had wounds on their bodies. He was surprised. 
What was their condition? Perhaps there was an attack on the way there? Then he looked at the hospital bed next to him. Most of all, this person was the youngest disciple of the fifth sect master. That girl was probably 15 years old. She looked like someone about to die. Her skin was dark and dry, making her eye sockets clearly visible. Her mouth was wide open, looking more like a lifeless corpse than a living person. Alive. So Quan told them, so is the treatment. So Quan spoke halfway before stopping, because he sensed something unusual. So Quan frowned and asked, what are you doing? At this moment, a hole appeared on the door. Something was pouring into the room. The guy in the black shirt pointed at So Quan and said, Stand still and don't move. Then that guy explained, On the way here, we were attacked. So Quan looked at the situation and guessed it. So he said, It seemed like that. But So Quan asked confusedly, Does that have something to do with it? What happens to me? The man in black continued, But the attacker knew our identities. So Quan asked, Do you think I was the one who instigated them? They also said that you are the only one who knows our movements and destination. So Quan explained, it's all just speculation. I don't know when and where you started, right? You know my sex secrets, so you should be careful. So Quan frowned and asked, Didn't you call me here to make a deal? And if I did so, what benefit would I get? A few guys in black angrily said, Do you think we're stupid? The author of the book about martial arts that causes demonic minds is the leader of the current demonic sect, and only he knows how to control them. Furthermore, I see that you and the demon sect leader do not have any satisfactory relationship at all. So Quan frowned and looked at them. Was the demon sect leader present in this raid? Anyone who looked at it could see that they were trying to prove that I was the culprit. So Quan also knows that they are considering him as the ringleader who caused the youngest disciple of the sect master under the fifth gate to fall into the devil's heart. It seems that the plan I prepared has become useless and must use a little defense. New paragraph. It is very rare for outsiders to get information from Han Gaman. If information about today's meeting were to leak out, the traitor would definitely be someone from Han Gaman. Unexpectedly, there is a traitor of the demon sect lurking in the lower five gates. If so, then perhaps the person who caused the youngest disciple of the master of the lower five gates to fall into the demonic mind was that traitor. The man in black saw that So Quan was still silent and said, It seems like I've already said something right to his heart so he has nothing to say. So Quan had to say, I swear I'm not a follower of the devil religion. When the black shirt man heard So Quan deny it, he angrily raised his sword and said there was no evidence. So Quan said that person seems to be in critical condition, let me treat him first, and then talk later. But the man in black did not agree and said, we cannot entrust the lives of our troops to the enemy. I will take you hostage to exchange with the devil. So Quan had a headache and scratched his head, not knowing how to explain this. I came here to save that disciple to get information from the lower five gates. Get rid of those silly doubts and stay away from me. If this continues, I will reach the limit of my tolerance. But that guy in black still insisted, don't even touch a single hair of the lady. I understand your martial arts skills, even if we get injured, we only need one move. So Quan interrupted him, with the current situation even though I don't want to go, you don't need to appear anymore. Suddenly there was a sound from the roof, then someone made a hole in the roof. That person jumped from the roof behind So Quan, sending smoke and dust flying everywhere. The black shirt men looked over cautiously. When they saw the other person land suddenly, they were extremely surprised and shouted. He, how did he do it? Gwyn Vang stood behind So Quan. This made the men in black extremely shocked. That, that is the mausoleum emptiness path. Mausoleum emptiness path is the ability to walk in the air without the feet having to come into contact with anyone. What? They asked. Is he a great master? Gwyn Vang slowly asked. What should we do now? So Quan said, I am also your guest. I do not intend to destroy you. I just want to suppress you. Then he looked at the person lying on the hospital bed and said, The most important thing right now is that girl. I hope you won't get caught up in a meaningless war. Gwen Vang saw this and said, Let me treat that lady. The king's appearance caused the room lights to shake violently. The guy in black heard So Quan say, I don't want to kill you. I just want to suppress you. Don't let sick people get caught up in this war. Let me treat that lady. The men in black were still suspicious of So Quan, so they did not let So Quan treat him. They rushed forward and shouted loudly to protect the young lady. Gwen Vang raised his hand. Then he pointed his finger at them. Wind appeared from the king's finger. This wind blew towards those men in black. When the wind blew, the men in black immediately became motionless. They trembled and thought, it is indeed the master who can point their acupoints with just the wind. They widened their eyes and looked. One of them fell down. Gwyn Von walked towards the hospital bed. When they saw that, they screamed angrily and all attacked together. Gwyn Von narrowed his eyes. Then Gwyn Von rushed towards each of them one by one with terrible speed. When approaching the last obstacle, 
Gwen Vong threw a punch. They were all defeated one after another. The guy in the black shirt looked at us being beaten and couldn't believe it. He quickly passed. When approaching Gwen Vong, he pointed a finger at that man's forehead. That guy maintained the posture holding the sword and groaned. His muscles, body, could not move. Then he turned around and said to the Soke, everything had been suppressed. So Quan smiled and said, in just a blink of an eye, he was able to suppress everything. He was truly a master. The man in black roared, do you think you can still be safe by doing that? If our sect master finds out about this, our sect's executioners will come and take your heads. So Quan said without much fear, I suppressed you only to fulfill my promise to treat that girl. Stand there and look closely. The guy in the black shirt looked at him uncomfortably. So Quan walked to the bedside. He saw that there was a notebook on the bedside shelf. This notebook was one of the five martial arts secret books created by the leader of the demon sect. It was Tithe and Kung. That is the reason why many important characters in Bakdao martial arts fell into demonic hearts, as expected, just like in memory. So Quan opened the book for a quick look, and then closed it. He looked at his patient and thought, well, let's start now. He placed his hand on the other person's withered pulse. Fortunately the blood had not yet completely died. If the patient's consciousness is forcibly awakened, it may cause side effects. Then an energy source from So Quan is transmitted into the other person's wrist artery. That source of energy quickly spread throughout the body, and the person lying on the bed suddenly opened his eyes. There was no other way than to endure to transmit my words into the patient's consciousness. The man in black saw but did not understand what So Quan was doing. So he panicked and asked, You, what are you doing? But So Quan didn't pay much attention to that guy's words. He focused on thinking that if there was no one to help the patient, he would not be able to regain his will. Then So Quan reminded the patient's body, Miss, I will move your body a bit. He gave a warning before picking up the other person. The patient was helped to sit up. So Quan asked, Did you hear my voice? Then So Quan came back and said, If you want to live, follow the path I lead you. Absolutely don't give up or lose consciousness. The other person slightly opened his eyes and looked towards So Quan but didn't. Can answer. So Quan placed his hand on the other person's back and said, The lower part was shrunk. The acupuncture point was clogged and filled with impurity. It takes energy to cure it. But So Quan is also a little worried about one thing. If something happens to me during my bad luck, I will have to bear the bad reputation of being an insider of the demon religion and be chased by the five gates for the rest of my life. Gwen Vong approached and asked if he needed my help with anything. So Quan replied, It will be a bit confusing but right now only you can do that. My body doesn't have to bear any burden, so you don't need to worry. Gwen Vong saw this and replied, I know. So Quan clearly understands that the reason the demon mind invades the body is due to gaps in the mind's magic. Even experts like the master cannot recognize it. It is a type of martial art that contains a deadly secret poison. If you practice this mental method, the poison will gradually accumulate. The poison person's body is not aware of this and will eventually be invaded by evil spirits. However, the method of treating evil spirits is very simple, which is to eliminate toxins. After a period of treatment by So Quan, he finally conquered the evil mind. His will is very strong. Now that person's face has recovered much better than before. Gwen Vang stood next to him and said, Well done, you've worked hard. So Quan also said, It's all thanks to the master who suppressed those items. Suddenly So Quan smelled something. That's the smell coming from the person lying on the bed. So Quan thought, because of the toxins emitted, the smell was so terrible. Must clean it off before it seeps back into the body. As soon as So Quan finished thinking about it, he immediately opened the other person's shirt. Seeing this, Gwen Van quickly turned his head away and exclaimed in confusion, Ahem. Gwen Van asked, Is it okay to wipe off the toxins? But in his heart he thought, After all, women should not take off their clothes. But the man in black heard Gwen Van's words and quickly asked again, What? What is he doing, little man? Letters. But So Quan said, You know you shouldn't pay attention to those things right now, right? So Quan explained, If the toxins seep back into the body, the effectiveness of the treatment will be reduced by half. While undressing to clean, so Quan accidentally saw it. One mole on collarbone, and a scar across the hip. Then So Quan's voice rang out, Phew, it's over. So Quan walked out and said, The treatment of mental demons is not done once and for all. Until the treatment is completed, bring the patient to the place and time I specify. The guy in black has been standing still and asking, I want to ask something. What is your relationship with the leader of the demon sect? So Quan replied, What is the relationship? I can confirm one thing for sure. I am not a follower of the devil religion. The man in black shouted in disbelief. But, So Quan knew clearly what he was going to ask. How do I know how to cure a demonic mind? You guys understand the value of information better than anyone. So it's not okay to solicit information from customers like that, right? Oh, and when you return, 
Remember to pass this message on to your master. This time I owe you a debt. Then So Quan and Gwyn Vong went out together. So Quan smiled and said to Gwyn Vong, Thank you for helping me. If it weren't for my master, I would definitely have to endure their torture. Gwyn Vong also replied, It's no big deal. Suddenly Gwyn Vong muses. So Quan also guessed why Gwyn Vong suddenly became quiet. I was prepared for the worst case scenario, but I didn't expect it to be like this. So Quan bowed his head, thinking awkwardly. How should I explain this? After listening to So Quan's conversation with the lower fifth gate, he may be misunderstood by Gwyn Vong as a secret agent of the demon religion. Maybe the master will also think that the story of your son being kidnapped by the demon king is because I colluded with the demon sect to play a trick. Suddenly So Quan heard his master say, what was that look in your eyes just now? So Quan asked again, Why do you ask that? The master saw that and asked, Do you have something to say? So Quan awkwardly said, You probably also want to know what the relationship is between me and the demon sect leader. Gwen Van just kept quiet and looked at So Quan. The atmosphere between the two also became strange. Suddenly Gwen Van turned his head, startling So Quan. So Quan asked, Why are you looking at me like that? Gwen Van seriously looked at So Quan. Then he asked, Could it be that you are a follower of the demon religion? So Quan replied firmly, absolutely not. Gwen Vong said, you have evil intentions towards me and intend to deceive me. So Quan heard that and quickly say, how can I do that? Gwen Vong asked, so what is the problem? I believe in you, whom I can directly perceive with my eyes and ears. When So Quan heard his master say that, he was extremely surprised. Then Gwen Vong turned around and continued walking. I finished talking. Let's go quickly. I'm also hungry. So Quan still stood there dumbfounded. You think, the master is different from the people I have met. If it were this person, if I talked to the master again, would he believe it? There's no need to try to put everything together, just say it all. But in the end So Quan just said, someday I will tell you everything, the past that cannot be revealed from the time I was born until now, and what I want to have in the future, right king also answer, I will wait. Two years passed quickly. Gwyn Vang told So Quan, this is enough. The foundation is already very solid, now you don't need to practice any more mental techniques. When So Quan heard that, he was extremely excited, really. In that case, So Quan could barely speak until he reached into his pocket to rummage for something. It was difficult for the king to hear So Quan mumble. So Quan said, I have been waiting for this day for the past two years, he said while looking at the pill in his hand. Gwen Vang saw that he was impatient and asked, Are you going to absorb it now? If you want to completely absorb the aura of the small pill, you must mentally adjust to the maximum level. Then he ate it. As soon as the master finished speaking, so Quan chewed the complete pill like candy. Gwen Vong asked, How are you? Do you feel anything? At this moment, So Quan's whole body radiated a source of energy. So Quan slowly felt the power of the pill. It was indeed a small pill. The energy was so abundant. So Quan quickly sat down to feel the huge source of energy surrounding his body. Gwen Vong also advised him, Don't rush, just take it slow. But So Quan felt extremely secure. If there were no outside obstacles, there would be no difficulty at all. As long as the master stood there protecting the Dharma, this would be the safest place. Can't waste any of it. Could it be the function of the white thunder god? So Quan focused on feeling the energy from deep within his heart. Despite the powerful aura of the small pill impacting. But the bloodline still did not move. So Quan gritted his teeth and thought, if that's the case. So Quan suddenly sweated profusely. He was trembling extremely. As if he was concentrating all his strength on doing something. Gwyn Vong was surprised and thought, could it be that he intended to clear the veins? So Quan opened his mouth to breathe. Both of them were quietly waiting to see what was about to happen. Gas is rising. After a while, So Quan stood up. He clenched his fist. At this moment, his whole body was filled with lightning. So Quan almost had the same skills as the King of Fist. So Quan frowned and concentrated his whole body's energy. Then So Quan used all his strength to strike forward. A powerful force was released. Smoke flew away. When Gwyn Van witnessed the power that So Quan had trained, he was also surprised. The wall in front had a huge hole in it. So Quan thought with satisfaction, now that he was no longer suppressed, the power of his moves had increased. So Quan also immediately clasped his hands and thanked his master. It was all thanks to him for protecting me. Thank you very much. Gwyn Vong also happily smiled and said, If you absorb all the remaining breath of the little pill, then come with me to the funeral sect. So Quan asked, Why is it a funeral sect? Gwyn Vong only said, Then I will tell you. So Quan frowned and thought, Something makes me feel uneasy. 30 years of internal work. Now he only needs to absorb 30 more years of internal energy. So Quan walks and thinks about the future. Suddenly he realized something. Whoever came so close that I didn't notice. In the distance there was a dark shadow following So Quan. So Quan silently pulled out his sword. 
the stealth technique was so powerful that it was impossible to know without expanding his aura. Feeling chi means using chi to feel. The person who had been following So Kwan turned out to be a beauty. Even though she was hiding her face, my 69th sense still knew that this was a beauty. Suddenly So Kwan appeared next to her, then placed his sword on the beauty's neck. So Kwan asked, who are you? The beauty saw that she had been discovered and said, I tried my best to hide myself, but I didn't expect that you would recognize me so easily. But So Kwan still coldly said, if you don't clarify your identity, I will consider you an enemy. The beauty saw that So Kwan did not recognize her and said, you don't know me, I'm a bit sad. So Kwan asked again, have we met before? The beauty said softly, so let me tell you. After saying that, the beauty pulled down the mask to cover her face. I thought we were very close to each other. You saw my body when I was naked. When So Kwan heard this song, his eyes lit up and said, Could it be? Then he saw a familiar mole on his collarbone. The beauty revealed her face under the moonlight. It was not true that she was very beautiful. Then she said, It's been a long time since we've seen you, Dantia Heap. So Kwan realized that it was an old acquaintance and put his sword away and said, Miss, are you okay? Come to see me if there's something wrong. The beauty came closer and said, First of all, I came to thank the young knight for saving his life. If it weren't for the young hero, I would have lost my life and of course the lower five gates would have suffered great losses as well. So Quan also slowly said, came to thank you, you came too quickly, for two years you have not contacted me. Hearing that, the beauty quickly said, sorry, because I was focusing on recovery, I couldn't come earlier. But So Quan asked directly, surely the young lady from the lower fifth gate didn't just come here to thank her, what's going on? The beautiful woman said, after all, it is not a bad thing for the young knight. She smiled again and continued, Give me some time, I guarantee you won't regret it. So Kwan said with a serious face, Keep it short. Seeing So Kwan's coldness, the girl felt sorry for herself and said, It seems the young knight doesn't like me. Suddenly threatening, if unfavorable, it disappears, only when needed does it come into contact with people below the five gates. So Kwan asked, Can I trust you, miss? The girl quickly said, If it happened two years ago, please forgive me because for some reasons I cannot contact the young knight. No need to come directly, you can still contact me. I know that everywhere there are subsects and people from the lower five sects, he remembered the name from Van Damme Gia's lower sect. But the beautiful woman explained, not that the lower five gates did not send anyone, but the beautiful woman hesitated at this point. So Quan asked, what do you mean by that? For the young master's sake, a letter of thanks, greetings, and even a thank you gift. I sent someone to bring them but they were all stopped by that person. When So Kwan heard this, he was a bit shocked. The beautiful woman continued because the disciple was at a critical moment, so before he gave permission, no one could contact the young master, because I waited until he gave permission, I tell the truth. Believe me, if not, you can ask yourself. So Kwan also understood. So it was like that, before I absorbed the small pill, master had eliminated everything that could threaten me. Master did exactly as he said but. So Kwan said anyway, it seems like the two sides are misunderstanding each other. The beauty replied, Fortunately the misunderstanding has been resolved, so I will let the young knight know the stance of the lower fifth gate. We want to continue to maintain a friendly relationship with the young knight. Two days later we will talk about this in detail at Tian Ho Lao at the hour of the rooster. Okay, let's decide. So Quan agreed and said okay. After the discussion, the beautiful woman smiled and asked, The prostitutes at Tian Ho Lao are very famous. Would the young knight want to sit with them? But So Quan just said whatever I don't care. The beautiful woman turned away disappointed. Her reaction was not interesting at all. So two days later we met again. And after saying that, the beauty went away. So Quan thought again. He couldn't feel his aura. Even though he had been controlled by a demon for a long time. Could he have such strong strength at that age? Now I understand why the master of the fifth sect loves his youngest disciples so much. At this time, Tian Ho Lao is famous for its prostitutes with a pair of big souls. As So Quan walked there, he thought. Let's see what they have prepared. So Quan went to Tian Hoa for a long time as promised. He smiled and said, trying to see what the five men had prepared. So Quan stepped inside. This is a very large, bustling and fun place. So Quan looked around and thought, if it's just a small inch of the five lower gates, this place is quite big. At this time, a voice rang out, inviting you inside. A fairy came out and said to So Quan, I am Bihai Quan, please follow me. As soon as the beautiful girl like a fairy finished speaking, everyone around was talking, they were admiring the goddess heavenly flower, directly invited upstairs by the goddess. Who exactly is he? So Quan frowned and said, clearly I said no need. The goddess saw So Quan frowning in discomfort and asked, could it be that the young knight feels uncomfortable when walking with me? To be honest, that's true. So Quan also explained, 
I don't want to attract unnecessary attention so please help me change the guide. The goddess heard that and said ah I understand. So Quan thought to himself, he invited me to repay his kindness, but it helped me attract attention unnecessarily. If my name is mentioned by many people, my master will face many difficulties. If I knew it would be like this, I would have worn a mask or disguise. The goddess took So Quan to a room and said this is the room. As soon as the door opened, So Quan saw a person. The person in the room was wearing a veil. When she saw So Quan open the door, she said please come in. When So Quan entered the room, he said again, please sit down. So Quan also pulled out a chair and sat. So Quan did not recognize who the girl in front of him was. He thought it was a prostitute so he lamented. I said I didn't need a prostitute, but instead. When the girl saw that So Quan was sitting, she opened her veil and said, Before we talk, let me introduce myself. I am Chan Jie Dong. So Quan asked, She was. But the girl continued, On behalf of Xian Guman, I apologize to the young knight, and I sincerely thank you. Thank you for saving my life. This girl is Chan Jie Dong the youngest disciple of the sect master Xiaoman. So Quan saw her being so natural and asked, If you remove the veil, your face will be completely exposed, is that okay? But she smiled happily and said, Isn't it customary to reveal your face according to greeting etiquette? Then she shyly said, And the young knight had already seen the person, and now seeing his face was nothing. So Quan said coldly, The lady's use of honorifics made me scared, I got goosebumps. The girl heard that and laughed ha 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 and said, Is that so? I also see it that way. So Quan also continued, after all, the leader of the lower fifth sect probably would not agree to revealing his true face to others. And the young lady is after all a disciple of the master of the lower fifth sect. It's the same two days before we meet. No matter what happens, it's better not to show your face. The girl agreed and said yes, without the master's permission, I cannot let you know any information about me. But I trust you very much. Then she smiled mischievously and said, and this is not a bare face, isn't it because I put a lot of effort and effort into this makeup? So Quan said seriously, just joking here, that's too rigid, the girl said losing interest. Of course, the master also agreed, so I did so. I said I would repay the debt of gratitude to the young knight. So Quan said, so how do you intend to repay me? Chan Jie Dong said don't rush. From now on, I will be the one responsible for direct contact with you, she said and then smiled. So Quan looked at her attentively. Then he just said, just like that. Chan Jie Dong asked annoyed, what is the meaning of that reaction? Then she shouted, the fact that I undertake to contact a person, not a great force, is not a common occurrence somewhere. Now the young knight does not have to do such troublesome things as going to the lower fifth gate, but still a large amount of information can be obtained. Then she spoke aggressively into her chest, because she was one of the leaders of the lower class. So Quan did not bother to react. Chan Jie Dong helplessly bowed his head before So Quan's one color reaction. The master defied the objections from within the lower fifth gate, and allowed me to treat the young master as a special customer, and I was also required to pretend to be a good person. So Quan was silent for a moment. Then he said, Surely other troubles will no longer exist. But why did the lower five gates send the young lady there? There are many other people. Chan Jie Dong crossed his arms and said indifferently, Young master already knows my face and my identity. He still has to find his feelings again, most of all. She happily said, We are very familiar, except for the first day during the treatment period. I have never laid a hand on you. Stop talking nonsense. Anyway, if you feel uncomfortable, you can refuse. I will talk to the master about the reward. After listening, So Quan said, No problem. Chan Jie Dong said, Really? So Quan thought, For me, I have no reason to refuse but the information provided by Han Guman is of great value. Now we can receive news that is different from the previous life or news that we did not know, and on the contrary, we can also control the news. The master of the fifth gate did this simply to repay me. There is also some other plot but, that's enough, So Quan replied yes. Chan Jie Dong held out his hand to So Quan and smiled, later asking the young knight for help. So Quan also shook Jie Dong's hand and said, from now on, ask Miss Jie Dong for help, then in his heart he thought, I will take advantage of everything I can, this time at the dojo. So Quan walked and thought, since choosing Gadong returned to meet the master, fifteen days have passed, and during this time there has been no news. Could it be that the master of the fifth gate has changed his mind? He was originally a very wise person, so anything is possible. So Quan was thinking while walking, suddenly he heard someone speaking. Miss, if you're not busy this holiday, come have a meal with me, miss, I know a place with delicious food. At noon you and I. After that, a few compliments rang out, you're so beautiful. A group of other subordinates heard the commotion and said in annoyance, what's the big deal? It's only been five days since the head monk has already accepted a second disciple. So Quan heard the word disciple of the leader 
and glanced over. Then he heard someone say, where did he come from? Ha, huh, running in this direction, what is that? Someone is running in this direction. That person even raised his hand and waved, saying, Brother, Brother Don So Kwan. So Kwan saw the person walking towards him. He was surprised and thought, impossible. The person who came was Miss Chan Jie Dong. She smiled brightly and greeted So Kwan, and So Kwan wondered why she was here. So Kwan stood with his arms crossed and said, That's why. After you became my contact, my master agreed to accept you, just in name, right? Chan Jie Dong smiled and said, Yes, brother. So Kwan continued, Because we are not official candidates. We do not have a brother-sister relationship. Jie Dong heard So Kwan say that and bowed his head and replied, Yes, that's for sure. So Kwan turned around and left, saying, Now it's time for me to practice martial arts. Can you please get out of the way? I've already chased him away. It's really a top one girl in the palace. Chan Jie Dong saw him leave and asked, How about fighting with me? Wouldn't fighting with a master like me be more beneficial than practicing martial arts yourself? So Kwan turned his head to look at Chan Jie Dong and thought, she wants to test my martial arts. On the contrary, that's good. So Quan smiled confidently. After the demon killing plot, I was also quite curious because I couldn't meet any worthy opponents. I don't know how much my strength has reached, and how it compares to the beloved disciple of the lower sect master, that's why he also wants to compete in a match. So Quan excitedly pulled out his sword and told Chan Jie Dong, let's start now. Chan Jie Dong also quickly pulled out his sword and smiled and replied, okay. She quickly moved out of So Kwan's sight, then aggressively slash once. Suddenly So Kwan's voice rang in her ears, she had to be careful. It turned out that So Kwan had quickly moved from its original position. He rushed to Chan Jie Dong's side. Then So Kwan also slashed down, but Jie Dong quickly dodged. Chan Jie Dong jumped away. So Kwan saw how agile she was and said, in a short time she can attack me quite well. Chan Jie Dong is also thinking that among his peers, there is no one stronger than me. As soon as he stopped to rest for a moment, Jie Dong immediately made his next move. She continuously used her sword to attack So Kwan, all of which were easily dodged by So Kwan. Seeing So Kwan dodge his sword so easily, Chan Jie Dong thought incredulously. But, why can't my sword touch him? After many missed cuts, Jie Dong was tired, she stopped to breathe, So Kwan walked over and asked, Are you exhausted? Chan Jie Dong saw that and decided to play his trump card. If so, use all his strength. Then she rushed forward with all her might. So Kwan also concentrated heavily in his body, the moon spirit sword, the third form. Then So Kwan used full moon to slash forward. The next second Chan Jie Dong's sword broke in two, she couldn't believe it and exclaimed, It's impossible. She was then beaten back a few meters by So Kwan. She backed away in surprise. As for So Kwan, he still stood firmly in place, unharmed. Chan Jie Dong blankly asked So Kwan, You? Are you really the same age as me? Among my peers, I think that no one is my opponent but my self-esteem is hurt. She finished speaking and sat down on the ground. So Quan just gently said, If you are too complacent like that, then that is the knife that will kill you in real combat. Chan Jie Dong sighed in response. What a cruel thing to say. Then she also asked, Among the martial arts practitioners of the same age, Do you think there is anyone who can be your opponent? Unexpectedly, So Quan replied calmly, No, Jie Dong couldn't stand this straightforward answer and just mumbled, Ah, eh. So Quan said again, In real combat there are many variables but, even so, I will absolutely not lose. In fact, So Kwan has no illusions about strength, but because he has experienced many bitter things, he thinks that among his peers in martial arts training in his past life, no one can compare to me. Moreover, I used to live in a world where if I didn't kill others, I would be the one who died. Because I was always cornered. So Kwan soon learned how to be patient and deal with all the unfortunate events. He thought, there is no way I would lose to those who practice martial arts and live in a well-fed and well-dressed environment. But Jie Dong didn't understand and just said, You're really complacent. If you're so confident, why don't you join the Dragon and Phoenix Association? The Dragon and Phoenix Association is a large-scale event of the Martial Arts Alliance, where people gather. Air, the proud son of heaven of all sects in the white path of martial arts. When So Kwan heard that name, he was a bit stunned. He asked again, Dragon and Phoenix Association? Jie Dong saw him suddenly pensive so he leaned in and asked, What's wrong? What are you thinking about? Seeing that So Kwan did not answer, Jie Dong continuously followed and asked, Are you really going? Please answer me, Don So Kwan, because she is a member of the gang that specializes in collecting information on the five lower gates. So I always want to glean more information. Frankly speaking, I often talk about a lot of things. But So Kwan did not answer her question but simply said briefly, Thank you. After that, he turned around and left. So now I'm going to practice martial arts, leaving Jie Dong bewildered. 
But then she got angry and shouted, What's wrong? Fighting with me is also practicing martial arts. Hey, where are you going? In the middle of the blue sky, white clouds and yellow sunshine, Jie Dong's voice rang out in anger, Senior brother, Don So Kwon. Few days later, So Kwon is leaving. Then suddenly he glanced back and talked to someone. Today I'm just going to have a meal with the assistant. Why did you follow me later? It turned out that Chan Jie Dong was secretly following So Kwon. When she was discovered, she smiled mischievously and said, I was also invited. And this is also a good opportunity to learn about our master's background. Because you don't know, we have to ask directly. So Kwon thought seriously, this is the style of Han Gaman. Then Jie Dong said again, you better tell me. How could a person with master's strength be an ordinary martial artist? But So Kwon only said, nothing can come from my mouth. When Jie Dong heard that, he acted like he didn't care too much and said, never mind, after all, both teachers and students have so many secrets. Gwyn Vong's house is located deep in the forest. After his father's son was kidnapped, his master moved here. That's why, Chan A. C. Gun continued to target the boy for the body of Tian Yin. There is no safer place than Tan Tan Mountain because there is Tan Tan sect here. At this time, Du Gu Sung saw So Quan and Chan Jie Dong coming and ran out to welcome him. At this time, everyone gathered together to eat happily. While eating, Jie Dong praised Mrs. Seo Min Hai's cooking skills. This is truly one of the most delicious dishes I have ever eaten. After hearing this, the lady also smiled and replied, Oh my god, why did Jie Dong say that? It's so easy to hear. Only Gwyn Vong remained silent and said nothing. So Quan also realized that something was wrong with his master. Gwyn Vong stood up, then he suddenly left. Lady Seo Min Hai asked after him, Where are you suddenly going? Gwyn Vong just gently replied, Today the weather is quite nice so I will bring some wine. So Quan saw that and stood up and said, I will go with you. Just in time I also want to stand up and walk around a bit. Gwyn Vong glanced at him for a moment. But he didn't object, he just said, Do whatever you want. When the two of them were gone, Don So Kwon also asked, why did he suddenly go to get wine? Gwyn Vong sadly replied as he walked, it's not that I don't drink, I'm just restraining myself. When So Kwon heard that, he hesitantly asked, Master, could it be? Are you feeling sorry for your family? When Gwyn Vong heard it, he clenched his fists. Then he said, my daughter has given up many things for me. I want to give her a life without any shortcomings, but this world is full of things that are not what I want. Even if my master is a master, he will only have one ending if he can't be with his family for the rest of his life. I can't stop the demonic followers who want to harm my master's family members. For safety, the family was imprisoned in Tan Tan Mountain, teaching their son harshly, making the master feel uncomfortable. Unless he kills the evil gun bastard or removes Dugu's son's heavenly body, the master will have to live his whole life in insecurity. Thinking of this, So Kwon realized something. He exclaimed, Wait, if it's that way. Gwyn Vong walked out, and his hand holding two jars of wine and said to So Kwon, I brought this wine from Jijang City. Suddenly So Kwon said, Master, come to think of it, you still haven't given your master a housewarming gift. Gwyn Vong asked in confusion, It's been a long time since I moved house, but you suddenly mentioned the housewarming gift. What are you scheming about? So Kwon suddenly smiled, then he said, Master will definitely be satisfied with this gift. At this time, So Kwon had returned to the dojo. He was talking to Dedong. Her voice rang out. So, do you want me to convey the word to the leader of the Duong Hoa Company? Is this the newly emerged trade group? So Kwon replied, yes, the reward will be paid with information. Chan Jie Dong asked confusedly, what news is that? So Kwon said, the only son of the leader of the Hoa Duong trade group, while practicing martial arts, fell into the mind of a demon. After hearing this, Jie Dong also widened his eyes and asked, could it be that she thought that the evil spirit was caused by a demonic religion? So Kwon also replied, that's true. That thing comes from shamanism. Please tell him if you want your son to live, come find me. Chan Jie Dong asked in surprise, could it be? So Kwon said, martial arts originated from shamanism. Please tell me if he wants to save his son, come find me. But Chan Jie Dong asked in surprise, how did he know that the son of the Hoa Duong trade group's leader was falling into the devil's heart? But So Kwon also asked again, do you want information for free? Jie Dong gave up in frustration and said, okay, okay, I won't ask anymore, you won't tell me anyway because it will take some time to send news to the Hoa Duong trade group in Zhejiang City. So Kwon said, thank you, thanks to the young lady, he must bring martial arts secrets with him. In the near future, the Hoa Duong trade group will become one of the largest and most powerful trade groups in the Central Plains. The leader of the demon sect in his previous life treated the demonic mind of the group leader's son and took over the popular merchant group. Thinking of this, So Kwon smiled confidently and thought, this time I will be the one to treat the demonic mind of the union master's son and make the caravan fire into my city. 
And one more thing, the martial art that caused the son of the merchant group's leader to fall into the demon's heart was Hong Hoa then Kum, a type of fire art based on positive energy. So Quan immediately thought of his master's son. If it was the magic rose, it could overcome the powerful demonic energy of the heavenly body. It would be the best tech gift for his master. While So Quan was sitting and concentrating on practicing energy, Jie Dong's voice rang out, Don Ti Heap. So Quan glanced over. Jie Dong wearing a veil said, Help me. So Quan saw Jie Dong in such a hurry and asked, What's going on? Jie Dong quickly said, The goddess has been kidnapped. After hearing this, So Quan immediately thought of a beautiful girl, a goddess. Are you talking about Tian Hoa Tian Hoa of Tian Hoa Lao? Jie Dong shouted, Besides that celestial girl, is there any other celestial girl? So Quan raised his hips and asked, But is that from the lower fifth gate? At this point, Jie Dong had to confess to So Quan, the goddess, that she was from the lower five gates. So Quan asked again, why did she come to ask me for help? Chan Jie Dong explained, I don't have time to wait until my sex executioner arrives. So Quan said again, hmm? With your strength, can't you solve this problem yourself? Jie Dong bowed his head sadly and said, If that's the case then that's fine but that's a master that I alone can't deal with. After speaking, Jie Dong's hand trembled non-stop. So Quan thought, If things got to the point where Chan Jie Dong rushed to ask me for help, then the goddess must be a very special person in the lower fifth gate. Jie Dong saw that So Quan remained silent and shouted impatiently, Will you help me or not? So Quan immediately said, Let's go. Both of them are trying their best to find the goddess. The person who kidnapped the goddess is a very famous master of the white religion called Dok Sagom. Before that, he had pursued the goddess. How dare a master of the white religion dare to publicly arrest someone like that? Jie Dong hurriedly asked. The people of the white religion act righteously in front of them, but behind their backs they act like they're playing tricks. So Quan replied, while the people of the black religion act openly. Jie Dong said, it could also be that other forces are targeting the lower five gates. So Quan asked, hmm, what is his cultivation level? Jie Dong answered, he once won against Hoa Sun's My Hoa Sword. He is a supreme master. His swordsmanship is as graceful and fierce as a poisonous snake. So Quan thought, if they were top-notch, at the same level as the ghost killers, except for the leaders of the lower five sects, the rest's martial arts skills would be quite low. So it's very difficult to deal with great players. Jie Dong said, the priority is to ensure the safety of the goddess. And then we will gather again. Then she gave a bamboo tube to So Quan and said, this is a signal bullet. If either of us finds the person, we will fire a signal bullet. The remaining one will gather there to fight together. So Quan took the bamboo pipe and said, from here we will separate. At this time, both of them landed on a cliff. Then So Quan asked, but the lady did not intend to ask me to do it for free. Right, Jie Dong also replied, I will definitely repay you, no need to worry. Then he asked again, Is there any other mask? I don't want to show my face. Jie Dong said, Is this mine? Then she petulantly said, It's just indirect contact. But So Quan didn't care too much, just put it on and said, It's okay, I'll flip it, fold it, and then use it. When Jie Dong heard that, he was annoyed. So let's go first. After So Quan finished speaking, he quickly left. Always doing her own thing. Jie Dong scolded her for an hour, and then she also disappeared. Right now in the place where the goddess was kidnapped, she thought with panting breath, she couldn't feel anything from the neck down. Could it be that she had a magic point? She couldn't move. Her whole body could only tremble slightly. Suddenly the goddess heard a man speak and woke up. The person who spoke was the governor of the Sam Mon team, the elder of the snake team. The goddess saw him and said, You will regret kidnapping me, because the pursuers will come soon. He wasn't very scared when he heard that. He just smiled and said, Are you chasing me? Ka 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 ka. Could it be that you're a prostitute from the lower five gates? I don't care. Maybe you think I haven't prepared anything yet. Came to kidnap someone. The person who helped me said that this was the best place to hide. Escape and hiding were guaranteed in advance. Then he bent down to look at the exhausted goddess and said gloatingly, So I accept it. He lifted up the beautiful face of the goddess and said, Destiny has arranged for you to live with me and take care of our child. Then he licked his lips hungrily and said, Now open your heart to me. The goddess was scared of this perverted guy. She closed her eyes tightly. Suddenly a loud explosion rang out. The house where the celestial girl was kept was blown up by someone. But when you said this was the best place to hide, was that good or bad? That person was So Quan. He found the location of the goddess and came to the rescue in time. The governor did not expect that the SASI me was so fresh and green that it was already broken. He shouted, Someone? 
but then he suddenly widened his eyes. So Quan did not use his hands but just calmly used his sword to release the goddess's acupuncture point. The novice gunman thought in surprise, did he not use his hands but use the sheath of his sword to dispel the demonic acupuncture points? He is not an ordinary person. After thinking about it, he remembered what the goddess had just said and asked, are you the pursuer? But So Quan only said, an old man has no shame in confessing his love to a young girl, and if he is not accepted, he kidnaps her. Why is it so convenient? The governor smiled and asked, are you looking for death? So Quan also replied, do you think you can kill me? He arrogantly said, you remind me of the Taoist who provoked me and then knelt down and asked for my forgiveness. Then he rushed towards So Quan and shouted, I will personally teach you again. He slashed strongly from above. His speed surprised So Quan. But just a few seconds later, he was also surprised by So Quan. What he did not expect was that So Quan could raise his hand to block his attack. Then So Quan fought back. He couldn't believe it. Could he stop this? Then So Quan also rushed towards him. Jie also rushed forward, shouting angrily, to see how much you could block. Both sides continued to attack. He also used all his strength to slash at So Quan. So Quan thought, this is a unique snake sword. The sword technique is indeed as sharp as rumored. He attacks from many directions, not the stereotypical martial arts taught in famous families or sex. The sword's killing intent was adjusted and perfected in real combat, and another slash attacked So Quan. So Quan was forced to close one eye by the energy of that slash. Seeing this, the elder dark snake Mon smiled happily and said, Why would he show off with only that much strength? So Quan decided, If so, this is a good opportunity to apply white thunder magic in real combat. After Chan Jie Dong then, the twelfth move, when he heard that, he was extremely surprised. A source of energy came, mesmerized the vision with the illusion created by the sword, targeting the opponent's weak point by concealing the true path of the sword. The second move, while the other guy was distracted, So Quan rushed to attack at the right moment. But the surprise is, Gax's sword was able to block So Quan's move, and then his laughter rang out, Duh. He arrogantly said that if compared to the image of the sword with the apricot blossom of the apricot sword, it was just a child's play. The image of the sword was an illusion of the sword created from the move. Both sides separated. So Quan stepped back and thought, surely that sword was the most suitable to deal with the shadow sword. But, actually, So Quan had his own strategy. He used it again, the eighth move. Then he immediately rushed to attack the man's neck. Because So Quan knew in some loophole, he would also be careless, then get hit. So Quan guessed correctly. So Quan's sword cut off a bit of the elder's blood. He angrily gritted his teeth and looked at So Quan, thinking, this guy. He also realized the power of So Quan. He remembered just now, even though it was a shadow sword, it was still a good sword. If he had been a little slower, my head would not have been on my neck anymore. Luckily, he was in time. Time to avoid. So Quan said, it seems like the person is too lazy to practice the sword so he has only just reached this realm. Even a kid's attack can't be stopped. When he heard So Quan say that, he was extremely angry. He rushed forward and shouted, Don't be rude. So Quan thought, just saying that, this guy showed an excited look. He also rushed forward, it's over now. But unexpectedly, he showed an evil smile, then he spoke slowly, falling into the trap. His hands released countless hidden weapons. So Quan was surprised, something was hidden. He saw that So Quan was a little confused and laughed and said, Oh ha ha, he's really just a kid. But unexpectedly, so Quan was able to avoid his hidden weapon in an instant, and suddenly appeared next to him and said, Where are you looking? The guy was surprised and thought, What is that? And was immediately punched. This punch was extremely powerful, sending the snake monster elder flying far away. So Quan, still in good health, walked over and said, Why does the so-called master of the righteous sect use hidden weapons? As for the other elder, he was punched and immobilized. So Quan said, how could such a lowly person be caught in the eyes of the swordsman? So Quan thought, perhaps he didn't expect to use hidden weapons. If he had avoided it later, he would have been in danger. While thinking, he saw something. What is that? So Quan wondered when he saw a wooden card lying in the shirt of the solitary snake elder. He came closer and reached out to pick up the wooden card. Here it is, So Quan stared at it. As soon as he looked at So Quan, he immediately recognized that this was a card belonging to the demon spirit team, Duin and Demon King. He was extremely puzzled and asked, how could an expert of the sect be able to prove the identity of the demon spirit team? Yes. So Quan wanted to ask him but saw that he was motionless, so he had to give him a little vitality. Seeing that he was barely awake, So Quan immediately asked, do you know what this thing means, this card, where did you get it from? Unexpectedly, he was not afraid and said, do you think I will tell you that? So Quan saw that the guy was about to die but was not afraid and said, hmm, if you do as I say, I will tell you. You know. 
So Quan grabbed his head and said, I'm not good at controlling my strength. So Quan used force to squeeze his head as if trying to crush an orange. He said, I ask again, where did you get this wooden card from? The frightened man quickly shouted, Sook family's people. I received it from Sook family's people. So Quan received the answer and let go and asked, people from the Sook family. He replied, yes, in Sichuan, the martial arts families are expanding their power. After hearing this, So Quan pondered. In Sichuan, the white clans are expanding their power and have connections with the ghost squad. So Quan continued asking, what relationship does the Sook family have with the ghost team? The other guy replied, I don't know clearly because I'm just a guest so I only know a few things. So Quan raised his card again and asked again, is the Sook family a demon sect disguised as a white family? He replied, no, it's not like that. I see that the Sook family has no sympathy for the ghost team. So Quan heard that and asked, Are you saying the relationship between the Sook family and the ghost team is not good? He replied, Instead of saying the relationship is not good, it's more like they are just a relationship of using each other. We don't know the specifics, but between the two sides there was a transaction of quite a large sum of money. But because the Tan Tan faction destroyed the demon spirit squad, the transaction ended. So Quan frowned and thought, Was it a transaction? Could that evil old man be secretly doing something in Sichuan? At this moment, So Quan suddenly heard a scream. Did the young master's master catch him himself? Chan Jie Dong took his men and reprimanded him. If he discovered them, he must send a signal immediately. So Quan turned around and replied, Because the situation is quite urgent, we don't have time to do so. Really, didn't the young knight deliberately not send a signal? Jie Dong asked and signaled his subordinates to deal with the elder of the poisonous snake gate. So Quan didn't care much and said isn't it okay to solve it? After all, I've already found the goddess so I'll go first. Jie Dong also turned around to see where the goddess was. The goddess gracefully walked closer and said softly, Thank you for saving the young knight's life. But So Quan just coldly said, It's just a transaction, today you owe me your gratitude. That's all, then he quickly left. Jie Dong said admiringly, not expecting the young knight to be able to defeat the poisonous snake sword alone. Anyway, not much different from monsters. At this time, So Quan thought as he landed, the transaction between the Sook family and the ghost killer. In my previous life, I didn't know about this at all. He wondered, what kind of transaction was that? If you look up Sook Jia Trang's homepage, you'll know right away. So Quan has arrived outside the gate of the Sook family home. In front of the gate, there are two guards carefully guarding it. So Quan was sitting in the distance looking in. He thought to himself, Mr. Shock and the ghost assassin had secretly traded a large sum of money. However, the assassin caused trouble with Tan Tan faction, so the transaction was terminated. If so, the remaining amount due to the interrupted transaction is still at Suk Jia Trang. At this time, the two guards were talking to each other. One asked, why was it time to change shifts but no one had come yet? The other replied, he must have gone somewhere to smoke a cigarette before coming. After all, addicts are people who have no cure. It seems like that's not what you should say. So the guy you just criticized is also addicted to drugs. If we just need to be determined, we can quit at any time. In the middle of what that guy said, So Quan suddenly appeared. He walked right with both soldiers guarding him. So Quan acted very quickly. Both men lay motionless on the ground. So Quan remembered what they had just said. Drug addict Sook disguised himself as drug addicts. It turned out the whole family were criminals. So Quan pulled the guy inside. He thought to himself, I'm not very good at hiding or infiltrating. If I encounter a situation where I need to hide or sneak in, I'm quite clumsy. He put on the soldier's clothes and thought of a plan. I can't fight all of Sook's people. Although it's a bit troublesome, you have to disguise yourself to get in. So Quan pretends to be a maid to sneak into Sook's house. Before the gate guards discover it, you must quickly find the shock homepage. Because the situation was quite urgent, everything was in chaos. Even though it was night, Sook's house was very crowded. They patrolled everywhere. Because the poisonous snake sword kidnapped the goddess, so I did not issue an emergency announcement. Shocked, not knowing how many bad things had been done, So Quan wore the clothes of the Sook family guard and went deep inside. So Quan looked around and thought, where is the home page? He sneaked inside. Then So Quan saw something that is, guardian team card. There is a room that is strictly guarded by guards. The place that is guarded by a team of guards must be home shock. Well then, let's try to confirm. So Quan thought and took a breath. Then he shouted loudly, something big happened. The two guards in front of the door blocked him from entering and said standing still. So Quan said while panting, I have to urgently meet the website owner. When those two guys heard that they asked, what's going on? So Quan said again, the swordsman had been arrested. When they heard that, they quickly said, what is it? We must report it to the main page immediately. Seeing everything going smoothly, So Quan silently smiled. 
It was easier than I thought. Before he could finish being happy, he heard someone say, wait. When the person who spoke walked out, the guard quickly bowed his head and said, shocked to gather the team leader, the team leader is here. So Quan was a bit startled when he heard it. It turned out that this was the owner of the shock geometry team, an old man with a long beard. The old man came out and asked if the poisonous snake sword had been captured. Who captured him? So Quan replied, it is the lower fifth gate. The old man continued to ask, is there an expert at lower fifth gate who can catch the poisonous snake sword? So Quan bowed his head and said, just in time, the disciples of lower fifth gate's sect master were nearby. The old man frowned and said, if he was a disciple of the master of the fifth sect, it would be possible. So Quan heard that and was about to step in and say, well then, let me talk to the home page. I didn't expect the long bearded old man to say, but shocked that the team was hunting for the poisonous snake sword. So Quan bit his lip, he also knew that this bet was difficult to win. The old man asked again, who told you about this? So Quan secretly felt bad, everything was going very smoothly but, he put his hand on the sword hanging at his side. As expected, it was not that simple. So Quan found it difficult to outweigh this old man, so he had to choose to attack him. He pulled out his sword and rushed towards him. The old man easily blocked the sword strike. He frowned and asked, do you come here to seek death? So Quan saw that he could still block the attack so quickly, so he also stepped back. As expected, the home team was shocked, very strong. Sword energy. He did not expect So Quan to have sword energy. He also understood that So Quan was a strong man. He pointed his finger and ordered, the guard team gathered to protect the safety of the home page. Gather the team to display a sword battle, the soldiers next to him responded and obeyed the order. Soon they were surrounding So Quan. So Quan thought to himself, sword play is indeed the game of the righteous sect. They simultaneously attacked So Quan, but So Quan jumped up in time. So Quan also attacked back, but they relied on the crowd so they rushed forward en masse. So Quan quickly realized their plan. He also carefully defended. So Quan thought to himself, they set up a wheel to reduce our strength. He must counterattack on both sides. So Quan worriedly thought, could we break through? While he was focusing on defense, the leader of the shock gum team rushed in to attack suddenly. So Quan didn't have time to realize it so he was hit. The long bearded old man saw that So Quan had revealed his weakness and shouted. At this moment, everyone killed him. All of his servants rushed towards So Quan at the same time. So Quan calmly calculated that if this continued, other members of the Sook family would also come and be very difficult to handle. If so then, So Quan made a decision, even though he consumed a large amount of internal attack, he only needed one move, so he focused all his energy to attack all of them. Just one move like that could wipe everything out, they all gaped open mouth. The ninth move, So Quan launches into the air, releasing a full moon, he flashed a smile. Immediately there was a huge explosion, and the people of the Sook family also screamed, damn it. At this time in the distance, there was a short old man asking, do you really not know who he is? Two other people accompanying him answered, yes, please forgive me. He is SOC Pagun, the main train. What kind of leader does he have a song? He said unpleasantly. That damn poisonous snake sword guy. I told him not to touch the goddess or the people of the lower five sects in Tian Ho a long time ago. He left angrily and said, finally causing trouble. Even the old man who assassinated the demon king was really worried if he would reveal me to the people of the Tan Tan sect. Then he stroked his beard again and said that he had to go see a fortune teller to see if I and the poisonous snake sword were compatible or not. The subordinates next to him asked in confusion, homepage. He turned around and said no, this was caused by him. Let's go back to the main topic, the subordinate said again. The homepage we have to move as quickly as possible while Shakshiam is holding back him. But he said, no, now I have to immediately go get the books. Suddenly a voice rang out. What's in the books, home page? Trang Trang's subordinates saw a stranger appear and asked loudly who he was. So Quan walked towards them. The subordinate quickly protected the master and said, Master, don't worry, let the subordinates handle him. Shocked the owner said, wait, wait, stop. But two subordinates pulled out their swords, rushed towards So Quan shouting, do you know where this is and dare to rush in? The owner closed his eyes tightly in fear. Countless sounds of killing rang out. After a while, he slowly opened his eyes. He saw two of his subordinates defeated by So Quan. He saw So Quan slowly approaching him and tremblingly asked, So, that's it. Then he immediately knelt down and bowed his head to So Quan, saying, We had nothing to do with the kidnapping of the celestial girl. This is all because of my evil swordsman. But So Quan slowly said, Ghost spirit team, I want to ask a lot of things. When the old Mandarin heard what So Quan said, he was even more startled and scared to sweat. So Quan said again, now there are only two of us left, 
Let's talk a bit. The old man was so scared that he was sweating profusely. So Quan put his hand in his pocket and said, I got this from the poisonous snake sword. He took out the wooden card and threw it in front of the old man, saying, this is the man's property. Shocked, the master looked at the card in front of him. He said this, this is it. The old man recognized that card so he quickly backed away. The old man secretly asked, how did he have the wooden token of the ghost spirit team? So Quan reached into his pocket again and took out something. He threatened, saying nonsense would mean death. The old man frowned and looked at So Quan. So Quan threw the knife out and told him not to try to play tricks. He turned his face around like a book, just as he frowned in annoyance and switched to a cute cat expression. He smiled and said, in order for the conversation to go smoothly, you shouldn't bring up such scary things. But So Quan still did not put the knife away. The old man trembled when he heard So Quan ask, what is your relationship with the ghost killer? The old man mumbled. That, that. When So Quan saw that he refused to speak, he aggressively threatened me to take out my sword before he would say anything. He quickly said I have delivered, the deal is more serious. Shocked, the elder said everything again, plotted to kill the demon king, wanted to get that money back, he would sponsor the capital and we would do business. So Quan thought, this crazy old man, could it be that he stole the leader's head for the war? So Quan asked him, don't you understand what it means for a righteous sect to deal with a demonic sect? He replied, I don't have the right to choose, I can't refuse the ghost killer's offer. That's right, if he dared to refuse, the Sook family would have evaporated. So Quan continued, if you have heard the story in Tan Tan sect, I was the one who did it. You also received great benefits from the opium trade. I found it unbelievable to hear that. No, how did you even know that? Just in case, So Quan remembered the conversation between the two guards earlier. After all, addicts are people who have no cure. It seems like that's not what you should say. So So Quan was sure that the Sook family was involved in the opium trade. And indeed it was. So Quan said, if the Tan Tan sect knew this truth, the manor and the Sook family would no longer exist. He shouted, it is impossible that I sold opium because I was forced by an evil ghost. After the demon spirit squad is destroyed, I will immediately use my hands. So Quan asked, do you want to live? The elder knelt down and begged, please, please save me. So Quan said, I am also the person hired by Tian Ho Lao. I did not come here to punish the Sook family. The old man asked, so how could that be? Are you from a demon religion? When So Quan heard the old man's question, he turned around and smiled and said, there's no such thing, because I'm the one who killed the ghost king. The ghost killer has left Qingqing, but aren't there still traces of him here? So Quan walked towards the elder's two subordinates lying on the ground. He slashed the bag they were carrying and asked, Where are you in the book that records the transaction with A.M. Satqui? The old man saw that and shouted, Ah, that? So Quan bent down to take a notebook from the bag and said, I will keep the transaction between the demon cult and the Sook family a secret. Instead, I will take back the money that the demon slayer has earned. The amount of money that the demon king earns, even the people of the demon sect do not know, if the Sook family keeps their mouths shut. Then that amount of money from the shamanism will be my first capital. At this moment, the shocked elder suddenly stood up and said, You have dealt with the evil ghost. When So Quan heard him say that, he thought that he did not believe it. He said, Why don't you believe it? Let me show you with your own eyes. But unexpectedly, he clasped his hands and shouted loudly, Chok Trang, Chok Pagun, vowed to be loyal to you, sir. So Quan asked in surprise, Why suddenly? The old man said, The dream that I have always cherished is to create a martial arts family like the five great families. Then he turned his head and secretly wiped away his tears and said, but because he couldn't win against the evil demon cults, he degenerated. Then he happily said, I will repent for the things I did in the past. I will obey the words of the great man. A true white man, this old man cooperates with the demon sect but still loves justice. So Quan looked at the old man acting and thought to himself, what nonsense is this guy talking about? The old man surrounded So Quan and praised that the person who defeated the evil demon and the poisonous snake sword was a strong man. The Lord was a person with a generous heart and forgave the evil things that Sook and I did. Furthermore, I will erase all traces of the evil demon king here. Then he shouted, Because of that I, S.O.C. Pagun, will follow the righteous path that you want in the future. So Quan interrupted before he could say more, Hey, master. But he still said it evenly. He would be the grand elder of the Sook family. When So Quan heard him say that, he was surprised. Every month we will send you a dignity maintenance fee. And at any time you can mobilize Sook family members. The dignity maintenance fee is similar to the monthly salary given according to your position belonging to an organization, company, or corporation. After listening to him, So Quan did not know what to say. When he saw So Quan being silent, he smiled and asked, How's it going? But So Quan just said, If that's the owner's intention. I can't refuse but I won't stay at Sook family. 
he saw So Kwan when he refused, he hesitantly asked. Perhaps, sir, he was thinking about the authority of my homepage. But So Kwan only advised, and today only the two of us know, before I come back, let's erase everything related to the Demon King's assassination. Then he said, then I'll go first. Even though So Kwan had disappeared, the old man still waved his hand and said, please consider further, your majesty elder. A few days later, So Kwan was practicing martial arts in a pavilion. Thanks to Home Shock's misunderstanding, in addition to the transaction amount, there is another amount that we did not expect. The money for the next plan should be enough. Chan Jie Dong came in and praised him for being so hardworking. So Kwan asked, what's wrong? Jie Dong put something in front of So Kwan and said, I brought what you asked for. The leader of the Hoa Duong trade group was also waiting at the guest point. So Kwan took the letter that Jie Dong gave him. It was a book. So Kwan flipped through the book and looked at the magic rose. Luckily it was the same as the magic rose in my memory. This is a type of Im Gong based on Yang Qi. If Du Gu Sung practices it, he can overcome the body of the Yin Yin. Jie Dong tilted his head and asked, How can you find out the wrong password? So Kwan said, Of course, let's go to the guest. Jie Dong was extremely puzzled and said, So fast, no matter how I looked, I couldn't see it. She turned around and saw So Kwan gone. Jie Dong chased after her and said, Hey, wait for me. Then she also disappeared. At this time, a man asked, Are you a medicine man who can cure my son's illness? He is the owner of the Poplar Merchant Group. So Kwan looked at the man in front of him and thought, this person is the leader of Hoa Duong Trade Group, which in the future will be the largest and most powerful trade company in the Central Plains. So Kwan said, I am not a doctor. The man surprisingly asked again, no. How is the medicine? So Kwan said, but it is true that I have a way to cure your son's illness. He replied, okay, as long as he can cure his illness, it doesn't matter who he is. It's trapped in a demon's mind. Now I want you to treat it right away. Is that okay? So Kwan replied, of course it's okay. The leader of the Hoa Duong merchant group walked back and forth, saying, Hasn't it been too long? Then he turned his head and looked towards his son's hospital bed and said, No, I have to go there directly. But So Kwan walked out just in time to say, No need to do that. He asked him patiently, Was it over? How was the treatment? So Kwan replied, The treatment went well. About half a month he could get out of bed and stand up. The man heard that and was so moved that he burst into tears. So lucky, so lucky. Thank you so much. Then he said, that's not all. I will definitely repay this favor. Let's have a meal first. At the sumptuous dinner table, the two of them talked together. They were devils. The leader of the Hoa Duong trade group angrily asked, why would a person as big as a demon target the son of a merchant like me? So Quan said, for those who only know benefits like the ten great merchants. The current group does not have any threatening power. So Quan said while eating, the size of the Hoa Duong trade group is not small and the owner of the trade group is also a person who loves his son very much. For the demon sect leader, this was the best choice. He didn't expect it after hearing that reason. He gratefully said, if it weren't for you, my son's life would have been saved thanks to you. So Quan replied, I only do what I should do. Then he said again, I want to express my gratitude. If you want anything just let me know. Well, if you're that straightforward. So Quan stopped speaking and put his hand in his pocket to take out something. He continued, any amount of money is fine. So Kwan threw that stack of papers on the table and said, Please include as many of these spices as possible for me. Fragrance. Why did you ask me to buy it? So Kwan smiled and said this is an investment for my old age. Although he said that on his lips, in his heart, So Kwan thought, Next fall, the spice trade will be on the coast near the poplar trade in Zhejiang. So Kwan remembered what happened in his previous life. Because because of the Oachwoods he was affected, the price of spices skyrocketed. It was those spices that became the foundation that helped the poplar merchant to become the ten great corporations, and the one who received those profits was not the devil but me. The sunflower trade group asked in surprise, What? This is not a difficult matter. I thought you would of course ask me to repay the favor with money but... So Quan smiled and replied, I treated your son not because I expected to be rewarded with money. So Quan smiled and thought to himself, It is impossible to cut open the goose that lays golden eggs so I will build a different relationship from the way the leader does and profit from it. He gave an object to the sorcerer and said, please accept this. So Quan reached out to receive it and asked, what is this thing? This is something that symbolizes the status of a very important customer of the trading company. After hearing him say that, the governor also observed that item for a bit. It was a red jade pendant with the mark of the popular merchant company. Then he said, as long as you have this, no matter where you go to any branch of the merchant company, 
you can easily make transactions. So Quan asked in surprise, is it okay to give me such a precious thing? He smiled happily and said, shouldn't you do that to your benefactor? Besides, I also plan to try investing once. Invest in yourself. The leader of the Hoa Duong Trade Group told me to go to the main company of the Hoa Duong Trade Group to find him in the future, and then return to Zhujiang. So Quan smiled with satisfaction and thought, if the price of spices skyrockets, I will receive a big profit, and it will become an important asset to help me. To be able to continue on the future path, the strength of the poplar caravan is necessary. This is the foundation for that. I originally intended to do the same as the leader but So Quan took out the jade pendant from his pocket. Must make things more exciting. Under the sunlight the jade pendant becomes even more sparkling. Then he thinks about everything from lowering the five gates to seizing the poplar caravan. Now the sect leader must also have his eyes on it. Okay, for now, we have to take care. Suddenly So Quan realized something. Suddenly, a fist made of lightning rushed straight towards So Quan extremely strong. So Quan also quickly realized that he was being attacked, and immediately used his sword to counterattack. Two great sources of energy meet, and then gradually disappear. So Quan looked at the other person and asked, why didn't you say anything and instead rush to attack me? If I was really beaten, what would I do? The other person slowly walked closer and smiled happily and said, ha ha, if I really intended to attack, you wouldn't have been able to avoid it. The person who came was Gwyn Vong, he said with satisfaction, as expected, he was able to create white lightning on the sword. So Quan said, but it is still not perfect. Recently it has only appeared occasionally. Gwyn Vong replied, so now you try your luck. So Quan asked again in wonder, what's with your luck? Why suddenly? Gwyn Vong said again, now you can feel the realm you have reached. So Quan heard that and said then try it once. After saying that, he also began to regulate his breathing to circulate air. So Quan was surprised to see the source of energy he created. He thought in surprise I was just lucky, completely free of impurities and impurities. Gwyn Vang saw So Quan's eyes wide open and asked, Why are you surprised? White thunder itself is a powerful weapon. At the same time, it also acts as armor to protect yourself. That's thunder spirit. When So Quan heard his master say it, he was even more surprised, Thunder Spirit. Gwyn Vong teaches that the spirit of lightning is the realm that creates white error. When you reach perfect spirit, you can feel the true function of the white thunder magic. So Quan slowly stood up and said, removing impurities and impurities in the body by using martial arts, it turns out the white thunder god also has this ability. Gwyn Vong said again, it's not that simple, there are very few heirs from previous generations who can achieve the spirit of lightning. So Quan heard that and asked, if so, then in reality you have been reincarnated and reincarnated. Right? He heard Gwyn Vong say that the physical body enhanced by the white thunder magic technique could not compare with ordinary martial arts practitioners who had been reincarnated and transformed. So Quan remembered the story of his previous life. If he thought about the power that Gwyn Vong had shown in his previous life, then it would not be wrong to say so. So Quan clenched his fists and said if this continues, it won't be long before I can restore my previous state. Gwyn Vang said again, you have absorbed all the energy of the little pill, so now let's go to work. The So Quan heard the master talking about not being able to stop or chase him, so he asked again, yes, where are we going? I have told him before. Having said that, if you absorb all the small pills, we will go to the same place. At this time, Gwyn Vang and So Quan stood in front of a huge family. So Quan asked what this was. On the board is written, Zhang family Sichuan. So Quan remembered, there was a time when his master told him, if you absorb all the remaining energy of the small pill, we will be together. That's right, at that time, master said that we would be together. To the form of Jia Tu Shuyan. The Tu Chuan family is a giant force in the martial arts world, one of the five great families, the lair of the monsters that all martial artists fear. Those who use poison, negative energy, and equipment. The agency. Gwyn Vang and So Quan entered together. If you make a mistake, you can't die normally. At this time, there are two guards outside the gate, their chubby faces looking at the two teachers and students. However, even if the Jiang family rejects foreigners, isn't it too obvious to express his dislike? So Quan looked at the people around him who were constantly glancing at him and his teacher, also a bit panicked. But Gwyn Vang just said don't worry. The Jiang family tends to be very closed and completely eliminate all grievances but it's still basically a family that values honor. But so Quan thought, the royal family that I know is a place of despicable and cowardly people. At this time, there was a person walking towards the teacher and student. As the girl approached, she slowed down. Then she gently said hello and paid her respects to her benefactor. When so Quan heard that, he was a bit surprised. Gwyn Vang said again, it's been a long time since we met. Then he introduced, this person is my disciple. So Quan also clasped his hands in greeting, I am Don So Quan. 
The other person also clasped his hands in greeting, meeting for the first time. I'm Dang Seo Don, she's a beautiful purple-eyed girl. Suddenly she said I really want it. To meet you, young hero Don. The girl in purple asked So Kwon, do you remember me? Ha, huh, don't be shy. So Kwon recalled, Dang So Don, according to Han Geman's information about Dugu Kuchin, there was no other relationship other than family. I heard that Dang So Don has the same bloodline as the head of the two Xu and Zhang family. This lady of the Zhang family often comes into contact with my wife as the daughter of the head of the Zhang family. But how do you say you remember me? Do you know me? I don't know if that's why or not, but I feel that this lady has a better opinion of me than the other people of the Zhang family. The girl said that the homeowner was waiting for the two of them. So Quan thought again, but he must not let his guard down against the Sichuan Zhang family. Long time no see. So Quan looked at the person sitting opposite him and thought, that person is him. That man stroked his beard and said that he had lived a good life all this time. So Quan recognized this person. He was the future Seoul king, the head of the two Xu and Zhang family. So Quan looked at him and thought, on the battlefield he is no different from a demon. But looking at his current appearance, I would believe it if he said he was a Taoist. Anyway, this is the future Seoul king and acting king. Seeing two past life monsters in the same place, the mood was complicated. Gwen Vang said to the Dark King, I have something to ask of you, that's why I came here. The Dark King said you say it. Gwen Vang hesitated to stop talking. I know this is an unreasonable request, but in order for my disciple to become talented, I must rely on you. The King asked, why do you have to go to such extremes? Gwen Vang continued to say, nothing else, can you give me Tian Doc Dan? So Quan was surprised to hear his master say that, Tian, Tian Doc Dan, isn't that the secret elixir of the Sichuan Zhang family? So Quan also understands that such a precious thing is not easy. But the old poison king's laughter interrupted So Quan's thoughts. He laughed loudly and said, I haven't seen you for a long time. You've become an idiot. Then he asked, How much do you want? When So Quan heard him say that, he was also surprised. He exclaimed, What? Gwen Vang heard him say that and suddenly happily asked, Oh really? Gwen Vang clasped his hands and said, Thank you, I will definitely repay this favor. The king said, what can we repay between us? Then the poison king looked at his daughter and said, with the benefactor who saved my daughter's life, of course I had to do that. So Quan thought to himself, I don't know what happened, but if master saved Dang Seo Don's life, I can understand the goodwill of the Zhang family's owner. The dark king said again, if you want to absorb the heavenly poison, you must reach the ultimate level. Your disciples' achievements are not normal. Then he asked how old you are. So Quan replied, yes, 17 years old. He said in surprise, Oh so Don Na is only two years old, at that age he has already reached his peak. Indeed, he was very good. As soon as he finished praising him, he raised his hand and pointed at So Quan. So Quan quickly realized something was wrong. There are many snakes coming. Those snakes quickly entwined So Quan. He realized that it was a feeling of oppression coming from poisonous snakes. So Quan saw the poison king silently observing him. So Quan sweated and thought, could it be that he was trying to test me? So Quan tried to escape the control of the snakes. He clasped his hands and said, Thank you for your praise. Doc King smiled and praised. The atmosphere was also very good. Then he turned around and said to his daughter, Ha ha ha, I've kept you here for too long, Don Na. -ah. Quickly lead the guests to the Medicine King's Hall. The girl replied, Yes. Then she said, Please follow me. Then the girl took So Quan and his teacher and left. The girl in purple is standing in front of the Medicine King's door. It's very difficult for outsiders to get in or out of the Medicine King's Hall, so I'll go in there alone. Then she turned around and went inside. At this time, So Quan also asked Gwen Vang, Master, why did you ask for Tian Doc Dan? Gwen Vang crossed his arms and said, Didn't I already say that? For your achievements, So Quan said again, but in front of Tian Doc Dan. So Quan wondered, It's not poisonous, it's extremely poisonous. If it's poisonous, won't you die if you eat it? Gwen Vang suddenly smiled. Then Gwen Vang also burst out laughing, Ha ha ha. Then he asked So Quan, What, are you afraid? Don't worry too much. To get spirit lightning, you have to use that level of poison to burn lightning energy. When So Quan heard that, he happily smiled and said, Really? Gwen Vang spoke again. Of course he had to endure the pain and side effects. At this time the girl in purple also came out and said I. The girl held out a box and said she had brought the heavenly poison pill. The girl said, If you come here once a month on the full moon day for two years, I will give you the heavenly poison pill. So Quan replied, Ah, yes, thank you. Then the girl said, I want to ask my benefactor something. Both Gwen Vang and So Quan wondered. Gwen Vang asked, What's going on? The girl in purple said, I want to compete with Don Thieu Heap. So Quan felt this aura. Then she asked, I don't know if it's okay. But even though she asked that, 
her whole body was filled with the aura of battle, so Quan also realized poison. The highest level in the Jiang family's esoteric martial arts is to inject poison into the body, and only direct blood relatives can learn it. But, because there is poison in her body, it is very difficult for a female poisoner to get pregnant. At this time, the girl reveals her entire face. So Quan thinks, could it be that the burns around her eyes appeared during the process of becoming a poisoner? But I didn't expect So Quan to say, I refuse. The girl sadly asked, can I ask why you refused? So Quan replied coldly, just because it doesn't bring me any benefit. The girl in purple heard that and gritted her teeth. So Quan looked at her and thought thoughtfully, in my past life, all the poisoners I met were crazy people. Isn't it a very strange thing to put poison into the body to increase internal energy and push martial arts to a higher level in the first place? In some ways, it's even more dangerous than magic. I don't know why she became a single person, but that girl doesn't look sane, and moreover, being in the Zhang family and competing in martial arts with the daughter of the head of the Zhang family is not very good. So let's go. So Quan said goodbye and left. The girl suddenly said, how about a bet? She smiled and said, just in time I have something that the young knight will like. But So Quan is not very interested. He said, for me, the heavenly poison pill, the secret elixir of the Zhang family, is enough. But she confidently said, I'm sure you will like it. If you win, I will give it to you. So Quan thought silently. What? So Quan decided to go over to see what she had to bet on. Just looking at it should be okay. So Quan and the girl in purple stood facing each other, holding something in her hand. But So Quan thought, no matter what Dang So Don took out, I would refuse. But when the girl took that thing out, So Quan looked at that thing in surprise, he marveled that was one of the five famous swords created by Gu De De in the last years of his life. The girl in the purple shirt introduced it. It was a trombone. So Quan recognized this precious sword. This gift was too valuable to refuse. The previous character created the most perfect sword in history. He is the best blacksmith in the Central Plains. Before dying, he burned his soul to create five famous swords, which are Khan Kuk, Inheritance, Fishery, Tam Ko, and finally, the sword of Dam Lo is in the hands of Dang So Don. For martial artists who use swords, Gu De Da's sword is a precious object that anyone wants to have even if it means risking their life. So Quan asked, Can I use this sword to bet? Dang So Don replied, if you don't want to bet, you don't need to answer my question. So Quan touched his sword and said to compete with you. I bet on a famous sword. He asked again, for no other reason. The girl in purple replied, the reason I propose to compete in martial arts is because the young knight is a disciple of my benefactor. Gwyn Vong just remained silent and listened to the So Don's words. But So Quan asked, what does that have to do with martial arts? If he is a disciple of his benefactor, he must be very strong. So Quan looked at her and wondered, is it simply because of the desire to win? Even if I ask more, I probably won't say anything. No matter what I hide, there's nothing bad about me. So Quan said, okay, but I don't have anything corresponding to that sword to bet with the lady. But she said, it's not an object, then she walked towards the right king. So Don gave the sword to Gwyn Vong and said, if I win against your benefactor's disciple, can I ask you a favor? Seeing this, So Quan asked the young lady why she suddenly did that to her master. But the king quickly agreed. Let's decide. So Quan frowned and thought, not sure what that request was but, after speaking to Gwyn Vong, the girl in purple walked towards So Quan and asked, do you need more time to think? So Quan said, no need, master has agreed so I also agree. Gwyn Vong said then the martial arts competition between Don So Quan and Dang Seo Don begins. From the moment So Quan saw the sword in Seo Don's hand, he made a decision. I don't know the reason, but to get the sword, I absolutely cannot lose. So Quan raised his sword and thought, it doesn't matter. If it's already like this then, I must have a way to negotiate. He smiled confidently. So Quan looked at Seo Don's entire body radiating a purple energy source and thought, the opponent is a poison, his body is full of poison, he must make sure that he does not get poisoned. Seo Don then held out his hand. Then, as fast as lightning, he rushed towards So Quan. So Quan did not hesitate, he used the first move and rushed towards Seo Don. But Seo Don aimed for the position at So Quan's waist. While So Quan had not yet realized his true purpose, she used her hand to hit his arm. He quickly backed away. So Quan also immediately realized that this was a poisonous palm. The arm that was struck by the palm became swollen and purple. So Quan frowned, used one hand to cover the wound and thought, sure enough, if it weren't for the white thunder, I would definitely have been poisoned. Then many poison needles appeared from her hand at the same time, then she suddenly disappeared. Then she used speed to approach So Quan. Poisonous needles were released from all four directions and eight directions. So Quan used his sword to fight back everything. Then he safely rushed away. So Quan turned his head to look at Seo Don and thought, simply wanting to test my strength. 
Seems a bit cruel but, he frowned and thought, if that's the case then, I had no choice but to act more cruelly. As soon as he finished thinking, his whole body was covered with lightning and rushed forward. Siodan was no different. Her whole body was covered with a source of purple energy. Rap. Siodan spread his arms. Immediately many things attacked Sokwan. Sokwan said the twenty-first move, defeating the moon, then he also swung his sword. Both men attacked directly, two powerful energies colliding with each other. Then So Quan quickly threw a punch when Seo Don least expected it, but she still used one hand to block it. Both sides seemed to be of equal strength. The two separated and retreated to look at their opponent. At this moment, the hand that blocked the punch was shaking violently. Seo Don looked at So Quan and thought, but did not expect to counterattack at that moment. So Quan also frowned and observed Seo Don. Then he asked, how could the young lady risk her life to compete with me? Seo Don heard him ask so suddenly, and remained silent. Seeing her silence, So Quan continued, if he didn't want to answer then. Speaking of this, he suddenly realized something. So Quan opened his eyes wide and looked up at Seo Don's head and said it was. Suddenly, a powerful and unexpected source rushed straight towards So Quan. By the time he realized it, he didn't have time to dodge, and soon So Quan was bleeding. At this time, Miss Seo Don was using something to attack him from afar. He also recognized that. That's Dang Seo Don's hair jewelry. That thing is called the Soul Chasing Flying Butterfly. The Soul Chasing Flying Butterfly is one of the typical hidden weapons of the Zhang family. So Quan raised his hand to touch the blood on his face and thought, if he had been a little slower, something big would have happened. But as soon as he finished speaking, he suddenly realized poison. So Quan, exhausted, fell to one knee. At this time, Seo Don already had a sword in his hand. So Quan was affected by the poison. His skin began to change. He tried to clench his teeth to reassure himself. He must not lose consciousness. He must hurry. Then So Quan also began to focus his energy. So Quan used white thunder magic to suppress the poison in the body. He knew he had to end it before the poison spread. Seo Don also realized something was wrong. She decided to take action immediately so that So Quan wouldn't have a chance to turn around. She held the sword and quickly rushed towards So Quan. But at this time So Quan also stood up strongly and said, The second and third move, I say moon then swung his sword and slashed hard at the oncoming Seo Don. A loud explosion rang out, dust flew everywhere, making it impossible to clearly see who was standing until the end. But Gwyn Vong realized it. He thought it was over. Lady Seo Don of the Zhang family was hanging her head, and her whole body was filled with lightning. The king declared the winner, is Don So Quan. So Quan was still standing firm but was already tired. He opened his mouth and breathed while thinking. He was indeed a single person. If we don't remove the poison through the magic of white bugs, we are not sure we will be able to win. He walked closer to Seo Don and asked, Miss, are you okay? At first, I thought that the young lady asked to compete with me simply because of her desire to win. But after seeing you put all your effort into martial arts, I think you must have another reason. What are you hiding? But So Quan heard the answer from another direction, that's probably it. The person who answered was Gwyn Vong. He came over and said, because of me. When So Quan saw Seo Don hear Gwyn Vong say that, he bitterly clenched his teeth. He wondered what had happened between the two of them. After a moment of silence, Miss Seo Don said, Before I was kidnapped by a group of black men called Hong Van Bang. At that time, my benefactor destroyed the Red Cloud Gang and saved me. After seeing my benefactor's martial arts skills, I wanted to leave the family and become his disciple. But because I could not learn the martial arts of the Heavenly Thunder sect, my benefactor did not accept me. But when I saw the young knight becoming a disciple of my benefactor, I was blinded by jealousy, so without thinking I made an unreasonable request. Seo Don stood up, bowed and said sorry to So Quan, I'm sorry, I bothered the young knight with my childish emotions. Then she looked at Gwyn Vong and said, sorry for burdening you, my benefactor. So Quan saw that Seo Don did not know the truth about the Thunder Gate, so he turned his head to look at his master and asked, ah about that. But Gwyn Vong shook his head, he didn't want to tell Seo Don the truth. So Quan saw that and didn't say anything anymore. Then Miss Dang also bowed her head and said, Then I would like to go first. So Quan bowed his hands and said, Oh yes. Seo Don added, Thank you for agreeing to compete with me. Waiting for Miss Dang to leave, So Quan turned around and asked the teacher, Why did you stop me just now? Gwyn Vong said, That child wants to defeat you to prove his qualifications and strength. So Quan understood what he meant, so he continued, It was not a matter of qualifications, but because that young lady had broken her. Is the circuit correct? Gwyn Vong replied, You are right. I refuse her not because she is a woman or lacks qualifications. But, it's not because it's broken. That child gave up the life of a woman, to become a bachelor. If I tell him the truth now, it will only hurt him more. 
So Quan also agreed, yes, sometimes it's better not to know the truth. After leaving Dang De, Gwyn Vang and So Quan had a private date. Gwyn Vang asked, did they meet for a private matter? So Quan happily took something out of his shirt and said, didn't I say I would give you a housewarming gift? Gwyn Vang also happily laughed haha then said, let's see. Let's see what a wonderful gift it is. So Quan took out a book and placed it on the table. Gwyn Vang looked at it and asked, this is it, Rose Magic Flower. So Quan slowly explained that this is a fire gong based on the basic foundation of young energy. If you practice it, you can overcome the body of the heavenly Yin. Gwyn Vang picked up the book and asked, in this world, no one would give spiritual dharma as a housewarming gift. So Quan pointed at himself and smiled mischievously and said, I have a child. Gwyn Vang felt surprised, he smiled and said, thank you. So Quan poured wine for Gwyn Vang and said, compared to what my master gave me, it is not worth anything. But Gwyn Vang replied, you have done too much for a disciple. He frowned and silently looked at the boy in front of him. Gwyn Vang also thought in his heart, so Quan, what kind of child are you? Time passed quickly. Two years later, Miss Deng was standing in front of the gate and said to So Quan, today is the last day. So Quan also smiled and said, yes, this was the last time he used the Tian Doc Dan. Now he has grown up, becoming a tall young man. His hair has grown to his waist. So Quan looked at the pill. During the past two years, thanks to this heavenly poison pill, my internal strength has become more and more potent and gradually reached a super peak level and achieved complete white thunder. Today was the last time he took the medicine. He quickly put the pill into his mouth. Thanks to the non-invasive natural poison, almost all types of poison have no effect on us. After taking the medicine, so Quan clasped his hands and said thank you to Sio Don, who was like a young lady. Thank you so much for the past time. Then he turned around and said then I'm leaving. But Sio Don suddenly spoke, young knight, please meet me for a moment. The sorcerer turned around and looked at Sio Don in confusion. Sio Don just smiled. Now Chan Jie Dong also looks different. When she heard that So Quan wanted to go on a wanderlust trip, she was extremely surprised and shouted then said, I heard that there was a lack of agreement to go on a wanderlust trip. But she also realized that she was a bit loud so she spoke softly. Why so suddenly? So Quan said, wasn't it the same last time miss? Jie Dong remembered the last time she and So Quan had a martial arts competition. She had said, I'm planning to go to the Dragon and Phoenix Association. If you're so confident, why don't you join the Dragon and Phoenix Association? G.A. Dong pointed his finger and complained. That's just because you always act so smart. So Quan said. Thanks to that, it helped my plan a lot anyway. G.A. Dong said in surprise, plan? So Quan smiled at her. He knows that the Dragon and Phoenix Association is the largest scale event of the White Dao martial arts a training ground for top experts and extremely fierce competition. If you want to reduce the power of the nine great sects and five great families, and at the same time become an elder of the Martial Arts Alliance, then you must definitely be recognized and achieve great achievements in the Dragon and Phoenix Guild. Or in other words, winning in the Dragon and Phoenix Guild is the first step to becoming an elder of the Alliance. So Quan smiled and said, Is there such a thing? Jie Dong waved his hand in dissatisfaction and said again, Only I know that if I don't say it, you won't know, right? Then she asked, So what is your purpose? So Quan replied, So calm, first I will go to the poplar merchant to meet the merchant's owner. Ah, uh, that's right, I invested all your reward. I know you won't say, but I still want to ask. How did you know that the value of spices would skyrocket due to singing? So Quan said with a serious face, It's actually me. Knowing that God's will, he spoke mysteriously. Jie Dong thought he was joking and said, Stop talking, you really are. At this time, in front of Gwyn Vang's yard, there was a teenager who was enthusiastically practicing martial arts. That's Du Gu Sung, the kid who asked So Quan to buy gourd candy when he was little. So Quan stood to the side and looked at him practicing. He thought, did you know that he was the master's son? Look, he's clearly not an ordinary talent. If in his previous life, he would have died but I saved his life, I want to see him grow up but... While he was thinking, Lady Seo Min Hai came out and smiled and said, So Quan, Jie Dong, let's eat again. Everyone goes to the dining table. While talking about So Quan wanting to go on a trip to the lake, Lady Seo Min Hai was so worried that she burst into tears. Gwyn Vong comforted his wife, he already had enough ability to protect his body, so she shouldn't worry too much. If if it were So Quan, with its strength, it would be able to join the team of great masters in the world. After finishing the farewell meal, Gwyn Vong said, After all, I am already an unknown martial artist, maybe I should also go see the wanderers. I am also thinking about this. I wish you will achieve everything you desire in this wanderlust trip. So Quan also said, Master, I will go and return. Gwyn Vang also said, Okay, take care. So Quan said goodbye to everyone, but the little boy even tried to wave and say, So Quan brother, go and go home. 
So Quan smiled, for him, now is the official beginning. Brother So Quan, go and go home. So Quan went to the carriage, we will leave immediately, tell the masters to prepare to go. Before So Quan and Jie Dong got in the car, a person appeared, he said, here we are. So Quan looked at the person who had just said in surprise, how did that happen? The person who came was Miss Dang Seo Don. She smiled and said, see you again, young master Yun. So Quan also exclaimed, Miss Dang? So Quan remembered what King Gwen said to him, Seo Don wants to go on a trip to the world with you. The owner of the family also asked me for this, can you take Seo Don with you? So Quan said, after all, this is a bit inconvenient. Even if the master asks, I cannot bring a person with so many variables beyond my control. When the right king heard So Quan's refusal, he remained silent. So Quan thought, clearly at that time I had definitely refused, but now Seo Don is also here. Seo Don said, I heard that the young knight refused my father's request. That's why I came here to speak directly to the young knight, just to be fair. Can I accompany you on this trip? So Quan listened to Seo Don and remained silent. But Jie Dong suddenly appeared, hugged Seo Don's shoulders and smiled. What are you worried about? Let's go together, isn't two better than one? And three is better than two? If we are from the Zhang family, we are definitely not an incompetent person, and if we have someone knowledgeable about poison and hidden weapons with us, we will be even safer, right? Jie Dong's words also made Seo Don think strangely, a hidden weapon agency. So, So Quan put his hand on his chin and considered. Then he said, it sounds good. Jie Dong also happily said, really? So Quan thought about where he wanted to go, then said, perhaps Miss Dang will become a great help to us. That is the secret move of Tian Ki too who was both an expert in the past and the world's number one expert in formations. That was the cave that the angels secretly renovated. That place hid countless treasures of the millennium. In the previous life, this secret was discovered five years later. Outside the secret cave, there are countless formations to prevent others from entering this place. And there are countless agencies set up that are difficult to reach. But if I get help from Miss Dang who is familiar with organs and hidden weapons, I can enter the secret cave of the heavenly air. So So Quan happily said, let's go, Miss Dang. Seo Don said, I'm a young knight. Jie Don also introduced himself. My name is Chan Jie Dong. Just call me Jie Don sister. Seo Don asked in surprise. Sister? Jie Dong said, if you don't feel comfortable when I call you sister then. Seo Don smiled and said, it's okay. Take care of me later, Jie Dong. Jie Dong also smiled and said, in the future I also hope that Seo Don will take care of me more. So Quan looked at the two girls chatting comfortably and thought sadly. My peace on the road has now become meaningless. Hope. The carriage of three people is moving. While Jie Dong and Seo Dong were engrossed in conversation, So Quan was absentmindedly looking out the window. He is remembering his past life. In my previous life, I lost my life because of the betrayal of the demon religion. I thought my life was over, but, but unexpectedly, we regressed and had the opportunity to have a new life. To have a new life different from the hellish life in my previous life, I am determined to become an elder of the Martial Arts Alliance. Because that day took us nine years to prepare, and now everything really begins. The devils who gave me a new life, I don't know how to thank you anymore. Thank you for your betrayal at that time. In this life I will return it tenfold. At this time, the carriage had stopped and the three of them were resting when Jie Dong said, Seo Don, do you want to see this? Seo Dong asked curiously, what is that? So Quan also looked over. Jie Dong took something out of her pocket, then she happily said, I just bought it recently. It was a hairpin. Jie Dong put it in his hair and asked Seo Don, was it beautiful? Seo Don complimented, wow it's so beautiful but it doesn't seem like a normal brooch right? Jie Dong said, that's right, it's a poison rose for you. Seo Don cried out loud when he heard that. So Quan silently looked at the two of them. So Quan looked at Seo Don who was covering her mouth and smiling lovingly and said, thank you sister. He thought he didn't expect that Dang Seo Don was also a girl like that. Suddenly there was a sudden noise that made all three people silent. Many people appeared, stood in front of all three and said loudly, Hey you guys. They were screaming, those fearless bunch. The leader is a guy with a spiky head, a long scar on his eye. He carries a big knife on his shoulder. Arrogantly saying, This mountain was opened by the fierce tiger camp. This tree was planted by the fierce tiger camp. If you want to go through it, quickly pay the toll. The remaining subordinates also burst out laughing. Ha ha ha. So Quan frowned at the group of people in front of him. Ha, what is this group of people? The horseman approached So Quan and said, Just give them money, don't worry, just stay on the carriage. So Quan stood up and said, I know. All three people stood up and went into the carriage. The driver gave the money to the thugs and said, Please accept it. They replied with satisfaction. It's always easy to talk to smart people. Suddenly, a 
A subordinate shouted, Big brother, big brother, then he pointed to the carriage and said excitedly, Over there. The big brother looked at the subordinate's finger. When he saw Xiao Dan and Jie Dong, he complimented them. They were beauties, and the subordinate said, If he brought them back, the farmer would be very happy. The big brother was even more delighted when he heard that. He smiled lewdly and said then before bringing them back, we should educate them a bit first, right? The boss gave the money back to the driver. He said, hey, this money is your money. You keep it. The driver quickly said, oh my god, those people are guests of our bureau. I will pay extra fee. The guy with the bald head shouted angrily and shut up. Then he pushed the coachman down to the ground and walked towards So Kwan. The guy standing in front of Seo Don said awkwardly, beautiful lady, come with me. But then he frowned angrily. When he saw the birthmark on Jie Dan's eye, he angrily said, Why is your face like that? Then he suddenly said, You're ruining my mood, damn it. Jie Dong who was standing behind heard him say that and angrily said, You dare. But Seo Dan raised his hand to stop her. The subordinates laughed. TSK TSK. With that face you can't get married. Another subordinate said, Big brother, we also captured a few people from the neighboring village yesterday. You should choose someone else. Then that. The first guy also said, You also heard what they said. Even if you get married, you have to pretend to enter the house for nothing. Anyway, no one wants to marry you, so why don't you be my concubine? If you can cover up some bad spots, you'll be fine, he said as he raised his hand to cover the side of Seo Don's face with birthmarks. Then the boss of the station was about to turn around and announce to his subordinates, Today I will bring back your fourth sister-in-law. But as soon as he finished speaking, he suddenly felt a slight pain. He lowered his head to look down at his chest, and saw six hairpins buried deep in it, the surrounding skin had turned purple. Then he saw Seo Don's hands holding the same brooches. He stammered and said, She, she is poison. But before he could finish his sentence, he was foaming at the mouth and his eyes were bleeding. His blood splashed. Just a split second later, his whole body fell at Seo Don's feet. His subordinates saw this and shouted in panic, Big brother, how dare you touch big brother? When So Kwan saw the situation before him, he sighed while Jie Dong smiled complacently. Seo Don slowly said, holding the poison brooch in his hand, you won't die easily. The spiky guy's subordinate screamed, that evil thing, she, our big brother, we can't let them leave this place alive. Seo Don also said, that's right. You can't leave this place alive either. They rushed up angrily, the woman was arrogant. But without waiting for them to rush forward, Seo Don proactively jumped into the enemy's arms. As soon as she landed on the ground, she quickly attacked the thugs. They were blown away by her with her bare hands. Then she turned around again. Attacking the remaining guys, they all fell without having time to react. One by one, they fell down one by one. The remaining men saw their comrades being gradually defeated and immediately panicked. Seo Don turned his head to look towards them. Blood and gore splattered everywhere. After only a moment, all the thugs were defeated, blood flowing all over the ground. Then she went to where the coachman was sitting, saw him holding her leg and said, It seems like your leg is dislocated. Let me help you straighten it. The coachman stammered and said, Thank you very much. So Kwan saw Seo Don's fierce killing scene and was stunned, dangling Seo Dong. He looked at those who had just insulted Seo Don, who were now lying on the ground, not knowing whether they were alive or dead, and realized that the Zhang family absolutely would not forgive those who dared to insult them. Even if you have to risk your life, you still have to pay blood for blood. Jie Dong saw Seo Don helping the driver and so he approached and asked, Sister, do you need my help? Seo Don replied, I don't. But before she could finish her sentence, she felt something behind her. It turned out to be the big guy with the big head from before. He's not dead yet even though he was poisoned. At first glance he looked like a walking corpse. But he still walked up to Seo Don and screamed, Die! Then he used his hand to hit her hard. So Kwan, who had been standing still and observing everything, now took action. He quickly rushed forward and slashed the neck of the bald guy. His eyes rolled back. He trembled and couldn't make a sound, your family. Blood continuously spurted out from the place where he was cut, then he screamed a long time ah ah. Immediately after that he collapsed, he was finished by So Kwan. So Kwan thought, even though he was poisoned by the clan but was still alive, these bandits were quite good. So Kwan glanced at the man's blood wetting one shoulder of his shirt. Anyway, all the blood was already bleeding. So Kwan turned around and asked the coachman, Chiu Dao, how long will it take to reach the next village? The coachman replied, if we want to reach Shanxi, we have to cross this mountain but, even if we go day and night without stopping, it will take a few more days to arrive. So Kwan touched his blood-stained shirt and thought in disgust, hateful, I still have to endure this blood-stained body for a few more days. At this time Seo Don spoke up, Don. She said a little sadly, I should have handled it more neatly, I'm sorry. So Kwan told her, 
who would have thought that the bandit could withstand the poison of that family? Seo Dan continued, Yes, can I ask the young master about something? So Quan asked, What's going on? Seo Dan continued, It seems that bandits have kidnapped women in the village. So Quan also remembered what these bandits said just now. When Big Brother entered the village, we also caught a few girls yesterday. Big Brother should have chosen someone else. So Quan asked, Do you want to save those people? Seo Dan said, It's okay if I don't know, but once I know, I can't ignore it so I want to ask the young knight for help. So Quan heard her say that and was a bit thoughtful. Seo Dan saw this and said, If it's awkward for a young knight, I'll be the one alone. But So Quan interrupted her and said, No, let's go together. Seo Dan heard So Quan agree and was happy. Then So Quan turned around and asked the driver, Chiu Dao, you know the location of the tiger. The camp was empty. When the coachman heard him mention it, he stammered and said, I know, I know. At this time at the fierce tiger camp, the sound of an excited person rang out, come here. He tried to hug a poor girl, he came close to her ear and said, don't you like me? The woman he hugged was trembling non-stop, she begged, please, please, forgive me. He is Mac Payam, the owner of the camp. While he was intoxicated with the girl, a subordinate ran in to announce that there was an attack on the farm owner. He shouted angrily, why attack soldiers or civilians? The subordinate hesitated and said, that's not a soldier. It was a man and a woman rushing in here from two different directions. When he heard the number, he looked down on him, continued to touch the girl next to him, and said, There are only two people, so why do you have to come and tell me? The subordinate said, he didn't know the other guy's situation, but the woman used poison and hidden weapons. It seemed like she was a member of the Tuong family. The bald farm owner was a bit shocked when he heard the words Zhang family. The guy standing there let go of the girl in his hand and asked, Why did the family come here? The subordinate seemed like when he went out to collect the travel fee. The subordinates bumped into someone from the family. But the bald guy didn't care much and said, Well, even if they are family, there are only two people. Gather people towards the woman. Let's prolong the battle until she uses up all her hidden weapons. After he finished speaking, he reached out and picked up his weapon. The subordinate asked again, What about the other guy? He picked up the weapon and said, Just leave that guy to me. Right now, on So Kwan's side, he is asking, I have something to do in this mountain camp, you two should guide me. The two mountain bandits guarding the gate shouted and shut up. But So Quan slowly said, I don't want to see any more blood, but there is no other way. Suddenly the bald guy came out from nowhere, he shouted loudly, Kid, some of his subordinates called, farm owner. The bald man growled and asked, Do you know where this is, don't you dare, what grudge do you have with the fierce lake camp that you suddenly barged in here like this? So Quan said, Your subordinates attacked our group. And I heard them say you kidnapped the women in the village, the bald man asked. So why do you want to be a knight to save them? So Quan thought to himself, what kind of knight? He looked at the blood stains on his shirt and said, I have to save those people but I got the blood of those subordinates splashed on me, so I need water to wash it off. Hearing that, the bald guy stomped his feet angrily and shouted, You broke into my lake camp just to get some water to bathe in. He waved his weapon threateningly, no matter what. I was originally a military officer who served the general. Then he stabbed it towards So Quan and said, I once survived a hellish battlefield. But So Quan still avoided it, saying, Anyway, mountain bandits are bandits. Then So Quan kicked the bald head of the farm hard and said, I have nothing to do with you. As soon as So Quan kicked him in the stomach, the bald man immediately spat blood. Then he flew far away. By the time he stopped, he was unconscious. His subordinates witnessed the unconsciousness of their farm master and screamed incessantly. But So Quan grabbed them and said, now you guys will lead the way for me. They obediently said yes. At this time, Jie Dan was standing on a high tree branch, observing everything So Quan was doing from afar. She thought to herself, Dan Thie Heap, we still don't fully understand about young heroes. No need to give anything in return, just do it. Completely overwhelming. Not yet twenty years old but already had the strength on par with a hundred great masters. She remembered the words that Gwyn Vong had said before. With So Quan's strength, he could stand among the hundred great masters in the world. Summer. Perhaps soon another hero will appear in the history of martial arts. The girls rescued by So Quan and Seo Dan bowed their heads and said, Thank you sir. I don't know how to repay this favor. Seo Dan also said, Thank you for agreeing to my unreasonable request. So Quan turned around and said, I just did what I had to do. At this time in Shangxi, there were countless rumors, whether this person had heard anything or not. The other person asked, What happened? The other person continued, the fierce tiger camp was destroyed and the captured people were rescued by a young man and woman. We also heard that the girl was a member of the Zhang family. At this time, So Quan, Seo Dan and the whole Jie Dan were also sitting nearby eating. So they also heard what the other two people were talking about. They all marveled together, 
Do you mean just two or two people were able to defeat fifty mountain bandits? That's right. Moreover, they also divided the wealth they took from the mountain camp to the captured people, not just to save money. It's okay if they get home safely. Then they said again, night, definitely a night. Jie Dan heard what they said and tilted his head and said to So Quan, Oh young knight is a knight, there is a knight. Of course, they all talk about Seo Dan but, Jie Dan asked curiously, but why did Thia Heat give them their wealth without any conditions? This is the first time I've seen Thia Heat give away without any conditions. So Quan did not answer, he thought while eating, in fact, the money invested in selling spices has given me a huge profit. Doing a good job like this will be more beneficial in creating a good relationship with Dang Seo Dan. If Seo Dan realizes that we don't care about money at all, but simply help them, then maybe next time we will if you ask for something. Seo Dan won't refuse. Thinking about it, this is like a stepping stone to solving the mystery of the heavenly weapon. Jie Dan saw that he still didn't answer. So he tilted his head and asked, Hey, did you hear what I said? So Quan thought again. After all, reputation is not something that is easy to gain. The gossip continued to resound. I heard that the farmer came from the army. How strong are those two people, cousin? I also participated in that transfer. I heard that those two people didn't take a penny from me. I only exterminated those bandits because it brought great benefits, but that's all. Through the mouths of many people, it was raised to the status of chivalry, and a human voice rang out, certainly a true chivalry. When a one-star knight appeared, so Quan knew that superior martial arts and reputation were important conditions to become a veteran of the martial arts league, a righteous warrior. In any case, association was better than mere reputation. Secretly built up a reputation, then waited until after winning at the Long Feng Clan to announce his identity. The winner of the Dragon Feng Clan was a knight that everyone knew and admired. The pseudo-gentleman of the righteous faction went crazy. Because righteousness and chivalry will elevate us to become a true knight. I thought it was a worthless fight but... It was much better than that. Suddenly So Quan saw a girl approaching the station. She said something at the Don station. Then Jie Don turned around and said, Don Thia Heap, there's something wrong. So Quan asked, what's going on? Jie Don said, recently in Tian Te, a villain appeared. Last night he must have killed a disciple of the Hoa Sun sect. So Quan asked, what does that have to do with us? Jie Don continued, the head of the flower sect got angry and ordered a blockade of the entire Shanxi so we will have to stay here until that evil guy is captured. So Quan sighed. Then he spoke up and said, I have something to do and I'm going out for a moment. You two are waiting for me at the guest house. So Quan walked out. He thought as he walked, I have a headache and even though there's no reason to rush, I don't like wasting time pointlessly. But I don't want to catch this demon. So Quan pondered. Even though Hoa Sun has ordered him to be hunted down, if we can catch him at this time. I will be the one to prove the shortcomings of the Hoa Sun sect and doing so is like poking into a fire and nest. Each person checks once. First, he has to go back to check the situation. While he was engrossed in thinking, suddenly a voice rang out. Can you stop walking for a moment? That person asked. Why do you avoid checking? So Quan didn't understand and asked again. What are you talking about? That person walked up and said, I've been observing the actions of those Taoists all this time. Aren't you planning on running away? So Quan replied, It seems you misunderstood. Don't be so suspicious for no reason. The other person asked again, The demon murdered our sex disciples and fled. He is good at disguising and changing his voice. So we must investigate each person carefully. Can you tell me their names? Are not. So Quan looked at the other guy and asked, Before asking my name, shouldn't you introduce yourself first? The man in the green shirt was about to pull out his sword and say, Let's see if you don't cooperate then I have no choice but to use force. After that person finished speaking, he smiled sarcastically. So Quan thought to himself, although I was very upset by his threatening attitude, I should not offend the Taoist priest in the territory of the Hoa Sun sect. So he said his name, Don So Quan. The man in blue said, it doesn't seem like he's from Shanxi. Do you have any way to prove your identity? So Quan replied, the person who can prove his identity to me is at the inn. The man in blue said, what's wrong with the witness? Guide the way. So So Quan took him to the guest house where he was staying. The man in blue saw Seo Dan and asked, I heard that he can prove this person's identity. Who is he? Seo Dan held out the card and said, Dang Seo Dan of Zhang Jia Tu Xuyan. The man in blue saw the card and suddenly exclaimed, Zhang Jia Tu Xuyan? That person hastily clasped his hands and said to Seo Dan, to pay his respects to Taoist Chan Ku of Hoa Sun. Seo Dan replied, Chan Ku is very happy to meet you, but why? So Quan standing next to him saw him hastily change his attitude and angrily thought, as soon as he heard it was the Zhang family. He didn't bother to ask anything, and even called himself by his name, Ah, right flower we are chasing the guy, evil devil. 
Then the green shirt man intimately hugged So Kwon's shoulder. He happily said, If from the beginning Don Young Knight said he was going with Miss Dang, I wouldn't have come here to bother you like that. It seems like Miss Dang. I want to introduce you to the lady haha. -ha. So Kwon patted the hand on his shoulder, this hand. Suddenly someone called, Don So Kwon. G.A. Don saw everyone standing there so he asked, What are you guys doing here? As soon as Chan Ku saw the G.A. Don coming, he blushed and stared at her in ecstasy and asked, Ah, who is this? Chan Ku clasped his hands to greet G.A. Don. The poor monk was from the Hoa Sun sect. But G.A. Don didn't pay much attention. She went to pull So Kwon's hand. She said that G.A. Don and I had something to do. We should go first. She left behind the blue shirt Taoist who was regretfully watching. It's true that the blue bird is green, the green shirt killer. As Jie Dan walked, he said to So Kwan, that Taoist was originally like that, don't pay attention. So Kwan asked, do you know who he is? Jie Dan said, why don't you know? Even though he looks like that, he still has many shortcomings. But that person is one of the ten geniuses. He is the only disciple of the Apricot Divine Sword. That person is the only disciple of my Ho Divine Sword, Apricot Divine Sword, a great master, the swordsman symbolizing the Hoa Sun sect, the top of the ten geniuses. A person crazy about swords, people call him a sword devil. That's why a person's background is very important. If he becomes a veteran of the martial arts alliance and has absolute power, so Kwon thought to himself, I will fight those insolent political factions like him. When standing in front of a door, Lady Jie Dong said, Well, here it is. So Kwon asked in surprise, Where is this that you asked me to go with? Jie Dong said, Black market. I thought you would need to buy something so I brought you here. The black market is where all kinds of stolen goods and other illegal things are sold. So Kwon thought, I've only heard about it, and never been there, now it's good. Then Jie Dong gave him a mask and said hey, take it. So Kwon looked at the black mask that Jie Dong gave him and asked in surprise Fox Mask, why? Jie Dong said, without an agreement to show her true face in the black market, so she also put on a white fox mask. So Kwon saw that it was reasonable for her to be so careful. The door to the black market gradually opened. The two went down the stairs, Jie Dong said, so let's go see what's there. After a while of returning, So Kwon said to Jie Dong, next time if there is a black market, please take me there too. Jie Dong said, the young knight only bought the magic spell, he still wants to go there. Why, So Kwon said, Chi Men Dan is a medicine to treat internal injuries that can only be prepared in Wudong Mountain. He looked at the thing he just bought and said, it doesn't help increase internal energy like elixir. But depending on the situation, this thing can become a lifesaver. But So Kwon still said even so, Ten Tails is not too expensive. Star. She remembered the face of the black market trader when So Kwon gave him Ten Tails and said, If the black market trader was that surprised, then you must have paid too much money. So Kwon said, I just don't want to waste my energy pointlessly on bargaining. Above all, to me Ten Tails is not a large amount of money. When Jie Dong heard that, he regretfully said, If I had known like this, I would have invested in Thieu Heap at that time. But, So Kwon said I will lend you a loan with super low interest. Jie Dong criticized that when he heard that, she said that's enough. Suddenly the two of them heard, this woman dares to refuse my wine. The person who spoke was a middle-aged man. He was talking to a woman wearing a purple shirt, then he said, With that disgusting face of yours, how dare you confront me, that woman. Say, those words, can you be responsible for them? So Kwon just looked at the woman and patted his head in confusion, thinking, why is everyone causing trouble with the Zhang family's people? The other man continued to say, This woman is Don Kwong, the leader of the Tian Tan gang. But you dare, the woman talking to him is Seo Don. Suddenly he widened his eyes. Then he fell to his knees suddenly. The guys around him shouted, Gang leader. Only now did he realize it, he trembled and said, Perhaps, perhaps it was poison. Seo Don coldly said, I asked if you could take responsibility for your words. White foam came out of his mouth, he said angrily despicable. Jie Dong came over and said, why would someone try to cause trouble with the Jiang family and get poisoned? Thanks to Jie Dong's words, that old man woke up. The old man began to realize who he had just offended. He stammered, dang Jiang family? Then he said, I didn't know this was a noble person and I did something rude and hope you'll forgive me. So Kwon looked at him, although he had been poisoned but was still unharmed, and thought, he could withstand Jie Dong's poison so his strength was probably not bad. It seems that in this area there are also some powerful black magic powers. The man started to turn purple but still tried to say, I'm too drunk so I can't stay awake. Please detox. So Kwon saw this and told Seo Don, Miss, could you leave the matter of handling this guy to me? But Seo Dong said, because of me, this happened, I can't bother you again. So Kwon persuaded me, 
I have this idea so can you give me a chance. Seo Don heard him say that and was a little silent. Then she said, if that's the case, then leave it to the young knight. So Quan replied, thank you young lady. After getting what he wanted, So Quan thought, so now. He went to the man who was collapsing from poisoning. The fat man's subordinate said, if this keeps up, our leader will die. So Quan asked, do you want to save his life? Then he bent down and whispered into the ear of the fat man who was barely alive from the poison. If you accept my mandate, of course you will be detoxified. Promise not to ask anything about this. When he heard the fat man urgently shout, no matter what, I will do it, sir. So Quan showed a proud smile. Time passed until evening. There was an angry sound cursing. You bastards, I absolutely will not let them go so we have to kill them all. The fat man remembered the contract between him and So Quan. So Quan said, tonight I will come and tell you the content of the trust. The old man thought thoughtfully, it would obviously be a strange assignment. But how should we handle that guy? The subordinate also said, gang leader, wouldn't it be very dangerous to touch someone traveling with the Zhang family? But that fat man didn't care. He continued to plan to kill So Quan. Then he said, yes, let's ambush him and attack him on his way here. If it was done cleanly, no one would know. He reached out and picked up the weapon. Then he told his subordinate to quickly gather everyone together. The subordinate quickly replied, ah, yes. The fat man smiled wickedly and said, deal with that guy neatly and then go to Zhang family. While he was planning, the subordinate from before was kicked into the wall in front of him by someone. The fat man turned his head and shouted, who is it? When he clearly saw who was coming, he was shocked. So Quan, covered in lightning, walked in and said, didn't you tell your subordinates that I was coming? You're just making your subordinates work pointlessly. At this time, the fat man's servants were lying on the ground, all of them bloody and unconscious. So Quan saw the fat man holding a weapon in his hand and asked in confusion, But why are you holding an axe? It's not the middle of the night, are you going to cut wood? The fat man trembled like a leaf and replied, No, it's not like that, anyway, tell me the content of your trust. So Quan replied, There is nothing special to help me find the whereabouts of the demon that Hoa Sun is chasing. Whether using connections or mobilizing people from the underworld, you can use any trick, find out his location. The fat man heard So Quan's order and awkwardly asked, If, if you arbitrarily kill the demon that the Hoa Sun sect is red-eyed in pursuit of. But So Quan interrupted him, No need to complain, you just need to find where he is hiding and tell me. In So Quan's mind, he thought to himself, As long as he let the people of the Hoa Sun sect know the location of that demon, I'm afraid the order to seal the city will be lifted, and... Without offending the Hoa Sun sect, this is the most perfect plan. Then So Quan said, You just need to tell me the location of that demon. You don't need to worry about other things. After So Quan finished speaking, he turned around and said, You understand, then I'll leave. The fat man saw that So Quan had his back turned to him, and the hand holding the axe began to move. But So Quan suddenly spoke up, Oh, and the most important thing, we must find the location of the demon before the Taoists of Hoa Sun D. The fat man was raising his axe high towards So Quan as well. Startled and withdrew. So Quan suddenly changed his tone, threateningly said, If you can't do this, he finished speaking and emitted a source of energy. This source of energy made the fat man unable to breathe. He struggled to think, no, he couldn't worship. While he was still in pain, So Quan disappeared, leaving only one sentence, I wait to hear from you. As soon as So Quan left, the fat man fell to the ground with all his strength. The old man trembled as he thought, Damn how did he find that guy faster than the people from Hoa Sun? He suddenly heard the subordinate who was still healthy, and no longer looked like a human. He was groaning and reaching out towards him. Suddenly he also felt something. After a period of searching, the fat man told So Quan that he had found the demon. So Quan sat on the chair and said you have worked hard. So Quan thought to himself, the black gang is indeed very good at finding people. Then he told the fat man to leave. So Quan stood up and said well then. He picked up his black fox mask and said going out for a walk. By the way, let's see how those monks caught the devil. At this time, the yard was surrounded by a group of black people. So Quan stood from above and saw the demon surrounded in the middle. He thought to himself, has it begun? The demon trapped in the middle seems to be in a deadlock. Suddenly So Quan realized, oh, that was apricot flower sword formation. Five people stand around the demon like five petals of an apricot flower. The demon stands in the middle like a flower bud. So Quan silently praised, it is indeed a typical sword formation of the Hoa Sun sect. Even though the realm of these Taoists is only top-notch still, is fighting back the devil who has reached super peak. At this time, although those Taoists were not as strong as the demon, thanks to joining forces to form a plum blossom sword formation, they were able to suppress the demon in the middle. Even though the demon was in a state of mindlessness due to being invaded by demonic energy, the group of Taoists still had the upper hand. The demon was stuck between five people, 
not knowing how to attack or defend. He was clearly in a difficult situation. At this time, Chan Ku was standing on high and said, Now it's over. But the person standing next to him suddenly felt unusual and said, Wait, he? The demon was cornered and went crazy, roaring. Those vile Taoists, seeing this Taoist suddenly become strange, the Taoists reassured each other, Everyone don't panic, maintain the sword battle. Then the crazy demon attacked quickly. The demon attacked so quickly that it surprised everyone, it was so fast. The moment the demon smiled happily and raised his sword to attack the Taoists, a voice rang out, telling you to stop. When the demon heard that, he stopped and looked to see who was speaking. He saw Chan Ku holding a sword and rushing towards him. But he was not afraid at all, on the contrary, he smiled. Then he used incredible speed to jump up and dodge Chan Ku's sword strike. Then he said, you idiot. Chan Ku fell for the devil's trick. The sword and flower formation was broken, creating an escape route for the devil. The demon quickly ran away, he happily shouted, it was good to open a way out this way. At this time, So Quan, observing from afar, also cursed Chan Ku for being so stupid. Only now did Chan Ku realize his mistake, and the surrounding Taoists also blamed him. What was Chan Ku doing for not maintaining the sword battle? So Quan saw the demon running away like a bird from a cage and could no longer sit still. He quickly followed the demon's trail. The demon stopped after running a long distance to escape. The guy stopped panting because he thought he had successfully escaped, but he did not expect that So Quan was observing him from afar. He remembered Chan Ku's previous mistake and was angry. The stupid Taoist, but just now he hastily broke the sword formation. If the demon if we escape successfully, our plan will be ruined. So Quan jumped down in front of the demon. He didn't use his sword like usual because he thought, maybe my identity would be exposed if I left a sword mark on his body. If you want to deceive the people of Hoa Sun, there is no other way than using your bare hands. Although So Quan had not yet taken action, the demon was in pain from a source of energy. Blood poured out of his mouth. He thought, is this innate true energy? Damn, I thought he would return to the same place. And with me. Even though it was very painful, the demon still tried to escape the control of the true spirit. He rushed towards So Quan, intending to slash him. Although his speed was very fast, So Quan escaped easily. So Quan used his hand to attack him again. Then he jumped up and swung a kick. The demon was surprised, but still used his hand to block it. So Quan thought dissatisfiedly, well, to protect his body, he couldn't do one move. After the demon blocked it, he quickly counterattacked. He waved his hand and pushed So Quan away. Then he used his speed to rush closer to So Quan. So Quan was pushed away and still can't stand. The demon took the opportunity and slashed at So Quan. But he did not expect So Quan to not only quickly stand firm but also dodge his slashes. So Quan stood far away from him and thought, because he used innate true energy to maintain his state. If this time continued, the people of Hoa Sun would come. At this time, the demon was still approaching. So Quan thought to himself, if he couldn't attack from the outside then So Quan would use his hand that had lightning in it. Then he rushed down from above. Use your hand to grab the demon's head. So Quan thought decisively, he had to attack from the inside. Thunder beams spread out everywhere. After a while, So Quan also stopped. The demon was lying in a heap on the ground. So Quan left the demon behind, turned around and left, leaving the rest to the group of Taoists. But when he was about to leave, a voice rang out, Can you spare some time for me? I want to talk to you for a moment. So Quan suddenly turned his head and thought, That person was so close but I couldn't feel it at all. When he turned his head, the first thing he saw was an apricot flower hanging on the other person's waist. So Quan realized that it was the apricot flower pattern of the Hoa Sun sect. So Quan was secretly surprised in his heart. There is only one person in Shanxi who can cause such a feeling of pressure on me. That was the magic sword of the apricot flower, the leader of the group. The person who came out was an old man with white hair and beard. He gave a friendly smile to So Quan. So Quan clasped his hands together to greet him and paid his respects to the magical sword. The old man heard So Quan's greeting and said, It seems you know me. So Quan replied, How could he not know that the first Hoa Sun sword was found? In his heart, he secretly felt strange. Why was the Hoa Sun sword found here? My Hoa then sword frowned and looked at So Quan. Then he looked back at the demon and said, The disciples of this sect will take care of themselves. Then he turned around and said to So Quan, Let's go to a quieter place. So Quan suddenly asked again, Yes, in a quieter place. Just him and So Quan, he asked, you have conquered the demon but why are you planning to leave there? The person was wearing a mask, so it seemed like you wanted to hide your identity from the beginning. But So Quan replied, if I caught the demon being chased by Hoa Sun, it might cause some misunderstanding, right? The old man said, it is possible that the sect's disciples created such a murderous atmosphere. After all, the Hoa Sun sect owes you. 
My disciples should have trusted each other and kept their positions, but, so Quan politely said, No, aren't the Taoists of the Hoa Sun sect already captured them all? After So Quan finished speaking, he remembered, thinking back, the idiot who destroyed the apricot sword formation was a disciple of the divine sword apricot blossom. The old man asked, What do you want from this sect? So Quan said, Nothing, I just hope the blockade is quickly lifted so I can freely enter and exit the city. Besides, I have no other intentions and the magic sword of my Hoa I'm also there. So even if I'm not there, everything will be resolved in the end. He asked again, as a friend without ambition. So Quan replied, Of course I also have a desire for material things and honor. But this situation is just not enough for me to ask for compensation. When he heard that, he stroked for a long time and said, In front of me and still able to say everything he wanted to say, you seem very brave. So Quan also said that in front of seniors whom he respected, there was nothing to feel scared about. When he heard So Quan say that, he burst out laughing. Then he said, I like you more and more. Are you going alone? So Quan also told the truth. I was with Miss Deng Xiao Don of Zhang family in Sichuan, and when he heard that, he interrupted, Zhang family. So you are the child who often goes with the daughter of the Zhang family. Family. When So Quan saw that he knew, he was surprised and asked again, how did the senior know me? The old senior held his glass of water and said Chan Gu told me that meeting you was the first time I saw Patriarch Zhang's daughter. At that time, I was very interested. Then he asked again, But there is one thing I don't understand. You are so strong that you can defeat demons. But there is not much information about you in the world. So Quan also replied. About that, before now I have only practiced martial arts in a place called Tian Thunder Sect. The sect only accepts one disciple per generation. Now I have just started traveling around the world so I won't have any information. Hearing that, the old man took a sip of tea and said this is the first time I have heard the name of that sect. But in this world there are not only one or two anonymous sects. But judging by your pure aura, it must be the one. A sect with a background. Then he suddenly put down the tea and said okay. Then he smiled and continued my disciple Chan Gu, can you let him go with you? So Quan heard his suggestion and was a bit surprised. So Quan was puzzled for a moment, thinking in his heart, what did I just hear? Maybe he was dissatisfied because his senior asked him to bring the game breaker along. But the senior explained, his whole life up until now he has always been locked in the mountains and heard compliments that he is a genius. So sometimes he is so arrogant that he ruins everything. I hope he comes with you. Will realize your own shortcomings. So Quan frowned in displeasure. Are you crazy and told me to bring that unlucky idiot? Even if the Mai Hoa then sword hates me, I will absolutely not bring him along. So So Quan flatly refused. I refused. Why did the senior ask me that when he first met me? The senior replied, yes that's the case. Your personality is not influenced by others and the Jiang family's child is with you. That is enough for me to be satisfied with your background and you are also a person with enough strength to easily control Chan. Style. But So Quan said, my senior's disciple and I don't get along. There will definitely be a heated argument. But he didn't expect the old senior to say that. On the contrary, it was very good. So Quan bewildered and asked yes. The senior said, if he doesn't get beaten up, he won't wake up. If he gets beaten up by someone his own age, that kid won't wake up. What a good master. When So Quan heard him say that, he was also stunned and received a beating. So Quan asked again, the senior's meaning is that even if I intentionally make things difficult for him, it's okay, right? Of course I don't ask for help, the senior said and took something out of his pocket. Here, he said, pushing the wooden card towards So Quan. So Quan looked at it in surprise, that is. Order Article Grace of Apricot God Sword. When a certain sect receives a favor, they will give this token to that person with the meaning that they will definitely repay this favor in the future. This is an extremely valuable thing that even if it costs a thousand tails of gold. Also impossible. So Quan asked again, will the senior really give me this token of gratitude? The old senior said, anyway, I'm a Taoist so I don't have much to give you. I don't have any power or money, so I have to use this old body. So Quan silently looked at the card and thought. In the end, he agreed. Chan Gu joined their group. He clasped his hands and said that he would ask the lady for help later. Seo Dan also responded, later also asking for help. Then that guy looked at So Quan uncomfortably and said, hoping that person would help. So Quan looked at him and thought, what a straightforward Taoist. But I don't feel hate at all. So Quan raised his hand to touch the wooden token that the senior gave him and was in his pocket. It is true that matter determines consciousness. He thought with satisfaction, because thanks to him, he was able to command the demon sword, one of the ten geniuses, once. This unlucky Taoist brought me a bargain. Right now, Chan Gu is happily talking to Xiao Dan and Jie Dong. Let's invite you two ladies to get in the car first. Then he turned around and said to So Quan, I'll wait. Then he said this to So Quan, 
because the carriage is a bit cramped. So can the young knight follow him on horseback? I'll change places with the young knight later. So Quan didn't pay much attention. He went straight into the car. Chan Gu saw this and angrily shouted, Wait, wait, didn't you hear what I said? So Quan, annoyed, turned around and asked the question directly. Did you contribute any coins? Chan Gu also said angrily, What did you say? So Quan stood on the carriage looking down at Chan Gu and said, I said money to prepare the carriage. Have you contributed any coins? Chan Gu heard that and stammered, It's that, that's the thing. So Quan said reasonably, So shouldn't you be riding the horse of the Taoist Chan Gu? So the Taoist follow us, So Quan said with a smile. Then he slammed the carriage door and left Chan Gu outside. Chan Gu was greatly shocked, he sat down on the ground collapsed. Finally the group began to depart. Of course Chan Gu had to ride beside him. And so Quan sat in the carriage with two beauties. But Chan Gu still couldn't regain his spirit. Jie Dong saw the sad man riding a horse. She asked, It's okay to provoke the first generation disciple of the Hoa Sun sect like that. When Jie Dong said that, So Quan remembered, That's right, before becoming a disciple of the Mai Hoa Divine Sword. Chan Gu was a Taoist of the Hoa Sun sect. If there were problems with the Hoa Sun sect, he would become an obstacle on my path to becoming a senator. After calculating, So Quan said, Mrs. Wright, Jie Dong said naturally so so. He looked at Chan Gu who was unwillingly riding next to him and said, Therefore, we must create a legitimate reason, So Quan said and smiled evilly. It was dark, everyone was stopping to rest. Chan Gu excitedly asked, Have I ever talked about my master? Jie Dong replied boredly, And you've said it four times already. But Chan Gu still proudly said, That's right, my master is the first sword of Hoa Sun, the magic sword of my Hoa. It's the magical sword of apricot flowers, he said while looking arrogantly at So Quan. After speaking, he even smiled sarcastically. So Quan only glanced at him, but didn't care. Only Jie Dong asked, So, leader Chan Gu is also a master, right? Chan Gu smiled and said, Haha I still have many shortcomings but, I often hear people say that in the future I will be the one to lead Hoa Sun sect. So Quan, who had been silent all this time, suddenly said. Chan Gu heard him say that and shouted angrily, what a pitiful thing are you saying? So Quan smiled and said, Ah, suddenly I remembered the pack of wild dogs I met in the forest a few days ago. Chan Gu asked confusedly, What kind of stray dog? So Quan recalled the previous story of the five-person apricot sword formation, saying, A group of wild dogs surrounded a prey. Let's see. It seems like a dog broke through the siege and rushed at its prey alone. That's when Chan Gu rushed towards the demon accidentally breaking the sword formation. It was lured by its prey to rush into the opening that the prey deliberately created, and thus let the prey escape. So Quan laughed and said, that stray dog is really stupid. Chan Gu said, no, that stray dog also had a reason to do that. So Quan heard that and said, if it was a stray dog, everything would only end in that one day. But if it was a martial artist, it would that's a very terrible ending, isn't it? If because of someone's wrong judgment a crazy electric murderer escaped, wouldn't countless innocent people have lost their lives? If so Quan hadn't taken action yesterday to capture the ghost. By the way, I don't know how many more lives he would kill. Chan Gu said, worrying about what might or might not happen is just the game of petty people. So Quan exposed what he said, but didn't he let him run away? Chan Gu heard So Quan say this and showed a panicked look because he was caught. Chan Gu stood up and asked, what do you want to say? So Quan seemed to say no, no. I'm just talking about stupid dogs. But why was the Chan Gu Dojo so excited? Chan Gu heard him say that and was extremely bitter. Time passed, while So Quan was taking a nap. There was a voice. I just wanted to talk a little. The person who spoke was Chan Gu. He asked So Quan, Can you spare some time for me? So Quan replied, Say it. But Chan Gu said, It's a bit much here. He hesitated a bit then said, How about we just walk and talk? So Quan replied, That's fine. Both of them walked away from the fireplace going to another deserted place. So Quan looked around and asked, What did you bring me to this remote place to say? Chan Gu turned around and asked, What do you think? So Quan asked directly, What are you going to say? Chan Gu said, I don't know what you think but, what are you thinking that you provoke me? So Quan replied, Ah that? He smiled and said, I just don't like your eyes so I did that, is that okay? Chan Gu heard him say that and asked again, What? Then Chan Gu smiled. Then he burst out laughing again, Ha ha ha. Chan Gu laughed with tears in his eyes, he wiped his tears and said, I didn't expect you to be so good at making me laugh, but you're a good joker. So Quan said, it sounds like a joke, I've been telling the truth all this time. Chan Gu smiled and said, you don't understand your situation, right? So Quan said again, we seem to understand each other better than I thought. Chan Gu heard what he said and found it difficult to understand. So Quan smiled friendly and said, I always have the same thoughts as you. The more Chan Gu listened to So Quan, 
the angrier he became. He said, because Miss Dang has your back. You don't care about anyone. So Quan said, isn't it you who is talking about someone who only knows how to rely on you? Step on the teacher and ignore anyone else. Chan Gu angrily said that I look down on others, so why don't you talk nonsense? So Quan saw that he had lost his temper and thought to himself. From now on he did not use honorifics. Because there was no one there so he did not even bother to keep the minimum etiquette. So Quan looked at Chan Gu who was angry and thought, he really needs to be educated. So Quan said, that's why you called me all the way here just to complain. If that's the case, then go back to your house and tell my Hoa then Kim, why do you have to tell me? Chan Gu turned around and said, hmm, with ignorant people, we have to use the ignorant method. Suddenly he pulled out his sword, pointed at So Quan and said loudly, pulling out his sword. So Quan asked, are you now trying to cover up the scandal with force? Chan Gu smiled and said, what, are you scared? But he didn't expect So Quan to say, this method just doesn't suit you. So Quan calmly turned around and left, saying, anyway. If you have nothing more to say then I'll leave first, he thought to himself, angering me this much is enough, right? Even though So Quan had his back turned, he was still paying attention to Chan Gu's movements behind him. He thought, come on, hurry up and rush at me. Then he even let out a few words like, why call the sleepy person out here? I know, what a Taoist. So Quan deliberately provoked Chan Gu, so in his heart, So Quan always thought, don't hold back and rush forward. Chan Gu was also extremely angry at this time. He gritted his teeth and looked at So Quan. In the end, So Quan got what he wanted. Chan Gu couldn't stand it anymore. He attacked So Quan and shouted, Who allowed you to escape? So Quan gave a satisfied smile, That's right. So Quan continued to encourage Chan Gu, This Taoist had poor emotional control. TSK TSK. Chan Gu shouted, If you are also a martial artist, then shut your mouth and draw your sword. So Quan said again, I don't expect you to use honorifics with me. But anyway, just opening your mouth makes me feel uncomfortable. Chan Gu still shouted, Stop talking nonsense, pulled out his sword. So Quan put his hand on his sword and said, Then let's make one thing clear, until the last minute I always avoid fighting with you. So Quan said, I pulled out the check just because I was forced. Chan Gu replied, Okay, don't worry anymore. So Quan suddenly moved out of Chan Gu's sight. While Chan Gu was still bewildered, So Quan appeared at a close distance. So Quan raised his sword and said, because from now on everything will happen, are all legitimate defenses. Chan Gu was suddenly unable to react. He could only open his eyes wide and look at So Quan, who was approaching him with a weapon. So Quan said less and did more, but before he could do anything, he had already attacked and blindly attacked him. Chan Gu was also very angry when he was suddenly beaten. He shouted loudly, suddenly attacked, you despicable thing. So Quan endured him all this time, and finally spoke up, despicable. So Quan saw that he was being wrongly accused and said in frustration, Don't say that, if it was a real fight, your head would have been chopped off. Chan Gu didn't expect So Quan to say that, you. Chan Gu jumped up in anger, don't laugh. He used his sword to cut So Quan's body in half, thinking he had won. But So Quan appeared behind him and said, What's so funny? Then Chan Gu was suddenly attacked from behind. Chan Gu felt pain in his chest. He immediately collapsed, unable to hold his sword anymore. So Quan thought a little disdainfully, well, martial artists are not allowed to let go of their swords. Not recognizing one's own weakness and always justifying one's own weakness. So Quan held the sword and approached Chan Gu. With that alone he wanted to fight with me. Chan Gu quickly crawled behind him. He raised his hand to signal So Quan not to come closer. He stammered. Wait, wait. But it was useless. So Quan flashed an evil smile, then slashed at him. Wait what? A scream rang out in the forest. Chan Gu was beaten so much that he lost consciousness. His eye was swollen, so Quan sat next to him and used a tree branch to wake him up. Chan Gu jumped up and saw So Quan sitting next to him. His next reaction was to run away. He was so scared. After running for a while, he turned back and said, Do you think you will be safe after doing that to me? I am a disciple of my Hoa then Kim if I return to the master and tell everyone what happened today. So what will it be like? Look at him. If you can't fight him then bring out the master to threaten him. Such a person is the future of Hoa son. Seeing that this future is not very bright, now I understand why he took out the article to exchange with me. So Quan went closer to Chan Gu, because he had pulled out the master's name. Then we have to stop talking, right? After saying this sentence, his face looked like a bogeyman. He made the future of the Hoa Sun sect pale in fear. Then So Quan laughed and said, I'm just kidding, don't panic like that. But even if you are a disciple of the magical sword of my Hoa, Hoa Sun sect is the pillar of righteousness. So if there is no legitimate reason, you cannot attack me, right? Chan Gu heard that and did not agree with the argument, 
it also depends on how you create it. Do you mean that the Taoist will arbitrarily create a suitable reason? Are you saying that you are not righteous? That, that, while talking to Chan Gu, suddenly So Quan shouted, Get out. When Chan Gu heard that, he was startled and looked over. He also saw someone watching him. It turned out that it was Miss Seo Don. Jie Chan asked, Why was Miss Seo Don there? Since when? As Seo Don replied, Since the time Chan Gu leader forced the young knight to fight. So Quan saw that everything was going exactly as he wanted, so he secretly smiled. If Chan Gu director called him out, the other person just needed to sneak along, he had discussed it with SCO Don in advance. It is clear that this is an action that an arrogant and reliant on his master would do. Chan Gu saw this and thought that So Quan was playing tricks on him. You knew that Miss Dang would come so did you deliberately provoke me? Moreover, you suddenly attacked me. It's really despicable. So Quan said, up until now you have been continuously babbling about me being despicable. Because people misunderstood me, so they always had a grudge against me. So Quan suddenly made a proposal. Now, by the way, Miss Dang is here. Let's ask Miss Dang to testify for the martial arts bet between us. So what? Chan Gu asked again, betting, okay, what bet? So Quan answered him, well, how about the loser have to listen to the winner? Chan Gu found it interesting and said, listen to the winner, I'm hoping so too. I accept this bet. You're so arrogant. It's just that I was negligent this time, and you robbed me of the opportunity to strike first. This time, it won't be so easy. He confidently thought, I am the disciple of my Ho Divine Sword. I am the next generation of the first generation swordsman. Lady Seo Dan announced, Then the martial arts training between Thu Dan and Chan Gu Dao will begin. So Quan crossed his arms and gently said, Director, I will let you make the first move. Even though the Taoist had his eyes closed, he still spoke enthusiastically, so of course I did not refuse. Chan Gu rushed towards So Quan, Apricot Blossom 36 Swords, Apricot Blossom 9 Changes. So Quan's eyes flashed a few electric rays. Chan Gu was extremely surprised, his hand was okay. So Quan used his bare hands to block Chan Gu's sword. Chan Gu thought gloatingly, you idiot, you think you can block my sword with your bare hands. But he didn't expect that, even though he was extremely surprised, he could only widen one eye because the other one had already been beaten up. So Quan not only blocked it but also counterattacked with his bare hands. Chan Gu saw every ray of electricity from So Quan's body dispelling his sword energy. Chan Gu's sword energy was destroyed. It was completely unable to cause any damage to So Quan. How could my sword energy? So Quan said, hoping for you to help Chan Gu's entourage, another punch came. Punched Chan Gu straight in the face. With just his bare hands, the force was enough to send him flying away. Chan Gu was beaten and swollen like a ball. Miss Seo Don's voice rang out, the winner of this martial arts competition was, don't lack chivalry. A difficult night for Chan Gu also passed. The four people's carriage also continued to move, Jie Dong lamented, it's shaking so much I'm going to get drunk. Because of those guys, there's no traffic on the way to Jujan, even if it's uncomfortable, let's go. Please bear with it a little. So Quan leaned out and said, hey, can't you drive a carriage properly? Chan Gu had a painfully swollen purple face and thought, I will become the next best swordsman in Hoa Sun. Now I'm a horseman. The Taoist must have also been a charioteer, right? While walking, Chan Gu saw a strange scene in front of his eyes. He said in annoyance, What are they? Up ahead there are two groups arguing about something. Both sides are loudly yelling at each other. Don't you have business ethics? This is the prey that we discovered first. This place is clearly their territory. Hi, you guys are the ones violating business ethics. Don't cause trouble at someone else's place of business. Go away. Your mouth is punctured. That's why you talk so casually. It's probably a bandit blocking the way to rob customers. I'm so tired, I only have to block the way of people passing by to rob them. But I still get into disputes. I guess these days there are few customers passing by. So my income is low, so I have to reserve customers to rob. So Quan is upset. Why don't these bandits? Take a break. Suddenly he saw a horse-drawn carriage going next to him. It was a luxurious horse-drawn carriage. And there was also an entourage on horseback following it. When So Quan saw that, he wondered... Why would anyone go to Jujang at a time when it was occupied by Waku? The person sitting in the luxurious carriage suddenly spoke up, took down the boxer. The warrior on horseback quickly stepped forward and replied, Yes, So Quan saw it and thought. And those guardian warriors. Each and every one of them is a top expert, or an absolute beginner in this carriage. Who is this person? The girl inside the luxurious carriage appeared, but she hid her face. Ah, you know how to handle it yourself. This subordinate obeys my orders, miss. A warrior replied and then rode his horse forward. Suddenly So Quan heard someone cursing, crazy. The two sides in the dispute saw the person who had just come up and were shocked. 
That was the flower, the pattern. So Quan also realized that is, one is the royal family, the other is, Zhuge family. The girl sitting in the luxurious carriage also said, leave this place to our family. So Quan heard her mention the Zhuge family and remembered, the Zhuge family. Remember, in his previous life, he had asked the Zhuge family for help to clean up the grasshoppers. The Zhuge family sent the family's elite to come. But So Quan wondered who that woman was. So Quan remembered the story of his previous life. It was clear that in his previous life, the person who destroyed the OKO and received the nickname Earth Dragon was not a woman but a man. So Quan called and chose the lady. Jie Dong looked at him in confusion. So Quan continued to say that I have a favor to ask. Jie Dong understood what he meant. So you wanted to ask me to investigate the wealthy woman in that carriage, yes? Jie Dong smiled and asked, What, could it be love at first sight? So Quan said seriously, Don't talk nonsense anymore. Because I was wearing a veil so I couldn't see her face clearly. Jie Dong agreed and replied, Actually, I'm also curious. When I get to Hang Chao, I'll investigate. Is it a talented person sent to replace the earth dragon? Night gradually falls. So Quan's group stopped to rest and eat. Jie Dong and Seo Dan are laughing and talking to each other. Only Chan Gu was constantly stuffing food into his mouth. So Quan sat opposite him, assessing him. He didn't know how to light a fire, didn't know how to cook rice. In short, he was a useless Taoist. There was a figure walking up. That person said that's it. I'm sorry to bother you all. Is it okay if I sit here? Because I want to talk for a moment. The person who spoke is a beautiful girl wearing a veil. So Quan responded to her inviting her to sit. Chan Gu saw a beautiful girl and introduced him first. Countless Buddhas, this one is Chan Gu of the Hoasun sect. After he finished speaking, he grinned. The girl somewhat surprised replied, Oh yes. The remaining people also introduced themselves one by one. I am Chan Jie Dong. I am Dang Seo Don of Dang family. The new girl was a bit surprised to hear that. Is she the daughter of the homeowner? So Quan also introduced, I am Don So Quan of the Tian Loi restaurant. It's a sect with one person and has never worked on the streets, so you probably wouldn't know, so that's how it is. The new girl is the veiled girl sitting on a luxurious carriage. I am Jia Gon Hai of the family. Due to personal matters, I hope you will forgive me for wearing a veil. So Quan was extremely surprised, Mr. Gon Hai. I have never heard this name in my previous life, the girl continued. Anyway, at this time I did not think that anyone would come to Jujang outside us. So Quan stood up and scooped another bowl of food. As a talented person sent from a wealthy family, there's nothing bad about making a good impression. He smiled and said to Gan Hai, We are the same, you should drink too. Gan Hai raised both hands to receive food from So Quan, thank you. Gan Hai smiled and suggested, Meeting each other like this is truly fate. It seems our destinations are the same. If you don't mind, why don't we go together? Thank you for your good intentions. But we are coming to Hang Chao, So Quan thought. It seems that we are late stage elites coming to Jujang to fight but we have no intention of doing so. We don't intend to merge into the military. Gan Hai heard that and felt a bit regretful. Ah, is that so? Gan Hai stirred the food and said, It's a pity our destinations are different. So can we just go together to Hanzhou? So Quan accepted the proposal. We have no reason to refuse. But what is the reason why you want to go with us? Gan Hai smiled and replied, I just wanted to make friends, because I don't often leave the house. So Quan smiled lightly. But in his heart he knew, friend, he was clearly hiding something. But he still said, then let's set off together tomorrow morning. The carriage also had four people departing. In the car, all three girls chatted loudly. Only Chan Gu had to sit outside and drive. He was very angry and unwilling but did not dare to do anything. Finally, they arrived at Hang Chao. It's sad to have to say goodbye here. Gan Hai bowed his head and said, thanks to you. I am very happy. So Quan also clasped his hands and smiled happily, as did we. Hope to see everyone again next time. Good luck miss, this time in another place. Gan Hai took off her veil, the daughter of homeowner Dang. She was thinking about the people she had just met, the disciple of the divine sword of apricot flower. Although her identity could not be confirmed, she was a woman who radiated extraordinary energy, and there were still clothes on the table. Gan Hai was wearing it just now. She lifted her hair high, and the young knight led them. We have to mobilize the family's information network and investigate. Someone is calling from outside. We have arrived, miss. Gan Hai's voice came from inside, martial artist. Please pay attention to your address from now on. Then the car door also opened. The subordinate apologized, and the person in the car also got out. At this moment, the person who stepped down was no longer the young lady of the Gan Hai family, but a young man. The warrior also quickly changed his address to Sir. Someone asked, What's going on, young master? At this time, So Quan was in the sunflower caravan. So Quan brought out the jade pendant. 
I went to pay my respects to the owner of the Poplar Merchant Group. The servant was surprised to see what was in Soquan's hand. Ah, that was. He hurriedly welcomed him. Let Tiu Nan lead the young knight to the hall to receive guests. Then he ordered another guy. You quickly go in and tell the group leader that there is a distinguished guest coming. The servant also invited So Quan inside, so please go this way. At the reception hall of Hoa Duong Trade Group, the group leader asked, Have you been well all this time? So Quan smiled and said, Thanks to your blessings, I still live well. The group leader smiled and said, Wow, how lucky. By the way, I also have something to ask. Then the delegation leader asked directly, How did the young master know that the price of spices would skyrocket? So Quan said mysteriously, Perhaps I should let the group master know my secret. Actually, me. I am a person whose memories of the future have returned to the past. After hearing this, the group leader was shocked and shouted, What? The delegation leader looked at So Quan half confidently, saying regression, is that true? So Quan was also not afraid to look straight into his eyes. Then the group leader laughed, ha ha ha, what did the young knight think I would believe? The young half really knows how to joke. So Quan also answered him, how do I know it's not important? What matters is what we do next. Suddenly So Quan asked, the young master's condition has improved well. But I am curious whether the group leader has found the person who caused this. The evil of the demon religion or not. The group leader heard So Quan ask about him and said if it were my son. He would probably have escaped that demonic state of mind. But looking from the outside, I probably think that my son is still sick. So Quan didn't really understand what he meant. So Quan asked in confusion, what do you mean? Don Master explained, don't you already know that the person who put my son in this state of demonic mental illness is the leader of the demon sect? I am still pretending not to have discovered this and waiting for someone from the demon sect to come and continue. Near me, the union leader frowned and said they must pay for what they did. So Quan silently admired, as expected, the person leading a large trading group was not an ordinary person. So Quan suddenly realized, wait, if that's the case then, there's a high possibility that the leader still doesn't know that I cured the group master's son's demon heart right? We have stopped two of the five plots of the heavenly devil. I have to take care of my body because the leader will soon pay attention to this matter and come to me. But if the leader of the sect does not know anything and still continues to carry out the plot, the core of Bakdao martial arts will owe my gratitude, and we can hinder the demon sect's plan to take over the martial arts. So Quan said with satisfaction, the group leader did a good job. So now let's discuss politics. How do you feel about investing in food and herbs this time? What about food and herbs? I have prepared food and soldiers to prepare for war with the demon religion but it seems like the union leader is planning to trade weapons with Vo Lam Min. But it will be very difficult because there are already large corporations that have long-standing trading relationships with Vo Lam Min. So Quan said seriously, so from now on, stock up on food and herbs. Hearing that, the group leader hesitated and asked. It sounded like he was preparing for a year of crop failure, not preparing for war. So Quan also told the group leader the truth. That's right, three years later, a great famine will occur, with countless people starving to death. Even in Honam, where the Martial Arts Alliance was established, they could not escape this consequence. Famine is a form of natural disaster, can you really predict the future? But So Quan did not answer, he just said, deciding to belong to the group. The union leader tapped his fingers on the table to calculate everything. Hmm, I will consider this because this is not something that can be done with just one person's opinion. So Quan agreed, saying, Yes, and I think the union owners should invest half of the money earned from selling spices. The group leader smiled and replied, We will carry out the transaction on behalf of the young knight. After discussing everything with the union owner, then So Quan also left the poplar caravan. Suddenly someone called, Don So Quan. So Quan saw Jie Don and asked, What is the matter with the young lady coming here? What did the young knight say to the group master that took so long? We talked about the money we earned from buying and selling spices and asked about your body condition. Jie Dong didn't believe it at all. You came all the way here just for that, so why are you hiding anything else? Right? There is no reason for me to tell the young lady. So Quan walked away as he spoke, leaving Jie Dong to follow behind. Okay, if you don't want to reveal it to me, it's okay. But where are you going now? So Quan answered her, I'm looking for someone. Jie Dong asked curiously. Who are you looking for? So Quan rested for a moment and then replied, A person whose origin or name I don't know, whose appearance I only know his age and gender. That person only said that he often comes to have fun, so I intend to come. Happy chewing CA and Hang Chow to find. That's a lot of bad information. Jie Dan gave up and said, The pleasure of chewing in Hang Chow is greater than the pleasure of chewing in other places. With that much information, even if our sect took action, it would still take a lot of time. During that time, how are you going to find it? So Quan thought and said, hmm, if we met, we would recognize it right away. 
Jie Dong objected. Even if we didn't know the face, how would we recognize it? The person I'm looking for is a genius in formation, the person who can destroy all the formations arranged in the cave of heaven and earth. The cloud dragon, the dragon, who is nicknamed the drunken dragon, is a person known to people as someone who drowns in alcohol. In reality, that person was controlled by a small demon army and was known as a magician of the demon religion. In my previous life, when I met that person, because he was wearing a mask, I didn't know his face. But I still remembered that person's special aura. One year later, Chi Yen Dragon was captured by the demon army. In this life, I will take over. Get that person first. Jie Dan is curious. But why do you want to find that person? I will tell you later. Jie Dong angrily turned away and said I shouldn't have asked. However, how long do you intend to follow me? Jie Dong explained that everything has been handled by the Hang Chao department, so I have nothing to do, so I can't follow you. But I didn't expect So Quan to say, I'm here to have fun, is it okay for you to come there? Jie Dong heard him ask like that, it was a bit confusing. Why not? Are you afraid that the men there will go crazy over me? After saying that, she raised her hand and undid her hair. Jie Dong let down his beautiful long hair and asked, worried. But So Quan didn't pay any attention, he just walked past her quickly. What is it? Are you deliberately ignoring me? When Jie Dong saw that So Quan didn't answer, he chased after her and asked, Is that so, or is it because you're embarrassed? So Quan just replied, Tie your hair up. Finally, they came to a happy chewing place. Wow. So Quan thought to himself, This is really spacious. It will take a lot of time to look around here. That person is very good at drawing exams and has an outstanding appearance. So you just need to pay attention to your surroundings. Suddenly So Quan heard someone screaming borrowing money from others and drinking alcohol. He saw three men grabbing a young man. They also brought paintbrushes, ink, chessboards, and guitars. The other three men said uncomfortably, Take him to the big brother, you're done for today. So Quan looked closely at the young man being grabbed, this aura. The person being held didn't care what the three men were saying. He even shouted in shock, another drink. So Quan looked at the drunk young man in front of him. This person has a good appearance. Although weak, that aura was exactly the same as what I felt in my previous life. So Quan found the person he was looking for. So he went to tell the other three men, that person, I have to take him away. The other three people asked again, is this brat so scared that he has gone crazy? Where are you going to take the guest sent by the royal authority? As soon as the other guy finished speaking, he immediately received a punch. I don't say much, I just like to take risks. So Quan said no and punched the other guy once, sending him flying away. So Quan thought, no matter what I say, they won't listen. They ignored the eyes of everyone around them and shouted, Do you know who we are? It's better not to say anything, because as soon as they finished speaking, they were beaten so much that they had to shout loudly, Save their lives, stop it. Jie Dong looked at a group of people lying on the ground and marveled. If he took action, he would cause a big problem. So Quan helped the other person and said to Jie Dong, Young lady. Jie Dong wondered and replied, Huh? So Quan told her to get news from them. Finally, the rescued person woke up. Seeing that he had just opened his eyes, So Quan asked if he was awake. He jumped up and shouted, Who are you? So Quan also introduced himself. I am Don So Quan. It seemed like the young knight fell into trouble at Hone Hoax CA right when I was passing by, so he helped me. The other person objected, I was just a little dizzy because I drank too much, so what's the problem? So Quan recounted what happened. At that time, when I saw the young knight, at that time the young knight was being dragged away by the black gang. When the young man heard that, he quickly asked, Could it be that they took everything? My belongings already? So Quan remembered the pile of broken things and said, The young knight's belongings. They've been completely destroyed. But I helped you solve your debt problem, so you don't need to worry. At this time, the other person also politely said, No, why are you paying the debt for me? Suddenly So Quan said calmly, Damon, no, Saman, the grandson of the two Ma family. I did it because I had something to ask the young master. He was extremely surprised when he heard that So Quan knew so clearly. How did my name come to you? While Young Heap was sleeping, I investigated some information about Young Heap through the lower five gates. I have no bad intentions, so Young Heap doesn't need to worry, So Quan said as he handed over a stack of papers. The other person heard this and quickly stood up and said, Thank you for helping me but tomorrow I will immediately return that money to you. So Quan refused. I just wanted to express my sincerity before asking for help. It's just a lack of time, so there's no need to pay for lack of time. But Sam Maan waved his hand and said, I have no intention of working under any force or anyone, because I am satisfied with my current life. He walked to the door and was about to go out. Anyway, I'll give you your money back. I'll see you later. Today's story is over.
Before he could finish his sentence, he heard So Quan speak, the secret movement of heaven's energy. Saman stopped. So Quan smiled amicably. I know where the secret cave hides the heavenly treasure. Saman frowned at him incredulously. In Sam Mayan's mind, he is suspicious that not only will he help me repay the debt, but he will also know what tricks he plans to play. If you help me solve the secret formation, I will pay you a suitable reward. So Quan smiled confidently. It was late at night now. Only Saman is walking alone. He was recalling the words So Quan had said, I know it's difficult for you to trust me, but why should I deceive a poor person like you? I don't intend to force you, just think. Think carefully then come find me. I'm waiting for a good answer from the young knight. The secret cave of the good disciple is a place that any magician would want to go to if what he said is true. He sat down on the chair and thought, maybe I still can't completely let go. I was determined to never get involved in martial arts again but, haven't I given up my position, cut off my family, cut off my love, drowned in alcohol and destroyed my body? That's right, I have to refuse. It's been two years since I practiced martial arts and solving the formation. Because he was engrossed in thinking, he did not know that someone was following him. He was still lost in his countless thoughts. The current me couldn't break the Zen weapon temple's formation. He just turned his head and realized someone was approaching him. That person hit him hard on the back of the head. Ooh, Sama and's eyes gradually closed. When he opened his eyes again, this was where he was. Someone asked him, Are you awake? Saman stammered and asked, You guys. Saman saw a person carrying a sword looking at him. Saman recognized this guy. He was the leader of the royal sect. Why is it like that? I've already paid off all my debt. But the leader said, That's a bit strange. A person meeting you for the first time naturally pays your debt. Saman didn't see anything strange. As long as the debt had been paid. So he shouted, Then what's the problem? Isn't it okay to just pay the debt? The leader turned to look at three people. The guy who got beaten up the other day. The problem is, he beat my juniors, these bullies. These three guys are the three men who made trouble with Sam Ma on the other night. Then they were beaten up by So Quan. After that, the leader demanded compensation. So the money for the medicine to treat them, and the mental damage, had to be paid to us on his behalf. Saman refused to argue, no, why should I pay? Since I can't find him, I have no choice but to find someone, don't be unreasonable. Suddenly the leader reached out his hand and lifted Sama and's face. If you don't have money, come with me to a place. If you get there, all your debts will be cleared. Sam Maan is in trouble. Understand and ask again. Where are you going? I know. After he finished speaking, he stuck out his tongue and licked it. At this time, a voice rang out and stopped, causing him and Sam Maan to turn around in surprise. The leader saw someone interrupting and glanced at him, and asked. What is it, you? So Quan appeared in front of the two of them. Sam Maan was surprised to see So Quan. He exclaimed, you? So Quan appeared and said, this is not his business, but my business. The leader immediately realized, are you the guy who beat my juniors? Idiot, he crawled in himself. But before he could finish speaking, So Quan was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly So Quan suddenly attacked without saying a word. But the leader still used his sword to block it. The leader angrily cursed, brat. When approaching that guy, So Quan also saw something strange, a mask of human skin. Then both of them counterattacked fiercely. The three accomplices did not dare to rush in but just dodged to the side. After the smoke and dust cleared, they saw that their leader was injured. The leader, the leader, the leader used his hand to cover the cut on his face. Seeing that everyone had seen the tear on his face, he said quietly. See? The other three men hesitantly asked, leader, face to face. But he didn't let them continue talking and swung a sword to slash across their bodies. The three of them were cut in half by their own leader. When So Quan saw this Hong Gwen sect act so cruelly, he remembered, According to what I found out, the person behind the Hongwen sect was Sama and's father. At this time, the leader has taken off his human skin mask. Because he has seen my face, you are not allowed to live. He gave a disgusting smile and said, Son, so Quan recalled that from the information collected, we learned that the person who instigated the royal family and blamed the debt on Sam Ma and was the Sima family. You probably think that if your son can't repay the debt, he will return to the family. If I help pay that debt, the anxious Sima family or the royal family will have to respond. But I didn't expect that now a demon would appear. So Quan doubted, could it be that the two Ma family joined hands with the demon sect and arranged for demons in the Hongguin sect? But if the two Ma family was in the same boat with the demon sect, they must have received some benefits. In my previous life, I had never heard of the name Sima family. If it weren't for the two colluding, then could it be that the second senior brother had usurped Sam Ma and without the homeowner's knowledge? After thinking for a while, so Quan decided that one thing was certain, just arrest this guy and interrogate him to find out more. The demon held the sword and walked closer to So Quan and asked, 
So you are the one who paid that guy's debt. Why did you do that? So Quan calmly replied, Because I have a lot of money, right? After hearing that, the demon laughed loudly. Ah, what a strange beast. But you know, because of one of your actions. But I was in trouble. The demon shouted and suddenly rushed towards So Quan. This guy wanted to make a surprise attack. But no matter how much the demon tries to increase the attack speed, So Quan can still block the attack. It is called an effort but it is not significant. But So Quan suddenly realized that there was cold air. So Quan quickly retreated, both sides separated. So Quan was a bit surprised to look at the demon in front of him. A demon gently wielding a sword surrounded by cold air. A demon from a dark background who uses magic with an amazingly cold aura. So Quan has no doubt that this guy is the confidant of his second senior brother. So Quan opened his mouth and pointed out his name, the dead ghost. The demon asked in amazement, do you know me? So Quan said at once, I heard that you disappeared after losing to the sword king. I didn't expect you to become the leader of these thugs like this. The old demon man put his sword on his shoulder and criticized, you really are a foul-mouthed person. Looking calm, even knowing my name, it seems you have some strength. So Quan confidently replied, just try it and you'll know. The demon opened his mouth to teach people. Being someone like you at that age is truly a wonderful achievement, but your strength remains to be seen. If you don't have enough strength then, it's sad to have to single-handedly eliminate a junior who has a bright future, so I'm special. Sending you off painlessly. After he finished speaking, he unleashed his death sword technique, seizing the soul and beheading it towards So Quan. This move caused a huge commotion, but what he didn't expect was, So Quan was not so easy to swallow, his whole body was still intact. He even suddenly appeared behind the old demon and swung his sword. The old demon screamed, no way, then he tried to slash at Sokwon but failed every time. The old man tried to slash. While Sokwon tried to dodge, he smiled savagely and said, you just keep trying to avoid, see where you avoid. The old man shouted and quickly rushed to Sokwon again. Sokwon calmly replied, you have the face of a dying person. He tightened his grip on the sword in his hand, slashed strongly at the demon. The old demon sneered that was fast. But a frontal attack can't reach me, the demon said as he slashed at So Quan. So Quan did not let him distract him, he also continuously attacked. He just treats So Quan's attacks like flies and mosquitoes. That's still not enough, honey. Right after that, So Quan suddenly disappeared, he wondered, was it a bad move? Where did he go? So Quan was behind him, he swung his sword. Your fourth move, he turned his head and looked back. A stream of electric rays appeared, So Quan slashed forward slashing the moon. The old demon had difficulty blocking this sword strike. The old man's eyes widened in surprise because he couldn't believe it. He was only a man under twenty, yet he had such an amazing sense of pressure. So Quan's entire body radiated a terrifying source of energy. The two people clashed with each other, causing the surrounding area to vibrate and rocks to fly in all directions. After a while, So Quan landed. But the old demon also recognized So Quan's power. He silently scolded, this bastard. He was beaten so much that his sword was broken in half. He had to give up his sword and run for someone. At this moment he also knew, this bastard is not an opponent that I can win. I have to tell the devil about this situation, he thought as he hugged Samain and left. Run. But suddenly Samain in his hand became pale, then gradually disappeared. The old man asked in bewilderment, what, where did you go? At this moment, his hands were completely empty. There was no Samain here at all. Finally he realized, this is a formation, there is no Saman, but only So Quan is silently standing behind him. So Quan said darkly, I wonder how you can survive under the knife. King, turns out he was a runaway. The old man was so embarrassed that he became angry and roared, this guy, this bastard really has a foul mouth. So Quan just brushed past him, but it made him feel extremely painful, forcing him to stand still and motionless. So Quan asked, you are the subordinate of the demon army, so why did you target Saman? How did you know that? So Quan grabbed his head and threatened him. If he wanted to live, he opened his mouth. The old man stammered in fear. It was a demon. While he was about to confess, he suddenly trembled violently. So Quan's hand had not yet moved when he fell to the ground. This old demon just fell to the ground and died even though So Sun had not yet taken action. So Quan knew that this was because he killed the demon lord and did not want this old demon to reveal his information. So he took action to force his subordinate to commit suicide. So Quan cursed, damn it, he imposed a restraining order on his confidant. Uh, the demon soldier was indeed a cold-blooded guy. Saman went to see the demon lying in a heap and asked, was he dead? So Quan replied, he committed suicide anyway, when did you set up the formation? Saman explained, while you two were fighting I placed the simple formation, just to protect myself. Well, luckily we were able to tie him up. So Quan secretly admired, 
setting up the formation quickly and accurately at such a young age is truly not an ordinary genius. Saman clasped his hands and said, Thank you for saving me. After all, this is what happened because I helped you pay off your debt. It was just the right thing to do, Saman asked. But do you know what his regime is? So Quan answered him. It was a demon. Sam Man seemed puzzled. Why did the demon target me? So Quan suddenly voiced his doubts. Young master, I want to ask you something. The master of the family. Is your father joining hands with the demonic cult? Saman heard So Quan ask like that. Extremely surprised. Saman asked, So the person who instigated the royal authority to send me to arrest my debt was the owner of the Sima family. So Quan gently replied yes. Saman also quickly understood everything. He looked at the demon who was dead on the ground. So the guy who came to kidnap me was the demon of the demon sect. The head of the Sima family is someone who is willing to collude with the demon sect to get what he wants. Saman wondered again, isn't that strange? Could it be that he borrowed the power of the demon religion just to cause this? So Quan also considered, if it wasn't that the Sima family's owner colluded with the demon cult, then the Sima family's second brother was trying to arrest Saman. While the Sima family did not know anything, so Quan turned to ask, young master Saman was at his family home. But when Saman heard So Kwan mention his family home, he felt uncomfortable and turned his head away. I had given up the name Sam Ma a long time ago. Please call me Daman. So Kwan agreed and said, Young Master Daman, can I ask what happened at your previous home? Saman asked in return, Didn't you entrust the fifth door to investigate my past? So Kwan explained, All the information I have is only information from one side. I want to hear it directly from the young knight's mouth. Saman said dejectedly, There's nothing interesting at all. Saman turned around and said this doesn't seem like a good place to talk. So the two of them went to a more secluded place. So Quan turned around and picked up the wine bottle and said, To make the conversation easier, I prepared some wine. Let's have a glass. Saman also began to open his heart. I am the son of the main wife of the Sima family. From a young age I was destined to become a homeowner. So I was raised very strictly. So Quan poured wine and sympathized. You must have worked very hard. It's not too hard, I feel very happy because I am a genius that only comes once in a hundred years in my family. When he said this, he tilted his head back and drank a cup of wine. From formations to drawing and painting, I have always achieved outstanding achievements compared to those who have taught me several times. I thought that I was an extremely talented person. Then Saman said sourly, The problem is that those achievements made my father go down the wrong path. My father was unable to revive the family during his reign, so he decided to achieve it through me. So he borrowed from everywhere and even sent me to the family to further train me. At that time, I realized that with just the talent I have, I cannot achieve what I want. No matter how hard the two Ma family tried, they couldn't catch up with the Jia Cat family, so my father. No, the family's owner received money from the black people and helped them gamble. And opium trade. Not only that, but they also secretly gathered orphans and trained them to become assassins. I pretended not to hear these things. Sam Man remembered when he was young. He always had to hide in fear in a corner when he saw his father doing strange things. He held his head and muttered, No. It's impossible. We console ourselves that we can't do anything with the power we have. But it seems like that alone is not enough to make the homeowner satisfied. The homeowner promised me a marriage with the daughter of a powerful writer family in order to attract more power, even though the person marrying me is a person. Weak but, after all, the daughter of the merchant's owner was able to help the Sima family which was in difficult times. Then Sam Man remembered the sweet and happy moments. The homeowner and the merchant group had sworn to let their children marry each other and that girl and I loved each other like we were destined for each other. We thought we would have a happy future. Then Sam Man said sadly, but the homeowner had asked for the marriage to be annulled and the business group owner did not agree to this. Sam Man asked again, do you know what happened next? So Quan continued, did the homeowner come and threaten the merchant group's owner? Sam Man helplessly gave a miserable smile. It would be better that way. The homeowner had secretly sent an assassin to assassinate the guild leader. After hearing So Quan, he was a bit surprised. He did not expect that the head of the Tu Ma family would make such a decision to go underground like that. I realized that when I saw the girl I loved holding her father's body and sobbing. Then he bitterly said, I'm just a puppet. I can't do anything but turn a blind eye and everything goes back to the way it was. Sa Man screamed and cried, feeling like she was being strangled. I don't even dare to go see her. I'm the son of the person who killed her father, so I don't dare raise my head to look at her. So I went to find my father to cut ties and flee to Hang Chao. Saman bowed his head and said, Then you also know, I started living a debauched life in Hoa Haxie. So Quan asked, How is that fiancé of yours? 
Could it be that the head of the Sima family has taken her hostage? Sama and continued. I finally woke up and went to find her whereabouts. But by this time she had become a martial arts disciple. So Quan finally understood everything. So that was it. Sama and softly said, I feel very pitiful. But I like to live like now. Because the people around me won't continue to suffer because of me. After telling the story of his life, he also shed tears. So Quan was speechless. He didn't know what to say. Because when a man sheds tears it means he is crying. Sama and quickly wiped his eyes and said, It's just dust flying into my eyes. Then Sama and raised his cup of wine and said, Stop talking about unpleasant things and drink. So Quan spoke his mind. I don't think the owner of Sima will forgive the young knight. When Sama and heard that, he frowned. Even though he had left the Tuma family, every time Sama and was mentioned, he was very shy. So Quan suddenly asked, Does the young master not want to escape from the Sima family? Sam Maan was a bit startled when he heard this question. Sam Maan hesitated and said that's impossible. Maybe he knew how scary his father was. So even though he really wanted to cut ties with the family, Sam Maan always felt this way. Is impossible. But So Quan suggested, how about coming with me? So Quan took Sam Maan from one surprise to another. He said a little panicked. You helping me means becoming an enemy of that family. The assassins that the family raised can kill you and your friends. After listening, so Quan raised his head and drank a glass of wine. Then he put the glass down firmly. So Quan suddenly stood up and left. Sama and asked bewilderedly, Where are you going? But next So Quan pulled out his sword again. Lightning flashes appeared around So Quan again. His whole body exuded a strong aura. Sama and asked in confusion, Why? Why did he take out his sword? So Quan swung his sword and slashed hard. The sword slash broke the wall in front of the two people in half accompanied by flashing electricity all around, smoke and dust, dirt and rocks flying in all directions. At first glance, it did not look like the impact caused by just one sword strike. Sama and opened his eyes wide and stammered, one, just one move. After So Kwon demonstrated his strength, he asked Sama An, did the young knight think they could kill me? So Kwon made another suggestion, if so, then just eliminate the Sima family from this world. He stretched out his hand as a proposal for cooperation, I need you. If you shake hands with me, money, fame, and power, and the entire formation of the heavenly weapons, the young knight will have everything. Sam Ma An's eyes widened as he listened to every word So Kwan said. So Kwan smiled confidently and raised his hand waiting for Sam Ma An's answer. So are you ready to entrust your future to me? Finally, Sam An also joined So Kwan's group. Everyone in the group took turns introducing themselves to Sam An. Hello, I am Chan Jie Dan. I am the leader of Chong Gu of Martial Arts. I am Dang Seo Don of Dang Jie Shuyan. Sama An also clasped his hands and introduced himself. I am a gunman and hope everyone will help. Sama An asked So Kwan again. Anyway, it seems that Don Thia Heap still hasn't organized his thoughts. Young Heap's proposal must be about what happened after attacking the secret cave of Tian Ki Tuesday. I can always answer. So Kwan smiled and replied, of course. Damn Gun said. But if you intend to attack the secret cave of heavenly energy from outside the formation, there are many other things to deal with. So Quan smiled and replied, that matter will be handled by the rest of us. He said then glanced at the positions of the other team members. Searching for the location of the secret cave has selected the station. The location in the cave has been selected. Then he looked at Choi Ho again, thinking uncomfortably. The problem was how to get rid of that useless Taoist. But unexpectedly, Chan Gu also met So Quan privately to talk. So Quan asked him, so you want to go alone for a while? Chan Gu replied, on the way I felt it. The real reason the people are suffering is not the gangsters, but the scoundrels who are running amok under the eyes of the military. Then he also scratched his face and said, I don't like being a carriage driver either. So Quan had to answer then go away. Chong Gu Ha one hour. I didn't expect it to be so easy to separate. So Quan gave him a stack of tolls and said take this as tolls. Chan Gu asked suspiciously, are you a young knight that I know? So Quan wondered and asked him again, what did you think of me? Chan Gu said right away, you are always waiting to be beaten. But having said this, he didn't have the courage to continue. He quickly turned away and said, Thank you, I'll go now. So Quan saw Chan Gu sticking out his mouse's tail and secretly smiled, thinking, Now it's revealed. Saving sentient beings was just an excuse, mainly because he didn't want to go with me. But So Quan was also quite satisfied, because of Chan's matter. The solution is too easy. At this time, in another place, there was a soldier entering and there was also a person sitting up above. This guy knelt down and said, his subordinates had something to report to the demon lord. The person on high asked, what's going on? The subordinate said that because he could not contact the dead ghost, he sent his subordinates. They said they were going to meet Saman, 
Then they lost their trace and we also have no news about Sama and his whereabouts anymore. The demon lord sitting up high heard that and frowned in displeasure. The subordinate continued, even though he didn't want to, perhaps the master Sama had taken action directly. The demon king also thought of that reason, that was the most likely thing. However, he tapped his fingers and thought, but the disappearance of the dead ghost was very strange. The person sent to spy on the thoughts of the head of the shaman family had disappeared without a trace. Not only does Patriarch Sama not know our plan, but he is not someone who can handle dead ghosts so meticulously. This demon king is none other than Sokwan's second senior brother, the one who caused his death in his previous life. After a moment of pondering, he realized that, after all, it seems that there was someone got involved. So Kwan's group of people are stuck on a mountainous road, covered in fog. Jie Don shouted angrily, the road was blocked again. Dear Don, it seems like we've been walking around this place all this time. Is this really the place? So Kwan also felt unusual. He tried to remember the story of his previous life. In his previous life, the herb picker who discovered the secret told him that he had experienced something strange when he kept walking around in one place. If so then the secret must be nearby. So Quan turned around and asked Dam and, he is the one with the most knowledge about formations among them. Young Master Dam, anyway, it seems we have entered some formation, Young Master is not there. What's the way? Ganon looked around and said I also think so because now I've been constantly observing this place. As soon as Dam Gun said that, he discovered something. That is, it's a stone. But the special thing is that it has something engraved on it. Damon bent down to observe the stone carefully, and at the same time told everyone around, Don't move, wait for me. Then Damon also saw a word appear on the cliff, it was the word Kui. Next is another stone with the word Can. On the leaves are the words, That, and Say, I'll come here. Everyone gathered at the place where Kamen was standing, so Quan asked, Young Heap had found a way to break the formation. Kamen explained, When I was a child I had heard the homeowner say this. Damon picked up a tree branch to draw something while telling an old story, if the heavenly prince had not betrayed the family, the Sama family would have become a tycoon, comparable to the Cheijie family. At that time, I only thought that there was some kind of evil relationship between the heavenly prince and the shaman family but, anyway, it seems that's not the case. Love continues to paint on the ground. So Quan asked him, saying that, Kamen stopped writing and said maybe, Tian Ki too, apparently from the Samma family. At this time Dam Gun had also completed the formation he had drawn on the ground. It was as if Dam Gun had solved the formation left by his predecessor. He had found the secret location of the heavenly weapon. Dam Gun went straight forward. One could tell from the characteristics of the martial artist's martial arts. Knowing that person's background, the same goes for the formation. He walked over and stopped in front of a cliff. Dam Gun said the array arranged here is similar to the secret array passed down in the Shama family. Then he used his hand to feel the surface of the cliff. Suddenly, the passion stopped at a place and said, this is the place. If Tian Chi Tu is truly a member of the San Ma family, then Dam Gun uses his energy to sense the location of what is believed to be the cave entrance. When the gun touched, the seemingly normal cliff became vibrating. The remaining members were extremely shocked. This place is the secret cave of heaven and earth. The cliff slowly opens, revealing a cave. Dam and smiled confidently and said, it seems that the secret attack is easier than I thought. So we can enter the secret cave. Just as I predicted, Gan Grace easily broke the heavenly weapons formation, and agencies are located everywhere. All have been resolved, and finally, they have also safely overcome many obstacles. This is the final door, but the problem is. So Quan worriedly told everyone that if that formation did not directly enter the center of the formation, it would be impossible to break it. So the So Quan volunteered then I will go in. The man said in panic, you can't make such a decision so casually. If you make a mistake you will lose your life. So Quan saw that he was doubting him and thought, I still don't have his trust. So Quan steps closer to love, needs to build firm trust in me rather than material rewards. I have to show him, he thought. Then he put his hand on his shoulder and said, don't worry. So Quan decided to let the man know what kind of person his future owner is. Even though So Quan reassured him, Damon continued to protest. Although he knew roughly the situation there. The array arranged there was something that the arrays we had already solved could not be compared. So Quan knew that the passion was right. The formation arranged at the last door is an illusory formation. Unlike other formations, it can be solved from the outside. Because you have to directly enter and solve it from the center of the formation, you have to face great danger. Big. So Quan remembered that in his previous life, countless people had entered this formation. But no one could come out alive. When I was about to stop trying to solve the formation because of countless repeated failures, a master of the royal palace guard escaped from the formation in a dying state. That guard's martial arts had reached a late stage super peak, controlling me to wait and not attack this secret move all this time. 
is because I have always been waiting to have the minimum standard of martial arts to attack this secret move. I don't know what kind of illusion will appear, but if it gets to the point where it threatens the life of an expert who has reached that level. So Quan frowned, with my current martial arts it was a bit too much. But So Quan still showed a determined smile, even so I can't retreat here. So Quan glanced at the demon and said, if you have to go to the center of the formation to solve this formation, then you just need to go there and destroy it. He stood in front of the last door, without hesitation said leave it to me now. Damon saw that his advice was useless to So Quan so he spoke up, wait a minute. He took out the fan from his sleeve and said, I will go in with the young knight. Damon said with fire and passion that if you want to quickly find a way to solve the formation, it's better to work with an expert. So Quan smiled and replied, that's great. Damon turned around and instructed the two girls to challenge this mystical battle with the smallest number of members possible. The two girls should protect this place to prevent any unexpected events. Although Seo Dan and Jie Dong were worried, they still nodded in agreement. Dam walked towards the door, so I'll open the door. Dam put his hand on the door. The last door shook slightly. Not long after, he successfully opened it. Before we walked in together, I told you to be careful. So Quan looked at him and said confidently, counting on that love. The two stepped inside. But as soon as they entered, So Quan sensed something unusual. It was so dark around him that he couldn't see the demon. So Quan looked around and called, Young Knight, listen. Can you hear my voice? As soon as I entered the secret cave, the passion disappeared, leaving me alone. Fortunately, nothing happened yet, because it was too dark, so in order to grasp the direction of the center of the formation. So Quan was walking forward in the darkness when he suddenly felt another source of energy behind him. He cautiously turned back, with murderous intent. There was someone behind him, and that person spoke slowly, but he didn't expect to meet again like this. When So Quan saw that person, he was extremely surprised. He didn't expect to meet the person he least expected. I knew we would meet again at some point, but I didn't expect to meet here. The person who just appeared was So Quan's nightmare, his second senior brother from his previous life, who destroyed the demon king, that person even intimately called him junior brother. So Quan tensed and tightened his grip on his sword, damn it, I still haven't reached the same level as my previous life, I can't deal with the flower scene's master of killing demons. Tiu Cha Ma Quan smiled and asked, it's been a long time since I've seen you again. Why haven't you said anything? But So Quan quickly regained his composure. It was clear that the massacre happening here was very unusual. So Quan smiled and replied, You act as if you know me. You are not my senior brother. So Quan frowned at the person in front of him. But he knew that killing the demon army of this life had no way of knowing that I was sure that this was an illusion of the formation. Tiu Cha Ma Quan excitedly said, This senior brother is very happy to see you again. Suddenly he widened his eyes. Why did he look more scared than happy? So Quan felt that this person was as bad as in his memory. That evil personality had not changed one bit. The person in front of him saw that he recognized him and happily said, of course, because I was created. It's based on your memories. So Quan relaxed a bit and thought, the heavenly demon king now standing in front of me is not real but just an illusion. But what would happen if he died here? While So Quan was thinking, someone called out, don't lack chivalry. Damon came closer and called, don't you heap, I'm here. So Quan saw that Nam Nan was about to come closer, so he raised his hand to stop her. It's dangerous. Don't come near here, Damon replied I know. After that, Nanan quickly explained to him, anyway, that Dantia Heap was not a real entity, just a phantom. So Quan asked what this formation was all about. The illusory demon king saw two people. They were talking and waiting politely. Damon was also confused and turned his head to look behind him and said, I have never seen any kind of formation like this. So Quan looked and saw that there was another person behind Damon. That person was, introducing, the head of the Sima family, my father. This shadow formation creates opponents for the person entering the formation based on that person's memories. So Quan finally understood the difficulty of this last gate. So for me appeared to destroy the demon army. As for Kamen, he is the head of the two Ma family. So Quan asked, if it's an illusion, shouldn't it be okay to just ignore it? But I don't think that's right. It doesn't seem like that's right. Damon explained further that this formation was created for the purpose of mentally attacking the person entering the formation. Even if we die here, our bodies will still be intact. But because our minds have collapsed, we will be turned into fools. After waiting for a long time, the illusory demon king blamed him. Why so much noise? You are still the junior brother who doesn't know how to keep etiquette and makes the senior brother wait like that. So Quan tightened his grip on the sword in his hand, don't beg me. He smiled confidently and said, because you will die in my hands again. Unexpectedly, Tu Sat Ma Quan laughed loudly, ha ha ha. Then he looked at So Quan sarcastically, still boasting like that. But you still haven't reached the same level as your previous life, 
so you can't defeat me. Having said that, your whole body changed to kill the demon king, and your murderous aura became even more ferocious. The old man held his hand tightly. The murderous aura from his body made the Silk One feel extremely uncomfortable this terrible feeling of oppression. At this moment, he looked extremely terrible. So Quan's whole body became motionless, he thought with difficulty, even though he knew the opponent's martial arts well. The gap between transformation and super ultimate was very difficult to bridge. Moreover, if the opponent also knew my martial arts well, at this time, So Quan would have had to strain his body until he was sweating profusely to fight the pain caused by him. Suddenly, Tu Sat Ma Quan said, after all, we have to show our brotherly affection. He said and then stepped forward strongly. Demon King Tu Sat rushed towards So Quan as fast as the wind. He still clenched his fist and laughed and shouted, I will let you go without suffering. So Quan was surprised. He still did not have any defense. And the second senior brother's giant fist rushed forward. But in the end, So Quan also dodged the punch of the Demon King. So Quan jumped away, keeping a distance from him. It seems this time the So Quan has lost. When Tu Sat Ma Quan saw that So Quan only knew how to run away, he laughed mockingly. It was interesting to see Don So Quan, the number one in the world, rolling around on the ground. So Quan frowned and looked angrily at his second senior brother. Suddenly he heard the old man say, Now roll over there. The old man suddenly appeared next to So Quan. So Quan was surprised. He did not expect him to be so fast. So fast. He swung another fist. So Quan had no time to defend. He could only stretch out his arm to block. But he didn't really punch So Quan either. The old man stepped back to his previous position, smiled and talked enduring it quite well. So Quan saw him suddenly appearing and disappearing, so he was angry. He was trying to make fun of me. If so, now he is absent-minded. This is my opportunity. So Quan quickly picked up his sword and rushed forward. Huin Noyet and So Quan swung their swords and slashed at the demon army. Then he launched a semicircle. So Quan attacked continuously. He circled behind the second senior brother's back and slashed him hard. But unexpectedly, he was not afraid at all, but just gently said, Have you used all your strength? Then he raised his hand, chopped the So Quan's sword without any pain. So Quan saw that his attack was just like air to him, so he quickly backed away. He said, after all, as a senior brother, for the junior brother, I guess I have to teach you this one afternoon. After he finished speaking, he smiled arrogantly and shook his fist. The second senior brother's speed was as fast as lightning, but So Quan was able to anticipate the situation. He jumped away from the demon slayer's punching range. In his heart, so Quan understood that all of the moves of the Moon Spirit Sword had been seen through by him. If so, So Quan quickly disappeared on the spot. So Quan changed his way of fighting, he no longer used the sword, but shouted, the third fist technique, then he also punched to kill Ma Quan. Without stopping, he used his dragon fist again, punching from below up. But So Quan listened to him jokingly say, this pain is very pleasant. The Demon King was still safe and sound, he said, the spirit protected his body. His whole body was covered by a source of energy. The old man immediately counterattacked. So Quan was hit by him. He thought in surprise, I wonder if it was an illusion created from my memories. But both my previous life's martial arts and this life's martial arts were seen through by him. So Quan was hit. He was punched very hard by the Demon King. Just one punch sent So Quan flying away. The second senior brother became more and more terrifying. Although he received a painful punch, So Quan was still able to stand up. But if he was lucky, Thanks to the white lightning magic, I did not suffer any internal injuries. Tu Chao Ma Quan smiled and asked, How are you feeling? So Quan responded fearlessly, extremely disgusted. The second senior brother calmly said, The current situation is very interesting. You will die again in my hands. Tell me again when did I die in the hands of senior brother? Hearing that, the demon king's eyes widened. So Quan smiled and recalled the story of his past life. On the contrary, wasn't it true that he died at my hands? Tu Sat Ma Quan could not accept the truth. He frowned angrily. So Quan continued to recall the old story. In my previous life I died from the reaction of the latent demon attack. He clenched his fist sarcastically. Your body is slowly dying but your mouth is still alive and well, right? So Quan silently calculated that fighting in close combat with a punching and kicking expert like senior brother would be very disadvantageous. So he had to prolong the distance and wait for the opportunity. So Quan stood at a distance and used it. The 21st formula. The moon failed. But he didn't care what move So Quan was using. He still rushed towards So Quan. He shocked the So Quan. Crazy. Why don't you avoid it and rush straight in? But then he suddenly remembered a very bad trait of the second senior brother. The second senior brother likes to corner his prey and enjoy the opponent's reaction. But this person in front of him makes So Quan feel very strange. 
this person attacks with all the killing blows to take the opponent's life. Not at all like the style of the second senior brother. So Quan wondered why he suddenly changed like that. Did he want to end the war? So Quan successfully dodged the second senior brother's killer move. But at this moment, he looked very hasty. What exactly makes you so urgent? So Quan was dodging the attack while trying to figure out the reason why the second senior brother became strange. Did I miss something? But, here is the thing that threatens senior brother. So Quan was engrossed in thought when he was stopped by his hand. He gloated and said, I caught you, you little rat. The old man pressed So Quan to the ground, not giving So Quan a chance to counterattack her. When Damon saw that So Quan was at a disadvantage, he panicked and shouted, Quan brother, Patriarch Sima, who was standing behind Nan Nan, also spoke up and said, Maybe it's over and give up. I don't want to kill you. Dam Nan replied uncomfortably, Are you pretending to be my father? Damon looked at his father's illusion and said, Even if I kill you here, nothing will change. Nan Nan frowned and said seriously, I must kill you. As soon as he finished speaking, he heard a scream. But he didn't expect that the scream was from the demon king. At this time, he had lost an arm just like in his previous life. He shouted, What are you doing? Damon realized what was covering So Quan's whole body. That was Sword Song. One had to reach the realm of transformation to be able to emit it. How could that be? Luca, this guy looks a bit worn out but he still confidently said, I know why senior brother wants to end the war quickly. The second senior brother realized that So Quan had used forbidden magic again like in his previous life and screamed in panic. Crazy man, you used that forbidden martial art again. Don't you know that if you use it you will die too? But So Quan was not afraid at all because he understood that after all. Only the spirit would be attacked. There was nothing wrong with my body. Before I died from its reaction, I only needed to destroy this formation. Okay, so Quan used the explosive magic technique. He smiled and said, I will give death to senior brother. Tu Cha Ma Quan was startled and looked at So Quan's change of words. He did not expect that he would use this forbidden technique. So Quan also knows very well that the explosive demon technique is one of the six great forbidden techniques of the demon sect. In my previous life, it was the martial art that killed my senior brother and took my life. So Quan exposed the illusion of destroying the demon army. Because you were afraid that I would use a powerful hidden demon technique, you rushed in and attacked me in such an unusual way, right? So Quan understood everything and said with a smile, Because I am currently fighting with my spirit, I realize that even if I use hidden magic, there will be no problem with my body. But even if you use hidden demon skills, you still cannot easily defeat me, because now you are not as strong as you were then. When the demon king was said to have hit the black heart, he was extremely angry. When So Quan saw the reaction of the second senior brother, he knew that I was right. The characteristic of explosive potential magic is to amplify inherent abilities, not to be as strong as in the previous life. So Quan smiled and said, But I spoke too long so senior brother was quite concerned. Reluctance appeared on the demon king's face, he was afraid that his disciple would use forbidden magic again. But So Quan was determined to use it, he got into a prepared position, there wasn't much time until his hidden magic attack reacted. Putting all his strength into it, So Quan flashed a terrifying smile and rushed towards killing the demon king. The old man also raised his fist to counterattack. He shouted loudly, Nowhere. Both sides rushed at each other fiercely. So Quan approached the second senior brother, then swung his sword and slashed hard. The demon king dodged. Not only that, but also landed a fist. So Quan jumped up high to avoid the attack. Then he also raised his sword to slash from above. The two sides rushed at each other, killing each other nonstop. After a while, he killed the demon army to lengthen the distance, and he backed away. So Quan also moved backwards. When So Quan saw Tu killing the demon king making such a dangerous attack, he frowned and thought, determined to put me to death because he knew this was an illusion, it couldn't last any longer, it had to end now. While he was still engrossed in thinking, the old demon king quickly took the initiative to attack first, he jumped into the air and launched a kick. So Quan quickly used his hand to block the attack. When he saw that, he shouted sarcastically, was he showing off to such an extent? So Quan quickly retreated to avoid it. Damn he could grasp the center of gravity. But it was too late. Tu Tan Ma Quan first kicked and punched again. This time his punch hit So Quan's stomach. So Quan was suddenly attacked. He was in pain. The old man smiled gleefully and said it's over. But he suddenly heard a voice calling, Senior brother. So Quan appeared in another direction with an uninjured body. He smiled and said, Have you forgotten that flesh beheading is my forte? Bone beheading is the use of your own flesh and rafts to create bones. Enemy. He smiled and said, I will make you remember, then swung his sword. How did the senior brother die? When Tu Sat Ma Quan heard him say that, he was extremely scared. He stared wide-eyed at the So Quan attacking him and didn't know how to avoid it. So Quan cut off one of his remaining hands 
and also cut him once. Demon King Tu sat vomited blood and fell on the spot. In the end, So Quan won a second victory against the demon army. After the battle, So Quan's whole body was in pain. Although he knew this was the result of forbidden magic, he still held his stomach and breathed heavily. Even though he had expected it, it still hurt too much. If it weren't for the fact that his body had been strengthened. With white lightning magic, I might as well be dead. He looked at the illusory scene of killing the dead demon king lying on the ground and thought, if I meet senior brother in reality, I will be teased to death, and must reach the same level as in my previous life. After So Quan finished fighting, he turned his head to look towards the demon lord. He saw that the demon lord was still trying to hold out against the owner of the Sima family. He had to quickly deal with the owner of the Sama family, and destroy the center of the formation. But suddenly he felt a sharp pain all over his body, the damn backlash of the explosive demonic attack. So Quan fell to his knees. Even in an illusory formation, the explosive magic attack was still very scary. Seo Dan and Jie Dong waited outside the door for a long time. Jie Dong asked uneasily, Why haven't you come out yet? As Seo Dan sat in a corner whining, Dan is lacking. Suddenly the last door opened again. Both girls heard the noise and quickly turned around to look. When they saw the person coming out, they shouted in panic. Dan Thie Heap and Dan Kuo Kwan were helping Nan Nan out. Both of them were still safe and sound. Both of them quickly approached and asked, What happened in there? So Quan just said, let me rest for a moment and then talk. As soon as So Quan escaped to the street, he also relaxed. He quickly lay down to rest. He almost died. He unexpectedly thought, even though this was a formation made by a man of heaven, he did not expect that it could directly strike a blow to the star body. So Quan was breathing heavily while calculating. If it's a formation like this, the realm of the person entering doesn't mean anything. If it's done well, can it be used in the future? Then he suddenly looked at the man who was sitting quietly next to him. But where did he have to explain to the man? In the secret cave after overcoming the illusion, there are countless jewels, gold and silver glittering, extremely dazzling. The pile of treasures in front of one's eyes makes it difficult for others to believe, is this really left by the gods? Jie Dong and Seo Dan were extremely surprised when they saw this scene for the first time. While the two girls were still looking around, Kam and Bong started talking to So Quan, Thia Heap. So Quan turned her head and looked at him in confusion. Damon slowly said, Can we go out and talk for a while? So Chu knew clearly what he was trying to say, so he just replied, Okay. When we arrived at the place where there were only two people, the young man spoke and made the young knight's previous suggestion. I agree. Damon suddenly knelt down and said, I will later submit to the monarch, he said while clasping his hands and bowing his head. So Chu said this choice, you won't regret it. Then he asked again, Since I have become a subordinate, I have something to ask. What is the identity of the monarch? So Quan knew that whatever had to happen would come. In the illusion of love, he heard and saw everything. At that time, he said the words, Because you will die in me again. Moreover, the demon king in the vision also said, What can you do to me when you cannot restore the realm of your previous life? I don't know where he heard and saw it but, it's very difficult to absorb. Damon saw that So Quan was silent and did not speak. So he hesitantly asked, could it be that it was a demon religion? But then he immediately said, If I have decided, then it doesn't matter who the monarch is. If it's difficult to say, then. At this time, So Quan also told him my true identity. I am the fifth disciple of the demon sect leader. After hearing this answer, Damon was not surprised, he just said, Indeed. So Quan continued, Exactly that was the story of his previous life. Gan was confused and asked again, What do you mean by that? So Quan explained to me, Just like I said, I died once and returned to the past. Damon felt like a ghost could say, this is so unbelievable. So Quan predicted his reaction, because it was too unbelievable. I didn't tell it to anyone, even the master didn't know about it. Damon frowned thinking about what So Quan said, even if you saw what happened in the illusion formation with your own eyes, would you believe this myth? So Quan asked directly, do you believe this? But Damon immediately replied, I believe. So Quan was extremely surprised to hear him say that. Damon said again, before the monarch came to see me, I didn't even know what the illusory array was, but thanks to the monarch's instructions, I now understand everything. Damon slowly stood up and said if so, from the beginning, the monarch knew my identity and tried to approach me. So Quan also told the truth, that's right. Damon asked a little worriedly, what kind of person was I in my previous life? So Quan answered him, the person the young knight saw earlier in the illusion formation, is the demon king, the second disciple of the demon, 
The young knight was that person's subordinate in his previous life. Damon asked incredulously if so, did he join the demonic cult in his previous life? So Quan explained that perhaps he had lured the young knight into the demon sect through the demon installed in the royal sect. That was the demon wearing a human skin mask who collected Damon's debt. When Damon heard that, he burst out laughing. Haha it's hard to accept this. If I hadn't entered the illusory battle with the monarch, I wouldn't have believed this. Then So Quan said sincerely, thank you for believing in me and sorry for deceiving me. Damon quickly replied no. Damon thought about his past life according to So Quan's words. He shook his head and said, if it weren't for the monarch, I would have played around with pleasure and joy and become a dog of the demon religion and lived my whole life as a demon. The shaman's dog, So Quan silently smiled. Then he said again, but calling me a monarch sounds too harsh, I'm not a greedy person for status, just address me as a commoner to feel comfortable. But Damon did not agree, there is no such thing as superiors using scriptural language and subordinates can speak politely. The monarch should not use scriptural language with me, it is just a simple request but So Quan is a bit hesitant. No, it's not that easy. He recounted his past story, to survive in the demon cave, we always had to use honorifics, now it's very difficult to correct. Damon didn't quite understand, so Quan requested, still using honorifics, but I will change the way I address him. He smiled and said the monarch is a bit, calling me leader is fine. Damon clasped his hands and said I know leader. At this time, in the treasure chest of the secret cave, so Quan took a few things and said I will take these things, the remaining treasures will be divided as promised. So Quan picked up a sword Khan Kuk, one of the five famous swords made by Gu Di Da. I already have it but wouldn't it be good to carry it as a backup? Then he put on another set of clothes, this is a precious treasure, even if it is a famous sword, it cannot be torn. It is very light and can be worn like underwear, it is a treasure among treasures. There is also the internal bullet of the human face tricycle, this type of internal pill cannot even be used by a person like me who is invulnerable to all poisons. And then he refined it again, but its power is too terrible, will it be used in the future? Can I absorb it or should I sell it back to the dealer? So Quan happily looked at the things he had. Even if he searched all over the central plains, he could not find these treasures. They were indeed the secret caves of the heavens. No matter what, I must hand over the magic map of the heavenly weapon to Damon as promised. So Quan glanced towards the right where Damon was sitting. He saw Damon sitting there without moving. Damon was intently writing something. So Quan spoke up, let's go. Damon happily told him, before that, leader look at this. Damon excitedly said as he walked over, I want to build a reputation by doing large-scale charity work for the people in Zhujiang. Aren't they suffering very much because of thieves and gangsters? So Kun same thing, that's right. No matter how much material the Papa merchant group supported them with, it was all stolen by thieves so it was meaningless. Damon proposed, if so, we should put the bandits and gangsters in one place and get rid of them. So Quan asked in surprise, how? Damon held up the map he had drawn and said, just in time to find good bait. So Quan was surprised, it was a secret cave map. Damon explained, we will turn this place into someone else's secret cave, not a secret cave, and then spread rumors throughout Zhujiang that he had discovered a secret cave filled with the legacy of a previous master. So Quan heard that and silently calculated, not only were the bandits robbing the people of Zhujiang, but would it also attract others? Of course there is, but because the white bandits are now focusing on destroying the bandits, only the black bandits and large-scale bandits are gathered here. So Quan asked again, how do small-scale bandits and black ops lack agreement? Damon smiled, that was the point. Then Damon said during this time, the leader should go around Zhujiang and deal with any thieves he meets, take back the property and return them to the people. So Quan was surprised, the young knight told me to act like a bandit. Damon continued, didn't the leader say he wanted to receive a partnership rather than mere reputation? The people will be more crazy about a bandit who helps them defeat evil people and get their property back than a rich person who only knows how to spend money. And if the Dragon and Phoenix Association ends, the entire Central Plains will be in an uproar because of this. And if the Dragon and Phoenix Association ends, the entire Central Plains will be in an uproar because of this matter. The winner of the Dragon and Phoenix branch and the unknown bandit who saved the people of Zhujiang are the same person. After listening to Damon's plan, So Quan found it extremely reasonable. If he followed Damon's words, he could save money and leave a good impression in everyone's hearts. He greatly appreciated Damon's plan. In such a short time, he could come up with such a meticulous plan. What an outstanding companion. So Quan's group of people set out again. If the war for the secret ends before the White Path destroys the Oku, it will not work. If the evildoers rebuild their power and return to plunder, then this will be nothing more than a joke. So Quan thought. In the past life, 
the conquest of the Oku was completed in the spring of next year. The secret campaign was done this winter. While Damon and Dang Seo Don were renovating the organization and formation, I created a book of martial arts secrets. When everything is ready, Chan Jie Dong will spread rumors throughout Chujang. After carefully calculating everything, So Kwon yawned. There was still plenty of time, so he temporarily rested for a while. But then a voice rang out, and the car stopped. So Kwon found this familiar, he was uncomfortable wondering if it was a mountain bandit. So Kwon jumped down from the carriage. He walked towards the guys blocking the car. Those guys saw that and said, Captain, someone is coming here. Someone among them saw So Kwon coming and asked, Are you the owner of that carriage? They threatened that if they didn't want to lose their lives, they would leave the carriage behind and go away. When So Kwon saw it, he pulled out his sword from his waist. It was too troublesome and had to be dealt with quickly. Then he suddenly discovered something. So Kwan's eyes widened in disbelief. Huh? Why is that person here? In the team of these bandits, there is a person who used to know So Kwan, who just broke up not long ago. So Kwan saw that he joined a group of mountain bandits to rob and couldn't bear to ask, is it now that he's become a bandit? Chan Gu Taoist. So Kwan saw Chan Gu joining the bandits and silently told him that he was finally fed up with the life of a Taoist. Chan Gu also quickly explained, please don't misunderstand, because now I have my own reasons needed to infiltrate. So Kwan didn't believe it. His appearance just now seemed like he had changed his direction to become a thief and live as he wanted. Chan Gu still tried to explain and said it was not true. One of the bandits asked angrily. I asked if you were the owner of the carriage. So Kwan pulled out his sword and silently told So Kwan, I'll listen to the details later. When that guy saw So Kwan drawing his sword, he looked down on him. He pulled out his sword. What a fearless guy. Chan Gu quickly stopped So Kwan. It's impossible. We need to find their graves. So Kwan disagreed with Chan Gu, although I don't know why, but I cannot let them rob me for that reason. So Kwan pulled out his sword, his whole body emitting murderous aura. When they saw from So Kwan, they were afraid to scream, killing intent. Everyone lined up, Chan Gu spoke again. Don't kill them, just suppress it, won't you? At least spare the life of the captain standing in front, please. When So Kwan heard that, he was a bit surprised, the captain. So it was a large-scale group of thieves, then he agreed, okay. So Kwan put the sword back to its original position. The bandits saw this and thought So Kwan was scared. The leader held the sword and rushed forward, shouting, stupidly thinking I would forgive you if you put your sword back. So Kwan clenched his hand. Small sparks of electricity appeared around his hand. As soon as the leader rushed in, So Kwan didn't hesitate and punched that guy, drawing blood. One punch from So Kwan was enough to send that guy flying a meter away. That guy's accomplices saw the team leader being knocked down with just one punch and trembled and said, Team, the team leader was defeated in one shot. He is an expert that we cannot handle. Retreat first, they said and ran away in panic. No one paying attention to the captain who was lying unconscious on the ground. It was true brotherhood caught a cold. Chan Gu saw that So Kwan had relented and said, Thank you for listening to my request. So Kwan asked him, What was going on? Chan Gu said, because he needed to find out something, he had no choice but to pretend to be a thief. But So Kwan still finds it very difficult to understand. If there is something to find out, just leave one guy and kill the rest. Chan Gu disagreed. What are you talking about? Chan Gu angrily said loudly, on the way I felt that even if they were evil people, they could not kill people at will. So Kwan frowned and looked at Chan Gu. To those who were robbed and lost their families, can you say those words? When asked back, Chan Gu stammered about that. So Kwan was no longer patient, he turned around and left, saying, I don't want to argue with the leader. Will you follow us or continue to be a thief? You have to see for yourself, Chan Gu quickly told him. Please, please help me. He took out things from his pocket and said, Actually, not long ago, I received a trust from a child. That child handed over all his assets and begged me to find his kidnapped sister. Chan Gu opened his hand, he only had two coins in his hand. I still vividly remember the look of him handing over two silver coins while sobbing. He firmly said, If the young knight is willing to help, he can definitely help the child's kidnapped sister, please. Chan Gu's determination to stand up for the rights of others made So Kwan extremely surprised. A person who normally prides himself on being a disciple of the divine sword Maihoa but despises others, showed an extremely strange expression. Weak because of a child's wailing, he told himself, it's rare that you can't figure out what your true appearance is. So Kwan saw the current situation and asked, Do you have a battle plan? Chan Gu turned away and said, No. So Kwan asked again, What about the information about the location of the grave, the size of the army, and the place where the kidnapped children were kept? Chan Gu shyly scratched and said, I intend to directly penetrate and find out. So Kwan asked another question, What are the countermeasures for the kidnapped people? 
What do you plan to do if the robbers become aggressive? Taking revenge, Chan Gu heard So Quan ask so thoroughly and bowed his head in silence even more, because he doesn't know anything to say. So Quan said despondently, there is no combat or information, just asking for help without any plan. But why does it make sense? Chan Gu shouted, that's why I asked you for help. So Quan waved his hand in disapproval, even if he offered a token of gratitude. That attitude of asking for help was uncomfortable. Chan Gu took his word. Thank you, queen. If you want, I will pay. I swear in the name of the master. So Quan quietly calculated. After all, being a chivalrous thief would just be a conflict. Just shortening the opportunity to be able to receive the reward would be a profitable business. So Quan agreed. Okay, this is about punishing the evil and saving those who are suffering. We have to help. Chan Gu heard him say that and was extremely happy. Really, because he really meant it. In. So Quan gave him a satisfied smile. For him, this was a profitable business deal. I was very depressed because I had to arrest the gangsters and the bandits alone, and then have to return the property. But now that's great. So Quan told Chan Gu, leave the group of thieves to us, and the director only needs to pay attention to freeing the hostages. At the bandit group's lair, they were screaming loudly, attacking, at the east gate. Chan Gu sat on the roof calculating, while they drew attention, I had to quickly rescue the hostages. As soon as he finished thinking, he quickly disappeared. A guard heard the commotion and asked the guy next to him, Big brother, surely he wouldn't rush in here, right? That guy scolded, This cowardly guy, how can they take five enemies for one hundred? That guy kindly said, Let's just stay here. As soon as he finished speaking, a shadow landed. They were startled. Then he quickly shouted, Who was it? Chan Gu saw that and also pulled out his sword. Just a moment later blood splattered. The two door guards also lay motionless on the ground, Chan Gu said, having finished dealing with the door guards. He quickly found the prison key on the two guards. But he stripped everything off and still couldn't see anything. Huh, what is this? The two gatekeepers were stripped without a key. Chan Gu was impatient. He thought the gatekeepers would keep the key. Damn, breaking the door like that would be very dangerous. There are still hostages inside. The group heard the noise and might come here. What should they do? While he was having a headache thinking about it, Jie Dong landed. Chan Gu quickly said, Ah, Miss Chan, the problem now is, before he could finish speaking, Chan Jie Dong spoke up, You're looking for this, right? Please take it. Jie Dong smiled and held out a bunch of keys. Chan Gu asked in surprise, What's wrong with that? Where did you find it? Jie Dong smiled confidently and replied, Finding something like this is my job. Finally, the young lady was the one who saw him still intending to continue talking when Jie Dong reminded him that we don't have time to gossip. Chan Gu immediately replied, Ah, I will save the hostage right away. Chan Gu successfully opened the door and freed all the hostages, all going this way. Chan Gu saw that everything was going well and worriedly asked, Miss Chan, perhaps the thieves would block the escape route. Wouldn't it be dangerous to lead the hostages towards the back door? But Jie Dong calmly said, No need to worry about that. Chan Gu was confused, she said no need to worry, what, Jie Dong just told him, he will know when he goes. As soon as Chan Gu arrived, he heard a moan, help, save my life, he was extremely surprised since when did. But how long has Dang Seo Don been standing there? She cleared away all the bandits blocking her way and said, let's go out from here. Chan Gu exclaimed, dang lady, Damon also walked over and smiled and said, fortunately, it was done exactly as planned. Chan Gu wondered, what plan, what plan? Damon explained, afraid that someone was chasing me, so I set up a formation on the way here. Unexpectedly no one came. Ha ha ha. Chan Gu witnessed with his own eyes the good coordination between the three of them. He also knew that all three of them were very good. The three of them were not ordinary characters. In the end, how could Don So Quan command? Outstanding talents like this. But Chan Gu suddenly realized something. Wait. If no one comes here, then wouldn't the group of thieves all go to the Don's place? Before the other three could say a word, Chan Gu quickly shouted, even if he was a young knight, he could not confront the entire group of thieves. Chan Gu rushed to So Quan and thought anxiously that the number of remaining thieves was over a hundred people. Please be safe. But then Chan Gu saw the scene before his eyes, an extremely scary scene. Chan Gu landed and shouted, Young Master Don. So Quan looked at him in the middle of the bloody battlefield. Ah, Chan Gu Taoist. That scary scene was, So Quan sitting on a mountain of corpses. He smiled and asked, Did you successfully rescue the hostages? When Chan Gu saw that So Quan was not only safe, but also defeated all the bandits one against one hundred. He was extremely shocked. Among the countless geniuses emerging around him, 
he thought he was a special person, already. Only then did he bewilderedly understand that he was a frog at the bottom of a well. He saw So Quan smiling proudly at his pile of trophies. After the hostage rescue plan was completed, Chan Gu wanted to meet privately with So Quan. Young knight, can we talk for a bit? So Quan asked him, do you have anything to say? Chan Gu admitted, through this group of thieves incident, I have realized my own shortcomings. He said pointedly, leaving the practice of wandering around, I saw that there were still many outstanding talents. Now I seem to understand why my master always emphasized being humble and being strict with myself. Close. So Quan was also surprised by Chan Gu's change. Oh ho for a stupid person who only had pride. Chan Gu said determinately it seems like the master deliberately wanted to let me know that following Don Thia Heap and observing the wanderers, real learning is outside the subject. He clenched his hands and said resolutely, I want to be strong. I want to be a disciple who doesn't make the master look bad, Don Thia Heap. I know you don't like me. Then he knelt down on one knee, clasped his hands urgently and said, But please train me. For someone who is always arrogant like Chan Gu, acting like this is extremely difficult for him. Besides Young Heap, there is no one else worthy of my help. Of course, if Young Heap doesn't like it, So Quan stands up. He walked up to Chan Gu and said, Even if you didn't say it, I would have done it. Chan Gu suddenly asked again, What did you say just now? So Quan repeated again, I said cleverly that I also intended to train Taoist Chan Gu. Chan Gu did not expect So Quan to agree with him so easily. So Quan also wants Chan Gu to become more advanced. After all, if he wants to be prepared for the campaign that will take place in the winter, this guy must be more mature. So Quan put his hand on Chan Gu's shoulder. I was very hesitant about what to do if he didn't want to be trained. I didn't expect to humble myself and ask for advice first. Luckily in the end everything went as smoothly as he wanted. So Quan smiled with satisfaction. I will take care of you with a happy mood. So Quan began to train Chan Gu. Chan Gu asked in surprise, special training. So Quan replied yes. The leader's weakest point is lack of experience. I will conduct advanced special training. The leader's real sense of battle. Chan Gu asked a little shyly, perhaps, perhaps, you don't mean that we will compete in martial arts from now on. So Quan also pulled out his sword and spoke. He guessed quickly. Chan Gu saw So Quan's actions so he had to ask the truth. Tell the truth. It's not like you just want to beat me, right? So Quan smiled and replied to him. Don't you want to become strong? There is no way to learn faster than learning directly with your body. So Quan put his sword on his shoulder and said comfortably, From now on I will attack Taoist Chan Gu unexpectedly. When practicing, or when resting in the room, or when eating meals. Even when sleeping, the more Chan Gu listened, the more stressed he became. So Quan pointed the sword at Chan Gu and said, So you must always be vigilant. Chan Gu asked him, Is it like killing me? So Quan explained, If you want to supplement your lack of experience in a short time. Shouldn't it go to this extent? So Quan suddenly approached Chan Gu. Then So Quan extended his hand and slashed once. But Chan Gu promptly dodged. Chan Gu shouted, I will not be defeated easily. Chan Gu also immediately counterattacked. So Quan, when he spoke so fiercely, he also replied, Sure, right after that Chan Gu was hit. He fell face down on the ground. When I pushed myself up to sit up, I saw a little bit of blood flowing from my nose. Chan Gu turned around and shouted at So Quan who attacked him from behind. So Quan pointed his sword at Chan Gu's face again and said 30 moves per attack. If you can withstand 30 moves, the training session is complete. If you can't resist, you will be severely beaten. Chan Gu heard that he was still being beaten and stammered and asked, What do you mean by that? So Quan gave orders, constantly thinking carefully about what was missing or what needed to be done to make the good point missing. He said seriously, If you don't do that, I don't know if you will really die. Chan Gu saw that he was seriously training him like that so he silently followed. In order to grow up quickly, it is necessary to push him into extreme situations. So Chan Gu has been practicing very hard. In order for this guy to do well in the winter, there is no other way but to be cruel. That's why So Quan often appears unexpectedly even when Chan Gu is sleeping. He hurts Chan Gu several times. How? This training was so strict that once Chan Gu couldn't bear it anymore and had to scream, that's enough. As soon as he shouted, he saw So Quan also stop. Chan Gu asked in surprise. Done done? But life is not like a dream. So Quan did not let him go so easily. So Quan did not show any mercy and slashed him. Then Chan Gu's scream rang out again. No one can save you, son. Damon happily came to report to So Quan, the team leader, that the formations and mechanics of the secret cave were about to be completed. Su Quan calculated and said, if we create a martial arts book, then the preparation for combat will be completed. But there's one thing that makes So Quan a little worried. When the battle for war is over, 
if the martial arts book and the secret cave isn't something special, then won't the evildoers fly everywhere to take revenge? Dam and Dong Tin said, that would be a big headache. Is there any problem? So Quan pondered over how to do it. Swordsmanship and boxing. He said they were martial arts that he had practiced in the demon sex treasury in his previous life so it was okay. The problem was the mind technique that I knew. Everything was fine. Is magic. Using Taiya then Gong and Hong Hoa then Gong to make people fall into the demon's mind is a bait almost risking attracting the attention of the demon cult leader. So I'm wondering. Damon sat down comfortably on the chair and answered him. Go ahead and write the ghost book. So Quan asked in confusion. Ghost book? Damon explained that in the last years of his life, he would not be able to overcome the temptation of magic. So he just needed to make it up like that and touch the needle. So Quan seemed to understand, ah, that's it. So Quan happily doubted, writing ghost books is fine. Well then, let's light a fire for our moths. The two people's plan also began. First was to send someone to spy on a martial arts secret. There was a guy who spread the news and shouted loudly, reporting, more than 200 years ago the evil black lotus master sent me, this person. Once the leader of the underworld in Zhujiang, he left behind peerless martial arts secrets for his descendants. Just as So Quan and Damon predicted, as soon as this information was spread, it caused a stir in the whole world. They raced to find the lost martial arts secret, the secret of our Luke Lam. Every faction wants to possess the secret of martial arts, and the secret must be ours to possess. All because of a rumor, those who pass the trials and enter the secret tribulation will become the rulers of Zhujiang's treasure. At this time, Chan Gu had also improved a lot thanks to So Quan's special training, 30 moves. So Quan silently assessed his progress. Chan Gu has indeed grown a lot. Now he can comfortably block all 30 of So Quan's moves. So Quan announced, You've worked hard and since today's training ends, Chan Gu happily fell to the ground. So Quan himself was extremely satisfied with his obvious progress. So Quan suddenly said, Chan Gu Taoist, I will use the card to show gratitude. Chan Gu asked in surprise, has this day already come? Even though he asked that, Chan Gu still said, just say it and I will do everything. But Chan Gu didn't expect that So Quan's wish would be like this. Chan Gu asked So Quan again, Dantia Heap, is this really what you want? So Quan wearing a black fox mask leisurely replied, yes, from now on we are. As a bandit, Chan Gu also covered half of his face. So Quan's wish is to capture the group of thieves. Rumors about martial arts secrets are spreading more and more. Even in a restaurant there are two people talking. Hey hey, I just heard the news. I heard that the secret cave of the evil Black Lotus Master S.A. has been discovered. I went to that snow bean mountain. Now in Zhujiang who doesn't know about that, typically the black sect, the green forest, and even the water lack camp have all gathered. One of them gloated and said, I heard that every day the black people die up and down, if that's the case. I hope they all die together. The other guy looked around in fear and said, shush. Don't say things like this out loud. If there's a mistake it could be a big deal. The other guy also responded in panic. Oh my god, I've been living too comfortably lately so I accidentally said something. The guy in the blue shirt was happy. Wasn't all of this thanks to the knights. How happy he was to hear the news. They wiped out the underworld and the bandits and distributed the property to the victims. The story is still going on. I heard that there are only two people. Isn't it wonderful? What will the true appearance of the fox face hero be like? The two men don't know that the two great heroes I just mentioned sitting and having a meal not far away. One person uses a fox mask. The other person uses a scarf to cover their face. So no one knows them. So what does it matter? The important thing is that the real knight has appeared. So Quan heard them talking about him and was very pleased. Using a fox mask, he was called the Fox Face Knight. Anyway, it seems the title has spread widely. Already, So Quan turned to ask Chan Gu if he had finished eating, but he saw that Chan Gu was still stuffing food into his mouth nonstop. He was still eating with his mouth full and saying, and bang oh my sir ayo, roughly translated as, can't we just leave after eating? So Quan saw that he ate so well and reluctantly replied, okay. But So Quan stood up and said harshly, although I also wanted to say that, but if I want to go around all areas within a time limit, I need to speed up more. Chan Gu saw him say that and was surprised. So Quan went straight out and said that he only needed to go around two more places to finish today's schedule. Chan Gu also quickly stood up and followed him. After a period of activity, Chan Gu said, I have destroyed the entire Dantian of the Black Tiger sect. He breathed heavily and reported further. The kidnapped girls have also been led to the Hoa Duong trade group. So Quan praised, it's been hard for you. Then he again instructed Chan Gu, part of the stolen property should be divided among the ladies. The rest should be transferred to the base of operations. Chan Gu excitedly replied, I know, just leave it to me. Seeing how cooperative he was, So Quan thought, now you're obedient, 
It's true that rolling around and spanking nonstop is also helpful, isn't it? Suddenly someone called, Don So Kwon. So Kwon saw Jie Dong coming and asked, How was my request going? Jie Dong gave him a piece of paper. Here, the next destination. Jie Dong saw that the two of them were struggling and asked, But wasn't it a bit too much? Director Chion Wu was completely skinny. Chan Gu heard that and quickly nodded his head in agreement. But So Kwon listed a series of next places. See you chow, Kim Hoa, Le Tui, Wen Chow. Tai Chao, there are still many places to go so let's solve it quickly. Chan Gu said yes for one hour, and then got bored. Leave. So Quan continues to calculate plans. Title is title. But must ensure more assets so the right thing must be brushed aside. So Quan thought seriously. If you want to become a veteran of Vo Lam Min, in addition to your title and martial arts skills, you need to have resources that are no less than powerful. Jie Dong remembered and said that's right, come back to Che Jie Hai there. The family is extremely determined to hide their existence, so there is no information at all. Jie Dong is talking about the matter that So Kwan asked her to investigate before. To the extent that the lower five gates cannot be found, it is also an absolute secret within the family. Jie Dong suddenly put his arm around So Kwan's shoulder and smiled and asked, But this is very interesting. Do you know what it is? Not long ago, there was a character from the family who made a great contribution in the naval war with the Oku. No matter how you think about it, that character looks like Che Jie Hai, but the soldiers call it a dragon. But Jie Dong wondered, normally if it's a woman, should it be called a phoenix? When So Kwan heard this, he was also surprised. Che Jie Hai's nickname was Dia Long. He feels that this is exactly the same as what happened in his previous life. So if he disguises himself as a man, then the future won't change, right? So Kwan felt a little more reassured. I was worried that the period of defeating the Oada was different from my previous life. But now I don't need to worry about that. Just follow the plan and take action. Chan Gu also ran. Coming from afar, he brought a large bag of things. Chan Gu Taoist, the next destination will be Dai Chao, this time on a big boat. The guard gave the order to leave all his weapons behind and come up here. On this big ship there were only pirates. Every guy's face was extremely brazen and ferocious. There was one person getting on the boat. All of them were murderously watching the person who had just gone up there. The person who just came up was a person wearing a mask. He saw countless pirates looking at him, and was not afraid. For pirates, this aura is quite sharp. Someone said, please come in. The masked person also responded, your Chinese language is very fluent. The person wearing armor said, I still have many shortcomings. We still have many shortcomings. The person wearing armor walked closer and said, that's why. Why did you come here to find me? The person wearing armor and wearing a mask with two devil fangs. This guy is a twin-bladed red ghost. One of the strongest martial arts generals of this sex elder level Oku. No, maybe even better than that. The masked man opened his mouth. Now the war is lasting longer than expected. So isn't the food already running out? The armored man replied because of a certain mischievous person. It is indeed a bit difficult now. The masked man made a proposal. I will open the way to the town for you. I will distract the army. So in the meantime, your side should take food and property. The man in red armor said with satisfaction. It's not a bad idea. So what will you gain? The masked man slowly said, what I want is chaos, that's the way to get the central planes. And this, the masked man took what he was wearing on his shoulder. He opened it and said this is the gift the devil has prepared. Inside was a pair of extremely beautiful twin swords. The guy in armor saw the offering and happily replied, oh, such a precious offering. The man in armor pulled the offering out of its shell. Then he said with satisfaction and conveyed the message to the demon lord for me. Since I have received such a precious gift, I will return the favor. The masked man had just left the armored man's boat when he thought, if the two red devils were proudly spreading everywhere, then that earth dragon would have no choice but to be forced to move. The bald guy driving the boat laughed and said to the masked person, actually, this is illegal so the boat fee is a bit high. He did not expect that not only could he not collect the high fee, but he would also lose a head. The masked man without saying a word waved his hand and beheaded him. If he were to let him go ashore, he would have to take him back to his parents, and take him before the ghost. Army. The Zhuga family will only think that he was captured by the gangsters. Or that he was killed. The masked man threw the man's body into the river. Then he calmly walked ashore. He walked away, leaving the boatman floating on the water. He had a military advisor on behalf of Saman, shaking the family. It was truly impossible to predict the devil's deep plans. But, then the masked man called his subordinates who were hiding everywhere and all returned. Then he gave the order. We also followed the singers. All subordinates jumped out from all directions. They all wore masks, followed the instructions of the masked person from before, 
and went to the dais. On another large boat, someone asked, Is this all? The other person replied, Yes. The person who asked was Gon Hai, who was disguised as a man. She was reading the information she had gathered about Don Sokwan. She was clearly from the Man Chang family, the Royal Dragon Martial Arts School, following the disciples of Mai Hoa and Kim and his son. The homeowner's daughter is too ordinary. The more Gon Hai read information about Sokwan, the more suspicious he became about his identity. Don Sokwan was the last person. Before Gon Hai could finish thinking, someone interrupted loudly. Something big happened to you, sir. Gon Hai asked, what's going on? Her subordinates reported that a large number of soldiers appeared in the sea area of Dai Chao. Gan Hai listened to his report and was extremely surprised. Now is not the time for the demons to move. She thought to herself, we have controlled the sea area here and heard that the war has come to an end. Already, Gan Hai tightened her grip on the sword in her hand. Things were not as she had planned, but suddenly they started up again. This was not what I expected. Gan Hai asked him if the government official knew yet. The man replied yes, but it took some time for the government to get here. Gan Hai thought about this unusual thing. Why did they attack now? Did they know that the army was not here? Could it be that someone was helping them? She guessed right. The devil had asked for his minions. Secretly gave gifts to the gang so they could rise up. Gan Hai had to give an order. Martial artist, please inform the soldiers. The martial arts master standing behind her asked, Are you planning to order the troops? Gan Hai told him, We don't have enough people to deal with those gangs. Wait until the military officials arrive. If so, then the people in Tai Chao will be in danger. The martial artist is worried, but the public will be in danger. Death. Gan Hai said strongly, This time I will directly command. At this time, So Quan and Chan Gu had arrived at the castle. This time the invasion was easier than I thought, and the harvest was also quite good. Chan Gu lamented and was tired to death, even though today was a day off, as promised. So Quan smiled at him, Have I ever lied to you? Chan Gu's eyes sparkled happily and said then, I'm leaving before you change your mind. I have to quickly return to my place of residence. But Chan Gu didn't have time. While I was enjoying it, I heard someone scream, Whoa, 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 who appeared. Both of them also saw countless people running away. Everyone was scared and said, Whoa, first of all, everyone should run quickly. How could the Udu appear at the stage? Chan Gu and So Quan looked at each other and nodded. Both of them understood what the other was thinking. Then both of them quickly moved towards the direction where the screams rang out. Chan Gu was surprised and couldn't believe his eyes. He stammered and said, Is that whole place a bastard? So Quan also saw a lot of boats going to Taizhou. Recently I heard that the army was winning and the Okutaku were withdrawing. But why are they flocking here like this now? Could it be that they are you mad? Chan Gu asked confusedly, What should we do? But So Quan said, The gangsters already have the military to take care of it. We just need to do our own thing. But Chan Gu saw the honest people being bullied by gangsters. Aren't the people in danger? So Quan said what he observed. They only seemed to scare them and had no intention of harming them. Perhaps they would try to plunder as much as possible before the army arrived. Suddenly So Quan understood their purpose. Wait a minute, if the purpose is robbery. Perhaps, he worriedly turned his head to look into the distance, where a black smoke was rising. So Quan quickly disappeared from his location. Anyway, he had to go there to check. He left suddenly, leaving behind only Chan Gu, bewildered, asking, Where are you going? So Quan was in such a hurry that he didn't even have time to explain to Chan Gu, who was rushing forward. He suddenly saw something that So Quan could not imagine. The gangsters were trying to loot a house. They carried bags of stuff out, then set fire to the house behind. So Quan landed suddenly, attracting the gang's attention. But he didn't care because what was happening before his eyes was enough to make So Quan pay all his attention. The bandits were carrying many sacks. When they saw So Quan landing, they asked, What's that guy? Pieces of shredded paper flew up. These pieces of paper were once banknotes, but under a fire, they were all burned. Now they are nothing more than scraps of paper. The money earned in the lottery, Hung Station, Ho Chao and this Chao Chao Station. The money that he and his team had worked hard to earn in the past had all turned to ashes. So Quan looked blankly at the rising fire. It was these gangsters who burned everything down. So Quan clenched his fists. The gangsters didn't understand anything. They only saw So Quan staring blankly at the torch they were holding in their hands, then shouted, Kill him. So Quan was extremely angry. Lightning began to appear everywhere. Just one second later, the gangsters were attacked by these lightning bolts. No one can escape. So Quan could not contain his anger when he witnessed this scene. The bandits only had time to scream once and then died. So Quan clutched the sword stained with the gangster's blood. By the time Chan Gu ran over, there were dead bodies on the ground. He suddenly asked Dan Ti Heap, What's going on? The warehouse has burned down. So Quan slowly said, Chan Gu, 
help me move. Everything arrived safely. Chan Gu was confused and explained this to me, but So Quan only said one unclear sentence, mostly singing. We'll immediately come here. Chan Gu asked So Quan's intention, lacking in agreement. So Quan took out his familiar black fox mask and said I will destroy the crows. Chan Gu was even more surprised, because just now So Quan was very indifferent to this matter. But now he was angry and wanted to destroy the Oatu. Why suddenly like this? Just now the young knight said something different. But So Quan did not explain further, just quickly left. Chan Gu could only scream, Don. So Quan rushed away and thought angrily, I intended not to care about these thugs. But, how dare you touch my things? I will pay you back tenfold. Countless lightning rays emitted from his body. So Quan saw the gangsters carrying their bags of money away and angrily pulled out his sword. This is how it happened. He smiled. For the sake of my reputation, I had to let you guys be the sacrifice. So Quan appeared from above, surprising the gangsters and making them unable to react in time. Only miserable screams remained. They deserved to receive a lesson at the cost of their lives. At this time, in another place, a few gangsters still don't know what's going on. Trying to get money into the car. Hurry up. Have to get everything on the boat before the officers arrive. One guy even went to the warehouse. Hi hi. We got a lot of things. Another guy complimented. Good job quickly loaded into the car. But soon they saw their comrades being defeated by one person and trampled under their feet. The accomplice spat out a mouthful of blood and raised his hand as if calling for help. The remaining gangsters saw this and frowned and asked, Who was it? There was no answer. Only one of the gang's heads fell down. Two people sitting nearby screamed in fear immediately. Seeing this, the Okutaka screamed and rushed forward. No no de aro. But they were also defeated. Two frightened people sitting there saw it and recognized it this fox mask. People wearing fox masks have always been discussed these days, they said tremblingly, fox faced. The person who recognized him immediately shouted, it's the fox face, long live the fox face. So Quan sighed and thought, there really is no end, each person's level is not very high, but, even though he showed them overwhelming force, he still did not retreat. On the contrary, because he rushed into attack, he consumed even more physical strength, he thought as he looked at the group of thugs lying on the ground. Even so, I thought it was pirates, but I didn't expect the mechanism to reset to this level. The country in the previous life could not confront all the gangsters here. Avoid the coast where the main army is located, and so that the people can witness your actions, it is best to mainly attack each village. The two people who were just saved bowed and thanked So Quan, thank you, thank you very much sir. Then the two of them witnessed So Quan jump onto the roof and disappear. At this time on Gan Hai's boat, a henchman came to report that the young master was in big trouble. Received news from the vanguard army that had arrived at Tai Chao first, that it had been confirmed that the ship belonged to the twin sword devil, one of the four great martial generals. Gan Hai's face expressed concern, thinking, red devil's twin swords, a general like that would make a move, after all. And then the boat accelerated with the soldiers shouting, we must speed up. As for So Quan, he is at the castle after eliminating the gangsters. He thought that except for the guys who had returned to the boat, Everything around here had almost been dealt with. Now it was time to get to a safe place and have good luck. Suddenly a voice rang out with a terrible aura that attracted Sokun's attention. That person walked over and said, The subordinates didn't return so I came here to take a look. I didn't expect something like this to happen. What are you doing? After that guy finished speaking, Sokun turned his head and looked back. That stranger in the form of a S.A. Murai made Sokun wary. The aura he radiated was at least that of a top expert. In the army there was someone with this level of strength. Could it be a human? An animal with a relatively high status in the Oatu army. He jumped down and approached So Quan, asking if he didn't answer. My Trung Nguyen language is still lacking. So Quan was immediately on guard. He pulled out his sword and took a defensive stance. So Quan pulled out his sword and jumped back quickly. While the other guy said in a provocative tone, Coincidentally I also want to try a new weapon. Very good. After speaking, he glared and bared his teeth as if using internal strength, pulled out two swords and slashed them forward, creating a terrible energy that shot straight towards So Quan. So Quan promptly used his sword to block it, creates a huge explosion that lights up the entire sky. Seeing So Quan still standing after the attack just now, he continued to say, it seems you are a pretty good opponent for me to test my weapon. So Quan felt a bit scratched and thought, really strong. If he were from the central plains, his reputation would truly be on par with hundreds of masters. Remembering the guys he had encountered, So Quan thought that among the opponents he had fought in this life, he was the strongest. So Quan clutched the sword and thought in fear. Now his physical strength is gradually depleted so he is not sure he will win. But strangely, he was full of hope rather than fear. So Quan raised his face with some confidence. He continued to take a stance, 
holding the sword in both hands, straining his energy and telling So Kwan, this time it's me. He rushed forward like lightning. In the blink of an eye, he was in front of So Kwan, slashing down with one hand. So Kwan was equally quick to raise his sword to block, almost knocking someone's head to the ground. So Kwan gritted his teeth and thought, can he be this powerful with just one hand? Not stopping there, he used his other hand to sweep the blade, surprising So Kwan. Quickly retreat backwards to escape the dangerous attack. So Kwan realized one thing, the arm's strength was strong, but perhaps because the armor was heavy, the movement was slow. If that's the case, try to win or lose with speed. Having said that, So Kwan rushed forward like a bolt of electricity. Slash that S.A. Murai from all directions with terrifying speed. So Kwan wondered, could the armor prevent gossip? It completely blocks the damage you attack, so only your physical strength is consumed. So Kwan stopped attacking and stepped back after seeing that the other guy was unharmed. The other guy seemed to become more ferocious, raised his two swords and said, That's the end of this cunning attack habit, it's really tasteless. As soon as he finished speaking, he swung his sword in an arc like a hurricane. So Kwan opened his eyes wide, he realized the danger. Immediately avoid that guy's attack range. The other guy still glared at So Kwan. He knew that if the decision to win or lose continued like this, it would be even more disadvantageous for him because his physical strength was no longer intact. Even if he used his internal attack to attack further, he would still have to quickly decide the winner. Said and done, So Kwan unleashed the moon attack, a powerful light emitted from his body. The S.A. Mu Rai finally knew what he was afraid of. His eyes widened and his mouth gaped open. So Kwan glided forward, pointed the sword straight at the enemy's chest, thinking, focusing on one point. So Kwan put all his strength into it, causing a hole in his armor. He was pushed away along with fragments of his armor. His eyes were blank with surprise. So Kwan saw that and thought. At that moment he moved his body back to reduce the shock he received. Even if it was too much, he could only push it so much. Suddenly someone shouted stop. So Kwan looked over and saw the gangsters taking people hostage. They threatened that if they didn't stop, we would kill them. People cried and asked for help. Save me and the whole dying heap. So Kwan thought to himself. Whether the hostages died or not had nothing to do with me. But the problem was that I was using a fox mask. If the hostages are left alone, the fox's reputation may also be damaged. At this time, So Kwan is a bit hard to think about. In another development, on an island, Gan Hai asked his subordinates, Where are the Red Devil Twin Blades? He replied, It seems like they are not here. The subordinate continued to speak. The number of the gangsters looked smaller than expected. It seemed they had gone out to scavenge and had not returned. Gan Hai said with a happy look, what a chance, before the Red Ghost Twin Swords returned. Go back and control the Okuya army. Meanwhile, on the cliff, someone is following Gan Hai. There were quite a few of those people. They were all wearing masks. Here we go. The person being held hostage cried for help. Save me. Save me. So Quan intended not to intervene. The hostage's life or death had nothing to do with him. But the problem was that he was still wearing the black fox mask. So Kwan clenched his teeth awkwardly. If he left the hostages alone, the fox's reputation might decline. But then the twin swords of the red devil landed in front of them. He scolded them, you idiots. He ordered, release all the hostages here. The gangsters who were arresting innocent people saw the red ghost's twin swords quickly lowered their tails, excited. Then the twin-bladed devil walked closer to So Kwan and said, I will apologize to my subordinates for being rude. So Kwan asked in confusion, What are you thinking? The twin-bladed red ghost explained, I don't want to be hindered in the battle with the strong, that's all. So Kwan was surprised, How could the actions of someone who came from a faraway country and plundered them be similar to those of political factions? The twin-bladed red devil said excitedly, How long has it been since I had an exciting victory or defeat like this? Then I will charge with all my strength like a fighter. After he finished speaking, he raised his two swords. He stood at a distance but still had enough strength to attack So Kwan. So Kwan did not expect the twin swords of the Red Devil to suddenly appear and then fight with him. But he quickly counterattacked. But So Kwan did not expect it. The twin-bladed Red Devil was still standing far away from him just a few seconds ago. But now he has closed the distance, appearing right above and attacking So Kwan directly. Then he used both swords to slash hard. So Kwan could only use his sword to block. But his strength was extremely formidable. So Kwan could not stand and had to retreat with terrible force. After that, So Kwan also avoided the situation of using force. He thought it was best to avoid confrontation and find space. Then So Kwan also counterattacked. The twin-bladed red devil quickly jumped up to dodge the attack. While he was focusing his attention on jumping up, So Kwan also approached him. He slashed once, attacking directly with the twin red demon swords. But the red devil's twin swords did not hit. He dodged to the side 
and at the same time swung his sword and slashed So Kun's body. So Kun was extremely surprised. He didn't expect him to be so agile. Each attack followed one after another. So Kun noticed the change in the twin swords of the Red Devil. His movements also became agile. Maybe it was to prevent danger that he didn't use all his internal strength. So Kun thought, using his hand to cover his bleeding wound. But the problem is that if you don't have abundant internal strength, you can't penetrate that layer of armor. So Kwan suddenly noticed a point on his body. He thought of a plan. Maybe he should use that method. Then So Kwan also slashed once. The twin-bladed red devil greatly underestimated this move. He didn't even move and said, Do you think the technique is the same as this one? Is there going to be a penetration? He shouted arrogantly, puffing out his chest as if challenging So Kwan. But what happened next surprised him. So Kwan's sword was rushing towards his stomach. But it didn't produce obvious results because the red demon's twin swords were already dodged. The swords still kept rushing forward. The twin-bladed red devil turned his head to see the sword that had just collided so hard against the wall. He applauded, good test, but I know you will aim at this place. He looked at the damaged position of the armor, because he was convinced that it was a weak position to focus his attack on. When he raised his head, he was sure to see So Kwan nowhere. At this time, so Kwan took the opportunity of the opponent's negligence to approach him very closely. The red demon twin swords were surprised. I thought he would attack the cracked armor, then this was the real purpose. Even if the body is protected by armor, it will definitely penetrate, not from the outside, but from the inside causing internal injuries. So Quan used his fingers to impact the armor. The seventh move of the Lich Gwyn, the broken burial fist, So Quan found a loophole in the armor and focused his main force on it. The twin-bladed red ghost suddenly felt the world spinning, his eyes seemed to be covered by lightning. All those lightning rays emanated from So Quan. This time the Red Devil lost two swords. He didn't wear a helmet anymore. He just knelt on the ground and said, I've lost, please kill me. So Quan thought to himself, armor is the same. This sword is not an ordinary item. Suddenly So Quan saw something extremely familiar on the Red Ghost's body. A prominent line of red text appeared on the Red Devil's sword. So Quan was surprised. The magic statue weapon crafted in a demon sect was in the hands of this guy. So Quan asked in surprise, who did you get this sword from? The Red Ghost obediently replied, ah, it's it. I listened to the guy who gave it to me and came here. So Quan really wanted to know the identity of the person who ordered the Red Ghost to do this. He asked who that person was. Red Devil opened his mouth to answer him. That person was. At this time, there was a guy who was always waiting in ambush from above. When this guy saw that the Red Devil's twin swords were about to reveal everything, he quickly killed everyone. In just a blink of an eye, the twin-bladed Red Demon had collapsed. He was assassinated and died on the spot. So Quan looked at the red ghost and died without even saying a word to him. He wondered this is. What name? The person up high saw that he had been discovered by So Quan and was a little frightened. That guy quickly ran away. So Quan also quickly chased after him and ran away. At a cliff, there is a group of people surrounding Gon Hai. They suggest Earth Dragon, I won't kill you, so just follow us. Gon Hai frowned from the gangsters suddenly carrying out the landing plan to the appearance of the red ghosts. From the beginning it was a plan to capture her, she still did not realize their identities. It doesn't seem like they are gangsters so who exactly are they? The masked man saw that Gon Hai was silent and said I can still hear the sound of thinking hard here. If you follow me you will definitely know. Suddenly, from afar, another masked man rushed in to inform. The main team, number four was coming. The leader asked in surprise, number four, he was supposed to monitor the twin-bladed red devil. So why did he come here? Perhaps this guy was referring to the person who had just assassinated the twin-bladed red demon and was chased by So Kwan. The masked men standing around were suddenly attacked by surprise. The leader himself was also attacked, but he quickly held the arrow. He asked in surprise you, not number four. Who are you? So Kwan just silently smiled. Back to when number four escaped. After being discovered by So Kwan he tried to run away. So Kwan was still chasing behind. However, so Quan easily grabbed his head and hurriedly went somewhere. Then he directly pushed the man's head down and dragged him to the ground, letting him lie still and motionless. So Quan quickly pressed his acupuncture points. So Quan warned, I have already applied acupuncture points, so you cannot even move a finger, let alone commit suicide. The other guy glanced at So Quan in fear. At this moment, So Quan realized that he could feel the demonic energy. This guy was a member of the demonic sect. If so, he would probably be banned like a dead ghost. He remembered the time when the dead ghost spontaneously broke out of the restriction and died. The so-called restriction was a type of soul hypnosis that hypnotized the target. When the secret was revealed, it would self-explode and lose its life. There was no way. Which one will lift the ban? At that moment, Sokwan turned him upside down, 
his hand accumulating rays of energy. So Quan put his hand on his stomach, but if he didn't have the internal strength to self-explode, he wouldn't be able to die. He used his strength to stop the ban on taking number four's life. So Quan asked, what is your regime and why are you here? Guy number four was extremely scared. So Quan asked again, why did you assassinate him? If you tell him everything you know, then at least the road to the Golden Spring won't be painful. So Quan glared menacingly. Then there was a scream that echoed across the sky. After getting information from that guy, So Quan thought as he covered his scarf and prepared to leave. He didn't expect that these devils would also take advantage of the devils to capture the dragon, probably thinking they could get a magic formation. If he replaces Damon, he will be able to shake the family's fortunes. So Quan smiled confidently and said, That probably won't work, senior brother. So Quan went to the cliff and looked down at the people below. He had taken away Damon and the situation was different from the previous life. So Quan looked at Gon Hai's group of people who were cornered. Earth Dragon, no, I don't feel guilty because Gon Hai was implicated. But if the army's punishment was different from the previous life, it would be very chaotic. So Quan gradually pulled down his hood, and if he came to help, the family would be in debt of gratitude. So Quan held his sword ready for action. Gon Hai saw So Quan and said in surprise, confused. The masked man looked at So Quan and said sarcastically, are you a brat? He pulled out his sword, released internal energy, and continued, if he pretended not to see, perhaps I could have spared your life. The masked man shouted as he attacked, that nonsense of chivalry ended your life. So Quan drew his sword and blocked the other man's attack. So Quan examines the opponent, the expert on the threshold of a super ultimate realm. Not a strong enemy, but not an easy opponent with not much internal attack left. At this time, the other guy rushed to approach, so Quan quickly dodged. So Quan used his sword to block the enemy's downward slash. He continued to stab the sword. The blade was close to So Quan's neck. So Quan dodged but was still cut, causing a few drops of blood to flow out. He thought that he had to avoid a direct conflict and grasp this guy's weakness. The other guy continued to attack. So Quan stepped back to keep his distance from him. Standing from a distance, So Quan unleashes a continuous slash attack, shooting an illusion of sword at the enemy. He easily cracked it and said, Do you think you can fool me with that illusion? Suddenly that guy's eyes widened in surprise. He discovered there was something else coming, and thought it was a hidden weapon. That guy used his bare hands to grab So Quan's hidden weapon. He looked disdainful and said, Using the shadow sword to cover his eyes and release hidden weapons, a knight would use such a despicable method. Besides the hidden weapon, it seemed like So Quan knew what he was planning to do. He continued to say that he had to launch like this, then launched three arrows back towards So Quan. So Quan raised his hand to block, and the hidden weapon arrow hit his hand. So Quan gritted his teeth. He knelt down. The other guy saw that and immediately said, You idiot, you used your arm to block the poison sound. Probably the one who held on to hope. At this moment So Quan completely collapsed in front of the others. Then the masked man suddenly flashed. Arriving in front of Gon Hai's group, his sudden action made them both scared and defensive. He stood in front of them and continued, if that kind of extreme poison is not poisonous or invincible then it is. It wasn't long before he was so proud that So Quan came from behind, put his sword on his neck, and said, You really know, I am the invincible poison. So Quan's whisper made him tremble and stutter. What? The scene that followed was nothing more than a splash of bright red blood. After killing the masked man, So Quan left. Gan Hai clasped his hands and said, Thank you for saving my life. Gan Hai expressed his intention to invite So Quan, that... I will not ask about his real identity. In the future can you come to my family's house or not? So Quan said nothing, just turned around and left. Gan Hai helplessly called out, wait. She looked at So Quan's figure and said regretfully, indifferently. And So Quan was flying under the moonlight. Gan Hai returned to the bandits and told his subordinates that the bandits had run away. Don't chase them. Let's clean up the village. Gan Hai stood in front of the corpse of the twin-bladed red ghost, thinking, twin-bladed red ghost, to deal with this guy. It must be a great master. Who exactly is it? While thinking, Gan Hai's subordinates came to report that young master had discovered slash marks on the bodies of people near the forest. Gan Hai asked again, Can he recognize it? The subordinate replied, That is the sword of Hoa Sun. After hearing this, Gan Hai was surprised, The master of Hoa Sun is here. Could it be? At this time, the moon was high, probably in the middle of the night. Chan Du painfully asked So Quan, Young master please, do you know how much money was taken by those people? Suddenly, a group of people holding weapons rushed in and shouted loudly to kill them. So Quan immediately told him not to rest until he recovered the money that had been taken. Chan Gu closed his eyes, crossed his arms, turned around and said, If that's the reason, then just do it alone. 
I'm not for money but for the suffering people. In the end, So Quan grabbed his shirt and pulled him away. Chan Gu could only beg and say, please give me a break. In the end, everything went smoothly, the sky was clear and cloudy. At the place where the So Quan group is staying, So Quan happily said you have worked hard in the past, leader Chan Gu. Chan Gu shouted excitedly. It was finally done. So Quan took out a stack of bills and gave it to Chan Gu. This is the reward. Chan Gu was extremely surprised when he heard there was a reward. What kind of reward is it? So Quan advised, before I call, eat whatever you want. Buy whatever you want and rest comfortably. His eyes sparkled and asked again, didn't you say you did it for free? So Quan smiled, I'm just saying that, I'm not a bully. Seeing Chan Gu passionately looking at the stack of bills, So Quan put it back in his pocket again. If he didn't like it, Chan Gu saw that and said very hastily, what if he didn't like it? It's not good to just use whips. So Quan thought as he put the stack of bills into Chan Gu's hand. Sometimes we have to use benefits. Above all, this is a worthy reward because he did better than we expected. Chan Gu happily stuffed the money into his pocket. Jie Dong walked out from inside, young knight. Chan Gu saw Jie Dong and greeted with bright eyes, Ah, Chan young lady. Jie Dong gave So Quan a letter, and the young knight sent it through the lower five gates. So Quan opened the envelope and thought, Damon is probably waiting near the secret cave right now. But when he finished reading the content of the letter, he was a bit surprised, then quickly said I have to go now. So Quan quickly went out. Next to him was Jie Dong, who was wearing a hat with a veil covering his face. She wondered but, do I have to wear this troublesome thing? Jie Dong said as he adjusted his inconveniently large hat. So Quan answered her, I don't want to be harassed. Jie Dong smiled confidently and said so that's it. The black men who were so confused by my Mao would probably attack. But So Quan discovered something was wrong. He quickly turned into a door. Jie Dong saw that he didn't care about her and got angry. Oh, don't you pay any attention to me? No matter what I do, she was talking and saw. There were many people standing there as soon as they entered. When they saw her and So Quan coming, they turned to look. But everyone's faces were filled with murderous intent. Seeing that they were all looking back, So Quan said to Jie Dong, If you want to take it off, I won't stop you. Damon was standing upstairs. When he saw two acquaintances coming, he raised his hand to signal, and at the same time said loudly, Brother, I'm here. When the three of them entered the private room, So Quan asked Damon, It seems that this place has been occupied by black magic. Why did you choose this place? Damon quickly answered him, Because I made a suggestion to find a SEO boss. So Quan was confused, What to suggest? Damon said, Because I will help dissolve the formation to open the secret cave. In return they have to pay a large reward. When So Quan heard him say that, he also respected it because that formation was set up by Damon himself. And now he waited for someone else to pay him to open it, and he had to take it upon himself to break the trap that he had prepared. What a worthy price, the cunning tricks are different from the appearance. After that, Damon explained further, but because I joined hands with the dark group, I also had to face danger, so I wanted to ask you to be my bodyguard. So Quan saw that he had planned it out and asked, have you been paying attention to this from the very beginning of planning? Damon nodded in response, having come to this point, not only his identity, but also his identity. Pay attention to practical benefits. So Quan asked him some risks. Firstly, the opponent is a bad guy so there is no guarantee that they will keep their word but if SEO Du Gang leader doesn't keep his word, what will you do? Jie Dong sat next to him. Hearing that So Quan seemed to support Damon's plan, he lamented, okay, okay, no one is trustworthy. Damon smiled then you will have to take action, because you are my bodyguard, you can know everything. Jie Dong saw that So Quan had to be the bodyguard this time and was excited. It was indeed Don So Quan, who will defeat them. So Quan agreed and said I know, let's make a plan first. Damon clasped his hands, thank you brother. After receiving So Quan's acceptance of protection, the two went to meet the black ops leader. When he heard Damon and So Quan's proposal, he slammed his weapon down. What? In front of the two people is an extremely muscular man. On his left eye there are three scars. This person is the leader of the Seodo gang. At this time he is dissatisfied and says, Do you think I will accept this unreasonable request? So Quan was silently evaluating him. This person had reached his peak, and was indeed the leader of the black gang. Damon asked the gang leader, I don't know why it's unreasonable. I also don't ask you to teach me martial arts. He heard that and said, That's not a small amount of money. Damon waved his hand and smiled. Compared to what you receive, it is not worth much. This little money is nothing worth mentioning. The dark leader also refused. If not, I won't hear anything more from you. Damon spread his fan and calmly said then I have no other choice but to go find the leaders of other forces. Chiyo Chin didn't believe that when he heard that. How could anyone agree to come in? 
that's why. Damon slowly explained, let's see if I am asking for a large amount of money, but compared to what he received, it was not worth much. This statement made Chio Chin a bit hesitant. While he was still pondering, Damon turned around and left. I knew he was not planning on doing business with me, so Chio Chin saw him turn away and quickly stopped him. Wait, wait, are you sure you can enter the secret cave? Damon saw that the fish had taken the bait and replied, since you have investigated me, you should know clearly, right? He asked loudly again, what if he failed? Damon replied if that happened, I don't accept compensation and my life belongs to you, what a big bet. When Damon and So Quan finished negotiating with Chio Chin, So Quan said the deal with the gang leader Seo Du is done, now we have to go to the poplar caravan for a moment. This is the territory of Seo Bang, so please rest assured. Damon also gently replied then I will go and arrange the next arrangements. Having finished speaking, So Quan also quickly disappeared, and Damon slowly returned to his room. The quiet night has fallen. But Damon was still sitting at the table writing something. He stretched his arms and said I guess this is fine. Damon carried a candle to the bed. The candle was still burning very strongly, lighting up the whole corner of the room. Damon got into bed as usual, turned around and blew out the candles. But he didn't know that there was always someone watching him. He was just waiting for Damon to blow out the candles and go to sleep. I will take action. The guy quickly disappeared. At this time, Damon was still sleeping peacefully. He still did not know that danger was approaching. He watched Damon wearing a mask, who was standing next to his bed, and pulled out a knife, intending to assassinate Damon. The masked man held the knife tightly. Then he swung it high and stabbed it down. Damon panicked and widened his eyes. The masked man saw that Damon was fast asleep and quickly stabbed a knife into his stomach. But until this guy looked up, the thing lying on the bed is not Damon but a piece of wood. He looked around bewilderedly looking for Damon. At this time, Damon was secretly hiding in a safe place, witnessing everything as expected, just as the leader said, the assassin targeted me. This person's stealth is very good. If we hadn't prepared the formation in advance, we would have been in danger. It turns out that the scene of Damon sleeping soundly on the bed that the masked man saw just now was just an illusion that caused him to do it. Go out. The assassin also knew he had been tricked, he held a knife and looked everywhere. Then this guy immediately attacked a location. That is the location where So Quan and Damon are hiding. When So Quan saw this guy's precise attack, he praised him and immediately knew our location. Indeed, he was a very sensitive assassin. This guy saw that two people discovered him and quickly rushed towards the window. The guy didn't hesitate and jumped right down. Then in just a split second, this guy jumped across the rooftops to escape. This masked man had no intention of dueling with So Quan and Damon. When the assassination failed, he quickly found a way out. Even though this guy ran very fast, So Quan still followed him. He approached the masked guy and asked, Where are you running to escape? No matter how the masked man tried to escape, he was eventually stopped by So Quan. There was no other way for this guy to have to land on the ground. He cursed aggressively. Damn it. When he turned around to look at So Quan, So Quan recognized him, wearing leather armor. I was gentle enough to capture him alive but, leaving only a small scratch. So Quan was thinking when he saw the masked man suddenly release a hidden weapon. So Quan leaned forward to avoid it. He frowned and thought, equipped with an entire organ that shoots hidden weapons? The masked man saw that So Quan had easily dodged his hidden weapon, so he took out his knife. Then he quickly flashed in front of So Quan. Then he appeared again in front of So Quan and slashed hard. Although he attacked very suddenly, So Quan still dodged the attack. Moreover, he quickly counterattacked, injuring the masked man. But after the attack, So Quan noticed something. Ha huh, look at that. He assessed the assassin in front of him, his ability to hide his identity, as well as his equipment standards. So Quan had no doubt that this was a specially trained assassin. The masked man quickly widened the distance between him and So Quan, then loudly asked, How did you know I was coming? So Quan answered his question, Because since you were in Taedu Bang, you have been following us. As soon as this guy heard this, he shouted in disbelief, Impossible. The masked man said in disbelief, I know you're a master but you can't always use aura, you can't detect me. Seeing that this guy definitely didn't believe him, so Quan smiled and thought, you have no way of knowing. Life is like hell when you always have to stand between the boundary between death and death. At risk of being assassinated at any time, so Quan remembered the harsh time when he was still open to magic. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I have the habit of always being highly alert to my surroundings. When I came to Seo Du Bang, even though it was only a very short time, I felt your breath. After So Quan answered the other guy, he asked, Now it's my turn to ask, who ordered you? The other guy was silent, he didn't intend to tell So Quan about this. So Quan walked up to him. If you're not going to speak, then I have no choice but to force you to open your mouth. 
When So Kwan was about to approach, he raised his hand and threw out two marbles. A green smoke quickly spewed out. So Kwan knew what he had just thrown out. It was poison. The masked man intended to take this opportunity to escape. But it's not that easy, son. So Kwan still grabbed him. He gently whispered in the assassin's ear, This poison is nothing to me. Under So Kwan's hands, several lightning bolts had already accumulated. He quickly pointed at the killer's acupuncture points to prevent his next actions. After that, so Kwan also squeezed the assassin's jaw muscles to prevent him from biting his tongue. At the same time, he exposed him and gave up his thoughts of suicide. The masked man saw that So Kwan knew all his actions. His eyes widened in surprise, he trembled in fear. But then So Kwan realized, without poison, it was not an assassin from some organization but a freelance assassin. Then So Kwan also reached out his hand around. The assassin saw So Kwan's actions and was even more surprised. Gas, gas blocking? The assassin asked, who are you? Talking about someone with abilities like yours, So Kwan interrupted his question. I will ask the question. So Kwan squeezed his shoulder. Who commissioned someone to assassinate Young Knight? He stubbornly said, Do you think I will say that? What? So Kwan gently smiled a friendly smile, but his hand had already accumulated energy. He spoke again. At first everyone said that. In the end, everyone begged to die, but So Kwan's hand with countless lightning bolts made the other man extremely scared. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore. He stammered out, Five. Five Ghost Gang is entrusted by the master of the Five Ghost Gang. So Kwan knew the name that guy just said. The Five Ghost Gang is one of the big gangs, competing with the Taita Gang. It seems they are planning to prevent the Taita Gang from secretly attacking. Then So Kwan looked at the assassin again. Even so, this guy seemed to be hiding something. So Kwan reached out to pull down the guy's mask. He felt that this guy's face looked very familiar. When the other guy saw So Kwan pull off his mask, he panicked and stammered. Wait, wait, wait. As soon as he saw the face behind the mask, So Kwan was extremely surprised. What is it? Why is this guy here? So Kwan exclaimed, Seo So Kwan, the assassin saw So Kwan calling his name and was surprised. Oh, how did this guy know him? So Kwan said at once, after single-handedly destroying the demon gang, you hid your identity and went to find the parents to ask about the name of the missing child. That child was also you. Before, you were always there. Was called Sam Ho. But at that time you already knew that your name was Seo So Kwan. The assassin saw that his identity was being exposed like that. So he frowned and asked, How did that happen? So Kwan silently remembered in his heart, How could I know because I heard it directly from the person's mouth. This guy is the heavenly killer, Sam So Kwan. A rare assassin, the one who murdered the Sword King, the greatest master among the ten heavenly emperors. And this guy is also the confidant of the demon king. He is the shadow, shouldering all the dirtiest jobs. The more So Kwan looked at the person in front of him, the more certain he became that it was you. So Kwan secretly calculated that even though he was kicked out of the White Path and joined the demon sect, he is still a masterless assassin. After thinking about it, So Kwan smiled triumphantly. Really, I have to apologize to my second senior brother, this evil-faced killer. He excitedly looked at Seo So Kwan standing in front of him, then silently decided this time, you will be my shadow. So Kwan recalled the stories he knew about the murder gang. The murder gang was the place where kidnapped children were trained and then forced to kill their close comrades like brothers. It is an organization that specializes in training assassins through harsh training. Seo So Kwan hid her emotions, secretly harboring the will for revenge. And as soon as he became a special assassin, he destroyed the master assassin and all the assassins of the assassin clan. After that, he lived as a wanderer. But for some reason, he was chased away by people of the righteous path and had to flee to the demon religion. He wandered around in the demon religion and caught the eye of the demon slayer. After his martial arts improved, he built a reputation for killing the sword king, but even so. Then So Kwan remembered the fate of this demonic assassin, but he failed to assassinate the magic sword so he had to die. And now Seo So Kwan is kneeling on the ground, he asked So Kwan, how do you plan to deal with me now? So Kwan knows clearly the ability of the person in front of you. If you let Seo So Kwan return to the demon religion it's no different than a tiger adding wings. If so, it won't be easy for me to live in the future. So So Kwan said I will let you live. Seo So Kwan was very surprised when he heard him say that. When So Kwan raised his head, he heard So Kwan reach out his hand to him and say, Instead, become my subordinate. This was a very surprising offer to So Kwan. At this time, So Kwan's group was taking gang leader Chio Chin to the secret cave. He didn't believe it and asked again, is this the secret cave you talked about? Damon stood in front of the cave and explained, Yes, when I go through the formation, I will leave footprints. You just need to follow my footprints. While everyone followed Damon into the cave, So Kwan silently told Seo So Kwan, 
a seal young knight. Seo So Kwan was the one with his face covered and wearing a hat, following So Kwan. So Kwan then continued, Think for yourself and decide whether to follow me. If you don't follow me, your life will not be in danger. So Kwan said so because he understood that loyalty gained through coercion is also very dangerous. In the future, he still has to give Seo So Kwan an important task, so he must gain his trust. When Seo So Kwan heard So Kwan repeat this matter, he also thought about it. The path in the cave is extremely dark. Everyone lights a torch to observe. So Kwan felt that his walking speed was suddenly slow. So he silently asked Damon, Young Master Dam, why are you walking so slowly? Damon also glanced slightly at So Kwan and replied, Well, we have to prolong the time for about three days. So Kwan wondered, was there any reason why the young knight had to do that? Damon looked at gang leader Chio Chin again and said, After entering the secret cave, it is possible that gang leader Chio Chin will have other thoughts. Damon has carefully calculated and explained that if we wait too long, other forces will sense the change and follow us. So he will not dare to act rashly, just like Damon said, and had calculated that at this time there were countless people lurking outside the secret cave door. Because he had a plan, Damon slowly led the way for everyone. Of course, along the way they also encountered many hidden weapons installed in the cave. But under the guidance of Damon, they all finally reached the treasure hidden in the cave. The gang leader Chiu Chin's men saw the huge treasure before their eyes and were surprised. Yes, it's the Min Chao. They still passed it from hand to hand. The gang leader here is the secret to martial arts. In fact, these treasures are just ordinary materials that So Kwan's group deliberately left behind. And the secret to martial arts that they just mentioned was also written by So Kwan. Gang leader Chiu Chin opened the martial arts secret read it carefully and said, the content is really no different from what was written in the anonymous letter. Then he excitedly shouted, it was the martial arts left behind by Sai Seng. Ha ha ha. So Quan and Damon saw that the plan they had arranged was successful. Then they looked at each other and smiled. As for Seo So Quan, he didn't understand anything, but he also felt that there was something unusual here. Suddenly he heard gang leader Chiu Chin roar angrily. The son of a bitch was sent to him. Then he angrily threw the martial arts secret to the ground. This is magic. Chiu Chin angrily walked towards Damon and asked, Did you know this in advance? Did you know that the martial arts that I left behind were magic? Damon slowly said, How could I know that? I brought you to the secret cave as promised. So the gang leader is. But the gang leader Chiu Chin interrupted him and said, No, I have to adjust the content of the contract first. He looked at the martial arts secret and said, I have spent too much. But what is the value of the martial arts in my hands that are magic? Damon also said uncomfortably, You can't blame me for that. I won't agree to change the contract. Chiu Chin saw that he couldn't negotiate with words so he decided to use violence. He said in a low voice, if he didn't respond, he had to respond. Then he turned around and changed the deal, if he didn't want to die here. His reaction was also predicted by Damon. Why are all the people in the dark world the same? When he heard that, his anger flared up even more. But this guy spoke too arrogantly, then he held a big knife and rushed towards Damon. But he could not attack Damon because there was a powerful, intense lightning bolt that was stopping him. He and his accomplices shouted, What is this? So Quan was the one who created the lightning that separated the two sides. Then he said, From now on, anyone who crosses this line. So Quan comes forward and threatens, They will all die in my hands. His aura made the other side a bit hesitant. Damon showed a conciliatory expression and said, Come on, now is not the time to fight with each other like this. At this time, other forces are probably chasing us away. What is the use of us fighting now? when other worlds are fighting each other. What should we do if another force comes? Do you want to leave all the gold, silver, treasure and other martial arts of sale to us? Chiu Chin frowned when he heard that. Of course he did not want his enemies to take over this treasure. Damon continued, The only person who knows how to get out of here safely is me you choose. Live together, or die together. Damon put them in a situation he had previously arranged. With So Quan here, no one can touch him. At this time, outside the cave entrance, there were many people waiting for Chiu Chin to bring Saigon's treasure out. They had joined together and worked together to scoop up that treasure. It's interesting that the forces that are tearing each other apart can unite and create a net of heaven and earth. They can't let Xiao Du Bang monopolize Sai Seng's martial arts. They were outside discussing, if at this time a Xiao Du Gang was destroyed, our five ghost gang would take their place. Another guy said, thinking of the scene of that arrogant Chiu Chin begging for his life. See ha ha ha. After that, they tried to stop Chiu Chin and as soon as he left the cave, they would be ambushed. The five ghost gangs are the most powerful. Please forgive me. I beg you, is that so? Unexpectedly, the person they were talking about was standing behind them and heard everything. 
Chiu Chin angrily waved his sword and said, You look like you're having so much fun, let me make you happier. They turned their heads to see if he heard that he had successfully gone out without anyone knowing. He stammered, Chiu Chiu Chin. Gang leader Chiu Chin didn't let them breathe anymore. Just one slash of the knife caused blood to splatter. It seemed that So Kwon's group and gang leader Chiu Chin's group had cooperated peacefully to get out of the cave safely. The gang leader even cursed while walking. Even if these five ghosts of the gang chew their heads, they wouldn't feel comfortable. If So Kwon saw that the gang leader was bitter, he would advise him to vent his anger later and focus on getting out of the world's net first. When other forces were waiting in ambush around them, when they saw the prey, they quickly shouted signals. On the other side was the Taedu Bang. Damon saw the urgent situation and said, I will open the way, so you guys should run quickly. The ambushes rushed towards gang leader Chiu Chin. Die. Absolutely do not let them pass. While everyone was running away, gang leader Chiu Chin said, This road ahead has a lot of enemies. Should we split into three paths? But So Quan interrupted him. Don't worry, just run regardless. Having finished speaking, So Quan also rushed forward. The enemy in front was immediately slashed by him. No one can survive. Gang leader Chiu Chin saw the scene of So Quan's carnage before his eyes and was extremely surprised. How could a guy who seemed like he had only just passed through a prison be this powerful? He remembered So Quan's challenge when he was still in the secret cave. He wondered, what if we cross that line in the winter? Not only is Chiu Chin looking at So Quan, but even Sio So Quan is also looking intently at So Quan. Suddenly So Quan's expression changed. He stared at So Quan then pulled out his knife. After Sio So Quan pulled out his knife, he stabbed it once, blood immediately splattered. But he did not attack So Quan, but rather cut the throat of another guy who was secretly approaching and planning to attack So Quan. So Quan heard the sound of stabbing and slashing behind him and turned his head to look back. Sio So Quan frowned and looked at So Quan. He didn't expect So Quan to dare to turn his back on him like that, to turn his back to an assassin who intended to kill him. Don So Quan, who are you? In fact, So Quan deliberately let down his guard behind his back. Because he wanted to show So Quan that he extremely trusted Seo So Quan. That's why So Quan only focused his mind on attacking the person who was in front, leaving the safety behind him to Seo. So Quan and Damon. After breaking the Tian La Dianet, gang leader Chiu Chin apologized to So Quan. Let me apologize for being in the secret cave. So Quan said without hesitation, It's okay, just fulfill the contract. The gang leader patted his chest in gratitude. I, I swear by the name of the Western gang leader Chiu Chin. One day I will invite you to drink. Damon and So Quan also happily looked at him. After talking with the Taedu gang leader, Damon also turned around. So, let's go. But when he looked at So Quan and Seo So Quan behind him, Damon said, Ah, uh, it seems like you two want to talk privately. Coincidentally, there was a bottle of wine on the carriage for me to prepare. And then he playfully winked. So Quan smiled. Damon was always so thoughtful with everyone. So Quan just silently watched the two of them talk. Extremely quiet at night. Only So Quan and Seo So Quan were walking quickly. So Quan silently glanced at him. Seo So Quan, who will secretly work for me to become my senator. Seo So Quan walked behind, always frowning and alert. Since assassination and surveillance are basic, the secret mission can only be assigned to Seo So Quan. The problem is that being able to call Seo So Quan a celestial killer is all thanks to the secret books of the Lu Tin Valley that the second senior brother taught him. It is impossible to find it unless he steals it from the demon religion. Even so, it's not impossible. The legendary thief has stolen all the treasures of the Central Plains. If he successfully steals the tomb of the Shadowless God, then we can solve the problem. So Quan remembered that in his previous life, among his inheritance, there would definitely be substitutes for the secret scriptures of Lu Xingu. I don't know if it will succeed because I lost my life before capturing it, but I know the location of the tomb and how to open it. But then he smiled again, at the present time, this is a secret that only I know. It's just that the long sword and sacred object used to open the tomb are not yet in my hands. I need to thoroughly prepare my strength, money and talent to capture it. He gave me wine as he walked. And has prepared to invite So Quan to drink together. Feel free. So first I need Seo Ho's son's loyalty. So Quan saw that So Quan was always in a tense state. So he asked, is it because of his parents that this is the case? I know about the young knight living like a street person and anonymously sending his earnings to his parents. Seo Ho was startled. He did not expect that So Quan also knew about this. So Quan gently reassured him, No need to be too cautious. I have no intention of threatening. He knew the reason why So Quan became so wary. It was because Seo Ho's son had lived a life stained with blood, could not appear in front of his parents with a dirty soul, and could only protect them in their own way. The second senior brother took Seo Ho's son's parents hostage to gain his loyalty. 
but I will not become someone like him. In order for his parents to live comfortably, he provided them with wealth and prosperity, and kept them safe. Suppose we don't keep our promise. He turned around and gave his sword to Ho Seo, smiled and said then the young knight can just take my head. Seo Ho was extremely surprised by So Kwan's behavior. At this time outside, everyone is talking, isn't it natural that this time of subjugating the Waka army was the Earth Dragon's highest achievement? Someone objected, what are you saying? Chasing the dragon who mastered Sai Sang's secret move in an instant is the best. Oh ho, look what you're talking about. That person refuted everything, saying that the Earth Dragon was sent by the sect to carry out his mission, while the Dragon Dragon had a secret strategy to gain benefits. But he couldn't compare to the fox face hero who acted heroically for the suffering people, then his eyes filled with tears and sparkled in praise, oh our hero. Next, that person continued to say, moreover, he had defeated the twin knife red ghost one of the three great martial generals of the world. So now shouldn't he be promoted to the position of 100 great masters, not 100 great masters? Is it a bit too defensive? So Quan is silently eating in the back. He saw that everyone was buzzing about the recent happenings in the Jianghu and laughed as expected. The entire content, if not about earth dragons and dragon pursuits, was also about fox-faced heroes. Damon, sitting next to him while eating, also wondered, but leader, why in this life is he also called Cha Ven Long? So Quan explained that, after all, shaking hands with black men was considered negative. After hearing this, Damon collapsed. At this time, three people also entered the restaurant. Because all three were young men and women, everyone in the restaurant was amazed. The three people who just arrived were Jie Dong, SEO Don and Jie Chan director. Jie Dong saw that So Quan and Damon were both there and smiled and asked, have they both arrived? Don So Quan and Damon turned around and asked why they were so late. Hearing the question, all three of them acted like they were going to the festival. Shouldn't they prepare a little? Damon and So Quan didn't say anything after listening, just smiled. After being fully present, So Quan also said then, let's move to the next point. The Dragon and Phoenix Association takes place in South Lake. At this time, Ho Nam was crowded with people visiting, every and had lights on to welcome customers. Damon asked in surprise as he walked. There are still 10 days left before the Dragon and Phoenix Association takes place, but there are already so many people. Chan Gu groaned in pain, can I find a place to stay? I don't want to sleep in the forest. So Quan saw that Chan was miserable and smiled and said, I was also worried so I had to come first. Then So Quan looked forward, Chan Gu also looked but what he saw was just that. A man was covered from head to toe. So Quan saw the other man coming and asked, young Master Seo, have you found a place to stay? So Quan hesitated and replied, there was a problem. So Quan wondered, what was the problem? I have found a place to stay as instructed and have already paid the rent in advance. But yesterday, I don't know where some bad guys came from and took over the room. When So Quan heard that, he frowned, wondering who it was. But when he heard So Quan say the four words, the royal family was extremely surprised. The royal family is a huge martial arts family that holds the top position among the five great families. Later, the current king gave the master the nickname of Patriarch Tai Thuang. So Quan gave a sarcastic smile. As soon as he arrived, he saw the beautiful appearance of the martial artist Bok Dao. For the white Dao to use force to rob other people's rooms, it was truly extremely nice, that's why. To be human, one must have strength. So Quan went forward and told the CEO Ho, let's lead the way. He was feeling very uncomfortable, but how dare he steal my things. So Quan took So Quan's group to the place where his room was robbed. So Quan said, please take me to their room. But CEO So Quan was a little worried and asked, it's okay, but if there's a problem in the Vo Lam Min area for no reason, so Quan just slowly told him, in the future, please remember clearly, the thing I hate the most is stealing my things. Don So Quan doesn't mind anyone. When So Quan heard that, he quickly replied, Okay, I will remember then let's go. So Quan stood in front of the room and loudly asked if there was anyone inside. There was a voice inside, someone. So Quan replied, he was the one who booked this room in advance. But the person inside didn't pay any attention and didn't open the door, but just whispered, I'm very busy right now. So Quan got angry, look at this name. Suddenly someone came out from somewhere else. He went to So Quan and turned out to be the person who had booked the room in advance. The man came over and explained, I am the captain of the royal family's team, Du Kong Hun, because the master is not in a good mood right now, so please talk to me. So Quan did not respect anything and said directly, we have already booked a room so please move out. The man immediately refused, I'm sorry, but that's impossible. I will return the money. So please look for another place to stay. So Quan angrily asked back, Why should I give up my room? The idiot calmly said, Do you think that in a situation where many people are coming from different places, 
Is it reasonable to not come personally but to send someone to occupy the space first? So Quan was angry. What nonsense is this guy talking about? Because it's not legitimate. So he can say whatever he wants. Does that mean you have the right to rob the room with that stupid reason? The man waved his hand and said, It was transferred in accordance with the law. The hotel owner also agreed. So let's end it. Just here, being threatened by martial artists, the boss can only agree. So Quan used his hand to support his forehead and groaned. He really couldn't talk. In the end, he decided to use force to talk. He could only fight and chase away. Just as that man was about to turn away, So Quan's voice rang out. Because no one intended to change their mind, the only way to distinguish between right and wrong was through strength. He looked at So Quan and asked contemptuously, Are you serious? So Quan replied, Does it look like a joke? When the captain heard that, he also became angry. If you guys just left quietly, you could have avoided the look of crying and laughing. If so, So Quan said while reaching out to pull his shirt off, I will bet that the silkworm protects him. Inside is the precious shirt he got in the secret cave of Sai Sang. After hearing that man, he was extremely shocked. Oh, 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 oh. But while the captain was still staring, the busy person in the room quickly opened the door and shouted. What did you say? So Quan saw this guy and finally showed up. Then he smiled and asked, What are you betting on there? They all decided to fight in an open field. So Quan asked a little worriedly, Will it be okay? The other person is a direct bloodline of the royal family. So Quan said without much fear, Worrying won't happen. We have a good reason. He glanced at the two witnesses behind him. The people accompanying me will stand as witnesses. That was Miss Seo Don and Director Chan Gu and So Quan saw those two people and said with peace of mind, Are those two? I understand. So Quan's opponent was extremely interested. The silkworm told him, He was really lucky. The opponent this time is also someone So Quan knew in his previous life. But unexpectedly it was him. Gwen Long in the future, the man smiled extremely confidently. Hong Bo Chin, that guy achieved good results in the Dragon and Phoenix Association and gained fame, and accomplished many achievements in the Great War. But in reality, I've never encountered that guy on the battlefield. Why? It's because Gwyn Long's reputation is something that was fabricated by Vo Lam Min and the royal family. In short, that guy is just a person who stubbornly hides behind power and loves false fame. The competition hadn't even begun yet, but he had already arrogantly ordered, Hey, quickly take off your robe. He said conditions must be equal. Don't you think it's very cowardly to carry such a precious treasure and fight? His mouth demanded equality. But So Quan saw that he was still carrying such a great reputation in his hand, and dared to mention the word coward. Chan Gu was so rude that Chan Gu was far behind. Suddenly Chan Gu, who was in the audience, felt itchy in his ears. He quickly scratched his ears and mumbled, Why are my hands itching so much? But So Quan said, It would be a bit awkward to take off your clothes here. So Quan made a suggestion so the young master only needs to hold out for ten moves. If he can do it, I will consider the royal palace victorious. When Gwen Long heard a kid dare to say that to him, he angrily asked, What are you talking about? So Quan smiled sarcastically. I gave the young knight a special chance. He doesn't seem very confident. Hong Bo Chin saw So Quan being so arrogant and said, Arrogant guy. It seems like you trust him too much. So you think you can win against me? Hong Bo Chin. So Quan criticized him. Compared to his size, his tongue seemed a bit long. Hong Bo Chin shouted in pride, this damn name. He clenched his fist angrily. His internal energy flared up extremely violently. He didn't value his life at all, did he? Seo So Quan saw him become so strong and was extremely worried. Although I know that Don Thia Heap is very strong, he is not an opponent that can be finished within 10 moves. He looked at So Quan worriedly. What was he going to do with his internal energy like this? Hong Bo Chin's internal energy is like a hurricane. He threatens the people around him, if he doesn't want to be implicated and die. You small fry should quickly fight and leave. So Quan sees that he only knows how to threaten verbally but refuses to come out. My hands are tired of talking, I'm getting bored. When will I stop talking? When he saw that he couldn't scare So Quan, he stomped his feet angrily and said, In the end, you still want to dig your own grave, right? The guy looked scary and rushed towards So Quan, laughing maniacally and shouting, don't even think that he will end up with all four limbs intact. I'll destroy that disgusting face first. But before he could act, he received a strong punch from So Quan. Then So Quan pulled out his sword and hit him far away. The person who had just shown himself to be extremely scary was now thrown away. He couldn't even touch a single hair of So Quan. Seo So Quan's eyes were full of horror. What was that? Hong Bo Qian also did not expect that a brat could knock him several meters away like that. He stammered and asked, no, no, how could that be? 
so Quan clenched his sword and said slowly eight moves left. Then he swung another blow at Bo Qin and continued, please bear with it. In the end, Hong Bo Qin also threw his body to avoid it. He kept a distance from So Quan. So Quan saw that he was so agile and thought to himself, could it be that this guy's high position in the Dragon and Phoenix Guild wasn't due to luck? Hong Bo Qin saw that So Quan only used dangerous moves when he was letting down his guard and asked, so your talent is to make others lose their guard. But this time it was different. After he finished speaking, he quickly took a defensive stance. This is the ultimate technique of the Huangbo family, the five elements fist. Before launching the move, he rolled his eyes and threatened, you will die. However, before his fist could reach So Quan, he was slashed again by So Quan. So Quan gave him another blow to the stomach. I thought it was Gak showing off his martial arts skills at the Dragon and Phoenix Guild. So Quan continuously attacked, while Bo Qin continuously braced himself to endure the blows. At this point he was like a punching bag to practice martial arts for So Quan. After all, he was a bunch of white bastards, he was beaten so much that he didn't have the strength to block the attack. So Quan attacked without mercy, but Bo Qin was thrown a few more meters away. Oh my god, what a shame. When his subordinates saw their master being beaten, they screamed in fright, young man. So Quan did not hold back, he smiled and announced, Well, now there is only one final move left. Hong Bo Qin shouted in disgrace, you dare. When he saw that he couldn't beat So Quan, he started talking loudly. What are you standing there looking at? He clearly used dirty magic. After that, Hong Bo Qin ordered to control him and find out his identity. His subordinates quickly followed and obeyed the master's orders. So Quan saw that this guy couldn't beat him and now wanted to use his rights to coerce the weak. He knew right away. So Quan looked at his scruffy face, of course, those who lost but stubbornly refused to accept the results. Such people are the pillars of the wealthy family. The future of the political sect is extremely dark. So Quan saw that his group of soldiers did not distinguish between right and wrong, only knowing how to rush forward according to their master's orders. He angrily threw a kick, but this martial arts is where strength reigns. Then he stomped his foot on the ground, so fiercely that no one could get close to him. Bo Qin's subordinates were simultaneously attacked. They deserve to be taught to be more reasonable. It's ridiculous that swords have no value at all. Hong Bo Qin saw that a whole bunch of people still couldn't do anything to So Quan, even defeated by So Quan, that source of energy flew towards the captain just now. The captain saw that So Quan was so strong and wondered what it was. Then the captain heard So Quan say again, Put Lich Gwyn first form, breaking the rock fist. So Quan suddenly rushed towards him. Then he threw a punch, the captain used his hand to block it. Even so, the next second he still spit out a mouthful of blood. From the time the competition took place until now, so Quan has remained completely healthy, they have not caused a single wound on his body. So Quan pushed the captain really hard. This time he flew farther, stronger than Bo Qin. Hong Bo Qin saw that the captain who always followed to protect him was beaten that much and was afraid. So Quan finished eating them all, then slowly went to Bo Qin's place and asked, Haven't you forgotten the bet? Bo Qin stammered and asked, What bet? What bet? So Quan looked at the protective armor that Bo Qin had been wearing all this time. I bet on the silkworm to protect him, you bet on the protective armor. When Hong Bo Qin saw that So Quan wanted to take his armor, he quickly hid it and said, No, this is what the homeowner gave me on my coming of age day. So Quan slowly asked, Is there any reason for me to bother about your personal matters? He said, Aren't you afraid of revenge from the royal family? These words sounded familiar. After hearing this sentence, So Quan immediately remembered that director Chan Gu had also threatened him like that. So Quan saw that this guy relied on his background and said, What's wrong with having a reputation? You're just someone who usurps someone else's room, a slanderer who doesn't accept the results of the martial arts competition. Hong Bo Qin heard So Quan say, Finished but can only remain speechless. Could it be that I have to tell everyone that you, the pride of a family, cannot defeat a late generation star of unknown origin? Hong Bo Qin saw that So Quan was still resentful about borrowing the room and stammered out an explanation. Wait, wait, treat. Actually we all have a reason to take that room, there are distinguished guests to invite. Bo Qin looked awkward and said, I can't invite that person to a chief hotel, so I had to do that. After listening to what he said, So Quan wondered. Distinguished guest? Hong Bo Qin laughed and said, those are Hung Gam and Man Dugan numbers. So Quan knows these two people, they are two veterans of the martial arts alliance, and are also famous artists with great reputation in the martial arts world. Even though Hong Bo Qin had blood all over his face, he still laughed and said, you understand now, in case those two find out what happened here, you will be in big trouble. So Quan listened to what he said and started thinking about it. Remember, the veteran of Vo Lam Min. So Quan understood and thought to himself, after all, 
someone with a strong backing certainly wouldn't dare to be so arrogant. Hong Bo Chin arrogantly said, Do you understand now? Do you now know what you caused? But he didn't expect So Quan to be fearless. So Quan still said, But, betting is another matter. We will take back the room and armor as assigned. Hong Bo Chin felt scared but So Quan was not afraid. So he angrily asked, This guy, do you really not know what results your actions will cause? So Quan told him, Maybe what you think will not happen. So Quan explained, To prevent this from happening, I called my companion. When Bo Chin heard that So Quan had witnesses, he was surprised. What companion? So Quan introduced two companions who witnessed everything from beginning to end. Miss Deng Xiao Dan, daughter of Deng Jia's owner, and Chan Gu, a disciple of Mai Hoa than Kim. When Hong Bo Chin saw that So Quan had two such quality witnesses, he was even more surprised and shouted, How could those two people be here? So Quan continued then, There's still one last move, let's do it. As soon as he finished speaking, he was about to draw his sword, but then he gave Bo Chin another way, otherwise, hand over the armor in peace. Hong Bo Chin saw So Quan's scary appearance, and was extremely panicked. Dong Tan Lake. So Quan was remembering the time when Hong Bo Chin resignedly offered his armor. He didn't necessarily have to take it. But looking at his angry appearance made me feel at ease. It's true that cruel people live leisurely. So Quan thought as he walked, the matter must have come to the senators now. I wonder what they will do. He is freely admiring the surrounding scenery. Rarely does So Quan have such free moments. I have to slowly enjoy it while enjoying it. Suddenly someone asked, Are you down So Quan? So Quan turned his head towards the voice and saw that it was a person with long white hair. I didn't need to ask him to know who was coming to find me. So Quan smiled. Really, I came so fast that I didn't even have time to warm my butt. The person who just called him was an old man with white hair and beard. He was the martial arts veteran So Hang Gam. So Quan looked at the poised old man in front of him and thought, My purpose in this life. It means becoming a great master with unlimited power and receiving everyone's respect. So Quan's dream is to become an elder with a light job and high salary like this old man. So Quan clasped his hands and bowed respectfully. Don So Quan was at the end of his martial arts class and sent his greetings to his senior. The senior asked about So Quan. Heard that the brat of the royal family was rude to you. So Quan replied, it was just a small argument. The old man approached So Quan. You said so but the appearance of the royal team members did not seem to be the same. So Quan heard the old man mention his previous battle with Hong Bo Chin and remained silent. Suddenly he put his hand on So Quan's shoulder. I don't intend to reprimand you. Then he burst out with a satisfied smile. On the contrary, I was very happy to see the appearance of that old man man Dugan dancing on the street. So Quan thought to himself, could it be that he has a good feeling towards me? Perhaps man Dugan's martial arts relationship is not good and because I am a companion of the disciple of my Hoa than Kim. So Quan thought about Chan Gu's arrogant demeanor, and had to be nice to director Chan Gu for a while. The senior happily extended the invitation, Well done, I want to talk to you for a moment, do you have time? So Quan smiled widely, no matter how long it took. The two of them sat and talked at a gazebo in the middle of the lake. The old man praised So Quan. Different from what I heard from the brat of the family, you are very polite, So Quan replied, perhaps a young knight. Hong Bo did not recount exactly what happened at that time. The senior poured wine for So Quan. I understand that sinister name has always been like this. Let's have a drink. So Quan held a glass of wine in his hand and wondered, aren't the Taoists of the Hoa Sun sect forbidden to drink alcohol? The elder explained to So Quan that among the senators, there were people who shaved their heads and wore robes but still ate meat and drank wine. So it is not strange for me to drink wine. So Quan silently admired the wine, free and not bound by old-fashioned rules, as expected of an elder like this. This time it was So Quan's turn to pour wine for the elder. He continued to praise. To be honest, I was a bit surprised that he defeated Bo Chin and the martial artists of the royal team. So Quan was humble and fortunate. Just lucky. The elder stared. You completely overpowered them and were not injured at all. Is that lucky? Being too humble would be a lie. So Quan calmly replied, the junior would like to take note. The elder asked about So Quan's plans. Okay, are you planning to join the Dragon and Phoenix Association? So Quan nodded and replied yes. The man looked up and asked, Do you want to come in? So Quan seriously replied, That's true. The elder carefully looked at the wine glass. I will speak frankly. Do you want to be on my side? The sudden suggestion made So Quan stunned. The elder drank his wine thoughtfully. If with your strength, you could have a high ranking in the Dragon and Phoenix Guild, no you could aim for the highest position. The elder thought of Man Dugan, but the problem is Man Dugan, because of that hateful old man, after entering the league. There is a high possibility that you will not be able to show your true ability but. The elder looked at So Quan convincingly, if it were me, 
I could teach you properly and stop Man Dugan. So Quan looked at him and replied, Senior, what will you get in return? The old man placed the glass of wine firmly on the table. You accept my help and have a chance to make achievements. He smiled excitedly. I can improve my status through your actions. So Quan guessed his thoughts. So Hang Gam, realizing the talent, immediately decided to suggest recruiting someone who was not yet in the league. So Quan examined, this senior had outstanding speaking skills, and was a person who did not lack anything. Looking at the senior makes So Quan think of his second senior brother. It would be very tiring to become an enemy with this type of person. But, So Hang Gam's proposal is contrary to my plan. After thinking about it, So Quan replied, thanking the seniors for promoting an unknown person like me. I probably cannot agree with the senior's proposal. So Quan's blunt refusal surprised the elder. So Quan remained calm. My ultimate goal is to be able to sit in the position of senior senator. If I accept the help of the senior senator, I can take advantage of the victory but no one wants the person below them to have equal status to me. The senior frowned and asked, I want to hear the reason. So Quan replied calmly, senior's proposal is very attractive but I have my own plan. Entering the alliance is uncertain, not sure what I will do there. But so Quan picked up the glass of wine and drank it in one gulp. Then, placing the glass of wine firmly on the table, I promised my senior one thing. I won't be subordinate to anyone, he said while wiping the remaining wine stains on his chin. The senior also felt satisfied. Before I asked, he was able to say what I wanted to hear. It's been a long time since I've seen such a smart junior. I'm very happy. Under the moonlight and sparkling lake surface, So Quan replied, thanking my predecessors for understanding me. So Quan reached into his clothes and took out something. It was fate that we met like this. I want to give the senior a gift and hope he will take care of me more in the future. It's just a little gift, the senior won't refuse, right? So Quan took it out, making the senior curious. Seeing the object in So Quan's hand, the old man was stunned. This is the Papa Merchant Group. How did it get such a large amount of money? So Quan stood up and placed the money in the elder's hand, making him laugh and feel shy. So Quan said, I have more money than I look like, so you don't need to worry, senior. Listen to him show off his wealth. Then a smile appeared. Holding So Quan's money in his hand, he was happy. To be honest, I was a bit upset when my junior rejected me. But now that it's all gone, if we can maintain a good relationship in the future, it'll be better. Just like So Quan's prediction, exactly as we thought. If it's So Hang Gam, all we need is money. So Quan smiled and asked my senior for help later. So Quan smiled triumphantly, thinking that one day this investment would become a big profit. So Quan took the opportunity to ask, Ah, I still have a favor to ask, senior, is that okay? The senior accepts, Okay, okay, I have already received money from the junior, so how can I not give something back, let alone say anything? The next day, So Quan stood in front of the gate of Lai Jia Trang. So Quan sighed worriedly, The person I will meet today is a big person. If it weren't for So Hang Gam, I would hardly have met him. So Quan cautiously stepped inside, the person in charge of Vo Lam Min's relationships, Deputy Master Tan Long Tian, Li Gang Hak. In order to build and maintain power in the country, this person is needed. Right now in front of So Quan is a tall, strong man holding a broom to sweep the yard. So Quan respectfully clasped his hands. The anonymous young man Don So Quan paid his respects to his senior. He turned around and asked, Are you the one who knows how to cure my nephew's strange illness? So Quan bowed his head and answered, That's right. In his mind, he thought, I saved Li Gang Ha's nephew from the evil mind and gained his affection. But then he was surprised to hear what he said, embarrassed by that old man so hang on that I spent time with you but he just turned around and created a strong wind. You came to me and said that. How many people do you think can do it? He angrily crushed the broom he was holding with just one hand. This person is the demon slayer, Li Kang Ha, who stands in the ranks of hundreds of great masters in the world and has reached the realm of transformation. He is the vice captain of the Azure Dragon team, a person who receives absolute support from the crowd. Hero Vo Lam Min. But the heavenly devil caused Li Kang Ha's niece to fall into the demon's mind, in order to steal the military's secret information. But right after his niece recovered her health, a gentleman like Li Kang Ha admitted that he had colluded with the demon religion and committed suicide. Therefore, thanks to treating Li Kang Ha's niece, I received the trust of my senior. So Quan even thought that I intended to attract Li Kang Ha to my side. But, after meeting Li Kang Ha, So Quan frowned and thought, feeling bad. Li Kang Ha asked directly, even the magic doctor of Vo Lam Min could not find the name of the disease. If not the doctor, how could you do it? So Quan replied frankly, this is not a disease. He can cure it. So Quan explained that the illness that the senior's granddaughter suffered from, because she did not practice her mind properly, fell into the demon's mind. 
and I, knowing how to treat it, Li Kang Hao was a bit shocked when he heard So Quan say. Then he said, first take me to your niece. As soon as he finished speaking, So Quan was suddenly startled and widened his eyes. A punch just flew towards his face. So Quan leaned forward to avoid this unprovoked punch. He backed away, confused and asked, what did the senior suddenly do? Li Kang Ha didn't explain. He just slowly asked, you, who is this? Perhaps this experienced senior has discovered that So Quan is not an ordinary person. The two people stood facing each other, observing each other. There was something strange. So Quan saw that Li Kang Ha's hot temper was a bit surprising. In order to treat his niece, even if there was only a feigned hope, he should understand why the senior had a hostile attitude. Like that, Li Kang Ha spoke, not long ago, someone came to find me and said the same thing. So Quan was surprised, could it be? So Quan asked, is he a member of the demon religion? Li Kang Ha saw that he guessed it, and didn't expect it. How did that happen? So Quan had a bit of a headache thinking, I'm tired, but I didn't expect that the demonic cult had already approached Li Kang Ha. So Quan suddenly thought of something that made him a little worried. If so, then to maintain the secret. Could it be that Li Kang Ha intend to kill me? So Quan tried to convince Li Kang Ha. I know it's late, but I hope the senior will cut off his relationship with the demon religion. I will treat your niece. Li Kang Ha is half trustful, half suspicious. Why should I trust me when this is the first time we meet? So Quan still tried to insist. Could it be that senior believes people from the demon sect more than me? Who was introduced by senior So Hengam? But senior Li Kang Ha doesn't have a very good impression of senior So Hengam. He sarcastically said, If it's that old guy, then maybe he's using you as bait to catch the demon cultist. That's for merit. So Quan doesn't know what to say. I swear it's not like that. Li Kang Ha demands prove it. So Quan agreed. I will let the senior observe the process of me treating the senior's niece. When Li Kang Ha heard the mention of his niece, he clenched his fists. No way. You can take my niece hostage to threaten me. So Quan saw that Li Kang Ha took his niece's safety extremely seriously and thought, now the most important thing for Li Kang Ha is his niece's life. If so, then he must choose the safest and most certain method. So Quan remembered the time he saved the life of Lady Chan Jie Dong of Han Guman with his master Dugu Chu Qin. Of course, there was no other way but to use strength to control and then treat his niece Li Kang. Ha just like I did with the lower fifth gate but now without a master. I am not your opponent who has reached the realm of transformation like Li Kang Ha. However, now Li Kang Ha does not have a unique weapon path here. If so, So Quan drew his sword. It was worth a try. As soon as he decided, he swung his hand and slashed his sword. That sword strike naturally flew towards Li Kang Ha. He clenched his fist, then throw forward, attacking towards So Quan. But So Quan was no longer in his old position. He had flashed to Li Kang Ha's side. Then So Quan slashed again. But he still couldn't hurt Kang Ha. He leaned forward to escape. Then he did not stop and continued to attack So Quan. He gave a strong stab to the position where So Quan was standing. Luckily, So Quan was able to jump to another place, otherwise he would have been crushed to pieces. So Quan did not expect to see the senior father strike so fiercely, without the slightest flaw. He looked at the old man's fist. Was that a fist? When So Quan saw how strong this old man was, he silently decided that he must stop it. He couldn't use swords and canes. Now he could only rely on the magic and white thunder magic. That's why So Quan quickly used the white lightning magic attack. So Quan used all his strength on the sword in his hand. Faced with Li Kang Ha's iron fist, So Quan was extremely determined to defeat it by any means. The two of them rushed at each other extremely fiercely. Senior Li Kang Ha gritted his teeth. He really wanted to attack So Quan without any mercy. So Quan is also trying his best to defeat his senior's authority. The two sides fought so fiercely that it shook all four directions, making it impossible to see the two people clearly. When the dust and smoke subsided, the two of them separated. Li Kang Ha was still standing in place, but he was extremely surprised. A brat like you could block my punch. You really are that's a monster. So Quan was a bit more miserable. He wiped his sweat and thought, who is the monster? Without a weapon, his power is so great. He is truly an old monster. Although it was a bit difficult, So Quan's first step has been completed. After all, he has gathered his full strength. But if he magnifies the power of lightning into the sword, he can deal with it. His spirit, he wondered. If he did that, I wonder what the results would be. So Quan proactively rushed forward. He raised his sword and shouted, ending it to Li Kang Ha's surprise. When the sword slashes across, So Quan also successfully obtained a bit of his senior's blood. Taking advantage of the victory, So Quan clenched his fist and threw another punch, the first punch. Then comes Fa Lava Gwyn. So Quan's destructive power clashed fiercely with his senior Li Kang Ha's power. The power from the two punches was extremely terrifying. 
as if Li Kang Ha's entire palace had become shaken. The servants in the house heard it, and all rushed towards the source of the commotion. They ran and shouted, Home Page. They saw Li Kang Ha sitting down exhausted and aggressively rushed towards the person opposite, the perpetrator over there. They surrounded So Quan, who was already tired and sitting on the ground. If you dare to attack the home page, I will take your life. So Quan saw the commotion, causing many people to pay attention and whisper. Damn it, I intended to end it before the guards arrived but... Suddenly the senior's voice rang out, stop, that's my guest. His words surprised So Quan. Li Kang Ha struggled to stand up, he calmly said, quickly called the disciples, come here, it seems I have finally found it. The senior this time gave a more friendly smile. I can't recognize him right away when he's using swords, not fists. You are that person's disciple. Li Kang Ha suddenly said that, making So Quan very surprised. Does he know whose disciple So Quan is? So Quan saw his senior suddenly change his attitude and asked in surprise, Do you know my master? He smiled with satisfaction, as expected of the current successor of the Heavenly Thunder Gate. A long time ago, there was a time when I teamed up with that friend Du Gu Chu Chin to rescue Master Lin Van. So Quan heard his predecessor mention Master Lin Van, and remembered what his master once said. This is the item I received from Master Lin Van when I was young. Speaking of which, the master said that he received the little pill from Master Lin Van, that old man. Anyway, he said he would go around the central plains to receive disciples. It turned out he had found a monster. So Quan returned to the main topic and asked, In short, you won, right? The senior acknowledged, Yes, you have won. It is true that the next wave has pushed the previous one. So Quan humbly said, if the senior had held a large sword, the result would have been the opposite. Li Kang Ha smiled again. Is this comforting me? After that, Li Kang Ha turned around and went inside. Before leaving, he said to So Quan, follow me. Senior Li Kang Ha brought So Quan to stand in front of the bed of his niece infected with a demonic spirit. It was a room with the door closed and only lit by candles. There was an extremely skinny person lying on the bed. Li Kang Ha explained that after being infected with the mind demon, just being exposed to sunlight would cause symptoms. So Quan immediately understood, the attack happened, it seemed to be because of practicing negative martial arts so he fell into a demonic state. Li Kang Ha asked again, are you sure you can cure Don? So Quan honestly said, looking at it, it was impossible to tell what symptoms the girl had, how could the writer know about something he had never seen before? The old senior glanced at him, you also knew that the demon sect had come. So Quan checked the pulse on the girl's wrist while talking to Li Kang Ha. Upon receiving your order, he wrote a martial arts book and came here. Isn't that natural? He just took the things. I just said in your pocket. Take a look at it once. Li Kang Ha brought a book in front of So Quan. This is a martial arts book. So Quan picked up the book and opened it. Sure enough, it was true that the ice flower was fortunately identical to what he knew. So Quan looked at Li Kang Ha again and asked, Why did you allow it? I thought you were not an indifferent person who let your daughter practice this type of martial arts. Hearing So Quan's question, the senior turned around and admitted, I want to support Don's dream. So Quan was puzzled, the dream. Li Kang Ha said more clearly, she wants to become a beautiful and strong expert like the female deity of the North Sea. So Quan asked in confusion, for that reason alone, did you approve such a dangerous martial art? Li Kang Ha painfully explained, it's not like I allowed it indiscriminately. To relieve the side effects of martial arts, I have prepared 10,000 years of fire physics internal pills. Any idan of 10,000 years of fire is a treasure among treasures that is compared to small ring pill, carries positive energy so it can help eliminate the side effects of ice and fire magic. So Quan thought to himself, if it was a normal ice flower worker, it could be solved with the inner pill of fire physics. But the demon mind is a different problem. So Quan was ready, he turned around and said to the senior, the junior will start treatment right now. Senior Li Kang Ha didn't object anymore. He just quietly handed everything over to So Quan. Night had already fallen. Li Kang Ha asked, Did the treatment go well? So Quan replied, Yes, there is actually no such thing as treatment, just the transmission of the correct adjusted mantra. He laughed. Fortunately your daughter was bright enough to follow suit very well. Li Kang Ha was extremely angry when he heard that. The demon cultist also proceeded by directly controlling the patient's energy. So Quan suggested that if the martial arts book was said to be erroneous, the senior would go find out whose move it was. Li Kang Ha heard So Quan's suggestion and thought quietly. So Quan again advised Li Kang Ha, From now on, I will come by periodically to treat your granddaughter. Maybe in about a month, I will be able to get out of bed. The senior was touched, thank you very much, to be. But So Quan interrupted him, Of course it's not free, there will be a price to pay for refusing help. Li Kang Ha shyly said, I'm really sorry about that, I have nothing to say. So Quan said nothing, just smiled. 
Then he spoke again, Oh, and please, senior, don't let outsiders know about the junior treating your granddaughter. Li Kamha asked in confusion, What is the reason? Bang Ho Song is one of the five martial arts books that the devil wrote. I found three of the people who fell into the demon's mind because of that martial arts book. After hearing So Kwan explain clearly, Li Kangha also understood, until he found the remaining two people, didn't the devil want anyone to know, So Kwan replied, that's right. So Kwan asked again about the demonic cult senior, can you tell me the appearance of the demonic cultist who came to you before? Li Kangha didn't understand why, why did you ask that? So Kwan explained more clearly about the internal affairs of the demon sect to his senior. The only person who could cure the patient who had fallen into the demonic mind because of martial arts books was only the devil and four disciples. The senior saw So Kwan understand so clearly and nervously asked, So you are. So Kwan quickly laughed and stuttered, This junior is an exception. Li Kam Ha squinted his eyes and complained, answering nothing but keeping it vague. So Kwan reassured, It's not an important matter, so he sent let it go. So who is the demon cultist who came to this place? Li Kam Ha was a bit dumbfounded, could it be? So Quan listened silently as his senior described who from the demon sect had come and requested to treat Li Kam Ha's daughter. Li Kam Ha frowned and remembered, there was nothing special. They wore gray cloaks and white masks, their bodies and auras were normal, he led two people dressed identically. After hearing this, So Quan was thoughtful, hiding it thoroughly. Suddenly, the senior exclaimed, saying that he remembered. Li Kam Ha remembered one detail. When that guy treated the Don, he took off his wrist, we saw a snake pattern on the back of his hand. So Quan was surprised, snake pattern, Li Kang Ha said a little hesitantly. I'm not sure because I only glanced at it. Although the information was a bit vague, So Quan was satisfied, that was enough. At this time, at the place where So Quan's group was residing, someone shouted, So, now the disciples of the devil are here? So Quan explained everything clearly to Damon, yes, if he finds out his location, he will be arrested. Damon lamented, oh my god. So Quan patted Dam and shoulder, he is an expert at transforming into a monster. I alone cannot catch him. He believes in Damon very much. I need a genius in formation, the power of chasing clouds. Damon was not afraid anymore. He smiled confidently and replied, Since you said so, I cannot refuse. First, can you draw Bakai's appearance? Just describe, Damon already has paper and pen on the table. Damon's appearance according to So Quan's story. Angular face, slanted eyes, big ears. Snake pattern on wrist, scorpion pattern on nape. After Dam and finished drawing, he turned around and asked, Is that right? So Quan looked at the image he had just drawn and said with satisfaction, It was correct. So Quan picked up the drawing and said, This guy is the third disciple of the devil called the one who resists death. On the drawing there is a complete face, he is the anti-killer. Dam and sitting next to him, also grasped the situation. He heard So Quan excitedly say, Okay, he has a three kilo appearance. So Quan smiled happily. Let's go tiger hunting. After So Quan told Jie Dong the situation, the two of them arranged to meet privately outside. Jie Dong said that he was attacking the soldiers who were mingling in the residential area, thinking they were hiding somewhere. But unexpectedly they were in a, in a crowded place. So Quan was not at all surprised by the strange move of his brother from his previous life. It was not that he was called an opponent of death. When it comes to survival, he is one of the best in the demon sect. Against the army, if just looking at his nickname, he seems to be an experienced person who has been on countless battlefields. But he does not go to the battlefield, but fights alone in the safety of the rear. Strong obsession with survival. Even if it is a threat of assassination, he will still survive until the last minute. He has reached the realm of transformation. So Quan is trying to remember the details of the character of the previous life's anti-killer. The third senior brother has a very sharp intuition. Is careful and sensitive to small changes. Maybe he can still escape. Deeper. There is nothing better than taking a disciple of the devil as a sacrifice to gain merit, even with the help of his associates. He must be captured. Jie Dong saw him remaining silent and asked, When should he fight? Begin. So Quan said nervously, After the full moon, we will fight quickly to catch that guy. Um Bie Lao Levin Tao. Time passes quickly until after the full moon. So Quan is discussing the plan again with his teammates. The guy we intend to capture is a master of transformation, with a talent for escape. Now he is hiding among the people, so in order not to cause chaos for them, we must force him to leave the people's house. Because his senses are sharper than anyone else, even a little bit of murderous intent is enough to emit. At this time, So Quan is carefully going out to track down the whereabouts of the demonic cult. Even though he was extremely careful, So Quan suddenly saw it. A demon was hiding and mingling in the crowd, but he quickly discovered something unusual. The guy in the white mask suddenly turned around and observed carefully. 
When he saw far away on the roof, there were two people watching him. Then he quickly disappeared, leaving no trace behind. So Quan saw that he had been exposed and pulled down his mask, sure enough. Then he gave the order, chase after him. A group of masked people were rushing away. So Quan's group of people are also following the trail. Suddenly, the masked men changed their strategy. Instead of everyone running away, three of them turned around and rushed towards So Quan. Only two of them continued to run. So Quan looked at the two guys running away and guessed the plan of the demon cult. One of those two guys was real. So Quan turned his head to look at his teammates and assured him, these three guys all have considerable strength, be careful. Immediately after that, So Quan ignored the battlefield in front of him. He continued to chase after the other two guys, leaving the remaining three guys for Chan Gu, Jie Dong and So Quan to deal with. The other two continued to run away. So Quan chased after him and pulled out his sword. He swung his sword at the other two guys, lost the moon. One of the two men was seriously injured. He immediately fell down. The remaining guy saw that his comrades were easily defeated and stopped walking. He turned his head to look at So Quan. So Quan looked at the other guy and thought, after all, there is a high possibility that the other guy is an anti-killer. Although he thought so, So Quan was not too sure. He was a bit hesitant. However, the opponent was a person with a talent for escaping. Although he had chased after the two people who ran away, he frowned in worry. But what if this side is the stuntman, and one of the three guys in the back is the real one? They will be in danger. So Quan thinks about the scene of all his teammates being killed by the sword of the demon army just because of his wrong judgment. Although he was worried, So Quan still made a bet. He regained his confident demeanor and walked towards the masked man. The three disciples of the demon leader, against the army, you thought you had set foot in Vo's territory. Can Lam Min still be safe and sound? When the masked man heard So Quan call his true identity, he was extremely surprised. Did you recognize my identity? It seems like I underestimated Vo Lam Min's ability to collect information. So Quan heard the guy's answer and frowned nervously. What he feared had come, damn it, he guessed wrong. The other guy was a stuntman. There was no way he could easily reveal himself like that. So Quan tightened his sword. I had to quickly suppress him and then return. There was no extra time to waste useless groping. As soon as he thought about it, he quickly flashed. Having to apply all his strength, So Quan used all his strength to rush straight at the masked man. So Quan attacked like a storm, causing the other guy to just brace himself and endure. In the final killer move, So Quan concentrated all his strength. Slashing his sword very hard to quickly finish off this guy wearing a fake mask so he could quickly return to Jie Dong's group for support. His mask quickly broke in half, revealing a face similar to that of the old assassin. So Quan hit him hard to take his life. The other guy quickly fell down. But So Quan suddenly realized something unusual. Wait. So Quan turned his head to look at the body of the man who had been beaten to death and could not see it. There was no body of the other man. But by the time So Quan attacked the other guy, he felt that the guy was almost dead. He was clearly injured and couldn't move. So Quan thought a little confused. How did he feel wrong? By the time he realized the mistake in his judgment, the anti-killer had safely escaped. So Quan could only hiss angrily. Damn that guy. Only now did So Quan realize that it was too late. He pretended to be injured and fainted. Then, while he and the stuntman were fighting, he hid his aura and ran away. So Quan also quickly rushed after him to find the other guy's whereabouts in time, not letting him escape. At this time, the anti-killing army was taking off the blood-stained clothes from before, running for his life. That guy was not an ordinary person. Is there such a talented regard in Volam Min? But suddenly he heard a noise behind him. He was a bit surprised and thought, had he caught up yet? When he turned around to look, he saw So Quan following closely behind him. Because he did not know So Quan in this life, he only thought that he must be the pursuit team sent by Volam Min. At this moment, So Quan slashed his sword. The Demon King doesn't take So Quan very seriously but he's afraid of other things. Dealing with a guy like him isn't a problem, but you can't underestimate the military support. If it was our martial arts army, he would have used that guy to hold me back, then spread a net to surround me and capture me. He is truly a worried old man. He is afraid that if he prolongs his time with So Quan, the Lam Min would ambush him. So he whistled to summon his subordinates. All around was quiet and suddenly, after a whistle, countless people jumped out. The subordinates of the anti-slaying demon lord quickly appeared to assist him. The anti-slaying demon lord carefully thought, before that time, I had to leave Ho Nam. So Quan already knew that his third senior brother was an extremely careful person, but the fact that this old man even arranged for subordinates along the way was something he did not expect. He did not expect to hide more subordinates on the way to escape. Always this meticulous. So Quan was chasing them when he saw a fog appearing in front of his eyes caused by the demon army. 
So Quan was surprised and blinded. The haze made it impossible for So Quan to see clearly in front of his eyes. At this point, it was no longer possible to distinguish between the evil demon army and the enemy, because all three men were wearing the exact same outfit. In the blink of an eye, the third senior brother was able to disguise himself to hide himself. So Quan looked at the three identical guys and was bored, because he was a stunt double. What made So Quan even more unexpected was that all three guys wearing these masks separated in three different directions. So Quan frowned and looked at them, who were going their separate ways. The Demon King saw that he had run away for a while and thought with peace of mind, he couldn't feel the breath. It looked like he was already far away. The Demon King saw that he only needed to use a few tricks to escape safely. If so, arrogantly think, the one who has survived many assassination threats is me, even if Fo Lam Min spreads a net, it will not be able to capture me. But he suddenly realized, wait. He looked around frantically, this was the place he had just passed by. So Quan slowly walked over and asked, were you confused? When this guy saw that it was So Quan, he was extremely surprised. I've been working hard to prepare this all this time. I hope you are satisfied. So Quan finished speaking and pulled down his mask, revealing his face. So Quan saw his panicked eyes and understood. He was probably wondering how I knew how to escape and prepare the formation. So Quan stared at the person in front of him. I guess he had found a way to escape. So Quan smiled triumphantly, but he had already set up formations at all street corners. So Quan explained to him, this place is inside the formation set up by a heavenly weapon. Now you have nowhere to escape. If you want to escape from here, you must defeat me and destroy the center of the formation. The masked man asked, how do you know I'm real? Because he was very curious. Why were there three people separated in three directions? But So Quan was able to determine that he was the evil demon king. So Quan also told him the truth. Ah, uh, in the previous attack I sprinkled the Dang family's scent on you. When the masked man heard him say that, he was startled. Dang Jia, Dang Jia is famous for being a master of poisons. So when he heard So Quan mention Dang Jia, he quickly used his hat to cover his mouth and nose. But So Quan smiled and said, It's already late. Actually, I am an invulnerable poison that doesn't need to be solved but I need to act a little. The opponent will think that he has been fatally poisoned, so he will become more hasty. After thinking about it, So Quan immediately put a pill in his mouth, as if using it to cure the poison from earlier. So Quan calmly told the old man, wouldn't it be good to just raise his hands and be tied up? When the demon king saw that he couldn't hide anymore, he threw away his disguise. That was interesting, but I didn't expect to be pushed to this point. So Quan's third senior brother revealed his true form. He smiled savagely and said, but with only this magic and poison, can you catch me? When facing directly with his brother from his previous life, So Quan still felt a bit worried. Even though he had been poisoned, it was not easy to face a master of transformation alone, and moreover, he was an opponent. Never had a direct sword fight in his previous life. Right at this moment, you may lose your life without knowing it for sure. Just when So Quan was still losing concentration, the evil demon army attacked first. The old man's iron chain attacked So Quan directly. But So Quan quickly tilted his head and dodged it in an instant. Before So Quan had time to calm down, the third senior brother rushed forward, holding his sickle and rushing towards him. As soon as So Quan leaned over to escape his chain, he quickly jumped up to avoid the sudden sickle blow. The two stood far apart, still no one had an advantage over the other. Next, it was So Quan's turn to counterattack. He stood in place and launched his twelfth move, Moon Dance. Before the powerful sword slash, the Demon King did not panic. He only used his weapon to fight back. The chain itself became a solid shield that protected him from So Quan's attacks. The way he counterattacked was also within So Quan's prediction. As expected, the chain's attack range was wider. In that case, there was only one way to close the distance. So Quan immediately closed the distance with the third senior brother. He approached the demon army to attack to prevent this old man from using the chain to counterattack again. But it seems that So Quan's action was unintentionally right. Because only when the opponent gets close can he unleash a secret move, making the opponent unexpected. Not only does he know how to use weapons like chains and sickles, but he can also fight. Even though he was extremely confident in his martial arts. As soon as he unleashed his martial arts, So Quan also promptly unleashed his rock-breaking fist. The encounter of two martial arts attacks made the surrounding area tremble. Rocks and soil were shot everywhere. Both people fought extremely fiercely. After the two separated, So Quan was still intact. Obviously his sudden boxing move did not cause any damage to him. The old man who was against the demon army stepped back. He was extremely surprised. So Quan looked at the old man's skeptical and unacceptable face and said, he seemed surprised that the secret move was blocked. So Quan smiled happily. 
He could only be surprised, because in the demon sect, very few people knew about his use of martial arts. Fortunately, in my previous life, I had heard about the martial arts of the anti-killer, that when he used the chain but the opponent tried to close the distance, his head would probably explode and die. Even though he was surprised, he continued to fight, although he didn't know how people knew my martial arts. But nothing has changed, he said and continued to use the chain to attack So Kwon. So Kwon quickly used his sword to block it. He keenly realized that the end of this chain was not normal. Was there a strong energy? But then So Kwon suddenly realized that he was about to explode. Just as So Kwon thought, this was not an ordinary chain, it quickly exploded, taking So Kwon with it. The evil demon army also quickly teleported along with him. At this time So Kwon was seriously injured, he sat down on the ground holding his head. But before So Kwon could calm down, he heard a noise right above him. It's the third senior brother's chain again. Even though he was a bit exhausted, So Kwon still risked his life to avoid it. He teleported to a position far away from the demon army. So Kwon gasped and thought, if this continues, the poison in the anti-killer's body will not take effect before my body will collapse first. That's why So Kwon must act quickly, must decide victory or defeat before then. Lightning began to appear everywhere. So Kwon proactively took the sword and rushed to the location of the chain. But what he did not expect was that the old man's chain quickly wrapped around his sword. In just a split second, he stole So Kwon's sword. So Kwon panicked, damn it. The old demon king gave an arrogant smile. Do you think you can win against me? Having his weapon stolen by his brother from his previous life, So Kwon suddenly didn't know what to do. The old man smiled savagely and sarcastically. It was truly ridiculous. He thought he had victory in his hands, but things were not as he thought. So Kwon, as quick as lightning, used his hand to attack the demon army's stomach. He used white thunder magic to temporarily control this old man. Although he cannot take his life, the white lightning has penetrated into his body, so now his status will be frozen. If he hadn't been poisoned and mentally weak, he wouldn't have fallen for this low trick. Poison and magic, and the feeling of insecurity not knowing when reinforcements will arrive, all combined to create an opening. It seems that victory or defeat is clear as I said earlier. If you don't break the center of the formation, you can't escape. But killing the demon king won't panic much. So what? Just like that, his body shook, as if something was about to happen. His body trembled violently, revealing a scorpion on his neck. Immediately after that, the white thunder magic could no longer hold him back, and he quickly disappeared before So Kwon's eyes. He appeared from above, constantly spinning the chain, creating a hurricane from above his head. He shouted, Just blow away the entire formation in you, right? So Kwon saw that he could escape the white thunder magic attack and began to think about whether all the internal power was still left. If he avoided it, he would be safe, but he could also lose that guy. So Kwon was a bit hesitant, but in the end So Kwon made a decision. But this opportunity will not come again. Just as he was playing against the enemy, the demon army rushed in with a chain. So Kwon also made up his mind, absolutely not letting it slip away. So Kwon took the initiative to slash the moon. The old assassin only saw that move as a child's play. He laughed sarcastically, do you think you can block this move? So Kwon did not answer, he just focused on putting all his strength into the move in front of him. Both of them fought very fiercely. Although at first glance So Kwon seemed a bit weaker, he still continued to rush forward to confront that old man. Finally, So Kwon also collapsed to the ground. There was a huge gash on his leg. The demon army was standing not far away. When he saw So Kwon daring to compete with him like that, he scolded him. Crazy man, my direct attack was not enough. When the smoke and dust gradually cleared, the evil army appeared more clearly. He had one limb cut off by So Kwon. He cursed while breathing, and also cut off my arm. So Kwon also lost his strength. The anti-killer army inside must have been crippled by white lightning. I used all my strength to kill him in one blow. But was it just one arm? If there was no heavenly silkworm to protect him? I'm already in danger. So Kwon told him, You won't be able to control the poison with the rest of your internal strength. But the old man replied without much fear, Even if I die, I can take my head. But before he could finish speaking, he vomited a mouthful of blood. Only then did he realize that things were not as simple as he thought. So Kwon laughed happily, killing the army of the world but risking his life to kill me, even passing dogs had to laugh. He looked at the distraught army and realized his intention. Looking at him, he knew you were thinking of a way to escape. The assassin army had to ask directly it is impossible for someone who does not understand my personality, martial arts and formations to pressure me to this extent. So Kwon replied coldly, what difference does it make to know? When he saw So Kwon responding to him like that, he was very angry. Then he suddenly smiled smugly. Because he saw that So Kwon was also painfully spitting out a mouthful of blood, he excitedly said yes, that's right. Then he frantically rushed forward. 
Even though he had lost one hand, he still used his other hand to hold the sickle to attack. There was no way he could recover, but he couldn't hit So Quan, because he used his sword to block it. By the time So Quan calmed down, he could no longer be seen and had disappeared. So Quan frowned tightly, wondering where he went. He keenly realized above, but he did not expect the old man to appear from underground. The old man suddenly rose up, slashed a sickle at So Quan, and then secretly shouted, Go well. He thought he had surprised So Quan, but he did not expect to hear So Quan say, It was indeed underground. So Quan took advantage of the situation, using the half moon, he slashed a powerful sword towards the anti demon army. His roar rang out, blood splattered in all directions. When So Quan stopped, another arm of the anti demonic army fell down. Losing both of his arms made the demon king extremely frightened. He stammered, how could that be? So Quan said frankly, I know you will use earth digging technique. Earth tunneling technique is a martial art of digging the ground and hide in there. So Quan remembered the times he went to the battlefield in his previous life. After fighting, he asked the second senior brother, why didn't the third senior brother go to the battlefield? The second senior brother replied contemptuously, he was a coward. At that time, the second senior brother had unintentionally said that he was a mole who hid deep underground to survive. He must be a coward. So Quan thought with a sigh of relief. If he doesn't remember what the second senior brother said, then at least he will. Already lost a leg. So Quan pointed the sword at him. It's over now, brother. He was surprised to hear So Quan call him brother. So Quan confided his last words. Actually I have no grudge against senior brother because there is nothing between us. The anti-killer has no memory of his previous life. What nonsense are you talking about? Huh. So Quan decisively swung his sword to cut off the third senior brother's way of life. Coldly said, this is for my future peaceful life. I hope you understand. The old man heard So Quan talking back and forth. Then he didn't understand anything and shouted. I ask what you are talking about. The last sentence had not yet been fully said when So Quan took action. He brutally slashed to death his third senior brother from his previous life without giving him a clear answer. The image of So Quan before his eyes gradually became tilted. In fact, the person who fell was the old man. He fell to the ground with a thud, causing So Quan's vision to waver as well. So Quan said his final goodbyes. Let's not meet in the next life, senior brother. At the gazebo where So Quan once met senior So Hang Gam, what is the matter that makes you want to see me? I want to propose something. So Hang Gam asked, what did he propose? So Quan honestly shared that he had actually accidentally captured a great character. The old senior gently sipped a glass of wine in his hand and slowly asked, great man, who are you talking about? So Quan also replied, the three disciples of the devil, rebelling against the army. After hearing this, So Hang Gam spit out all the wine. The old senior asked half confidently, How did you catch him? He is an expert who has reached the realm of transformation. So Quan hesitantly explained that it was only thanks to his teammates who lent him the power of poison and the background magic array that he was able to capture him. So Hang Gam praised, It's really great, can you prove it? So Quan took out a wooden box and placed it in front of the senior. The old man asked puzzledly, This is, So Quan replied, the heads of the anti-killing army and his accompanying teammates can testify. So Hang Gam stroked his beard and said, I believe you, but this alone is not enough to convince the others. So Quan knew well enough to answer, so I need your senior's help. So Quan suggested that the disciples of the devil were hiding in the southern lake, where the dragon and phoenix association took place. The war of extermination by the veteran Vo Lam Min and the posthumous faction, and he was the one who discovered it. That, So Quan smiled as he touched the trophy and vaguely said, you don't want to share with me the credit of destroying the disciples of the devil? He smiled smugly, even though he had achieved the same feat. But if he had achieved the same feat with the elders of Volam Min, he would have received a bigger reward than if an unknown person had achieved the same feat. So Hang Gam quietly thought. Then the senior agreed and asked, Okay, what should I do? So Quan replied that in the future, when he joins the alliance, he only hopes that he can be recognized for capturing the rebel army and be officially rewarded. So Hang Gam poured wine and said, as a senior, he gets help every time. So Quan was polite, and his juniors could only thank their seniors for their trust and help. The senior offered him a glass of wine. Let's have one. So Quan held the glass of wine and said with a smile, Thanks to my seniors. There are many people gathered here right now. Screams to stabilize order rang out continuously, maintaining order. Participants should go to the reception counter, among those in line this time. There are also So Quan and Chan Gu. So Quan has been waiting for this opportunity for a long time. He said excitedly, now it has begun. This crowded place was the opening ceremony of the Dragon Wind Association. Someone called out, Director Chan Gu, we over here. Chan Gu thought he was a special character and said, we should also stand in the back, right, 
even though I am the top talent of Hoa Sun's sect but. So Quan did not let him continue to fantasize anymore and said frankly, it has nothing to do with the director, he is a person with high status in the community who helped me. So Quan remembers the time he met his senior in the palace, all thanks to him bribing So Hang Gam. When he came to meet the registrar, So Quan quickly took out something from his chest, this was a letter of introduction. Unexpectedly, this subscriber suddenly said, Dom Tia Heap. That's right. So Quan was a bit surprised when he heard the lady in front call him by his correct name. When he looked closely, he recognized an acquaintance he had not seen for a long time, martial artist Du. This girl had known So Quan in the early days when he had just been reborn and had to rely on the Man Chom family. Meeting this person again was completely beyond So Quan's expectations. He asked in surprise, How long has it been? I really didn't expect we would meet again like this. Why is she here? After leaving the Man Chong family, I was wandering around. She remembered what So Quan once said to her. What do you think about helping the Vo Lam Min? At that time, I remembered the young knight's words. So I joined the alliance. So Quan smiled. I just said casually, it would be great if I had an acquaintance in Vo Lam Min. But I didn't expect her to care. So Quan saw the writing on her shirt and asked. You belong to the Lotus Stars. Master Du gently replied. Yes, fortunately, thanks to my clerical abilities, I was accepted into the league. So Quan heard that and thought it was extremely reasonable. If it was a lotus flower then it would be a place to handle administrative work after entering the Ming dynasty where we could receive a lot of help. Chan Gu stood next to see that So Kun had been there all this time. If Quan did not introduce himself to the beauty, he would signal, don't be shy. He asked directly, who is this charming lady? When Master Du heard that, he embarrassedly covered his face with his hands and said, What a charming lady. I'm not old enough to hear those words. Chan Gu took heart and said, Oh, I'm so rude. It's all because of the outstanding beauty of this young lady. Chan Gu laughed ha ha at the beauty and said, It's okay to call him that. So Quan saw that Chan Gu still had the same problem. Always seeing a beautiful girl and flirting with him, he was extremely discriminatory, this Taoist guy. Boxer Du saw Chan Gu so happy and happily said, I am very happy that So Quan has such a good friend. Since I was a child, I thought that the young knight would not have any friends by his side. When So Quan heard what martial artist Du said, he was stunned, friend. Chan Gu also looked at him bewildered. Then both of them seemed to hate each other and said, What are you? While the three people were happily reunited, another group came and loudly said, Hey, not working anymore? Master Du Kunk's fair hurriedly returned to work. Goodbye So Quan, I have to work now. See you later So Quan. Chan Gu is extremely regretful. He was extremely sad when he had to say goodbye to the beauty, Miss Du, we will definitely meet again, Infinite Buddha. While Chan Gu's soul was still lingering over Master Du, So Quan paid attention to the group of people from before. The person who was loud from before also clasped his hands in greeting and introduced himself, I am Chan Jin, the first generation disciple of the merchant sect. So Quan saw that this guy seemed like he was about to say something to him, so he asked directly, what was the young knight looking for me for? The other person opened the question, this is a reception place only for selected talents. I know it's rude but can I know the young knight's name and sect? So Quan did not hesitate to answer. I am Don So Quan of the Hong Long Martial Arts Club. The other person wondered, Hong Long Martial Arts Club, have you never heard of it? When this guy heard the name of So Quan's unknown sect, he sarcastically laughed. After all, it seemed like that was where the two of them were. This was a special reception area only for those with letters of introduction. So Quan saw him being so condescending and felt a bit uncomfortable. But someone who is always arrogant like Chan Gu couldn't stand it anymore and cursed at him. What do you mean? You are also welcomed comfortably here. The other guy heard that and said, if it comes to me then. But he suddenly realized, wait, that pattern. When Chan Gu saw the last guy looking out, he patted his chest and said his name, that's right, I am Chan Gu the first generation disciple of the Hoa Sun sect. So Quan stood behind and thought. It seemed like this guy didn't think that director Chan Gu was someone with a similar status to him. I didn't expect that guy to say anything without respect. If so, then you should be even more clear that this place is a privilege that only people like us can enjoy. Don't you know how influential the trade faction is in Vo Lam Min? Chan Gu unconvincedly argued. It's unfair for you to enjoy privileges without even having a letter of introduction. So Quan saw these two people arguing back and forth and tried to suppress a laugh. So Quan covered his mouth and thought, how interesting, Taoists are obsessed with the idea of privilege. So Quan looked at the purple shirt guy in front of him and felt extremely familiar. Chan Gu Taoist, how would you feel when you met someone exactly like the person before? Of course, Chan Gu couldn't stand it. So Quan kept giggling behind him, couldn't help but laugh, Chan Gu was not happy. He was tense. 
turned around and blamed So Kwan. Why are you still laughing now? Chan Gu is now following So Kwan so he is also starting to grow up. He doesn't care about that guy. Just waves his hand and walks away saying, Don't want to hear any more words like this. Let's go. The purple shirt guy didn't let go and said, Haha, that sounds really unpleasant. Isn't Chan Gun director also enjoying the same treatment as my privilege? His words made Chan Gu extremely angry. Chan Gu turned around and objected. It seems like you are mistaken about something but the letter of introduction is not from me. But from the young knight standing there, he was a bit surprised to hear that. Then he turned around and said to So Kwan, I saw just now, it seems like you know the recipient. It's not like you used some nefarious method, right? Chan Gu didn't care and said, There's no need to listen anymore. Don't let the young man go. But the guy in the purple shirt won't let go. We can't just let him make a mistake. We have to correct it, right? Chan Gu couldn't stand it anymore. He started to attack. He couldn't listen anymore. The guy in the purple shirt also said, If the Taoist decides to defend the bad guy, then it is indeed me. So Quan, who had been silent all this time, suddenly asked, What are you planning to fix? The guy in the righteous purple shirt said, Hmm, destroy the things obtained through illegal means in Vo Lam Min. He is fearless and tells So Quan like this, Please donate 100 tails as atonement. So Quan calmly asked him, What if I don't have money? He stared at the sword hanging on So Quan's waist. If so, then use that sword as collateral. Until you give enough money, I will take care of it for the young knight. After he finished speaking, he flashed a suggestive smile. So Quan frowned. From now on that was his goal. He was truly someone with an eye for treasure. Of course, So Quan did not agree to this unreasonable request. What if I refuse this whole thing? That guy spoke up chivalrously, saw the discontent but turned a blind eye. So how could he call? Is it okay to be a Taoist? When So Quan saw that this guy was so greedy for something precious, he bluntly challenged him. If so, use your strength to take it away. The guy in the purple shirt said, Don't you know the rule that participants in the conference are not allowed to fight because of personal grudges? While So Quan was thinking about this rule, Chan Gu suddenly spoke up. So the two of you, how about internal energy? The other guy was a bit surprised. So Quan also did not expect Chan Gu to make this suggestion. Both of them exclaimed, Comparing internal energy? Director Chan Gu is directing the situation to So Quan's strengths while still complying with the conference's regulations. Everything is within the plan. Chan Gu smiled with satisfaction when he saw the bad guy about to be in trouble. Don't see how the table is set. Chan Gu stood next to suggest to the two people, the one who achieves higher achievements in the conference will be the winner. So Quan heard that and thought betting, the guy in the purple shirt was confused. What is betting? So Quan smiled happily. I didn't expect to prepare such a delicious dish for me. I will eat it deliciously, Chan Gu Taoist. He exchanged, if I bet on my sword, what will the Taoist bet? The other guy evasively said, what if you insist, then I just need to turn a blind eye to your dishonesty. Is enough. When So Quan saw that he refused to bet, he regretted it. If the director took that as a bet, then this bet would have to be cancelled. What's with that small sword? If you don't like it, then that's it. He raised his hand to stroke the sword and confided, this small sword, I thought the director had eyes to see but apparently not. Afterwards, he proudly boasted that this sword was made by Gu Dida, the world's number one casting master. Everyone who heard the origin of the sword was extremely surprised. If you want to get this sword, the leader must bet something worthy. Chang Jin heard him speak and was extremely skeptical. The young knight knew what he was saying. His accomplices were also chatting. What about Gu Dida? What he said is a lie, isn't it? Chan Gu, who was standing behind, also spoke up and assured, I used the reputation of the Hoa Sun sect. Everything Dan Heap said was true. Chang Jin heard it and silently believed it was true. But So Kwan said to Chang Jin, I see that the leader has nothing worth betting on, so this bet is worthless. When Chang Jin heard that So Kwan wanted to cancel the bet, he was a bit rushed. Suddenly Chang Jin's voice rang out, wait a minute. When So Kwan heard what he said, he was a bit surprised, because he did not speak normally but spoke by voice transmission meaning that only So Kwan could hear what he said. Because if someone else hears me, I will be in an awkward situation, so I have to use voice transmission. I hope you will understand. After the guy finished transmitting the sound, he turned to look at the other two guys. They were curious and asked, What will he do? So Kwan agreed to communicate with him, as the director wanted. Chan Jin smiled. I will use the elixir that the sect leader gave me as a bet. This is a rare thing. My sect only has a few pills. So Kwan did not expect that this guy would dare to bet on spiritual medicine. No matter how much he wanted to negotiate, he could not expect that he would bet on the sect's spiritual medicine. It seems like he did not think about his own affairs. We'll lose, after all, to the political faction. In front of everyone's wonder, So Kwan told Chang Jin, It's decided, 
Chan Jin also compromised and said then see you at the Congress, I'll go first. When the two accomplices saw Chan Jin suddenly leave, they also confusedly followed the leader, Chan Jin's father. Chan Gu saw everyone dispersing and came closer to ask, if you two were talking by voice transmission, then you must have used something very valuable to bet on. So Quan replied, yes, if it was we bet. So Quan saw Chan Gu smiling happily and wondered why Chan Gu looked so excited. At this time, in a closed space, someone announced, welcome everyone to the black market. Black market is the name of the black market. Then, the auction will begin. So Quan wears a mask and sits below the stage. Now we need spiritual medicine to help compensate for the shortcomings in internal work. If we are lucky today, the spiritual medicine will appear in this secret auction. If the others heard this news, they would rush here but, apart from other special people like Chan Jie Dong, the news has been blocked to prevent anything from happening. So Quan confidently thought, what, it doesn't matter who comes. On the auction floor, the items were introduced one after another. The fourth auction item, this belt, is not simply a piece of jewelry. So what is it? The best blacksmith in the black world, the introduction said as he pulled out a sword. He excitedly introduced with a big smile that the sword was made by blacksmith Black Knight too. Then the auction started. The starting price was 50 tails of gold. There was also a stir below. Oh, that belongs to the Black Knight child. The object is so delicate. Someone quickly offered a price, 64 tails. But there are others competing for it, 67 tails. 74 tails. The price of the sword is constantly increasing. The introducer happily said loudly, 7, 74 tails. Who will pay more than zero, otherwise 74 tails? But someone paid a higher price, 100 tails. The introducer was a bit stunned, 1, 100 tails had already reached this price. Is there anyone who wants to pay more? Everyone looked at the bidder with concern. They didn't expect there to be such a big player. The introducer announced, if so, this belt belongs to the masked customer. Snow Fox. Congratulations, the person who just spent money was So Quan. He bid so high that it surprised Jie Dong. She transmitted the voice and asked, A hundred tails, isn't that too unreasonable? So Quan just replied indifferently, That amount of money is not worth much. Jie Dong gave up, what a rich man. So Quan suddenly said, It's a gift for the young lady. Jie Dong glanced at him. Jie Dong immediately believed it. What are you planning, Don So Quan? And I know I won't do anything without a reason. Then she heard So Quan say it was a farewell gift. Jie Dong was extremely surprised. She quickly turned away, bowed her head low. So Quan continued she knew. So Quan continued to transmit the sound. Haven't you been worried lately that the lower five sects have ordered her to return? Jie Dong also didn't hide it. Yes, the next sect master of the fifth sect must be chosen. Sect while the two people spread the sound. The auction continued. The person wearing the monkey mask successfully got this disciple. Each item was brought up. But So Quan and Jie Dong didn't pay much attention. So Quan asked her, could something have happened? Jie Dong looked at another person bidding and answered So Quan, that's not the case. Recently captured the anti-killer army. Before the war broke out, the issue of successors had to be resolved. So Quan wondered what would happen if there was a war. Jie Dong opened and closed his eyes, acting like he didn't care about what he said. That probably meant he was demoted to the position of cell leader. It's okay, after all. I don't care about the position of sect leader, right? I'll probably continues to take on the position of person in charge of the young knight. So Quan asked her again, if you solve the succession problem, will you come back? Jie Dong smiled and asked, why if I go back, will I feel more secure? While the two of them were still exchanging words, someone in the audience suddenly said loudly, come on, everyone please pay attention, next thing. Theo is an extremely rare thing that cannot be found anywhere. What is the thing in this face? This thing is very small. But if you use this book, you can increase your power by 20 or 5. If you are a martial arts practitioner, even if it costs your soul, you still want to have it. This legendary elixir. So Quan listened to him openly and openly like that, and was extremely interested. Who knows, maybe this is what So Quan has been waiting for, what he has been looking for for a long time, this is the thing. Kong Tan Thatch knew, the starting price is 150 tails, he said as he held up a tiny vase. Unexpectedly, just after the price was announced, there were countless people competing to rob it, each person bidding, 180, 200. So Quan definitely offered the highest price, 500 tails. Everyone was stunned after hearing this, 5, 500 tails, the introducer quickly asked, does anyone want to increase the price again? The mysterious night fell, at this time the auction at the black market finally ended. So Quan walked away, satisfied with what he had just won. As expected, money is the best. If you absorb the stalactite, you will be able to absorb it for more than an hour. After that, no matter what elixir you use, 
you will be able to completely absorb it. Okay. Moreover, if he got the elixir in the bed with Taoist Chang Jin, the more he thought about this, the brighter So Kwan's smile would become. So Kwan was so happy that he didn't realize there was someone behind him watching him. Only when she asked, What's so happy, Dantia Heap? Then So Kwan was startled and turned around you. The girl covered her face, but still showed her joy when she met So Kwan. She said, How are you doing? So Kwan recognized this girl. He exclaimed, Master Gon Hai, this is the masked girl. Once met the So Kwan group, she often disguised herself as a man to chase away the gangsters. The name in the gang is Dia Long. After meeting again, the two talked in a room. Suddenly So Kwan asked confusedly, What did the lady just say? Che Gon Hai saw that So Kwan pretended not to understand, so he frankly asked again, Young Knight Don, I ask if Young Knight is a fox faced knight. So Kwan looked at the lady in front of him, Che Gon Hai who was the woman who chased away the Oiko and was nicknamed the Earth Dragon. But that truth was being hidden. The person who actually chased away the Deco was trying to and planning to do so. The most important figure in the family cannot just come for a normal meeting. Che Gon Hai opened his mouth. Because there was something I wanted to ask. That's why I came to find the young knight like this. So Quan frowned and said, please go ahead. She asked, is the fox in the rumor the Dan Thia Heap? Asking so directly made So Quan extremely surprised. So Quan pretended not to understand. What did the young lady just say? Gon Hai asked again, young master Don. Is it a tiger face knight? So Quan replied incredulously, fox face knight. I don't know what you are talking about. Che Gon Hai gave the evidence that he observed. The time when Don Thia Heap and Chan Gu were absent was exactly the time when Ho Hu took action. So Quan denied that it was just a coincidence. She said again, there are rumors that someone witnessed with their own eyes a person wearing a half mask. A subordinate of the fox using the sword technique of Hoa Sun Cannon. I have confirmed the sword mark left on his body, the crows. So Quan heard her mention Chan Gu Taoist, and frowned slightly. There were not a few people practicing martial arts in the Hoa Sun sect. Counting the direct disciples alone, there were more than a thousand people. But Gon Hai did not give up, and made a temporary sword for the apricot tree. It is a secret technique of the Hoa Sun sect that very few people know. So few that only Chan Gu, a disciple of the Mai Hoa than Kim, knows. So Quan didn't expect Chan Gu to leave a trace. I told him not to use the martial arts of the Hoa Sun sect, but when he fought with the thugs, he used it. Seeing that he was determined not to say a word, Gan Hai expressed, I don't intend to let anyone else know the young knight's identity, and I don't intend to ask for anything. I just want to confirm this. Hearing her say that, So Quan also knew that his identity was completely clear to Gan Hai. When he came to my place, he was already certain that he was a fox-faced knight, Gan Hai said again. And, isn't Young Hee planning to clarify this identity in the near future? After hearing this, So Kwan was a bit surprised. Gan Hai recounted what he observed. If you really want to hide your identity, you must hide your martial arts skills. But, on the contrary, Thia Heap uses that special martial art everywhere. Others will recognize lack of integrity. Gan Hai seriously deduced that the young knight must be carrying out some grand plan. She spoke clearly like that, making it even more unbelievable for So Kwan. He didn't expect to guess that. So Quan just stood up from his seat and thought, he is indeed a direct relative of the clan. He unexpectedly saw through my identity and plans. He walked towards the closet and said, I have nothing to deny anymore. So Quan pulled out the drawer, revealing the black fox mask he often used when acting heroically, just like the lady said. So Quan smiled and admitted, I am a fox-faced knight. Che Gon Hai was not surprised at all, as expected. As soon as his identity was exposed by Gon Hai, he felt a bit disadvantaged, he thought, but suffering a loss doesn't suit my personality. So Quan decided to also expose Che Gan Hai's disguised identity. It is not for nothing that she is called a dragon. So Quan remembered the first time he saw Che Gan Hai sitting in a carriage. As far as I know, the family only sent the young lady to Jujang. You know, I've met Nam Gung Han, Mississippi. I'm not going to brag everywhere, so you don't have to pretend. Gan Hai asked curiously, what kind of person is the young knight? Not only does he practice martial arts with superior martial arts, but he also has an information network. Che Gon Hai nervously confessed, It's difficult to say the reason clearly, but I acted on behalf of my twin brother. The nickname Earth Dragon will immediately belong to my twin brother. So Quan seemed to understand and said, I won't ask anymore. The reasons are different but both are hiding their true colors. Gon Hai shows a pleasant smile. After clarifying everything, Gon Hai also stood up. It seems I have wasted the young knight's time. So Quan quickly replied, it's okay. When walking out the door, Gan Hai suddenly stopped and said, actually, I came to find the young master because I wanted to say this. She solemnly bowed her head and thanked me with a big heart for saving my life. So Quan also nodded in response, 
I just did what I had to do. Before leaving the door, Gan Hai sent an invitation. Later I will send an official invitation to the young knight and his companions. Then the young knight will see my true form. After Gan Hai finished speaking, he closed the door and left, leaving only So Quan in the room. Suddenly he smiled with satisfaction. Not long ago I saved Che Gan Hai to clear the debt with the Che Gan family. I will make good use of this opportunity. At the gathering place of talent, there was a loud voice saying, Come on, all participants paid attention. A man stood up to explain the rules of the conference. The first qualifying round of the Dragon and Phoenix Association was a running competition. He pointed to a mountain road that was both narrow and bumpy and difficult to travel on, then said, After the starting signal is given, go through this canyon road. Must be able to hold the flag in hand to be counted as passing this qualifying round. This round only has enough flags for the number of participants, so give it your all to complete it. So Quan is standing in the ranks of the contestants, but he is not very excited. If he wants to participate in the martial arts competition, he must pass three qualifying rounds, which is really troublesome. So Quan looked around looking for his teammate, Chan Gu, the leader of another team, but suddenly So Quan saw a familiar face. Where had he seen that face before? Oh ho, the future Gwen Long is here. He is looking at So Quan with fiery eyes. Last time Gwen Long suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of So Quan. So now seeing So Quan again at the conference made him extremely uncomfortable. So Quan was depressed when he discovered this guy and felt quite excited. According to the rules of the qualifying round, because there was no content saying not to attack others, he was probably worried that he would be eliminated because of him. Right? But I don't intend to waste my energy on the royal family. So Quan glanced around again. He also saw that the Taoist priest who criticized him yesterday seemed to be on the same team as the Qing sect Taoist. The Taoist saw So Quan looking at him and gave an incomprehensible smile. Suddenly that guy smiled so strangely that it made So Quan feel strange, not knowing what he was planning. After announcing the tournament rules, the instructor loudly announced, Now the first qualifying round will begin. All participants should prepare in front of the starting line. Hearing this, Everyone will be mentally focused. Both the future Gwen Long and the Taoist Chang Jin were determined to think, Don So Quan, the winner is me. Now everyone set off. After that shout, the alley was crowded with people, everyone trying to get through. In just a moment, there was no one left at the starting position. Everyone had run away and disappeared. Only So Quan is still leisurely. Now he is ready to run then, gently. At this time, a few more people suddenly appeared next to So Quan. So Quan did not know them. He wondered, what is it these guys? They consisted of four tall and muscular people, standing around So Quan, some breaking their arms, some smiling dangerously, saying, I don't want to do this but we were asked by someone else. The remaining two guys also looked at So Quan with evil eyes. When he heard them say that someone else asked them to attack him, So Quan immediately remembered the Taoist name Chang Jin. He understood that this was the true meaning of that unlucky smile from earlier. So Quan frowned, not believing that this would happen. He did not expect that in order to win the bet he would play such a despicable trick. It turned out to be a member of the Qing sect wearing the clothes of a gangster. They looked at each other and nodded to signal to begin. Then all four men simultaneously rushed towards So Quan and shouted loudly. Let's beat him. So Quan saw that the Taoist priest's personality was so rotten and had to resort to such cowardly and dirty tricks. He sighed in frustration. The future of the martial arts sect is so bright. The instructor saw that the candidates had already left and assessed that there were many qualified people participating in this conference. Suddenly he heard someone threatening. Although there was no grudge, we won. Implying. The guide wondered, what are those guys? But he suddenly thought, there was no rule not to hinder other participants. But even so, wouldn't that be too obvious? However, stopping them was beyond his authority. In just a few minutes, the guide saw four people aggressively rushing in to attack a young man. The guide folded his arms and stood there indifferently. He thought to himself, this is the first time I have seen how Koichi too, what a pity, I am still young so I will have another chance. He thought So Quan would be beaten to a pulp, so he was mourning when he suddenly widened his eyes as if he couldn't believe it. Before his eyes So Quan flashed, punched the guy standing opposite him in the face, the movement was so fast that it made him wonder, what, what, did I miss a move? Those guys quickly surrounded So Quan behind him. Then So Quan turned his head and looked coldly at the remaining guys. He saw that young man move as fast as lightning kick one guy in the stomach and then throw another punch in another guy's face. The guy was thrown far away without a trace. The last guy saw his comrades being defeated one by one and was also extremely scared. But that guy still screamed and rushed forward. This guy wanted to punch So Quan. But his fist was completely blocked by So Quan. In So Quan's eyes, this last person was as small as a child. He slowly said, if you use tricks, use the right person. 
After So Kwon finished speaking, he did not make a move on the last kid, but just calmly continued. The instructor stood high up and observed everything. He secretly praised, that kid is really good. But well, he was already far behind the leader so it would be difficult for him to pass. If he was eliminated in the qualifying round, it would be a pity. He thought that So Kwon was being disrupted by that group of people and was sure to lose. But when So Kwon returned to that narrow mountain road, he accelerated and sped away. The instructor's eyes were wide open. His mouth was wide open. His speed was terrifying. At this time, other experts are trying their best to pass the alley. Everyone is trying their best. It is not known who is better than the other. But they suddenly felt something bright and fast rushing past them. They suddenly cried out. The group fell down, looked at each other in bewilderment and asked. Something just passed by. They didn't know. It was a monster participating in the conference. At this moment, So Kwon was running at full speed. Mm. The gap with the leader was too big, although it was difficult to pass. I can't come later than them, he thought, remembering the useless Gwyn Long and the arrogant Taoist Chang Jin. So Kwon then thought of another plan to get to the finish line first. Because it was a qualifying round, the rules were quite loose. In that case, it is not necessary to just follow a predetermined path. So, So Kwon just finished thinking and took a stance ready to jump. Just go above, he won't take the narrow and dangerous path like everyone else, but will move above to shorten the time. So Kwon soared high, then land on the top of a flat mound. He gently stood up. Then look away to observe the situation. Let's see. So Kwon saw it from afar. There is a group of people running with their heads down. That person is the leader. He also saw the other two guys competing for the lead. Gan Rong and Chan Jin, the director's light martial arts, were also quite good. But So Kwon confidently thought that he would catch up anyway and then he quickly ran away. He rushed away extremely quickly, but did not follow the path that the organizers had prepared. So Kwon jumped out of the rocks. He was taking advantage of the laxity of the rules to create a faster path for himself. While the others were trying to run, So Kwon gently jumped past them, taking the shortcut he observed to reach his destination faster. Only So Kwon did not run on the ground but flew in the sky, so he quickly approached the finish line. So Kwon quickly confirmed the destination. Over there is the finish line, Below there are flags already placed. No one has arrived yet. So Kwon landed on the ground, smiled with satisfaction, and leisurely passed with first place. Suddenly someone spoke up. It's really interesting. So Kwon turned his head back in surprise. He saw a man standing behind him. So Kwon was surprised. Man, why is that person here? He exposed So Kwon. I couldn't have thought that you would go over the cliff. So Kwon carefully observed him. His clothes were rustic without any patterns or decorations engraved on them. Two long swords were hanging from his belt, feeling oppressed to the point of goosebumps with ferocious eyes like a beast. So Kwon recognized this man, the master of the heavens and outside the heavens called the two masters and the masters of the Shaolin. This man was, Du Jie Biasi, Vo Lam Min Master of Martial Arts. When So Kwon saw a big man like Du Jie Bok silently standing here observing the candidates, he was both surprised and confused. What was this person doing? And why did the leader hide his aura and concern? Close to qualifying round. He felt a little guilty and thought, wouldn't he be disqualified for cheating? Then So Kwon also clasped his hands and politely greeted him. Don So Kwon, the ultimate martial artist, paid his respects to the leader. The man saw that So Kwon had just met him and was extremely polite and laughed out loud. Ha ha ha, the young friend who met me for the first time recognized me. That's really funny, he said while patting So Kwon's shoulder. Then Du Jie Bak asked, how old are you? So Kwon replied, this year I am 20 years old. When Du Jie Bak heard that, he applauded. 20 years old is already super awesome. When I was young I still hadn't reached that level. Then he asked, where is your master? So Kwon replied, he is the heavenly thunder sect, the one who inherited the sect, and has no relationship with the nine great sects, so perhaps you don't know. He smiled happily, yes. So Kwon secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately he was not in a bad mood. Du Jie Bok suggested as he walked, could we talk for a while? So Kwon asked a little worriedly, was he disqualified from testing because of cheating? Du Jie BAC waved his hand and said, What disqualification? Did you commit some mistake? I don't remember if I set out a rule. Decided not to jump onto the cliff. So Kwon replied with relief, Then that's lucky. Du Jie Bak crossed his arms and asked, Do you think about joining Vo Lam Min? So Kwon answered immediately, Of course, it's such a funny thing. Du Jie Bak was about to continue talking when he realized that someone was approaching the finish line. Du Jie Bak had no choice but to say, Oh my god, the leader has already caught up. Even though he wanted to chat more, there will be another chance. He urged, go quickly. So Kwon saw that Gwyn Long and Chang Jin had arrived and replied, Ah, yes, I'll say goodbye. Then So Kwon also quickly ran away. Du Jie Bak said after him, 
hoping to see you on the upper altar later. So Quan was surprised on the upper altar? Only the winner of the dragon and phoenix branch can meet the leader at the top of the altar. Are you saying that you are the winner? So Quan saw him give him a friendly smile and suddenly thought, naturally. Having the alliance leader's feelings is not good at all, because the senator he wants to become can only stand at the point of confrontation with the alliance leader. Gwen Long and Chang Jin have approached the finish line. Both of them fought fiercely. No one wanted to give in to the other. The first prize was mine. Do you think I would leave it alone? But when they least expected it, So Quan suddenly appeared in front of them, snatching a target flag before the shocked eyes of both of them. Immediately someone announced the prize. First prize is Don So Quan of the Royal Dragon Martial Arts Hall. Both Gwyn Long and Chan Jin asked in unison, Where did he appear from? So Quan smiled and pointed to the sky. Chan Jin asked confusedly, Up there? Chan Jin asked uncomfortably, Could it be that you climbed over that cliff? But if so, did he take another route and not follow the competition? Chan Jin raised his hand to protest to the organizers. It seemed that this was not in line with the fairness of the conference. Shouldn't he be disqualified? The organizers hesitated, this matter. But So Quan was not afraid at all, because he had the consent of Du Jie Bak. So So Quan said with great confidence, I didn't know that the Congress banned climbing cliffs, so no one knows the law best in this area. This. Chan Jin was extremely angry, but he didn't know what to say. Gwen Long advised, don't pay attention to him, just withdraw the flag first. Just now, these two people were still enemies, but now they have joined forces. Chan Jin also said intimately, after countless Buddhas, I almost forgot the important thing because of these trivial things. Tathya Heap reminded. Gwen Long had fought with So Quan so he knew clearly, he advised Chan Jin to stop him. You better not touch him. The organizers talked about the next match. The second test was very simple. In front of the candidates there are three extremely large rocks. Please use your martial arts skills to carve them. We will proceed in the order of those who passed the first test, with three people going forward at the same time. There was a bald guy who confidently said, What if you punch and break rocks? The organizer smiled and replied, If you can. Hearing that, the bald man immediately threw a punch at the rock. But he couldn't do anything. The rock was still standing tall as before, without any dents. Immediately there was a voice announcing, ascending to the heavenly gate. Song Hello, eliminated. The next guy used a stick to hit the rock, but the stick broke, the rock remained intact. Tai Mong Chin Ho, eliminated. Song Song Ti Ha, type, flower sword glottis, pass. Finally someone passes. After going through the second contest, there were many people left behind, the last three people also stepped out. Those three people are the leader of the merchant sect Chan Jin, the royal family's royal palace, the abandoned Bo Chin, and Hong Long Quan, Dan So Quan, is truly an unjust family. In the end all three of them competed at the same time. The organizers announced, starting in order, first is director Chan Jin's turn. He was extremely confident, pulled out his sword and said, Is that all for the test? Then he forcefully slashed at the rock with a sharp sword technique. A large hole had been cut out of the large rock that had just stood there. Immediately there was an announcement. The spear was shot by Chan Jin Dao. The surrounding people were constantly admiring. The sword strike was very quick. It was indeed a wound. Sect. Bo Chin. The wild dragon, saw this and quickly spoke up. It was my turn, then his whole body was also filled with aura. So Quan stood to the side calmly looking at them, just punching a hole in the rock and doing so. Hong Bo Chin punched the rock hard. With a five element punch, the rock quickly cracked, concave in a hole. People around also praised him, the five elements of the royal family's power. I heard that he will name the king's power. People from the organizing committee announced that the royal palace of the abandoned royal family Bo Chin, Dao and So Quan were also a bit surprised. If they fought, it seems he did not bad. Finally, there was the Royal Dragon Dojo, Don So Quan. As soon as it was So Quan's turn, people around him were already whispering. If the village dojo was ranked first, he must have been chatting. So Quan just looked at the rock in front of him, not paying attention to what the people around him were saying. In any case, the standards for passing the exam were not clear. Just look at the marks left on the stone without examining it. Deciding whether to pass or not is at the judge's discretion. So Quan thought, and then glanced at the judge standing far away. The exam is so lax, if you bribe the judge, anyone can be eliminated. So Quan remembered Chan Jin's rotten personality and was a little confused. He wouldn't do anything, uncle. I don't intend to use all my strength before the competition. So Quan walked closer to the rock. If you don't want to be eliminated, just do it. He concentrates a little energy in his palm the seventh move in the by Lich Fist. Law Enforcement. People around saw So Quan just standing in front of the rock without doing anything and wondered, what was that? He just touched the rock, probably giving up. 
Chan Jin looked in surprise at the direction So Quan was standing, that is. He saw that So Quan didn't do anything, he just stood still but the rock shook again, smoke and dust flew up. Hong Bo Chin was also dumbfounded by this scene. The towering rocks soon made a cracking sound, rocks and dirt shot out in all directions, causing people around to quickly retreat into the distance. After everyone saw it clearly, they were extremely surprised. It was impossible. It was terrible. Even the judge's eyes were wide open in surprise. How could he destroy that rock with just his hands? When So Quan saw the judge just standing there dumbfounded, he reminded him that he wasn't going to say the result. So the judge was startled. Ah. Immediately after that, there was an announcement. The Royal Dragon Martial Arts Club Don So Quan. Dao. When Hong Bo Chin saw So Quan winning again, he was extremely angry. That scary guy, Chan Jin Taoist, standing not far away, suddenly heard So Quan transmitting to him, Chan Jin Taoist. So Quan looked at him with ironic eyes, didn't I say that I would win? Internal energy is a magic medicine, don't drink it casually. Chan Jin also felt angry when he heard what he said, but he couldn't do anything. After the second competition ended, everyone gathered together, as expected from a famous family. Chan Gu sat in front of a table of delicious food and couldn't help but say, Let's eat first. So Quan stopped him. He will come soon. Just wait. Jie Dong sitting next to him asked in confusion. Don So Quan, why did that person invite us? So Quan calmly replied, wasn't it to make friends? Although he answered Jie Dong like that, in his heart he thought differently. Of course there would be a purpose. A voice rang out. Everything is ready, is it okay? Jie gone high, extremely beautiful and dignified, walked in smiling and talking. It's been a long time since I've seen her. The rest of the people also stood up. This is Miss Gan Hai, right? Very beautiful. So Quan clasped his hands and said, Thank you for your invitation. Mr. Gan Hai is politely invited. Please sit down. Then she introduced the person behind her. This is my little brother. Now the person behind Che Gan Hai stood up to say hello and then announced his name. I am Che Liverpork Chin. So Quan stared at Che Gan Hai's little brother. This was the future earth dragon of the family. The shy-looking person who has been hiding behind Gan Hai all this time is the Earth Dragon of the future. The name Earth Dragon is because he will be Che Gan Hai's powerful arm. Thinking back to his past life, I see that his mind is also not normal. The more So Quan thought about it, the more strange it became. Why did she bring out her younger brother who had been hidden for many years? As soon as he sat down, Gan Hai turned around and smiled and said to Damon, Long time no see brother Dam. Damon also politely replied, Long time no see. When So Quan saw the two of them being so close, he remembered the story of his past life, that's right. When he was young, Damon went to a family to study, it seems that this relationship was from that time. So Quan asked Che Gan Hai directly, can I ask the reason why the young lady wanted to invite us here? Gan Hai smiled, it was impossible to ignore the young master Don. Gan Hai also confided her feelings, I want to show you my true image and build a close relationship with you. Damon asked in confusion, what you mean by true images? Not long ago I hid my face in front of you all, because I had to use my identity, as a younger brother to chase away the demon, she said, looking at her disciple who had always been silent. Everyone else was surprised, young lady, talking about the earth dragon. Gan Hai honestly said yes, my younger brother was sent but his body was not healthy so I had to disguise myself as a man to go to battle in his place. As a result, I have that earth dragon reputation, but if my younger brother was sent, it would be the same. So Quan did not expect Gan Hai to tell these stories, but did not expect them to reveal the original information. Only within the family, he frowned, thinking, perhaps there was some plot. Suddenly Che Gan Hai asked Don Thia Heap, do you want to enter the Ming Dynasty? So Quan replied, why do you ask that? Last time I also wanted to enter the realm, but my brother's physical condition has improved significantly so I don't need to do that anymore. I'm looking for my new life. Heo Chin will support the homeowner and lead the family. I intend to join the military team to support my uncle. So Quan also told you his plan. If you want to hear it, I will answer that I intend to join the alliance. He did not hesitate to state it directly, but I have no intention of joining any particular right side. Gan Hai frowned seriously and asked why. If I join a faction, I won't be able to be free. If I do that, I won't be able to achieve what I'm planning. Suddenly, Gan Hai became more gloomy after hearing this. It turns out that, at this time, it seems that So Quan has fully understood Che Gan Hai's intentions. It seems that the young lady wants to convince me to join the faction of the military advisor Che Gan Quan. Is that right? That was exactly Gan Hai's intention. She bowed her head sadly. That's right. It seems I was rejected even before I said it. So Quan silently pondered in his heart. I really have no intention of belonging to any faction, especially the faction of Che Gan Quan. 
Martial arts are divided into the Alliance faction and the Senator faction. Che Gong Quan is a military member of the Alliance faction, meaning that a person who wants to become a senator should not join, and maybe will be hostile to Che Gong Hai. At this time Che Gong Hai also quickly invited everyone, we've talked a lot, invite you to dinner. So Quan held the chopsticks and smiled at her. After entering the temple, he hoped the young lady would help. Gan Hai also smiled enthusiastically and replied, I am the one who hopes for your help. Returning to the conference, at a large-scale martial arts arena, the organizers announced the final qualifying round. Only those who are recognized by the dragon team members will move on to the next round. So Quan stood far away and thought dissatisfiedly. His ability was recognized by the judges, again with the same vague standards as last time. This is definitely a good situation for that guy to play tricks. Chang Jin is also looking sinisterly at So Quan. Director Chang Jin went into the ring to fight another contestant. The results were announced. Very excellent. Passed. Chang Jin politely clasped his hands and said, Thank you for your guidance. Next, when he went down to the stands, it was So Quan's turn to step up. Chang Jin glanced at him with an evil smile. So Quan's opponent this time has already become arrogant, coming from the Hong Long Martial Arts Club. I really don't understand how you could get up here. He looked at So Quan and thought, Maybe it's just luck. I will never let you pass. He calmly said, Attack first. Feel free to use all your strength. So Quan also slowly replied, If you say so. Immediately after that, he could no longer see So Quan. Then So Quan suddenly appeared, hit a stick straight down, then I will not hold back. Although he was extremely surprised by So Quan's speed, he still reluctantly blocked this guy. Next, he used the Nam Kung spear and sword technique, slashed strongly towards So Quan. So Quan dodged. Thanks to this move he recognized the identity of the person in front of him, who turned out to be from the Nam Kung family. He angrily shouted, you know what? But So Quan was not afraid at all. He continued to hold his sword and rush forward. Of course there was nothing else. So Quan slashed a move right at his neck. But luckily he dodged it in time. Next, So Quan continued to attack. He attacked continuously, causing the opponent to fall into a passive position where he can only instinctively dodge and hide. It was only a moment later that he realized he had been forced into a corner by So Quan. Damn, that brat dared to push me to the edge of the ring. If I were a little careless, I could easily slip and fall out of the ring. Seeing that he was in a disadvantageous situation, he became even more hasty. If this continues, we will lose. If the judge uses a special technique, he will definitely be scolded, but winning is better than losing. He disregarded the rules of the competition and just used the secret technique of the Nam Kung family. So Quan was also ready, probably also threw a fist in response. When he saw So Quan also rushing directly towards him, he laughed. You idiot, you dare to block the nine-headed divine fist? But at the moment when the fists of the two sides collided, the descendant of the male palace family seemed to be electrocuted. He blurted out. No way, his mouth was distorted. Then he was punched away by So Quan. Just one move from So Quan sent him flying out of the ring, crashing into the stairs in the distance. Several eunuchs were also surprised by So Quan's strength. Chang Jin saw that So Quan was not only uninjured but also won a glorious victory, being admired by many people. How could this be possible but his representative? Even the guy who had just been defeated by So Quan couldn't believe it. He thought in confusion, what happened just now? So Quan slowly explained, I didn't expect the judge to use a special technique. I ate too much yesterday so I couldn't adjust my strength. Luckily I was able to reduce the power right at the end. Otherwise, one of the judge's arms must have flown away. So Quan finished speaking and smiled. Back to last night, So Quan sat on the ground. Li Kang Ha stood behind him and said, I will stand next to you so don't worry. So Quan held a small bottle of medicine in his hand. With an expert like Li Kang Ha watching over him, he could safely absorb it. That bottle of medicine was a clear stalactite. So Quan put it in his mouth and only needed to drink a few drops to gain 20 years of internal energy. Although because of the characteristics of the white thunder magic, the effectiveness is only half that after 10 years of internal work. After drinking the bottle of medicine, So Quan slammed it down on the ground. So Quan entered a meditation position. In just a few minutes, his whole body was filled with light. As if living in the light of 10 years of Buddhas, his internal energy was pouring out, energy accumulated between his palms. More and more energy poured out, so Quan opened his eyes wide as if he wanted to explode. He clenched his teeth tightly because he was under the influence of this miracle drug. The source of energy seemed to have reached its peak, shining brightly. Li Gang Ha appeared surprised by this great power. So Quan stood up, Li Gang Ha sighed, even though he knew he was a monster. I didn't expect it to come to that. At this moment, So Quan had completely absorbed all his internal energy, and was full of power. So Quan felt the power, 
and finally had sixty years of internal strength, so Quan clenched his fist to break the accumulated Qigong ball. Now that he has completely absorbed the elixir, his internal energy can also quickly accumulate. It's not long before he reaches the realm of his previous life. So Quan smiles heartily at his terrible power. Back to the present time in the ring, So Quan said, So, I am qualified, the beaten judge could only sigh. Director Chan Jin's face looked angry, appropriate, because until the end he still had to witness So Quan's confident demeanor. In another room, someone walked in. Du Jie Bok heard the sound and raised his head to look up. The person who just walked in was Du Jie Bok's military advisor. He called out, Lord Du Jie Bok immediately stood up. Where did the military go? I've just arrived now. I have something to tell you. The military advisor placed a pile of books on the table, complaining that because the leader did not approve, the entire military department could not rest. The leader replied, Oh, I know, but more than that, not long ago I discovered a boy who was a champion. The strategist crossed his arms and glanced, Are you planning to avoid him again? But the master is full of excitement. You listen to me first, he is a kid who fits the talent standards you are looking for. The leader happily continued, The day I secretly left Mine. I actually came to observe the first round of selection. The strategist heard this and immediately said, At that time I did not mobilize all my darkness. Is the team going to find the leader? The lord said as he looked into the glass of water, Oh ho, that's not important right now, the military has to forgive this playful monarch. Say, you keep talking. The master recalled the time when he saw that boy racing on the cliff. There was a certain star who skipped the predetermined race track, and jumped up the cliff and ran towards the finish line. Until now, the master still remembers clearly how that person raced. The strategist was skeptical, did that make sense? But the leader smiled and affirmed, I saw it with my own eyes. The strategist wanted to know more about that person. If it was true, he was indeed a smart and intelligent sect. He belonged to which sect he belonged to. The master replied, he said he was from the Tian Thunder sect. He was the most unknown sect heir on the river and lake. After hearing this, the strategist was a bit surprised. The leader remembers the first time he met that young man. His name was Don Soquan, not from a large sect but a young star who had reached super peak. What was it like? There was no one else suitable. With the standards you mentioned, it's no better than him. If you don't want the senator to take it away, it's better to let him work under your command. After listening to the leader's words, the strategist thought deeply. The strategist turned around and left. First I will go and see. I have to find out about that Don Soquan. The monarch still insisted on persuading. If you take your time, one day some other guys will rob you. The strategist ignored it and said I will figure that out and do it myself. I hope you will resolve the outstanding work. Although the military advisor did not seem to care, in fact he had noticed this matter. Since the alliance leader said so much, he is definitely a necessary person for the alliance's side. We must quickly find out before the senators contact us. On a cool moonlit night someone came to tell So Quan, his senator was waiting for you. So Quan wondered, who was that? These people did not answer, but just nodded and replied, You just need to follow. If you intend to protest, I advise you not to do so. So Quan thought, The senators related to me are so hangam and man do gone. With this course of method, he is not so hangam, there is a high possibility that he is man do gone. So Quan saw that the situation was not very good. He certainly did not have good intentions when he called him. Nor could he defeat the Vo Lam Min soldiers and send them back. Did the other men see that So Quan was just standing still? When he moved, he thought So Quan was about to protest, so they immediately said in a defensive stance, I told you not to protest. But So Quan just gently replied that I know, I will follow. They heard that and said with peace of mind, thinking clearly, after all, they knew So Quan's terrifying ability. The soldiers leading the way ordered then follow us, So Quan thought as he walked, after all, I have to meet Man Dugan once. I was hoping for a character more like a senator like Sohan Gam. The scholar brought So Quan to the door of a room and said I have brought you there. The person in the room answered and let me in. When the door opened, So Quan saw a familiar person, the wild name Bo Chin, already standing inside. When So Quan passed by, he even showed an evil smile. So Quan clasped his hands to greet the person in front of him, the late martial arts scholar Don So Quan. When meeting with the great predecessor of the Jianghu, he only faintly replied, Okay. Then he reached out and said, Sit down. Just as So Quan predicted, the person who wanted to meet him this time was Man Dugan, the veteran of Vo Lam Min. As soon as So Quan sat down, he received a question from him. Why do you think I called you? So Quan guessed, it was to receive an apology for last time from my junior. Man Dugan clenched his fists and said fiercely, Yes, you are responsible for the violence against the immediate family of this family and its guardian warriors. So Quan, who was sitting in front of him, 
suddenly felt confused by the strong aura of the senator, who was indeed our senator. He looked at the stern senator before him. If So Han Gam showed his expertise, then Man Dugan was filled with pressure. He said again, You should apologize to Qin and return the armor. Man Dugan's whole body radiates more and more pressure to oppress So Quan, if you don't apologize. He thought that So Quan was an extremely stubborn person who did not know how to bow his head, but he did not expect that So Quan would say it so easily, knowing that he would apologize to the young master Hong Bo Qin. He was a bit surprised to see So Quan agree so easily, but for So Quan, apologizing to others is not a big deal. Just an apology is not difficult. For the pseudo-gentlemen of the political sect, that is a problem. So Quan glanced at Hong Bo Chin. He was also skeptical about So Quan's easy acceptance. We have overemphasized meaning with a statement that has no special meaning. The old man saw that So Quan was so obedient and was quite satisfied. Okay, fortunately you were sensible. Then he suggested again. Then, please return the armor to Chin. But at this time, So Quan replied indifferently. Perhaps the senior had misunderstood. The junior said he would apologize. Without ever saying he would return the rights and armor, Hong Bo Chin was extremely angry when his belongings were stolen. Man Du Gan was surprised to hear So Quan answer so calmly. What, what? At this moment, So Quan smiled, the armor belonged to his junior. But right after that his face became extremely gloomy, so there was no reason to give it to young master Bo Chin. Man Du Gan saw So Quan's tough attitude and was extremely angry. What did you just say? So Quan explained again. I had obtained the right to armor through a bet with young knight Hong Bo. The senator was startled betting, so Quan slightly pulled his shirt off, revealing the silkworm inside. I used the silkworm to bet with him. Man Du Gan saw that So Quan was actually wearing the treasure, and was startled. The heavenly silkworm father Y. Hong Bo Qin had never told him these details. Obviously he didn't know either. Now that he understood, Man Du Gan glanced fiercely at Hong Bo Qin. Hong Bo Qin saw that everything was revealed timidly replied, Ah, uh, I was about to say it but, So Quan saw their attitude and understood clearly that this time it was Hong Bo Qin who had defamed him in front of the senator, sure enough. After meeting with Man Dugan, So Quan told this story to another senator, So Hang Gam, probably the young knight Hong Bo did not tell all of what happened, So Hang Gam did not have it. What's strange, I knew that sinister guy had always been like that, but that coward only told Man Dugan things that were detrimental to me. So in the conversation that day, so Quan explained to Man Dugan, if I just handed over the armor, then I would be insulting the young knight Hong Bo because we had bet with each other. Man Du hearing what he said was so reasonable. Gan could only stay silent. In the end, So Quan still humbly accepts part of the responsibility on his part, but he is also at fault for acting on his emotions. Thanks to this apology, Man Dugan was about to learn one more thing. He asked, what did he mean by that? So Quan recounted the situation when his room was robbed by Hong Bo Chin. After all, this was also the time when there were many guests. If we had booked another room, there would have been no room. Nothing happened, So Quan said while gently glancing at him. It was impossible for the young knight Hong Bo to prepare a meager accommodation for his elders. I apologize for not paying attention to humiliating Bo Chin and saving Man Dugan's face by apologizing is correct. When Hong Bo Chin saw So Quan suddenly become reasonable like that, he felt guilty. No, no. But So Quan deliberately admitted his mistake, because grasping the situation and pleasing others is not the basics of art. How to deal with people. And we must not let the other person think that we are avoiding this matter. So Quan put his hand in his inner pocket to get something and said, I accidentally caused trouble for my senior. Can I show my sincerity? After he finished speaking, he smiled and handed over a stack of checks from the poplar trade, an extremely valuable item in terms of economics and status. Give this gift to the senator. It's hard to refuse. A mutually beneficial offer that's impossible to refuse. Sure enough, Man Dugan was still aggressive just now, but now he has fallen in love. I will clear up misunderstandings and build close relations with my senators, because Man Dugan will save face and accept my bribes. Having received an apology gift, Man Dugan felt very comfortable. He laughed and said, Now I understand why an old fox like So Hang Gam likes you so much. Then the senator suggested, Have a drink with me later just the two of us. So Quan clasped his hands and agreed, it is an honor for me. Everyone was happy. Only Hong Bo Chin was extremely angry, because So Quan now had the sympathy of the elder man Dugan. At the ring of the convention, Chan Gu happily said that he was lucky to not be on the same team as the young knight. So Quan saw that Chan Gu had not been eliminated yet and was satisfied, but in the end he still warned him, if you are eliminated before meeting me, then participate in that special training again. Chan Gu remembered that difficult training. So Moody, why is it just me? 
Chan Jin suddenly appeared from behind. It was finally time to compete. When Chan Gu saw that he was coming again, he waved his hand and chased him away. Don't cause trouble anymore. What trouble? Director Chan Gu was very impressed with what Dan Tiaheat showed in the qualifying round, so he came to say hello. So Quan did not respond, but just quietly assessed what he said. Even if a dog passed by, he would burst out laughing. Chan Jin said excitedly, I am looking forward to sparring with the young knight. So Quan replied indifferently, me too, so don't get eliminated early. Chan Jin expressed his sincere thanks. Thank you for your encouragement. Chan Gu saw that this guy is usually overbearing and doesn't care about anyone. But today he ran over to act friendly and charitable and transmitted the sound to So Quan. I don't know why that guy came here to say hello like that. So Quan replied unconcernedly, don't worry about him. The martial arts match will begin soon. The sound of drumsticks resounded loudly. Someone loudly announced that the martial arts competition had officially begun. Suddenly a voice rang out, thank you to everyone present here today. There are no pictures, only sound. The participants who made it to this round had to overcome fierce competition. Isn't that something to be proud of? Everyone was confused. Where did the voice come from? Am I the only one who heard it? Suddenly someone pointed to the sky and shouted, Dang, over there from the sky. The person in the sky who spoke just now was Du Jie Bak. Everyone saw him slowly walking in the air and applauded. The mausoleum. The mausoleum is not damaged. At this time, someone quickly recognized that it was Marshal Venerable. Du Jie Cypress landed on the ground in front of many people. As soon as he landed, the atmosphere exploded everywhere. People began to cheer and pay their respects to the leader. Everyone was surprised. The atmosphere was so strong. Indeed, Vo Lam Min, just standing in one place still makes others admire him. After three qualifying rounds, 128 posthumous chits, while Du Jie Bak was speaking. So Quan felt a bit strange. Why is the martial master who is famous for being a carefree person showing off like this? As expected, compared to the ancient era that was bound by form. While martial artists have to stand up and show off in front of the people, there are people who are relaxed and beautified by beauties. So Quan looked at the group of senators who were comfortably enjoying themselves, and felt that indeed, the elders were the most free and liberal. There was a voice announcing the end. The final round of the Dragon Wind Branch will now begin. In this round, only the strongest can win. Below the stands, Seo So Quan was standing and observing with his hat on. In fact, he was following So Quan's orders, but even he didn't understand why he was giving me such orders. Previously, So Quan had told him that the appearance of the participants in the conference, their habits and unique characteristics, should be observed carefully. Although So Quan was very puzzled, he still trusted So Quan very much. Anyway, the command is given, just follow it. Finally, So Quan went into battle, followed by Don So Quan of the Royal Dragon Martial Arts Hall. So Quan stepped out into the ring, waiting for the judge to read the name of his opponent today. The judge begins to read, the opponent is. On the ring, a figure stepped out, and below began to stir, so beautiful. It was a lady with white skin and pink lips, extremely graceful. Second generation disciple of the martial arts sect, director Sun Hai. As soon as this lady stepped out, So Quan found herself in a difficult position. This is giving me a headache. I don't know how to use her religious name, but I know this woman. So Quan remembered the night dam and confided to him about his lost lover. At that time, So Quan also asked, How is the person you broke up with or is it the owner of the Shama family who has captured her? Damon said sadly, Even though it was late, I realized it and searched for her whereabouts. So Quan clearly remembered what Damon said. Fortunately she had become a disciple of the martial arts sect. Both of them come from the martial arts sect. I don't think this is a coincidence. So Quan awkwardly held his forehead and thought. This person's appearance is identical to the news from Han Geman yesterday. The lady opposite saw So Quan's confusion and was extremely confused. Only So Quan understands why my first opponent is her. Did I have to beat up my subordinate's ex-lover the first time we met? Because this girl in front of him is the ex-lover that damn and still misses. So Quan looked around hesitantly. Initially, he had planned to win everything to make a strong impression but now, if you show concern for the other person and give in a little, you won't leave an impression on everyone about your strength. If you win too quickly, Dewa's son Hai will definitely have his self-esteem damaged. He frowned and thought about whether there was a way to win while still preserving the opponent's face in a natural way. But just one second later, So Quan suddenly woke up. I suddenly started thinking about it, wondering because someone like that was not like So Quan at all. In the white path of martial arts, I became more and more humble. He was determined and placed his hand on the road. The judge stood between the two people, waved his hand and announced, starting the contest. Director Sun Hai took the initiative to attack first. She grabbed her sword and rushed forward, slashed strongly towards So Quan, cutting the sword. So Quan did not dodge, 
waiting for Sun Hai to approach, so Quan just gently blocked him. Sun Hai was knocked aside by So Quan, but she finally landed on the ground. Sun Hai had not yet stood firm when So Quan hastily attacked, each lightning strike. Sun Hai had to constantly step back to avoid So Quan's deadly moves. By the time she realized it, her feet were close to the boundary of the ring, just a little more, and she would be outside the battle circle. If she stepped outside, she would be judged as losing. But before he could go in, So Quan arrived. So Quan rushed forward without making any strong moves. He just pushed Seo Hai's shoulder, causing her to fall out. The judge's voice immediately rang out, ending. Director Sin Hai was already out of the battle zone. Sin Hai was now pushed to the ground. The results were announced. The winner was Don So Woon. This battle happened so quickly that everyone around was still confused. After winning, So Quan put his sword back in its sheath, turned around and left, leaving only Director Seo Hai angry and unwilling. Suddenly she heard So Quan transmitting to her, If you want to meet young knight Saman, two days after dog hour, go to Tian Hoen. Dog hour lasts from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. After the battle, So Quan arranged to meet So Quan privately at the lake. So Quan wondered why he ordered me to spy on the participants in the conference. Because I asked Seo the martial artist for that. Seo So Quan asked, What is that? So Quan slowly said, You will assassinate. Some of them. It was such a big deal. But Seo So Quan listened to So Quan's calm answer. He asked again in panic, Did you tell me to assassinate the elites of the sects and families in the main martial arts sect? So Quan replied, Yes. But Seo So Quan still hesitantly asked, How should I assassinate them? This is such a martial arts conference. How should I do that? So Quan gently smiled at him. Don't worry, I will help you. So Quan remembered how in his previous life, Vo Lam Min, through the Dragon and Phoenix Association this time, chose the following branch with the strength to expand its power. But if we expand our power quickly, internal control will be neglected. Vo Lam Min will be in danger from spies from the demon religion. While in the demon religion we just stand by and watch without taking any action to intervene. So Quan thought determinately. But now it's different. I won't let that happen in the place where I will spend a peaceful old age. The place that I have to keep an eye on is the Senate Council. We will use SEO Ho Sun to eliminate those poisonous insects. Everything will be eliminated for my comfortable future, he thought, then raised his legs. Crush a centipede crawling under your feet. But So Quan is still not at ease. Even if I am an assassin from the demon sect, I cannot compete with the nine sects and the five great families. So Quan reassured him, now it is true, but don't worry. This time I will play the role of the assassin of the party. I will train the heavenly killer. Seo So Quan will become the coldest killer in his eyes, and become a powerful assistant for So Quan. Two days later, at the hour of the dog, on a boat, Damon is sitting opposite Miss Seo Hai. Next to him is So Quan and a woman. So Quan stood next to him and looked at Damon who was bowing his head sadly. To make it easier to talk, I hid my dragon energy so I could talk to these people comfortably. Suddenly the woman standing next spoke to him. Don't even think about meddling with those two juniors. This is a matter for everyone involved. So Quan also responded via voice transmission. Even if she didn't say it, I still thought so. Senior Will of Flower Sword, she looked at him in surprise. Do you know me? So Quan knows very well that the martial arts master is in charge, who doesn't know the top hundred famous masters in the world. She is satisfied. Since you know me, it's easier to talk to you. She looked at the couple in front of her. I came here to decide whether to forgive the person who hurt my disciple or not. Let's watch and see how these two juniors will handle it. Damon spoke first, I'm sorry. Daoist SEO high frowned and asked, What are you apologizing for? Damon quickly said it was all. At that time, I was a childish person who only thought about myself. Seo high sarcastically asked, Do you think differently now? She was so angry that she didn't want to look at Damon's face. In the past time, you haven't contacted me even once. Do you know how many ways I used to find you? Dam bowed her head in pain, I couldn't. There's nothing to say. Damon tried to make it up to her. He put his hand on his chest and whispered, All I can do is listen to your wishes. Seo Hai heard that and asked again, Anything. Damon happily assured, Anything you say. Seo Hai only coldly stated the condition. I want the Sam Ma family to be exterminated. Even though she said that, she didn't expect Damon to say it directly. Wanting me to destroy the demon family. Damon said slowly, That's no different than saying I'm going to die. But he told her without fear. If that were the case, I could die immediately. So Quan had always been silent. But when he heard Damon say that, he had to intervene, which was completely impossible. So Quan frowned and said firmly as steel, I will agree whatever you decide, but you absolutely cannot die. The woman who is the elder of the martial arts sect is also speaking. This matter has nothing to do with you, junior. So Quan radiates pressure. He said without hesitation, if the senior stops me, 
If that's the case, then I can only wipe out the two of them at the same time in this place. When she saw So Kwan so angry, she also drew her sword and took a defensive stance. So Kwan spoke again. The young knight's life is not Miss Sun Hai's. The elder looked angrily at So Kwan. The director Seo Hai herself also glanced at him angrily. Perhaps because she had been mean to So Kwan since the time he knocked her down from the ring. Only Damon was stunned. He stared blankly at the leader who always shared the same suffering as him. So Kwan declares sovereignty. The young knight's life is not Miss Sun Hai's, but mine to decide. So Kwan asked firmly, Do you understand? As soon as So Kwan finished speaking aggressively, Sun Hai also bowed her head and collapsed. Seeing this, Damon quickly stood up and wanted to ask, Are you okay? But she harshly pushed his hand away and let him go. Seo Hai bowed her head, tears fell. She blamed, I hate you. Why did you come looking for me? Why did you leave without an explanation? Damon hesitated, not knowing how to explain to her so she could understand. Seo Hai cried and said, I've been waiting for you. Damon gently comforted her. I'm sorry for leaving you. But Seo Hai is extremely angry. I will never forgive the San Ma family. After joining the alliance, I will climb to a position of power, and then I will destroy the San Ma family. Damon gently held her shaking hand, I will help you. Damon looked at So Kwan again and said, I will merge with the person I am serving. The San Ma family will pay the price for what they have done. Damon frowned with determination, that's for sure. Seo Hai saw that Damon was still as considerate, and considerate of her as before, and was deeply moved. She choked up and exclaimed, My goodness. Then as Seo Hai hugged Damon, all the anger in her heart had disappeared. She said, Honey, I miss you. Damon also smiled happily. I miss you too. So Kwan and the martial arts master were sent to see that the young lovers had reconciled with each other. He also felt happy at this reunion scene. The elder also gently transmitted the sound to So Kwan. The young knight's dedication to his subordinate was very great. So Kwan bowed his head and replied, Just now the junior was angry and rude. The elder doesn't blame him. It's okay. Thanks to the young master coming forward, it's been resolved. After everything was settled, Damon left with So Kwan. Damon opened his mouth to So Kwan. Thank you for giving me courage. So Kwan laughed. I caused trouble, but it seems to be useful. Damon continued about punishing the Sama family. So Kwan replied, didn't I say that before? So Kwan turned to look at him. I will help you escape the darkness of the demon family and be free. I promise. Damon did not expect So Kwan to be extremely busy but still remembers his story clearly. Damon clasped his hands and said, I will give my all until that day. But So Kwan put his hand on his shoulder, swearing loyalty just once was enough. Then take action and show me. To So Kwan's credit, Damon replied yes. The two of them walked away and said, We haven't eaten anything for dinner yet so we're hungry now. Let me go buy some. So Kwan asked again, Can you pay? Damon insisted, Let me buy today. That is my wish. It seems you have overdone it. At the Dragon Wind Guild's ring, there is a high and low battle between the contestants. In the arena right now, Leader Chan Jin is dominating. He points his sword at his opponent. Someone announced, The Leader Chan Jin of the Merchant Faction won. After defeating the opponent, he clasped his hands together and said, I have received countless Buddha's blessings. I fought very well, and the loser was also very respected. It is indeed the future of the injured point, very capable. Chang Jin left the ring and went inside. On the way in, he passed by Don So Kwan. Another voice rang out. Next was Don So Kwan of the Royal Dragon Dojo. Chang Jin arrogantly said, If you win this match, then we will meet next match. So Kwan was silent and did not bother to answer. Chang Jin glanced at So Kwan's back. A lucky person who dared to be bossy in this round. Chang Jin looked to see who So Kwan's opponent was in this round. His opponent was. It's a common model. Although he belongs to the side branch of the Mo Dung family, his strength is much stronger than that of the main family. Seeing So Kwan encounter a strong opponent, this Chang Jin guy was extremely happy. If it were me, I would have to fight 100 rounds to win. Chang Jin flashed an evil smile. He was extremely certain that So Kwan would have to admit defeat today. It seems your luck is only here. The battle also began, the judge announced, starting the competition. And Mo Dong's whole body radiated an aggressive aura. But he saw that So Kwan just stood still and did not move. He lost patience and shouted, What are you doing standing there? But So Kwan remained silent. When he saw that, he screamed, If he doesn't come forward then let me. But just as he finished speaking, So Kwan also flashed. And Mo Dong Chung looked around but couldn't see So Kwan. I knew he was very good at light arts. Just attack upon him. Before he could finish thinking, he was suddenly attacked by So Kwan. So Kwan suddenly appeared, he slashed a Mo Dong Chang's shoulder, leaving him unable to react. Just this one blow caused Dong Chung to collapse, the surrounding audience was extremely surprised. When I regained my composure, everyone was cheering, what a spectacular victory. Only director Char Jin is unbelievable, 
in just one round, one attack that I can't see in time. Only then did he realize the truth. Damn, I thought he was lucky. With So Kwan's power, he almost knew his outcome. He feared, if this continues, I will suffer humiliation in the ring. Chan Jin tightened his grip again. But, Chan Jin panicked and thought of a plan at any cost. How could we let that happen? In another place, killed the demon army sitting on his throne. A beautiful woman walked in. She said as she walked, What's the matter? Why did the demon king come looking for me? Tu Sat Ma Quan told her that the third came to Hunan after receiving orders from the deceased sect leader. When she heard that, she was surprised. Was she playing against Ma Quan? Tu Sat Ma Quan continued, It seems like there is someone there who is hindering our work. Can you go there for a while? She heard that and asked again, Why don't you go? Demon King Teuton said as he stroked his beard, The magic emitted from us was easy for the Vo Lam Min group to recognize, the leader also gave us other orders. She gave me a greedy smile, Are you taking advantage of me? If you asked for help, you should have prepared a reward for me, right? Tu Chai Mo Kwan said softly, 100 first class men. After hearing the reward, she turned around and walked away, 100 first class men. Then he turned his head and smiled to look at the devil. It was not a night with the devil, it was a pity but. This offer is also very attractive, this woman is the witch of blood flower, the eight great demon lords of the demon sect. So Quan walked and thought, finally tomorrow, I will confront Taoist Changin. So Quan said to himself, as long as I win this competition, the elixir of the merchant sect will be in my hands. Suddenly So Quan noticed something. There is a group of people coming in front of So Quan, why are you coming to see me? Looking at them being extremely ferocious. So Quan realized that they were not ordinary heretics. All of them exude a terrifying evil aura. These guys are not random roadblocks, but people who came to find us with a clear intention. So Quan knew these people wanted to cause trouble with him, and quickly disappeared. In the blink of an eye he jumped onto the roof. Ye have done so. So Quan gritted his teeth and looked at them angrily. So Quan stood on the roof and saw a very familiar person. I knew it right away. This is the judge from round three from before. There was a rule that participants in the competition were not allowed to fight anywhere other than the ring. At that time, Director Chang Jin arrogantly said, Do you think I will follow that unreasonable rule? It is to prevent arguments between participants, taking advantage of loopholes. So Quan stood high up and heard them talking, on the roof, quickly surrounded him. So Quan wondered, what if someone instigated the black gang to attack the participants? So Quan pulled out his sword, and the participants would naturally attack. So Quan looked in the distance, and there was a guy coming. A martial artist of Vo Lam Min was waiting and would report this to the Vo Lam Min headquarters. Then the participant would lose his eligibility to compete. So Quan thought about that corrupt leader Chan Jin and was extremely disgusted. Chan Jin, that bastard is very good at making others angry, but I have no proof. So Quan began using his chi and opened his sword scabbard. Pulling out his sword, his face filled with murderous intent, these gangsters and that priest, should we kill them all? The group of people attacking So Quan was rushing towards him. So Quan thought, no, I can't let him get what he wants because of excitement. So Quan easily avoided arrows from those people. They surrounded So Quan in droves, shouting loudly to capture him. So Quan immediately left the roof to avoid their damaging attacks. We have to get out of here. So Quan rushed quickly across the rooftops. So Quan thought, the magistrates would act on the attack signal from the gangsters. We can't let them discover and capture us here, while that group of people is still closely chasing So Quan. Even if you don't pull out your sword, just holding the sword hilt will cause trouble with Vo Lam Min. At this moment, So Quan landed and turned to run in another direction. So Quan kept running around every corner. I had to hide somewhere. Suddenly, a hand appeared from midair as if trying to grab So Quan. Arm. So Quan wondered while cautiously avoiding it. But then there was a voice coming from the hand. Quickly get in here before you are caught by the dark side. So Quan was surprised. An arm appeared in the air. What kind of magic is this? That turn, quickly corner the wall. The group of people has almost caught up with So Quan. So Quan had no other choice but to follow that hand. His body gradually disappeared into space. So Quan was worried, my body. When the group of people chased them there, So Quan had also disappeared. In fact, So Quan was still standing there. But they looked around in bewilderment but couldn't see him. Where had he gone? He was clearly going in this direction. The group split up to look for So Quan. He couldn't go far, searching every corner to find him. At this time, So Quan and the strategists were hiding with the tactician's magic. He said, It seems like you are hiding, caught up in a headache. So Quan bowed his head, Thank you for your help. The strategist said, If it was your ability, suppressing them would not be difficult. So Quan was surprised, Do you know me? The strategist replied, Aren't you the star of the dragon in Phoenix Congress, one of the winning candidates? So Quan explained, We cannot suppress them because if we fight outside the ring, 
we will be disqualified from competing. The strategist asked, isn't there an exception if you are forced to draw your sword to protect yourself? Although it is a rule, how can Vo Lam Min be rigid? But So Kwon said that will depend on what Vo Lam Min insiders here report. The strategist suddenly understood the meaning of this sentence. He asked again in a low voice, you mean this is a trap? This made the military strategist extremely thoughtful. He wondered who was the person behind setting up a trap for So Kwon to violate the Congress's regulations. A person with a formation like this is absolutely not a soldier. Normal character. After escaping from the arresting officers, So Kwon wondered. His title was, the strategist did not talk about his identity. He just shook his head and said, don't care, I'm just an old man. Passing by, the black oppressors had already retreated. Now you can rest assured. The protective veil also gradually disappeared. So Kwon thanked him and asked, how should I repay you for this favor? The strategist refused. It's nothing. You don't need to think too much. Just help out. So Kwon clasped his hands politely and said, I hope to see you again one day. Please allow me to leave first. Then he quickly disappeared, leaving only the strategist alone. The strategist looked at So Kwon's back and thought to himself, there was a reason why the leader appreciated him highly. He remembered So Kwon's sharp reaction. I didn't expect to be able to easily avoid my shot while I was hiding in the formation. It seemed I was still young and couldn't predict how I would grow up in the future. To what extent? The strategist smiled confidently, determined to win this person over to our side. At this time, one person was extremely angry. He punched the table hard in anger. The plan to set a trap for So Kwon to fight has failed. Director Chang Jin cannot accept it failure? He wondered deeply, how could he escape? Chang Jin trembled thinking about the upcoming match. He will have to face So Kwon. Tomorrow I will definitely be humiliated. He didn't want to lose at the hands of So Kwon. I was the first generation disciple of the merchant sect, and yet I lost at the hands of that bastard. While he was confused, suddenly a voice rang out, Sir, do you need any help? Chang Jin suddenly stood up in surprise, he shouted, I, the blood flower which gracefully walked towards him. Oh, I told you not to be so stiff. She said charmingly, Guys like that are not attractive at all, come here. Chang Jin asked in surprise, coming so close to the lady. The blood flower which reached out her hand to caress Chang Jin's red face. That's right, you want to kill him. She smiled seductively and said, just listen to what I say. 